I'm never late. <clears throat> it's always somebody early going late. Or somebody who's in a time zone that's off by like two minutes. Oh, casual moment. <laughs> Listening to my own stream. Hey chat, how are we doing? Why is there a horse on top of solitude? You know, it's a funny thing. I went up there. This is on a... Let's see, what playthrough was this? I think this was the first time I was recording to make a Skyrim video. So, like, circa 2018. Super modded playthrough. Um, I went up there to, like, kind of take a look around at the landscape. I think I, like, I think you have to cheat to get up here. This is, like, the... Um, this is not the front gate of Solitude, it's the rampart. I know the low LOD in the background kind of implies otherwise, but this is actually the rampart that's in front of the gate to Solitude. So I cheat to go up there, and I'm like kind of looking around, and then I turn around, and my horse is right there. And that's the origin. Listen, please don't, please don't abbreviate Cyberpunk. Juice head gonna eat good for the next few weeks. I don't know why we're stopping at that. Just trying to find the uh, find the stream to uh, prepare for this show. I was stumbling, uh, stumbling across many Bethesda YouTubers who will be making multiple thirty minute videos out of whatever gets shown today. When does the showcase start? I think in an hour. I don't think we're doing our crazy. Uh, Crazy 90 minute pre show today. Do you think Starfield's going to be a success or another AAA flop? So, what do you mean another? Do you mean like 76? I don't think 76 flopped. Do you mean like Redfall? Redfall flopped. I don't think it'll be a Redfall. I don't like. The problem is, Redfall's problems were systemic. Um, they didn't want to make the game. And uh, funnily enough, I'm pretty sure I said in the stream where they revealed Redfall that I said something akin to the fact of, I don't think they want to make this game. <laughs> so, surprise. Most important thing to get right for Starfield to succeed, in your opinion? Um, probably, let's see, gameplay won't matter. Bethesda fans have proven time and time again they don't care about gameplay. It can't be, we can't descend back to Fallout 3 levels of gameplay. Okay, we can't go that bad. But we can, they can regress if they want to. Because there are people who think the Fallout 4 is like this masterful shooter. I don't think it's the worst thing ever, but like... You know, obviously it's not top 10 first-person shooters of all time material either. Then go a little bit back from that and still be okay. So it won't be gameplay. Um, story won't matter. Bethesda's writing's always sucked. You kind of know that going in. And I think... Oh, and of course you have fans who think that it's actually deeply profound. Um, <clears throat> it really is like... How buggy will the release be? And... Will there be, will the microtransaction shop that they're planning on putting in Starfield, how bad is that going to be? Because it's like, Creation Club for Skyrim could be a lot worse if you start from the very beginning of the game's life cycle doing it. When does it start? Um, 54 minutes. Will we be doing a bingo board? 
You'll have to be more specific for Starfield, for the showcase, for my video. Hello, hello. Hey, chat. Oh, you're loud. I'm loud. Yeah, you came out swinging. <laughs> Sorry. I'm, all, I'm on my SSRIs. Mm. Oh, wait, no, I'm supposed to be off of those. Off. Oh. SSRIs are supposed to calm you down. You're on the caffeine pills. Yeah, yeah. Hey, we got a question in the chat for you. Would you ever do a series on Mass Effect? Oh, you're in luck. I already have. Go to my channel right now. This is, I did a video on all three Mass Effect games. The Mass Effect 1 video is a little... But Mass Effect 2 and 3, I stand by those videos. I think Mass Effect 3 is one of my best videos, honestly. Watch, I rewatched that recently. It was actually a... I don't think Mass Effect's the direction time. I want to go in, so... It, it ain't me for on that one. Yeah. And uh, Mass Effect Andromeda coming one day. I promised it, it will come. So, did everybody remember to bring their adult diapers today? I um I went to Walmart and uh, I was shocked how expensive adult diapers are. So instead, I bought myself a bucket. I have it right here next to me, and um, when something happens, I'm just gonna get on the bucket. Save myself. It won't be money. fast enough. <laughs> I might have to sit on it for the entire conference. But I got my bucket. <laughs> Sorry, I had to blow my nose there while you were doing that bit, but thank you. <laughs> so did you find a bucket to uh, do the bit? <laughs> That's the bucket that I use for detailing my wheels. Okay, so... I went, I went down to my basement before the show started to get Somebody that. needs to compile stuff like this. Like them saying that you need an extra pair of underwear for what they're going to show today. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> I'd really enjoy having, like, video of them saying that. But someone was saying something about Phil Spencer before the show started that I thought was interesting. Let me look. It's kind of weird, so I've been looking at gaming news the past few days, and it's been pretty slow. And... Y oh, right, right, right. Think you would think there'd be a lot going on, um, considering, you know, we're supposed to be... This is like the E3 replacement right now. Um, I saw everybody hated that fucking... Uh, the, <laughs> the Prince of Persia thing. Yeah. <clears throat> of course, And of course, it was because of racism, even though... Like, I... Surpri surprisingly, the the article that I was reading said it was... It was like, actually, it, it was a bunch of things people were complaining yeah. about. We couldn't really find any consensus on it. It's like, oh, that's... Yeah, the idea. actual reason was <laughs> apparently a Prince of Persia remake has been um, promised for yeah. some time. Yeah. So what I was going to say, um, Phil Spencer apparently said that Starfield was in a very <clears throat> poor state when Microsoft acquired Bethesda. Now, my comment on that is oh. they acquired Bethesda in 2020, right? Yeah. So it's like only two years into their development. I feel like... A lot of people do not understand Starfield's development. Uh huh. And I mean, you know, Bethesda's not going around clarifying this stuff, but it's like, um, when did when did he say that? Was it that was that in the same interview where he said they should have been more hands on with Redfall? I would be curious to find out. Because that's what we, you would think, you know, a man like him would understand uh, the development process and stuff. And, you know, uh, yeah, I, well, two, I think two years into the development of a game, that's probably going to take like four or five years, right? I think that he was, um, or people are like taking it uncharitably. So like, oh, yeah. it was in a rough state and it's been in development for like six years. And it's like, uh, actually, uh, so this is the, what I'm showing on screen now is the Starfield 2018 leak collection. Uh, this was a pretty, uh, and there's going to be a bit of a delay to it, but you'll have to understand. Um, this was supposedly like an asset leak of uh, where the game was at in 2018, around the launch of Fallout 76. Mm -hmm. And you can see like 
it's really bare bones. Like they've got a basic yeah, UI is, pass. They've got yes. assets. Like this is just like prototypes, proof of concept stuff going on. This is what you'd expect to see. Yeah. So like this is the state the game was in, which is to say it's not even alpha state. There's it's not a yeah. playable thing. It's assets. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> so like that kind of pokes a hole in the whole. Oh, they've been making Starfield since uh since Fallout Four came out, and it was a, it was the B team, the B team, I tell you, yeah. that made Fallout seventy six. But so, they're coming in swinging. They're gonna they're gonna do uh, Starfield and Fallout Five and Skyrim Two uh, <laughs> at the end of this year because they've been they've been shadow developing those games. Yeah, so that that leads into what I was about to ask because um, I was just having this conversation. I have this conversation a lot um, <laughs> where people are saying like, "Oh, Tez Six must be like in development and stuff," and it's like, "Do you think Tez Six is even that far along?" I still think it's just a design doc and nothing yeah, else. Yeah, I bet it, I bet there's like a few things written down on a whiteboard for Tez 6. Yeah. Yep. And that's pretty much it. I cannot imagine anything if they cuz my theory is that they pulled the team off uh the Bethesda Austin team off of 76 to work on Starfield. Yeah. So it's like if they're doing stuff like that, I doubt they're taking a dedicated group out of like core Bethesda. Which, to work on Tez Six. To remind the chat, uh, Bethesda Austin has been maintaining uh, seventy six since launch, but as of what update? Nuka World. Um, uh, yeah, seventy six has been one. has been put into the hands of a C <clears throat> team. That's right, yes. a C team with even less developers and less experience working with the engine and less, you know, in lines with Bethesda, and that's why there's no roadmap and. You know, the game's kind of dying, but anyways. <clears throat> yeah, I feel like, um, well, it's the usual thing. People being uncharitable or over charitable with uh, what's going on behind the scenes because, hey, they don't say anything, right? Yep. So let's just make stuff up. And it's like, well, no, you know, basic inferences. If that's... If they had, like, just assets in 2018, then in 2020, yeah, the game was probably pretty rough. It was, the game was definitely not going to be anywhere near launchable. FYI, they said they don't announce games until they have something to show. Um, Yeah, that's just a straight-up lie, though, because they announced Elder Scrolls Six <laughs> In what, 2018, 2017? They also announced Starfield in 2018, if I recall correctly. Well, yeah, that's the whole point. This whole, they don't announce things until they have something to show thing. It's not true. Yeah, they announced... They they announced, uh, what's it called? Um, 76 at the same conference. That was E3 2018. just uh, going through my little notes uh, spreadsheet for Skyrim. I think with Skyrim, they didn't have anything until 2010 about that game. So, I mean, like, you're operating on, like, over a decade old... That's old Bethesda that didn't market stuff until they had a game. New Bethesda, they wanted to get bought out by Microsoft. Yeah, they needed that, and they also needed to smooth over uh, the people who are going to be upset about Fallout 76 being an online game and stuff. There's, there's a lot of reasons why that was an advantageous uh, announcement to make. I mean, they even confirmed uh, Fallout 5, you know, recently. Yeah, talk about another piece of news that gets taken out of um, <laughs> reality. 
They didn't announce Fallout 5. They said, yeah, there's probably going to be a Fallout 5 at some point in the future. No, no that means they're working that's on like, it right now. That's like me saying, yeah, I'm going to do a Fallout New Vegas video at some point in my life. And then somebody's going like, well, did you see that Patricia announced that he's going to do a Fallout <laughs> New Vegas video next? And it's like, motherfuckers, you idiots. <laughs> Fallout is an insanely successful franchise. There's no way that they're going to just, like, let news about it just kind of sit. That's not the way Bethesda does it anymore. I think they're wanting to do, like, a switch-up anyways of Bethesda after Starfield. <clears throat> I, think, I really do think that Starfield is... Um, End of an era for Bethesda. A very, yeah. very complicated, convoluted, downward spiral era, but an era nonetheless. I, uh, I really do think it's going to be Todd Howard's last, like, major project. I would definitely be I, surprised if he stays at Bethesda. I keep saying once that Indiana Jones game is released, he's going to be gone. I think mm -hmm. that's his, like, his last project. Which they haven't said anything about. But anyways, I can easily imagine that um, the last few years have been prepped for Bethesda Austin to be handed the reins to either Fallout or Elder Scrolls. Probably Fallout. Yeah, they can have Fallout. Because <laughs> I think Emil lived in Austin for a while when he was a games journalist. Mm. I think he lived in Austin. Austin's an interesting town when it comes to game development. It's like where everybody's... B and C teams are located. So it's like whenever I see whenever I see layoffs mm -hmm. for studios, it's always in Austin, Texas. It's just like, damn. Yeah, there's a lot of game developers out there, and there's a lot of um YouTubers like, and Twitch streamers and uh like Bioware we... Bioware Austin, the people who were making um the uh the uh Star Wars MMO, they just said they're getting pulled off that project. It's going to a C team now. And I thought the news was going to be that they're going to be working on other Bioware projects, but it seems like not. Some of them are getting integrated into other EA projects, and then a bunch of them are just getting laid off. So, pour one out for Bioware Austin, I guess. Mm. Pour one out. Someone, someone was talking shit about the Mass Effect multiplayer, which I thought was amusing. Mass Effect 3 multiplayer or Mass mm -hmm. Effect Andromeda multiplayer? Mass Effect 3 multiplayer. I I never played it, but from what I've seen and what I've heard and what I've watched, it actually looks pretty good. I've only ever heard good things, and the only people I've ever heard complain about it were, like, on principle. Yeah. How dare they turn Mass Effect into Call of Duty? I was like, well, that's not quite what the mode is. Or they're complaining. Yeah. I, there used to be, like, War <laughs> Score tied to Mass Effect 3 multiplayer. Yeah, I think that was the most egregious part about it. But, you know, whatever. The, I'm still surprised the servers are still up for that. You know, I'll... <clears throat> yeah, there's I'll a lot give, of stuff like that. I'll give EA credit. Remember, um, like... remember Halo Infinity? <laughs> <laughs> they, they still host the servers for that. <laughs> And I will not clarify for the people in the chat who don't know what that is. And the the mistake was giving the people who made the multiplayer, the beloved multiplayer uh, mode, their own dedicated game. Dragon's Dogma servers are still up. They're making another Dragon's Dogma game, so of course the servers are still up. I don't think they ever... You know, they did the MMO for Dragon's Dogma. I don't think they ever said that series was dead. It's just taken a long time for them to get a sequel out, but... I think that's a, that's a, that's like a 15-minute video idea. Just going through and just investigating games that are still surprisingly up. <laughs> yeah, there's a ton of, um... Like, 2010-era um, co-op campaigns... Yeah. Like independent co-op campaigns that were made for for games uh that are out there. Did 
Did I play Dragon's Dogma? No, I just have strongly based opinions on nothing. What about the... Alright, so general showcase time predictions. Of course, I said the other day, minimum seven and a half minutes on Forza. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if they're going to show any other Bethesda stuff here, if it's just going to be... Uh, well, let's see. Um, Redfall's out. Mm -hmm. They're going to keep... Is the probably going to keep their head to, heads down on that one. Is the new ESO thing out yet? Necrom's been out. I think it's like... This is the issue with them doing like a January show, is like, it hasn't been enough time for a new ESO expansion to be made. Yeah. <laughs> So they'll probably, they'll mention ESO exists or something, but it'll probably be like, hey, our new battle pass is out. Or yeah. I think they did that last year <clears throat> at their showcase. It's like, hey, we've got a new ESO battle pass out. <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, I'm just trying to think of the usual suspects that might show up here. Well, it's not just Bethesda, you know, so we could get some yeah, yeah. Uh, Avowed or Outer Worlds 2 news. Um, Maybe Fable. Grounded Fable. That, that game has been <laughs> it exists MIA yeah. for a while. Yeah. Um, usual suspects. Gears of War. Man, I haven't. When was the last Gears of War game? It feels like it's been a while. Isn't there a Tez Mobile or card game, or both of those? I, it's not a card game. Um, there's uh, the war game, uh, and there is a... I think it's just like regular pen and paper tabletop. Isn't Legends abandoned now? I think it is. Yeah. Uh, which is funny given the lore that's in it. <laughs> but what it says about Titus Mead. Yeah. Will they talk about Halo, or will they just try to bury that for good? I did see something on Steam for Infinite, so that kind of implies that... I think there's a new season of Infinite, or a new event. I mean, yeah, I, we really are at the point that we're just announcing, like, new battle passes and events for stuff, because, like, we have these 10-year live service games, yeah. and, like... Skeleton gotta... crews making the expansions for them, so like we gotta have some kind of news right now. Um <laughs> They should add I'm Halo 5 Firefight to the games. MCC. Why not just add Halo 5 to MCC? It's really weird that like not that I'm complaining, I've never played it. You're not missing out. I know I'm not. <laughs> It's not even like Halo 4 where it's just like hilariously bad. It's just kind of sad. And really fucking boring. I put the fucking timer on screen and people are still asking when the showcase starts. Uh, where are you watching it at? It should probably be on the same. I'm on Xbox on their stream. Okay. Uh, it will be a, a bit of a slideshow and a bit of lower volume. Um, last stream got clipped for copyright due to the uh, twisted metal uh, buck breaking scene. <laughs> I saw a lot of people talking about that and um, Nobody was saying whether they liked it or not. They were just acknowledging that that show exists and that it was at the show. Yeah, it it's a straight to streaming type show. Yeah. <laughs> as far as I know, Twisted Metal show copyrighted everybody. Basically, what I think happened is. A lot of these companies use content ID um, to, like, if there's a leak, it's on their yeah. content ID system. So then, like, it just clips you and blocks you before um, anything can happen. And they forgot to disable that. 
before they announced it to the world. Oh man, Halo Infinite is doing poorly. It's got 2.2 thousand players. Whoa. For a free-to-play game? Yeah. <laughs> it's very poorly maintained. Nobody's playing Whoa. Infinite. Whoa, oh my god. Well, you know, it. it is a console game. I guess. But guys, um, we added, we added, we've updated Forge. Man. Well, this, that'll carry us, right? Forge mode? Remember Forge man. mode? Man, one third of what Fallout 76 has right now. And Fallout 76 is on its ass. Mm -hmm. It's like at its lowest it's ever been on Steam right now. Man. <laughs> What are the odds Starfield is a glitchy, unplayable mess at release? Um, Fallout 76 was really the only glitchy, unplayable mess that Bethesda's ever put out. Like, unplayable? Yeah, That was Fallout playable. 76 because... Yeah. Um, and that was just because it would disconnect you from the server a lot. I'm sure it's going to be janky, no doubt about it. But I would expect, like, Fallout 4 levels of polish... I'd be surprised if it gets any worse than that. Do you think anybody at Bethesda even knows what DLSS is, let alone <laughs> how to use it? So they're oh, not—they're not, not going to lean on that crutch. I'd—I would be surprised if they had a DLSS implementation. Let's just say I—I'm expecting to get a lot of mileage out of my 4080. <laughs> yeah, like um, Bethesda is always chronically behind. Like, no VSync setting, right? Still? Oh my god. If they don't... If they if they seriously don't have a fucking V-Sync setting... I, would, I, I wouldn't be surprised. I am, I am taken to Twitter, if that is the case. <laughs> no, man, um, you're, you're just blowing them up over something that doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm gonna... <laughs> I'm going to Twitter and I'm uh, time stamping my, uh, my issue with Fallout 76's V-Sync. My so video. somebody was somebody was complaining one of the regulars was complaining like i can't believe you're spending this long talking about the technical issues with the game you know you should expect if you play a pc game that you're gonna have a little tweaking in the settings and it's like it was not a little tweaking what i had to do was not a little tweaking was that that shit took over an hour to do a little tweaking is like five to ten minutes of like you know sitting in the menus when mm -hmm. the game starts before Most, the game starts. I want to say like 90% of games, I don't even talk about like the uh, the settings before you start playing the game. That's, that's just not something that even gets attention. If I talk about mm -hmm. uh, getting the game to run and having issues with it, it, w it was a lot more than just yeah. the 10 <laughs> minutes at the start where yeah. I make sure the game runs. When there's a setting in there that's hidden, that lit that more than halves my FPS for no apparent reason, yeah, that's, I'd say that's pertinent information. Especially when there's it's a known issue and there's like a lot of people online who are complaining about it and it's still not addressed. And, it's be and the game literally is getting active support from a dedicated studio. Do you think we're going to start the game as a space prisoner? I think they pretty much confirm that it's like you're just an explorer. Yeah, I mean, they don't start the Fallout games that way. I th yeah, I feel like I, they, I they get so overstated. Like they do it every game. And it's like, no, they do it in the El they do it in the Elder Scrolls games. My my prediction is you're going to start as like a space explorer initiate intern thing. It's like, oh, welcome, rookie. We're just about to go look at this magical doodad. Unpaid intern. Yeah. <laughs> and then you, and then you get to hey, the magical doodad. Hey, rookie! I know you spent an hour uh, patching, uh, fixing up your ship <laughs> ahead of uh, ahead of joining us on our adventure. 
Uh, I, I I have a pretty clear um, image in my head or a script in my head for um, how the how this game's gonna introduction's gonna go, and um, we'll see if I'm right. It's the most generic, boring shit imaginable. <laughs> Do you like how much Bethesda has really taken over Xbox's like games division? <clears throat> it's shocking. In prevalence. It's, it's incredible. That uh what what a time to be alive where Microsoft is literally getting carried by Bethesda. Yeah, like they're they <laughs> literally Bethesda has like sixty per or forty percent of their thumbnail. Yeah. <laughs> And it's just for one game too. It's not even like Bethesda has yeah. other games and stuff too. That but it's literally just not Starfield. It's um, yeah, it's not a good good time to be uh, invested in Microsoft's gaming division. Be it an employee or an executive or something like that. It's just, I don't know. Don't, guys too good. everything's fine outside don't look outside the, <laughs> the only thing that's working in their favor is that everybody else seems to be kind of like sony and micro well i don't know nintendo's actually in a pretty good position right now but like sony is they're doing they're plugging along let's, let's put it that it's way. been over for obsidian forever they released Pen pentiment didn't they Obsidian can still put out some games. It's definitely over for Arcane. Yeah, oh man. There's Arcane is now a company where um they don't have like any of their old blood. So it's just yeah. a name. Yeah. And so it's like if you're going to ask where's Dishonored 3, you're going to be doing that uh you're going to be doing that I mean, for a long time. They might Dishonored. make one. But Dishonored 3? You mean Dishonored 4? What's Dishonored 3? Didn't they have like that whole uh, Death of the Outsider thing? Which that's is a, kind of that's like... a side game. It's not Dishonored 3. It's Dishonored. It's mm. the same role that like the Dishonored 1 DLC plays. Uh, it's just okay, okay. standalone. Yeah. See, I I got it in a bundle with 1, one and 2. So I assumed it was kind of like a unnumbered, th like two two and a half or something like that. So... Man, the stream already, uh, the Xbox showcase already has 18 thumbs down. The show hasn't even started yet. That's it. And this, this isn't even, well, this is on Xbox on. This isn't even Xbox is like a why can't thing. Why can't I join the channel membership for Xbox on and donate the money? What <laughs> the heck? I don't even have channel members. Memberships, do they have? They no. don't even have super chats. This isn't Summer what? Games Fest. <laughs> what is Xbox on? They have 682,000 subscribers. Xbox on is your home for everything Xbox, including all the latest, uh, latest and greatest news, games, and updates in the Xbox world. Head over to twitch.tv slash... Oh, that's, that's where they actually make their money. <laughs> to follow and make sure that you get your daily live streams. PC gaming powered by Legion by Lenovo. Do you have a laptop? Yeah. What uh what brand is it? Dell XPS. Ah. Same. Well, I have a Dell G series, something or other, G5, something like mm -hmm. that. I like Dell. So what a what a what a time for me to be alive where I can actually say that unironically. Prey, Dishonored 2, and Deathloop were all sold critically and commercially. Arcane doesn't deserve the hate. Ah, uh, yes. Selling. The number one marker of quality. Copy sold. <clears throat> well, wasn't... Didn't they say uh, at launch anyway that Prey was like a financial or commercial failure? Yeah, I'm pretty sure Prey kind of and the... Deathloop were both commercial failures Deathloop was definitely not as critically well received as prey was yeah like death loop was uh, what well, death loop was 50 percent off within like three months of the game coming out 
Was that a straight to Game Pass title as well? No, I think it actually was like it was just very badly marketed and um Yeah. I still have no idea what that game really is. I it's own it. I don't know what it is. <laughs> got, it's a shooter from Arcane, and that's about all I know. Got it. Got it from Humble Bundle. Oh, well, I mean critically as in YouTubers. I don't mean critically as in games journalists. I don't think they look critically at anything. Deathloop was a PlayStation exclusive. No. Oh. Was it? Was it? Is your... Was it P PC? Hold on, let me, let me check real fast. I bet, I, was on, I bet it was on, I bet it was on, like, Epic Game Store and they just didn't know. <clears throat> And I, yeah, PS5. Oh wait, no. Oh, PS5, PS5, and Windows on the 14th of September of 2021, and Xbox on the, year the 20, 20th of September 2022. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so it's a timed exclusive, right, right, right? But it was on I PC. Forgot. It wasn't. It wasn't. Um, it wasn't PlayStation exclusive. I think it was a Epic Game Store exclusive for a time or something like that. I wonder if it's on Steam right now. Yeah, yeah, it is on Steam. I don't see anything about it being an Epic Games Store exclusive. You know, Death Deathloop's got a seventy percent, seventy-seven percent positive. Uh, hey, 16, hey, 000. hey! When was anybody in here taking Mr. Matty plays seriously? That's a spurious claim, and you know it. Some guy's trying to like cope his way out of uh, Deathloop being a a critical success. Is uh is a seventy eight percent positive on Steam? Good. I think. Um. Where's, where's 76 at? 70, I know 76 is uh, mixed on Steam now. Yeah. Oh, recent reviews are mixed. So 75... 68% uh, of reviews made 76 mixed. 68% positive reviews is mixed. So it's like a hair above 76 basically mm. I like the back to back even the big M sim youtubers didn't care for death loop and then like two posts later charlatan wonder and g-man were positive about death loop <laughs> make up your mind Did Ubisoft have their conference yet? No, that's tomorrow. Ah, uh, okay. You know, they're, they're a flagship company too. They'll carry a day. Yeah. Because I've just been hearing like information about the new Assassin's Creed game. So it feels yeah, like... How it's it's going to have a nostalgia filter to recreate the <laughs> look of uh, Assassin's <laughs> Creed 1. How many people are honestly nostalgic for assassin's creed one you actually take steam reviews into consideration when i look at games on steam i'll click on them i'll go to the store i'll look at their recent reviews and if it's yeah. anything below mostly positive i'll go down to the review section to see what people are complaining about yep that's basically it especially if it's recent if it's like you know it's like very positive and then recent was mixed it's like all right that that means they fucked something up with a patch recently i think it's a good way to get a first kind of uh first kind of look at what the game is doing wrong that people just making people want to talk about it yeah 
I, I mean, oh, I just look at the the pictures and then watch the trailers and then click buy. Especially when it's on sale, you know, during those Steam sales, you gotta buy those. Gotta gotta be quick on that. Oh, what happened? They changed the timer. So now they've got like a After Effects animated logos. My stream like disappeared. Uh, I guess I'm gonna watch the Bethesda one. Uh, yes, I have super chats enabled. They do not. The key to making me do something spamming in chat. <laughs> Why would you want this on the second channel? The only reason the previous stream ne even like came close to needing to be on the second channel was because it got taken down, but it's fine now. Um, that was an oh, error. Yeah, it was. It went back up. Oh. I want to stay within twenty four hours. Oh, all right. I thought it was still down. <laughs> no, no, they uh, <clears throat> they finally got their shit together because um, the whole deal with Summer Games Fest was that we were all supposed to be able to <laughs> co-stream co it. Yeah. If if you signed up for it, and then like you would get put on the exception list, and then uh, I guess they didn't check with everybody, and it's not surprising it was a fucking TV show. Yeah. I don't know why they why bring any of the TV shows to Summer Games Fest. Uh, because they're probably paying advertising dollars or something like that. So, Bethesda, why haven't you activated, um, Super Chats? Yeah! Bold that they, bold that they even have the ch like, a live chat here. <laughs> How many Bethesda employees are being forced to moderate it? Um, remember that that lady who was doing those interviews with Todd Howard? <laughs> is there anything Starfield can do to win back trust, or is, is this just an exercise of criticism at this point? I, I feel like that's on the mental equivalent of, well, if you don't like it, don't talk about it. Please, leave it alone. And it's like, bro, it's fucking clearly not going to have any issues despite us doing this, because uh, it's the only game in the entirety of Summer Games Fest to be upfront as getting its own direct time slot with a massive 30 minute showcase massive for summer games fest but whether starfield succeeds or fails is entirely in the hands of the developers in microsoft right now like i'm not gonna go into starfield going i'm gonna hate this game i will i, get, like, I will give I it the genuinely want to like it i genuinely want to like it because i really could use something I'm a, I, I, I'm a decent fan of science fiction. Videos. I don't want to do videos where I get angry a lot. <laughs> I'm a decent fan of science fiction. It's got FPS elements. Yeah. It's got shipbuilding. It's got things that I want and am kind of into. Like, I don't hate No Man's Sky conceptually. I actually like No Man's Sky um, mm -hmm. it conceptually. Most of its problems were that either poor execution or the fact that the game is broken as fuck. Yeah. And no, that, that's wouldn't, exactly run for more, wouldn't run for more than 80 minutes without crashing. You know, I, I'm but, I'm down for a little bit of inventory management and survival mechanics and stuff, but like No Man's Sky is, I like that. What it I think what fun. it is is people are um, they're looking at what's happening with uh, like we're paying a lot of attention to the marketing, and they're like, well, you're just being hypercritical, and it's like, yes, I am paying attention to what they're saying. Because yeah. this will all come up in the video. Yeah, exactly. It's doing the research now. This is what the research looks like. This is the process. Everybody likes well-researched videos. Nobody seems to like the process. And that's <laughs> not true because there are people who do like the process. But, like, research isn't pretty. It's either fucking boring as we just sit there and take notes. But if we try to make it fun, this is what it turns into. Which is making fun of Bethesda. Yeah. Because their marketing's fucking stupid. They have like 
six different uh, upstart campaigns that had like three <laughs> one minute videos made. <laughs> like there's no cohesion to the way that they've marketed this game. And this is something that we can speak on authority about as people who make videos and series and write and, you know, do this stuff for a living. Like, and and just like I, I feel like we are more qualified to talk about their marketing and critique their marketing than we are about the games themselves. Yeah. And we we know what they do at, at all of their showcases. So mm -hmm. we know all the Bethesda tropes. We know the way that they like to do things. We We know about the shotgun being pointed at the developer's cock. I wish we could shit on Blizzard marketing for Diablo 4 because holy shit. Yeah, it seemed, it seemed like a bit of a mess, which is interesting because I don't think the game even needed it. Well, that's, that's kind of the thing with Starfield, too, is that I just I don't think that they really needed all this marketing to begin with. They just needed to show some like a couple gameplay trailers and the game would sell like it's. Do you do you think Starfield will be a shallower game than Outer Worlds? Outer Worlds is like the fucking kitty puddle. <clears throat> the kitty puddle version of New Vegas. I, I think just what we've seen from Starfield's shipbuilding and uh, base building, it's already got got more legs than what's in Outer Worlds. Man, I really... I just want to see them show more of the leveling system today if if we get that i'll be satisfied like please just explain the leveling system in more detail show us more perks new perks yes yes that would be pretty bit that would be pretty cool like here okay here's what they have to do to be cool release a website that has all of the game's perks on it that you can interact with and look at yeah yeah like like a like a build your builds early type and you're of thing. like oh they'll never do that well there you go mm. i've seen games do that though and it's I not know. even that unrealistic of an expectation people have questions about how this is going to work yeah. and they have the feeling that like we know full well like i they already confirmed some of it like oh yeah you can change some of your uh you, you can change some of your character creation traits after the fact and it's like oh so none of that matters Board did that uh i the only thing i remember about spore uh, pre-release was um the character like the the like they literally released the character creator system itself i was just talking about like a website where you just go in and it's just basically a spreadsheet yeah an interactable spreadsheet and it just shows you all of the uh all of the perks yeah. that they're gonna do and all the traits and stuff just everything tied to character creation and broader leveling that's a good like gesture of goodwill. Will they do it? Absolutely not. But that's what it would take to uh, undo the what is it now? Two years of just shitty marketing for Starfield. And all, all the love in chat right now for Spore is making me feel justified in that. Uh, I've been planning a Spore video for a while now. I was gonna do one. It was gonna be. Uh, City Skylines and Spore, and then the next Skyrim video, but City Skylines is taking longer, so... I might still record Spore soon, though. Project Bloat. I feel like Spore would, is probable to bloat as well. Nah, I, I, I have a pretty clear vision in my head for what that video is going to be. It would be another really short one, like 30 to 40 minutes. I don't think there's much to say about it, honestly. Outside of, like, some key key aspects look at these legends here yes starfield had marketing so they have this uh, into the Starfield, which was a three-part series where, like, they did this roundtable discussion and they had all these assets made for it, and then they never did anything with it again, <laughs> and they just abandoned then, it. This was, um, that was that was the one that we were watching in reverse, right? And it turned yeah. out the first one that was like the most generic sounding was the most like information-packed. 
Yeah, so the, like they front loaded all the information, and then like <laughs> here's another series that they're doing called Constellation Questions. Uh, this was seven months ago, and it's um, so the whole time they've been like become one of our discord kittens and we'll answer your questions on here which of course as blizzard revealed recently is fake but you know we all knew that but like um so yeah this is another thing that they started doing they did three episodes and then they abandoned it uh all of bethesda's like marketing for starfield is like this they'll do like two or three episodes like maybe 15 minutes if you're lucky oftentimes a lot less and then they'll just abandon this line of thinking and they'll come up with like some new way to uh re reveal information and then no they don't and then they don't say anything that's the important no wonder, part no wonder anon zor was running around the bethesda studio just asking them please explain to me what the game is about yeah <laughs> there's a very real feeling of like the bethesda devs not wanting to market the game but like yeah being obligated to market the game I think, because I think the, the Bethesda understands, like, the game's going to sell. We don't really need to market it that much. And the less marketing we do, because it's probably, it, what it probably is, is just there's a lot of, there's still like, or there was a lot of moving parts still. So they didn't want to put anything up and then be like, oh, well, in six, you know, and if it releases in a year or so, and that's all changed, people are going to crucify us. Is this the most viewers have had in a chat? 1136. Um, uh, well, we're up to that. Wow. I think some of the previous Starfield streams had that many. People enjoy a good Starfield stream. They want to dodge the Kroby Cat compilation. Well, yeah, of course. That's always that's always been their thing. Is um, no longer will we have Todd Howard calling into random podcasts to talk about the game, it, <laughs> and that's a given. Ever since Skyrim, ever since they did that thing where they showed that, like, uh, here's all the things we could do if we just had one more week of development on Skyrim, <laughs> <laughs> which is not what, which is not reality, but. It's not good optics to say, oh, yeah, we gave the developers one week and here's a bunch of like here's spears and uh, dynamic stealth guard pathing and uh, torch lighting. And um, there is there is so many so many good ideas that came out of that, that they made two DLCs around it. Yeah, so like they'll never they'll never do that again. All of the information that they put out now is like super controlled, super under NDA um you know when they say we're gonna a answer community questions uh what that really is is we pre-wrote questions that are perfect for the developers to answer they're not gonna answer a random question from the discord server if i was bethesda at this point how i would be approaching marketing is you do an announcement like when you feel reasonably the game's about a year away from release, year and a half away from release. That's just when you just, you know, say the game exists, we're working on it, it's coming. Then, like, three to four months before the game's actually going to be starting to ship, that's when you drop the bombshell, all right, here's the release date, bam, marketing, go. And you just release, like, long, just like, release, like, three longer uh gameplay trailers that just explains everything because their games lend themselves well to that sort of trailer anyway it's like okay here's the trailer this video is going to be about like gameplay mechanics and stuff you just go through it then you do the story one and then you do the, i don't know whatever the third one could be we're a long ways divorced from todd howard playing a game live at quakecon yeah they don't need to do it like that any anymore and it's like their games are going to sell regardless. Their name alone sells sells copies. So it's really just about generating that hype right before the game launches. They don't need to cut through any noise because... Skyrim you know, really was the perfect game in the sense of how much... How easy it was to get information about the game's development. Yeah. From their pre-launch material. Whereas like if I was trying to do the Skyrim video, but the subject was Starfield... <laughs> It would be very difficult to 
kind of get the same like interviews and discussions that were going on and like see where the development priority was and kind of get a transparent picture of what was going on with the development. And I'd probably do like one of the behind the scenes things. You just do like a 20 minute like full behind behind the scenes thing rather than releasing it piecemeal like, you know, two minutes a clip. Yeah. Over the course of like six months and then abandoning it twice. This is where I'm kind of at a disadvantage because I'm not terribly familiar with how Fallout 4 was marketed. Did Fallout 4 have a behind the scenes documentary? I don't know. Because they did the whole 40, like the whole one hour, like 45 minute or whatever documentary on, on Skyrim. And they had multiple like Bethesda podcasts about Skyrim. And you had yeah, Todd Howard. Were... They did interviews everywhere too. Like even on like fan forums and. Yeah. I, I barely remember Fall Off Wars marketing except for like one one gameplay like demo basically. Mm -hmm. Um I remember him in like Sanctuary playing with like power generators. <laughs> I remember them fighting uh rad scorpions under like an overpass. Yeah. And they were showing like the burrowing mechanic. That's the only thing I remember about the marketing for that game. That the NVIDIA RTX asset replacement kit is so old news. <laughs> I like the I like people that post like, hey, did you hear about this thing that happened like a year ago? I think I saw the thing In where they announced that actually. Interestingly, that was... didn't show any NPCs in their demo. Yeah. Is it out? No, it's not out. Uh, not as far as I'm aware. I wouldn't be surprised if that, like, uh, goes into the memory hole. And then, like, it gets released at some point, but they will there won't be any, like, hype surrounding it. They'll, like, quietly release it one Saturday, and then like, the tool will be out there, but... Yeah. Still up to the modders and stuff to do the do a lot of the heavy lifting for it. Is there going to be gameplay? I would be very surprised if they got a 30 minute show to not show any gameplay. They said the like Microsoft and the Starfield Direct is going to be nothing but gameplay. That's one of the that, that was also from the dude who said we need um, to have an extra pair of underwear for the show. So, yeah, I mean, bear in mind, we're like three months from the supposed release of Starfield. Yeah, if they didn't if they didn't show gameplay here, it'd be all but confirmed that they're delaying it again. Yeah, in-engine gameplay. Well, the, the, you know, the, the industry has different standards for what gameplay actually means when it comes to trailers, but maybe we'll see a HUD. I never updated the thumbnail that's in the background. Hang on. Oh, yeah, I, I noticed this morning uh, the, um, the little edits that you made to it with... Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> The details. Yeah. Yeah, it was fun making that thumbnail. For today's stream. You can get a lot of mileage out of just masking things. <laughs> You're going to maximize the stream when it starts to mostly be quiet? Nope. In fact, you're probably not going to hear it. Uh, hear most of the showcase at all. The yeah, only yeah. part that I'm going to take a copyright risk with is the Starfield stuff. I'm not getting this fucking stream clipped over some stupid ass TV show that they announced at the <laughs> Xbox Games Showcase. Yeah, because this time you don't have the co stream. So here's the deal. Here's the deal. And I it's sad that I have to say this, but here's the deal. If something at this showcase interests you, watch the trailer for it after the stream is over. Seems like a simple rule, right? I wouldn't say Starfield being bad is a foregone conclusion, but just everything that we've seen so far has I don't know raised a lot of red flags for me. I don't know what my hands are doing, but I'm not like actually putting my hand up over and over. <laughs> oh. 
it's starting. Thank you, Skyrim Music. You really are a god saver. <laughs> Here it comes. Oh god, my underwear. It's <laughs> filling. <laughs> Oh, they even do a countdown? You guys are really raising my expectations here. It's a good thing I brought the bucket. Yeah, I like... So they're opening with, like, it's 18+. plus. Everybody on the planet agrees that it's 18+. plus. <laughs> oh, we're finally doing this, are we? Because I was going to make a sandwich. Okay. Let's do it. What's that, what's that well, show, IT Crowd? Heroes. Well, we've all seen them, haven't we? Swanning about the place with their disproportionately high Oh, Fable? Comically massive weapons. Banker. Roughing up bandits, because they like to rough up bandits, don't they? Living it up with the common folk every single night. On a day-to-day -day basis... I'll the stream the being choppy is not an accident. ...with fruit with veg on the agricultural side of things. Just look at them. Not wafting around mythical creatures. And that's what they are. Wafters. Yeah, well done. You see, I'm not here to slay legendary beasts. I'm here to conquer the vegetable. Not a euphemism. Yep, it is feeble. Let's face it. The age wow. So they started it off. This is the age of innovation. This you see, this is what you this is what you open a show with. No, I want I want Phil Spencer talking. <laughs> this is awkward. Yeah. So Fable also sweating after Forspoken. <laughs> yeah, probably. Like guys, we got the comedian. Oh. Wait, what? She was going to say, it's... oh, fuck, but then it cut off because they can't swear. What? So, chat, how's our hopes doing? World premiere. What the fuck was that? Um, they can't swear it's 18 plus. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, see, the trailer has to be compatible with being on their YouTube channel afterwards. Mm hmm. Oh, hey, it's Fallout 76. <laughs> okay, guys, I know that there's a freeze effect going on with the, uh, with the stream. Uh, this, this trailer is also, like, stop motion. So it might be a little trippy to look at. Oh, yeah. And we're turning the audio off. Um, as someone who gets like motion sick, if I had to play a game like this. Mm -hmm. Good luck fretting chords with those nails. <laughs> Hey, CJ. I like this dude's like design though. Sneaky. 
So is this just going to be Forspoken, the game's showcase? <laughs> but what's the game? So, like, is what's supposed to sell this just the art style? Yes. Whoa, dude. I killed a freaking game studio with my mind. A Ubisoft I mean, studio. That game might at least have a so, good soundtrack. We're getting Star Wars at the Microsoft Showcase. Please be like a mobile game. <laughs> I have no. I don't remember what Massive is working on. Are they? Um, there was a guy I was talking to in emails that was working on one of the Star Wars games. He was like their lead writer. I don't know if this is it or not. Looks like I'm all in. She's in here somewhere. Looks like I'm back. I'm out. So about that all gameplay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we haven't had gameplay yet. <laughs> Force spoken. I haven't gotten that vibe yet. This is how this is how Star Wars just is. Yeah, they marfled it. I saw Salty Shrimp Pasta's video on um the first Jedi game. The Jedi Survivor or whatever the fuck yeah. the series is called, <laughs> Fallen Order. Actually that was a really good video. Yeah. Give me a chance. It's hard for me to follow Star Wars videos and stuff because I have virtually no exposure to the franchise. Mm -hmm. And it's like getting into this at this point is like, oh, I'm missing a lot of pertinent lore, like, you know, the recent films and stuff like that. You're not really missing that much. Like, you could honestly just watch the movies and, like, interface in decently. Yeah, that would just be like a dedicated week of me watching the movies. Well, if you haven't, you should definitely watch the original trilogy and then like go get recommendations watched... from there. I watched the first Okay, this two. is this is not the project that uh, you know the guy who's working on it. I watched the first two of the original trilogy and then I fell off. It was um what the fuck studio is making David Cage's game? Uh, wow, Fable. Welcome to our first ever double feature, the Xbox Game Show. Ubisoft. Uh... Okay, so felt high heel boots, Xbox green dress. Not even Xbox green though, because they they're using a different logo. And then denim shirt. I was really hoping they were gonna do one of these. It just they, like they would have just pulled them Sony and been nothing but games. Yeah. Microsoft just does not have that sort of confidence. Enabling all of us to play the games we want with our friends anywhere, from mobile devices to PCs to consoles. Why are you so scared of copyright? Because the last stream got clipped for copyright, and I was supposed to be like in the clear on that. These are the works of the very greatest creative teams from around the world. Man, just compare this lady's performance to Jeff Keighley's performance on stage. Yeah, and then and then tell us that Jeff Keighley's not a natural. Yeah. Like she looks AI generated. <laughs> Poor choice like, of we had dress to, color. We had, to, we had to discuss like whether Keighley was reading off a teleprompter or not. Like she is obviously working off a prompt. Yeah. Well, and she's got like this green woolen dress, but it's not Xbox green. All right, everybody. Chroma key that dress onto Jeff. <laughs> world uh, are they gonna say world premiere for all the new announcements they do? Of course.
Well, this is the show where they're gonna. Sh this is this this, thing. Is, this is this is where the gameplay is, kids. Ah, yes. Isn't that Lana from Archer? No, you racist. She 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 shows up for the Ubisoft shows. And that's not a joke, by the way. They actually got Asia Tyler or Asia Taylor, whatever her name is, to do a one of the Ubisoft press conferences in like 2015. Ah, uh, yes, singer vocalizing. 33-player co-op. Yes, me and my 32 friends. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's neat, I guess, but, like... Oh, is this a... This is a game for streamers, isn't it? Say that. I was just about to fucking say that. This is uh, me and my 32 pay piggies. Yeah, highest pay piggies. Bear mind. At least there's gameplay? Question mark? The funny thing is these twin sticks top down all control awful on gamepad. What's the significance of the number 33? Come on, schizos. Tell us in chat. <laughs> really hope streamer bait doesn't become a little bit legitimate genre. Uh, it's already too late. It is. Yeah. So it literally is. Payday have, expansion or payday game? Have you seen... Um... What is it, Until Dawn? Yes. Literally a definition. Everybody hit the floor. Payday expansion, it's gotta be. So, this is Xbox's showcase, huh? Payday 2. Talk about a game with an amazing soundtrack. Mm -hmm. Talk talk about like the uh, mixed. Ba oh hey, they've got the three shot double barrel too. <laughs> Fast paced dramatic music playing. An expansion for a 10-year-old game, lol. Well, that's what I'm kind of curious about, is like... Yeah, they're showing gameplay. I'm also pretty sure this game's out. Is it on... Is it on Xbox? Or is that what they're announcing here? Cool. That's their sequel? That's their sequel? That looked like... That looked like a game from, like, 2017. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and they have a release date for it too. Oh, alright. I hate I'm like fucking behind 20 seconds from what you are. Oh yeah? Yeah. Uh, are you have you refreshed? Um, send me send me a link to the one that you're using. So I'm on uh I'm on the Bethesda one. Yeah, um it's not the you're not gonna be missing much, so this is a good time to do it. They're showing off some yep. fucking like re release of Persona 5. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. This was the one that I was on. It disappeared, <laughs> so I went to Bethesda. Wow, Persona 3, game that already exists. Microsoft, bring in the fire, I tell you. So it's like they've got Starfield for 30 minutes, and I bet that they like had more that they could have shown that they didn't. And then you've got the rest of Microsoft, and they're like <laughs> scrambling to fill 90 minutes. Yeah. Listen, with, with the optics of this being a Starfield's only showcase would be really fucking bad. Is this, so. our, is this our ESO Battle Pass announcement? No, it can't be ESO. 
Obsidian. Ooh. Are we actually getting avowed? Hang on. Let me unfreeze it. Oh. I like I'm still behind you by like five seconds. <laughs> oh, you too. Oh, this must be about. To investigate some play. Um, oh boy, this sure looks like down. Outer Worlds. Uh, so... Visually, anyways. You want us to trust you. But the truth is, Outer Worlds art style is not like a terrible thing. Scare us. Um, it also looks like really dated. Yeah. This the this looks like a game from like 2016. It looks like the well, they're used Unreal for Outer Worlds. Yeah. So this could be like just the version of Unreal they're using. But I will agree, the lighting looks really bad. Yeah. Like really bad. Yeah. Or destroy us. But I mean, hey, if they're bringing the they're bringing the gameplay or like the mechanical choices, I won't complain mm -hmm. too much. So now that you have all this power. I don't like what they're implying with what like the narrative though. It? See what has me more excited for this than Outer Worlds is at least this takes place in like their established franchise already, like universe and everything, so they don't have to start from scratch on everything. Yeah. Mm, kill bear oh, kill bears the game okay yeah so that that was like kind of a maybe four out of ten when it comes to building confidence <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like really that's the avowed you're bringing okay so we have fable that didn't show anything avowed that looked dated oh rough. the games that they've shown have lo looked dated yeah like with ah, their with their lighting. Ah, oh, of course, I forgot. Yes. The usual suspects. Their li <laughs> yeah, their live service game. There was a great debate about I... whether or not um, Sea of Thieves or Welcome Fallout seventy six is worse. The most notorious tavern on I don't know. I like. I have a soft spot in my heart for Sea of Thieves because the game legitimately encourages people to grieve. Right yeah, that is a good thing. Like, <laughs> it is not at all. World premiere of Sea of Thieves, that kind of like deflates them saying world premiere <laughs> when like it's a Sea of Thieves expansion. Hey, remember when like their last expansion was that they added Jack Sparrow? Or <laughs> That's the last thing I remember them announcing for Sea of Thieves. Yeah, the, the only reason I want to play this game is because it would be hilarious to just fuck with other, like just get a bunch of people together and just go around fucking with other players. Did you ever watch Black Sails? No. Ah, oh, it's it's actually pretty good. It's it's worth the uh worth the time. I think it's only three seasons long too. Sea of Thieves, you play as a pirate, but you need to agree to the code of conduct in order to play with other people. And of course, you're just role playing as a pirate. But at least at least it's better than Fallout 76, where you can play as a, play as a raider. But you can't actually do anything raiding related. Like, this game legitimately encourages, uh, facilitates and encourages, like, the griefing and pirate lifestyle, so. World premiere. World premiere. <clears throat> that, I need that soundbite now. <laughs> yeah. World premiere. Well, you got plenty of, uh, plenty of uses for it, or plenty of examples yeah. of it that you can clip here. Swelling music playing. Well, this, uh, that's Microsoft's like M.O. is like, say something until it literally doesn't mean anything at their press conference. Whoa. This GTA Online update looks sick. So is this the helicopter update for Flight Sim? Aerial firefighting. Oh, no, there. Do, does... Is this like going to be synced real time? So it's like during a hurricane, I can go and like fly <laughs> a plane into a hurricane. 
or like I can go. God damn it! Out I get ho I get home from work again, and there's no hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> or I can, like, go and help put out the fires in Canada right now. You mean start the fires in Canada? Oh, wait. Whoa, it's, shut it down. <laughs> Agricultural <laughs> aviation. Ah, oh, yes, because being a crop duster is what I've always wanted. I'm gonna I'm gonna go Sky King in, uh, in California during dry season. Okay, now that's cool. Aerial construction. I, I see Ooh, aerial yeah. construction videos all the time. Industrial cargo transport. A distinct lack of Starfield in a Starfield premiere. That's at the end of it. It's 30 minutes of the two hour show. Air racing is always lame. I've never seen a game that made air racing fun. <laughs> oh my god. I was going to make a fucking tornado joke, storm chasing joke, and yeah. they actually have it but too. Do they have air traffic control yet, though, for flight sim? <clears throat> or is that still above them? Oh, it's an actual, like, new game. I thought that was just going to be an expansion. Wait, hmm. that's a, its own game? It said Flight Simulator 2024. I'm going to assume that means it's a new game. No fucking way. Ah, the Dune crossover. <laughs> I'm sorry. I wasn't saying no way to what's being shown on screen. I'm, showing, <laughs> I'm saying no way to them releasing a new Flight Sim. Uh, the question is, will this planet, whatever it's called, Arrakis, will it be yeah. like its own area that you could visit? It's the entire planet, actually. We're using yeah, see, um, the technology that, uh, that, that Starfield the developed. <laughs> <laughs> see, that could be cool. You get to like explore Arrakis. Oh, that film actually has a release date? November 3rd? Yeah. Hi. Melina here, speaking to you from our performance capture stage at Ninja Theory, where we have just wrapped our shoots for Senua Saga Hellblade 2. When we first showed gameplay for Hellblade 2, it was a look at some of the game's cinematic and immersive action, where Senua faced off against a gigantic troll on the Icelandic coastline. I wonder if this game is going to be as lauded as the first game. Today, we're taking you deeper into Senua's story, her personal quest, her unique perspective on the world, and the intimate journey that awaits you in Senua Saga. What you'll see Adventures of Schizo Girl. By the team on Xbox Series X. This is not a French, that's not a uh, English accent. She can feel oh God, I've watched too many YouTube videos like this. Oh Jesus! The... Sure is gameplay. She's here to find them. They're they're using um they're actually using stereo audio for this thing. That is actually kind of freaky. <laughs> Especially since it's just a woman panting and moaning. Wait, you don't hear the whispering? I hear it. Oh okay. Yeah, because I have I've headphones that have, like, a really wide sound stage, and this is, like, actually... A part of you that darkens. And a part of you that dies. Well, this was all... Th this game always struck me as, like, uh, Microsoft's attempt at copying what Sony was doing with their, like, walking sims. Yeah. ASMR the game. Maybe. They're recording on like ASMR microphones. I mean, that's pretty. That's kind of cool. <laughs> I'm definitely down for more games that have like a really excellent audio production, audio engineering. And for them to carry that over into a trailer that's streaming, not easy. 
The, the amount of chromatic aberration is insane. If it's just if it's just for like this sequence that they're doing, that's fine. But I I do hate chromatic aberration. Yeah, I turn that shit off. I guess turned off with motion blur and. So if they only Death use it field. in like a in a sequence where like it's supposed to be trippy, that kind of makes sense yeah. because it's yeah. a it's a trippy effect. But it is gets turned on by general in general. <clears throat> Are you ready for what you will find here? What we all find? What if it's all for nothing? Oh God! <sighs> you know what? Props for a trailer that's not like all the others that we've seen so far. <laughs> we we've got diversity here at the Xbox show showcase. I feel like, why does it matter if it's being rendered on the Xbox 360? Or whatever the fuck they call their console, the Series X. <laughs> like, why, why does it matter? It's a fixed camera angle. For an Check entire out those cutscene. black bars, too, so... The cinematic black bars. Yeah. Remember when Dragon's Dogma 1 did that on consoles? Because, like... Yeah, because it was such a power hog. Yeah. Drag Dragon's Dogma is kind of a game that relied on uh, its next generation releases to get some uplift because uh, it didn't run yeah. that well. Yeah, and that was my first exposure to it was like the Xbox 360 version. Movie game trademark. Dude, there's people who want like all games to be like this. Yeah. How much fucking weed do you need to smoke to enjoy this? That's why it's like the original. It, it had like a purpose and everything like that, but now it's just. I have to like fucking slap myself to wake up. <laughs> <laughs> Please be like a dead or alive game. Damn. That would have been so hilarious to follow up S Sinuous Sacrifice with Dead or Alive. <laughs> Volleyball! Talk about a tonal shift. I mean, it is still a pretty big tonal shift. Not everyone has ADHD and enjoys a more narrative experience. That wasn't narrative, that was just boring. This is like... <laughs> so who's the Giga Chat at Microsoft that decided that they were going to follow up? <laughs> Said he was sacrificed with that, because that was pretty smart to uh, yeah. give people a chance to wake back up. <laughs> so is this game taking place in the States? I guess. Imagine. <laughs> They're going to style on GTA. They're going to do Vice City before Oh, GTA. Oh my god! Wait, what? We're getting 76 news. What? No, 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 no. Don't, don't do this to me. Don't You're do coming this. back in, boy. You're coming back no. in. No. I refuse. Also, 15 million dwellers. Okay. <laughs> this is usual Fallout 76 core. Mm -hmm. So are they just saying, hey, this game exists? 
Nah. Or is there going to be a new content update? There has to be content. Uh, this is all stuff that's in the this game. Is or like, yeah. is Pay Piggy Cosmetics. This is their- is oh, this their no. last? This is my final flash! <laughs> Guys, please! Oh. Expedition Atlantic City? Oh my god. I mean, I wish they would just say what the fuck they're advertising. No, that... Okay. Huh? What is it? Is it... Is it gonna be a new I, expedition? Okay, Atlantic City. It has to be expeditions. There's no way they're doing... <laughs> I've seen a lot of L's and Z's in, in the Bethesda <laughs> chair in, this, in the stream's chat. Yeah, because they showed nothing, and it was con <laughs> it was confusing as to whether or not they were advertising that the game exists or that they're actually doing like a new content update for it. Okay, uh, that looked like they were announced. This this is this is. But twenty twenty four seventy six textbook seventy six <laughs> don't like actually showcase that anything what you've got going on. Yeah. Atlantic City was that Point Atlantic Lookout? Atlantic City Expedition. Um, no, Point Lookout I think was in Maryland. Okay. I'm surprised that they're actually doing a new content update that isn't rooted in nostalgia. I don't know how well Atlantic yeah. City is going to... Oh, wait. That's their new Vegas. It'll be full oh. of... Yeah, gambling. Yeah. Of course. Well. We have info now they, guys you just they, needed they, to wait it's coming back it's coming back watch those we're watch bringing those it player back counts. watch those player counts they're, they're going to be going back up through but, the roof but papa microsoft said we have 15 million players <laughs> well they gave the game away on humble bundle and that barely made a dent in the steam player count so maybe 15 million accounts that have ever at, turned the game on. Smart move putting this after the Fallout 76 thing, so I actually have like uh, something to not pay attention to while I'm just <laughs> digesting the <laughs> the implications of what I just saw. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, it'll be a banger. This is gonna this is where they're gonna turn it around. <laughs> the start of the redemption arc. <laughs> FYI, not gonna cover it. Oh, here it is. Um, here it is. Alright. Oh god, is GM really being their headline? Ew. <laughs> GM's like one of the most hungry fucking automakers on the market right now. This is not... Oh, God. Oh, not a good look. Yes, I know. The new... Uh, the mid-engine corvette was like the first thing gm's put out in like a decade that's actually gotten any sort of attention video games no you will you will take your uh your seven and a half minutes of forza <clears throat> and you will like it this was literally what i was waiting for to see like what manufacturer was going to be headlining this game and <laughs> <laughs> oh man Porsche, you know, BMW, no, they were, they were way too high, way too high a price tag. Also, this game does not look good, like visually speaking. The chat would have a hard time telling. I've been messing with filters because uh, 
Uh, you know, it's Forza. You know, I don't care. Here's why I don't like Forza. Forza always wastes a ton of time at the press conference with stuff yeah. that doesn't matter for a series that, like, is hard to well, take how you, seriously. How do you even advertise this? It's a fucking racing game, especially, like, the motorsports one. It's just like... Well, that's the question. Why does it get more <clears throat> than 30 seconds at the press conference? Can you please show other fucking cars? I know GM's paying you guys a lot of money right now, but please... I want to know what other game, what other vehicles are in this. No, you will, uh, it, you will. <laughs> that really is just like the name of the game for Forza. That and like blatant cheating and corruption. Come on, there's no way that's it. There's no way that's it. No They've... bullshit. Yeah. I guess that was it. Bethesda presents. I have seen all that ever was. Looks like we're getting the Necrom. The Necrom advertising. Ah. <clears throat> that wasn't a betrayal. Hi, Wes Johnson. Not just ESO expansion. Old ESO expansion. <laughs> this is out. That's what makes it so great. You know, people might not have heard about this. There's mm. been a lot going on recently, you know, like, um, you had, uh, you had Redfall and all that. And mm. there's, there's been a lot of stuff going on. Don't you want another Morrowind expansion that's also tied to Hermes we, Mora? When you get bored with, um, with the new Zelda game and Diablo 4, come and play ESO. We have a new expansion. Out. Yeah, when you get bored, all right. <laughs> World premiere. There's a lot of, like, 2D art and stuff like that for a game that like they have like all these assets in game they can just show nothing but gameplay well but see then it would be eso and eso is from like 2013 <laughs> and it's like it doesn't matter if it's a new expansion it'll always look like it's from 2013 and so it's like well use 2d art as much as you can world of warcraft can do it and still sell World of Warcraft only sells to, like, the people that are mentally invested into it. <laughs> it's probably just repurposed concept art with effects. Oh, that's always the case. Mm. Gotta get your money's worth out of the concept artists. Oh, they added a subtitle to it. Shadow over Morrowind. Um, oh, it isn't out yet. It comes out really? in the 20th. <laughs> I remember... I trust I was... in the three Bs, boys! <laughs> <laughs> Who's gay now? <laughs> Where's the Overwatch movie? Here's all the PVE you're not getting. That's a <clears throat> that's a good question. What is this? Oh, we changed our mind. We're actually going to do a PvE mode. I feel like they changed Reinhardt's character. Gonna sell PvE as its own game? Wasn't that the point of Overwatch 2? And then, oh, and here's the g new gameplay. Actually, has nothing to do with what we've been showing. Oh, well. Co-op mode. <laughs> Guys, the PvE. We totally made it. I didn't even know this was a thing that was anticipated. You didn't... Okay, so... Th since Overwatch 1, they've been talking about doing the single player for Overwatch. And then... <laughs> uh, they said, we need to go to Overwatch 2 in order to make that happen. Uh, like Overwatch okay. is too old to do it, and then 
a few months ago they actually canceled the uh single player for overwatch or like the pve content what the, what the fuck apparently not and so now well there was huge backlash because everybody was like well why the fuck did we switch to overwatch 2 <laughs> if you're going to cancel the pve mode so i'm guessing uh, i'm guessing that this is like their attempt to like kind of massively course correct with a cooperative event yeah yeah, yeah. it's not a full pve mode but you know so that justifies the concerns that I was having when I was watching that, where it's like, how is the multiplayer game, like, how are they going to make, like, really good AI for that multi for that, like, uh, single player mode? It is kind of funny. Did you ever play the new Battlefront 2's, like, um, its co-op mode? No. That's kind of what I would imagine they would <clears throat> want to kind of emulate. Oh, I gotta mute this. Ruby? Ruby? No. It's, it's <laughs> it looks too good to be Ruby. <laughs> World premiere Persona Funko. Oh god. <laughs> oh, is this Persona? I'm sorry Persona fans. I did not mean to insult you guys like that. Please don't harass us endlessly for not being into your weird ass series. Weird ass over monetized series. So first game coming out in 2023? Question mark? Hmm. No, there was like the Sea of Thieves expansion that came out next month. That doesn't fucking count. Yeah, Man, we're, that ain't... we're gonna talk new. Just games. because they said it was a world premiere. <laughs> yeah. Another Bethesda game. Hey, the St. Louis Arch. Humanity has always hunted for oh, 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 oh. the unknown. Is it already been time? Really? The one no place. way. Not that the field of stars this has got to be like some kind of mid-show thing or something. Yeah. But that we have measured it. Because it's only been 45 minutes. Well, if nothing else, I'm glad I'll have another soundtrack to put on the background of my streams. Yeah, th thanks, Inanzer. <laughs> can we just, like, can we just pay him to make music? Like, yeah. why bother with ma having him make the games? He's clearly not afraid of doing it, either. He made a ton of music for Fallout 76. Yeah. Fucking Inanzer comes back to make the music for Atlantic City expansion for Fallout 76. Assets, assets, no man's sky, assets. <laughs> Isn't this a trailer that's already come been out? I feel like we're just getting this feels like a remix of the trailers we've seen so far. There's new okay, there's the new like coming. angles on some assets, but this yeah. is a lot of stuff that we already knew. Mm -hmm. Oh no. Crimson, Crimson Fleet. I love massive ringed systems. No Man's Sky 2 looks tired. Well, that's the joke we've been making this entire time, is anything they show with these weird alien structures is literally from No Man's Sky. Melee! Third person oh, that melee. Like new, that looked like a new running animation. Because the last time lines. I saw running animations, it was clearly just Fallout 4. Yeah. And holy crap, we got Whatever gameplay here. I heard a rumor that id came in after that last trailer and has been, like, working on tweaking their gameplay. Don't know how That's, true that, that is. That sounds like a bizarre rumor. How would that even work? Oh, well, you know, they're under the same house, right? Can we just take out the engine and put in a new one? Just drag and drop new engine. Another game to be coming out this year. Yeah. All right, so they're confirming. All right, so that's probably Starfield. Okay, so that's like their their pre preview. Oh. So yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. So they're still doing like the thirty minutes at the end. I was like, yeah. There's no fucking way they're doing it now. 
yeah. in the <laughs> middle of the Microsoft show. There, that's got that's like the the point of the headline. <clears throat> All right, we'll have to give that another uh, look through. It yeah. looked, I'm not going to say it looked good. It looked all right. Yeah, it looked, from what I could see, it looked like it was improving over what we saw. Like I said, um, the animations looked better. They gave it a lot of, like, design pass, but honestly, it seems like a lot of stuff that's already in the series, like, especially that what comes to mind is that shot of him throwing the mine. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've been looking at that since Fallout 3, so... Yeah. But, you know, it's nice to see the nothing's feedback getting looked, removed. The feedback looked shitty. The feedback... So, it's looked bad the entire time, like, all the gameplay yeah. we've looked at. Like, enemies do not react to being shot. Yeah. That trailer existed to keep the screaming chil children happy during the car ride. That's kind of the weird thing, is why did we need a <laughs> mid-show... Like... This is the this is the 45 minute mark of the 90 minute presentation. We got to remind them that Starfield exists. Guys, it's coming. <laughs> like I said, this whole show is so far has felt like Microsoft is just really really insecure right now. <laughs> and that's Microsoft like every show at this point. Yeah. And it's like this is what desperation you looks know, like. This could be cool, but I feel like it's not going to be enough of a, like a sim. Like, a, a good rock climbing game would be kind of fun. So there's no way that this is not this is not going to be it. This is going to have things that you're going to wish were kind of part of, like, a... a... Yeah, bigger game. Mm -hmm. It's going to have design ideas that get stolen for, like, <laughs> a, a Death Stranding type game. Yeah. That uh, takes all of these, like, all of the good ideas here and... This is um this is a streaming game for uh, those streamers who like their tag so, is chill ASMR. It's climb fall twenty twenty three. World premiere. Say autumn twenty twenty three. If you say fall twenty twenty three, I'm thinking in context of climbing. <laughs> it's the little things, you know. So they put music at the start of trailers just so that, like, they have copyright hits. Not necessarily claims, but, like, they've got copyright inroads with all the channels that post the trailer. <laughs> like, that's the only point of putting music in there like that. So, weird through line of the conference, like, oil rig platforms with helicopters. All right, horror game fans, there's your announcement. Like 15, 20 seconds. Folk song playing, not female singer vocalizing. I noticed they stopped doing the world premiere thing. World premiere. They... <laughs> Yeah, what is that? What is this? This doesn't look presentable. Like, I'm seeing frame drops in their gameplay. <laughs> it's stylistic. It's intentional. So, straight to Game Pass game? Yeah, that's a section of the conference we're in right now the straight to game plat game pass mm -hmm. uh section of the microsoft conference straight to game pass and a lot of streamer games i'm looking forward to hearing about how this game is uh actually it's greatly deeply vastly <laughs> underrated <laughs> you guys just aren't being fair there you go Hey, 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 hey. To be returning as Johnny Silverhand. I'm not. Hey, in the upcoming Why are you here? Cyberpunk 2077. <laughs> Phantom Liberty. This new adventure reunites Johnny and Vian. They should have brought Peter Idris Elba on. And introduces Probably couldn't afford it. Secret Agent Solomon Reed. 
It's just... really amazing to share with yeah, see. You, Idris. It's cool to be a part of this game with you, man. Um, as um. a player, <laughs> this is really awkward this that is, he's yeah, this... talking to Idris. Yeah, this is this is awkward in the voices. His voice is kind of off. He sounds like he's been sick. So he's like, he can't really do the yeah. silver hand voice. Mm -hmm. Keanu at gunpoint. There's definitely like a shotgun behind the camera aimed right at his dick. He saw he saw the he saw Nicolas Cage's performance a few days ago and he's just like really he's like I can't so, compete with that. Okay, so it's been like a year since I played Cyberpunk. He doesn't sound like that, right? Like I'm not crazy. No, I don't think so. I think you're right on the money. He probably was sick. <laughs> what? <laughs> Johnny, I know we set up pretty hard in the game that uh, I'm fucked and there's nothing we can do about that. Whoa. It sounds, it sounds like he had a dental procedure. <laughs> Guys, please. Hold on, hold on. Stop the show. I haven't actually finished the game. What's the catch? I need you to get to the I've been I, I I got halfway through and I realized that I needed to wait for this expansion to come out. <laughs> Please let me finish the game before you continue to market it. <laughs> Man's got a thousand and one reasons to want Myers as a hostage. Super agent. Make sure you turn on DLSS. Mm. The NUSA Overdrive enabled. DLSS on, ray trace off. <laughs> I'm ready. Get Myers out of there. Time to evac. This is like, this is uh, not really saying anything about uh, they kept us out here when dead. what Phantom Liberty is going to be, other than like it's continuing. <clears throat> They're making up reasons why V can continue to be the protagonist. <laughs> This is kind of fascinating for me thinking about doing a long form cyberpunk project. Of yeah. like, so they gave up on the uh, terminal illness thing that the game had going on. Actually, we could cure it. All we needed was a DLC to be made. I that just want to know. Like Forty bucks. Too. Is it? Is it standalone? Whoa. I don't know, guys. Guys, I'm gonna be busy. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm that sorry. so that actually that helps me a lot. So that means that the DLC will be out by the time I could actually start a cyberpunk project. Yeah. Which means that's actually really nice timing for me. If they don't delay it, if there's no delays. City Skylines two. Okay, so if you were marketing City Skylines two, they should have made Night City, just to help with the transition. <laughs> Look at all this American infa- I see parking lots. Look at all this American infrastructure. Wait, Wait is it? No. They have no business being here. What what show would they be at? Why was fucking CD Projekt Red here? Yeah, but PDX usually does their own thing. There's no- Oh yeah, there is a PDX con, but- I don't know, this feels like CS. I've been playing a lot recently. Yeah, this is CS. Look at it. What the fuck? <laughs> oh my god, yes! Sorry for blowing out people's uh, microphones there, but, or headphones there, but, holy shit, yes! Perfect fucking timing! Because I'm literally starting to write this. Oh my god, oh, I'm so excited. I'm, I'm glad to see this the is parking lots. This is exactly what I fucking needed to see, too. I'm loving the parking lots because yep. you're going to have people like, that are like, why are there parking lots? Oh in the my game? god, there's like, fucking. Fucking power line infrastructure. Did I just see that right? Hype? Question mark. The question this is, is this can is I get? This is what I sound like when I'm hyped. <laughs> can I get? Can I get past? Uh, oh, yeah, they have seasons and everything. Oh my god! Holy fuck. holy fuck! I'm so happy! I'm so fucking happy! 
<laughs> this, literally, you just got your perfect timing, and I just got my perfect timing. Yeah, talk about, like, uh, really... October 20, and we got a fucking release date, too. All right. Talk about finally fucking loading the end of our year. All right. I'm hyped, guys. <laughs> I don't think you understand. Parking lots are something that I've been wanting in City Skylines, because you can't make greasy American cities without mods. So, yeah. like, out of the box, CS2 having everything you need to oh make an American God. Dude, city I'm, is I'm cool. So fucking, I'm so fucking happy they showed that, because, like, this this literally just saved me so much time. I'm going to watch that fucking trailer, like, 30 times over the next week. Yeah, um, probably that's a, after you know, the that's start. That's probably a stream. Probably. That's probably a stream I'm going to do this week. Yeah. If you want to do, do that and play play if you, some uh, cs1 if you want to do that on your end that's fine i was going to say we're probably going to be like reviewing the starfield stuff after the direct before yeah the, i think there's a gap between the starfield direct and pc gaming show <laughs> if we're ever gonna <laughs> all right you did advertise we're gonna be watching that show so yeah yeah i, th I think i'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna do a stream where i watch that because i gotta i was gonna do another cs stream anyways oh my god i'm so happy <laughs> So that was your bucket moment. That was so, that was completely out of nowhere. There's no. I, I was like, there's no way this is CS. Back to back, Cyberpunk and C C City Skylines. And I was actually like seeing stuff that actually I'm actually excited for in that. But mostly it's just because like perfect timing for like this video that I'm working on. Yeah, only because so you're I don't doing have the to, City I don't Skylines have to video. Do much, yeah, I don't have to do much speculation now. They helped me out that's like that's a fucking gift right there for me the bucket yes of course the bucket i, I forgot i already shit myself that's why you needed the change, <laughs> change of underwear you weren't gonna yeah. remember the bucket <laughs> world premiere world premiere And half of the, half of them are Persona. It is funny that uh, Xbox is having to like pad out their pad out their conference with like Persona games and Atlas titles. Yeah, that's it's weird that they keep they like they're spacing it out too. You would think they would just do it back to back to back. Well, they're not going to have the anime block of it. <laughs> that's exactly what I was thinking. It's like oh, they don't want to do the weave block. But like, there's enough, uh, there's enough weave games that like they could have had their own showcase. Was Persona something Microsoft picked up in the acquisition in one of their acquisitions, or is it just like a partnership that they're doing with? Uh, I don't even know who makes that. Yeah, somebody more knowledgeable on that side is gonna have to say. Yeah. Because they got a strong showing here. I hope Atlas devs are okay. I hope they get to see their the family at least shit. once a month for good behavior. <laughs> Sorry, they're playing a game. Lego. I wasn't even paying attention. Okay. So, is this like uh, Castle Crashers? You know, I was thinking about that recently. It's like, why haven't we seen a, uh, a sequel to that game or something? In his tongue, he is Dovahkiin, Towerborn. <laughs> I was thinking of Timberborn. World That's a good cut too. World premiere. Yeah, why don't they get Why don't they get Master Chiefs to say it? <laughs> why don't they get uh, Idris Elba or Keanu Reeves or uh, Nicolas Cage to do it? That felt like a last minute addition to this show. Bioshock Infinite 2? Yeah, I was going to say, this is the Bioshock part of the show. This city is a miracle of progress. A finely tuned, delicately balanced machine. But it, only it is, it's a uh, steampunk singularity.
No, seriously. Bioshock Infinite 2? God, please, not the multiverse. <laughs> Spare us the multiverse. Um, this is kind of like an arcane game. Yeah. With its, with its like, uh, its level ideas, but I feel like it, this is something that's not going to work out. But it's also very Singularity-esque. This is literally Bioshock Infinite. And there's Songbird. Very... Uh, see, I, I'm thinking Singularity is the better cut. Singularity had a lot of... You change an event and then, like, this whole area is completely different. Thank you all for joining us. Today is a special hey, Phil. Day for me and the team. I'm excited to see. A Are you feeling better after that uh, showing on Kind of Funny's podcast? That's pretty. That was pretty rough to watch. I'm not gonna lie. You looked like you were about to cry. I know Redfall was a disaster, but <laughs> anybody who really holds that against you guys don't really understand is he, that, that. Is he wearing a Hexen shirt? I thought it was a Diablo shirt. And we are thrilled at how Avowed is shaping up for release next year from the RPG Masters at Obsidian. Oh, I guess this is the end of the show Avowed, already. He sounds sad. He sounds defeated. An all new Microsoft Flight Simulator. How all new Microsoft Flight Sim. 2024. Later this month, he hasn't slept since Redfall came out. Forward to Elder Scrolls Online Necrom and Sea of Thieves Monkey Island. As we look to holiday, we will launch Starfield. I'm gonna be honest. Motorsport. This is probably the best conference so far, and we haven't even seen the Starfield stuff. And PC. Is it though? They at least, they, I think so. They at least brought some games here. Games today, from our creative partners, like Star Wars Outlaws from Ubisoft Massive, in collaboration. I didn't give. Ubisoft. I didn't give that a single thought. There's a Star Wars game coming out of Ubisoft. Yeah, didn't EA lose the? Uh, Use the license? I know they had a I know they had a 10 year license. So Dis so Disney's actually taking over that? I'd also like to congratulate Or they're just going to See, I assumed I think Disney was going to start their own studio and just keep it in house after that, right? See, I think Chat's right. You're just you just like this because it had City Skylines. and game creators first. No, no, we had Fable and choose to play on Xbox. PC, I mean, I'm just like looking at the titles themselves. They're, they're at least here. When it comes to our consoles, we have heard your feedback on two fronts. First, we have significantly increased our supply of Xbox Series X, making it easier for fans to find globally. <laughs> Second, we know you've wanted. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> And I'm excited. What is literally, I was literally just thinking, like, oh, you're actually going to be able to buy it now? Which, from what I've heard, it's not even that difficult to find. They have it, The PS5 is supposed to be the hard one to get still. Watching the chat on Bethesda Softworks channel live stream is hilarious. Yeah, I can only imagine. 350 bucks? That's not bad. Yeah. That's actually really good given just, the inflation. Yeah. Just in time, too, for uh, Starfield. For. Prepare for the most I'm surprised they didn't advertise, like, free two months of uh, blob, you know... Built. So uh, sit tight, game pass we're supposed starfield to they're supposed to announce like a starfield controller that's the rumor just a controller i would imagine they'd have a whole fucking console with how much how much hope they have to pin on this thing 
It's all on you, Todd. I hope we open up with Todd. Praise Todd. We need you. Badly. Microsoft needs you. You need to carry the showcase. Starfield theme if, music playing. If my theory is correct that this is going to be the last like major game he works on, this might be the last time we see him do like an E3. I'm sorry, I, I, um, E3 is dead. Uh, a summer Game Fest. Summer Summer Game Fest. Or is Summer Game Fest just the thing that Jeff hosts, or? Yeah, that's what's so confusing about this whole thing. Woo! Like, Todd, give it up for Todd. Yeah. Been so lucky over the decades to make. All right, time to turn up the volume a bit. And that's thanks to all of you from the Elder Scrolls to Fallout. We love creating these worlds and from playing Skyrim them to Fallout just 4. as much as you do. And throughout all that time, <laughs> we'd often talk about and dream up the space game. He looks younger. He looks more enthusiastic. Being who you want to be yeah. And exploring Todd Howard looks happy to talk about his game. Space, he probably took, yeah. Where you could he probably took like a sabbatical or, or something do. for a couple weeks that leading up to this. Starfield. Obviously, we've come a long way since then with the games we've Another West Virginia trip. <laughs> oh, that's the closest they came to acknowledging 76. <laughs> they were showing all the games they made and then like quickly cut as soon as it got to 76. Well, what we have... Of what we, think we have the Atlantic City special. thing, so 76 yeah. is Let's back. It's back, baby. Starfield is our first new universe in over 25 years. All right, this part's years, a different recording session. Bethesda RPG through and through. What does that mean, Where though? You, you change it every world, time. And you get that feeling of unlimited Okay, so I like the planet sizes in the atmosphere. It's not just one world. I feel like worlds. I feel like they, uh, the uh those are the right go, size. It's not ours. It's yeah. not accurate, but it's a good size for a skybox. It's and not it outer worlds now, where it's too big. Yeah. We have the technology to create it. From the rocks at your feet. I like the, the aesthetics the a lot more than outer worlds and no man's sky. The people and creatures that live in these worlds. All right, yeah, they that definitely upgraded backdrop. like that the uh, actually distance LODs and everything. Yes, you can visit it too. Yes, you can visit that moon. We realistically simulate <laughs> the galaxy around you. Our next generation lighting model uses <clears throat> real-time global illumination to light the world based on the type of star and the makeup of the planet's atmosphere. We also have an all-new animation good. system. And of course, you can play it in third person. And you can play it in first person. We love exploration and rewarding it, but you do explore differently this, in this, this game, given its eight, scale. Four. They're still doing the survey, the No Man's Sky style surveys. That usually involves you've landed in. You can Naturally. collect resources. Do a mission and maybe even stumble upon something unexpected. All right, Raiders. That was some crazy auto aim there. That laser noise isn't going to get annoying. Well, it's like mining in Skyrim. Whoa, what the fuck did that body just do? They have this thing where, like, you shoot the their backpack, like, jetpack. No, it was before that. Oh. The dude just, like, we springboarded. We do stuff and all of the items allowing you to pick everything up. Over the railing. You view all that in your data menu. This is the hub for everything you're doing. All right, we'll have to break doing, this down your later your on. Ship, your missions, and your inventory. So they're still doing, we like, the... A ton of detail yeah, in the D-pad menu. From all of your weapons to spacesuits, to food. We just obsess over the details and food. We obsess over food. Real when steak? When done exploring, you can walk back or fast travel to your ship. We have companions and crew you can take with you. I left Vosco here back at my ship. Welcome back, Captain Howard. And he can even say your name. Let's head out. Ah, 
Captain, Todd's fuck work. me. Yeah. <laughs> what are the ones that Emil insisted? <laughs> to invoke they the do. romance of the golden age of early space flight. And we've been referring to this approach as NASA punk. Oh, they got this some means a design crazy language where the tech is advanced. Stereo yet effect still going on with this song. Relatable. For us, it's, it's that yeah. contrast. That's where the visual interest is. Obviously, the NASA, which is the rigid, hard, function over style. And then punk, which is all about style. You can see that visual style coming through in your ship. Your ship is your home for you and your crew. And like many of the spaces in our game, it has a slightly retro and analog touch, a bit of lo-fi rather than sci-fi, where everything is well used, worn, and lived in. All righty, what's the plan, Captain? This is your star map. It starts with the planet you're currently on. You can see all of its info and resources. You can choose a landing spot or fast travel to known locations. Radioactive water. Backing out further, you can view all the planets in the system. Obviously, the game is big, and it's here you can see planets that have key locations, missions, or life on them, versus the many planets that are barren but resource heavy. Zoom out even further to see all the systems in this part of the galaxy. Here, you can plot a course to ones that are light years away. This uses your ship's grav drive to fold space and jump to these systems. And you will need to upgrade your ship and skills Man. if you want to jump to the most um, distant ones. For, as somebody for who's now, played we'll Elite Dangerous, this star map looks like city I'm going to get New lost Atlantis. in it very easily. Yeah, just because it's a, it's a 3D star map. Yeah. I like... So they're kind of like hinting at there will be higher level areas. Because you'll need like a higher level star drive to get to them. Yeah. Welcome to UC Space. <clears throat> Maintain your current course while we scan your ship's cargo. I hope that was real time. I hope they didn't cut out the loading yeah, screen. Yeah, they, def they definitely cut out you a loading screen. <laughs> Listen, I'm installing this thing on a PCIe 4.0 SSD. The chat of the official streams are console wars is embarrassing. Console wars are embarrassing. As soon as you land in a city like New Atlantis, your eyes are guided upwards to just these boundless, vast buildings. It's the biggest city we've ever made, not just in size. Biggest but also city in ever made. Okay. Art, crowds, and quests. So the main focus when we're designing a city is obviously what hey, Brian. supports the story. We try and tell as many small stories as possible. This is a colony war memorial. It's a few moments of gameplay that make the space feel like it's full of real. And you're gonna hear all those stories the moment you lives. walk into the yeah. city. <laughs> if you really stop and think. No, man, it'll be like but three or four entrances entrances to the city to unlock everything. Constellation begins. And you're gonna hear it so often that you're gonna memorize all of them. Foolish old woman. Well, see, there's well, thousands the of worlds, but there's like. We have a lot three main cities the they've advertised, so I'm thinking this city's sort of the cities at least have to be big group. enough. Most yeah. people don't even know they exist anymore. They're the How does last that work? true explorers in the galaxy, and they're trying to find the answers to some of humanity's biggest questions. The artifacts are so different, so alien, and I'm certain one of them reached out and spoke to you. Ugh. This main, I am so the uninterested artifact. in this main story. If you could place it on the table here. Oh my god. Look at how it's coming together. That means there's a set built by an intelligence outside the settled systems. It's definitely an eclectic cast of characters. You've got Sarah Morgan, the ex-soldier <laughs> yes. in adventure, now Constellation's leader. Mateo, the theologian who believes that there's definitely something else out there. Noel the gifted scientist and Sarah Morgan's protege, and Walter, a very successful businessman in the settled systems and Constellation's financier. Anything goes as long as you have the money. There's also Vlad, the ex-pirate, Sam Coe, the former space cowboy, and Barrett. You know what I hate about these pirates? Completely resistant to my otherwise irresistible charm. The journey you take with Constellation is just hey, the ML. first of many you'll embark on. The Settled Systems is home to all kinds of different stories, people, and adventures for you to uncover.
The United Colonies You'd be surprised how much of this Atlantis, isn't new. The first major yeah. human settlement like we're getting, in space. We're getting like details for stuff that we the can't possibly really know about until we play the game because it's like, legacy of humanity. like we're learning they character names. The true children of Earth. You ever think of joining up with the Vanguard? Help the United Colonies even get your UC citizenship? New Atlantis isn't the only city within the United Colonies. The city of Sidonia on Mars to this day serves as the largest mining facility for the United Colonies. Beyond the United Colonies flawed. reach, you might find yourself Followed in a animation. much more wild and independent coalition of star systems. This is Freestar Collective Space. So this place is uh, Iconoclast Central from Outer Worlds. Is a city. So I was reviewing the Iconoclast the stuff Inn and is an um, city fixture. like the stuff with them dealing with like dinosaurs and stuff is like straight up copied from the Iconoclast story. Neon started out as and then Neon looks like the Groundbreaker. Now known like this is the Groundbreaker. As a pleasure city where almost anything goes. <laughs> If you've got morality issues, this definitely isn't the job for you. They completely ripped off the expanse. They've ripped off a lot of things with this game. I keep saying, this is a game where they cannot help but show their... Uh... That guy's character model did not look good. Ooh, yeah. Outside, Start, the starting to see like the uh, the background NPCs, systems to the lower yeah. detail <laughs> people. These areas are also home to the most hostile factions in the galaxy. The great serpent hungers. All heathens shall be made dust in time. A new face. This is the face of a brave runner here to challenge the Red Mile. They think. The galaxy so what is this is like? Dawnstar? They are wrong. It belongs oh, to the these are the fleet. seats of like it the smaller factions. These are your side quest lines. So there was like the religious factions and like the bandits. Than we ever have before. It's all there, waiting for you. A slice of humanity's future. So is it like you have three main cities and then like three or four smaller settlements to related that? to the uh, sub factions? Sounds like Throughout it to me. The galaxy, there are so many things to see and stories to experience. But, but can you fuck the robot? Story is the one that you tell. I'm the type of can I go to those settlements but have like absolutely really nothing related to their factions the and stuff not automatically trigger? One of the biggest overhauls was done like if I'm not going to play at like we side with the Crimson Cat or Crimson Raiders or whatever the Crimson Cringe. Can I still visit their characters? their settlements and like system do business with the them and NPCs you're gonna see or is it going to just automatically so put a quest in my log always is a character you could make uh oh i need my diaper i actually do have to use the restroom but it's the starfield i do too yeah whoops hey, come on come on okay i do have my bucket easy you were out cold uh no physical damage mentally the jury's still out you know who you are new recruit for argos extractors Ring any bells? Hmm. Must be some front of load damage. Is this, is this character creation? Yeah. Okay. So that's like the start of the game. Yeah. You start your character. I can't believe they say that my character starts employed. Right. This is bullshit. I don't want to have a job. <laughs> your journey from there can be as detailed or as quick as you want it to be. This new system has more to offer than ever before. It's also looks pretty bad. Generations just we ever had. We let the Look at that facial hair. To make whatever yeah. they want. With the it's, various facial morphs you can blend together. That is so bad looking. Makeup, blemishes, Why would you show it off? Piercings, teeth settings. Oof. It's a lot, but I think it's the most fun to use. Oh, when oh you get no. Into the character creation is Better. more than just how you look. This is also where you start to decide who you want to be. That's where backgrounds it's just, come it's in. Just the, it's just the lighting, you know? Backgrounds give you a bit of backstory. Another game with, with that's with gonna have skills. terrible character creation. From chef to dusty, you know the crew still has a bedding. Well, you know it's, a, it's at least on brand for Bethesda, you know. Up here. What's great about backgrounds is you never know when yours is gonna come in handy. You could be in the middle Gourmet. of a fancy restaurant talking to some guy, and suddenly you learn he needs a beast hunter to help track down a monster. Fine, 
I probably should stick to professionals anyway, given what happened the last time. We're also giving you the option to customize your build even further by letting you pick up to three traits. Traits are completely optional, and they come with their own advantages and disadvantages. You could choose to meet your biggest fan. Oh, he's here. Oh, no. Really, really you? Guys, memes. And give oh you gifts God. if you're willing to put up with this constant commentary. I can't believe I get to stand near you, breathing the same air. I've got to have every molecule. Trying too hard. I absolutely My agree. Is kid stuff. You have to pay some like it's funny, but, parents, but they're it's funny because it's it was really overdone in Oblivion. Them. Honey, we got ourselves a visitor. Oh my god. It would have been funny if it was just like an Easter egg that I you could come across. The same religion as Not something that is from the beginning of the game. Yeah. And There's another great one that they're putting it in their fucking showcase. Yeah. Something you could find would be cool. No matter yeah. what you choose, there will be plenty of ways for you to tell your story. And if you want to remove a trait, there are ways to do that too. So you know what I'm saying with the lack of uh for the, eyes. the lack Off of commitment. To another adventure. Oh my god, he's still here with we'll us. Let you discover that on your own. Yeah, yeah but they referenced the killing the adoring yeah, fan, but they couldn't yeah. even like find a spot where it was like <laughs> the rock over the cliff. <laughs> Like people do it at a specific place in Oblivion for yeah. a reason. Yeah, perfect character. That's when your journey can really begin. We took what we loved about skills and perks from our oh, previous game. What is this track and on? Put them together to create an all-new skill system. Each time you level up, you get a skill point, which can be used to unlock or rank up skills. So it looks like it's a flat XP system, like Fallout. Ranks are unlocked by completing challenges associated with that skill. Challenges become increasingly difficult. All right, we're gonna have to ranks. Mm -hmm. micro this later. With our five different skill trees and four ranks per skill. There's a lot to choose from. I like the Xeno sociology skill because it lets you mind control aliens. Boost pack out of the gate. I'm boost pack and everywhere. Oh, it's like that shout. Yeah, so there's your illusion spell to con like No, it's the it's the Bosmer racial like ability. Yeah. Punch my way through combat. I wonder if it's gonna be worthless after like level fifteen. Look, hand to hand. Oh my god, what? Invest in the Guys, we listen. I'm very much a stealth player. So I'm out there pickpocketing everyone. My favorite part about stealth being stealthy. Archer slowly creeping through vents like you're in a movie giant man-sized vents on very deus ex whenever possible <laughs> i like to talk my way through situations this area's off limits fine i'll issue you an access card i'm more of a run and gun player i like doing a death from above thing where i boost pack over guys and i throw landmines at them I'm the type of player where I just don't want to leave my base, you know? I just want to build my house. Mm. I like blowing stuff up. I like my buying things on the Creation here. Club. <laughs> it's not a jetpack, guys. It's a boost pack. Yeah. Exploration is a key aspect of all our games. In Starfield, there are full star systems with new life, resources, and adventures. Sky boxes do look good, though. Our team worked hard to strike a balance between. Uh, uh, oh, what's that? The world in a Bethesda game is the best part. From NASA and a <laughs> of other sources to help us make the world feel believable. NASA has data on alien From worlds with life on it. Planetary atmospheres to the way we place biomes mm -hmm. based on the planet's distance it's from called the sun. Mars. Oh. Once we created a grounded world, we could start looking at all the things that make that world fun. When you leave a planet and head into space, grounded world and it shows that completely unrealistic <laughs> <laughs> creature. Meetings with interesting <laughs> strangers, dog fighting in space. And exploring yeah like you have ships. you have this um alien design that's like clashing with the world designers yeah per usual it's all out there 
ultimately, it's about rewarding your curiosity. Because whether it's on the surface of a planet... I don't know how this is reminding you of the Cyberpunk the gameplay trailer. Space, they actually played the game. You never know what you'll find. In the Cyberpunk trailer. Like, it was 45 minutes of Act 1. Space exploration is possible thanks to your ship. Your ship is almost like having another. So there's going to be a heavy like home, size limitation based own. on landing pad sizes. I think you'll be blown away by the amount of stuff you can do. You can buy a ship. I'm sure you can find something you like. Customize and upgrade that ship, and hire a crew to keep it up and running. And it all starts in spaceports. I'm kind of interested in, like, is the crew... Every spaceport has like, there's got to be a preset you characters. Sell, your Moira Browns ships. and what have you. Anything I can help you with? But then... Maybe you I feel like they, they're going to have to have crew members that are just, like, random NPCs. Then you might round out your ship roster with a hulking space freighter to run cargo missions. Or even do a little smuggling. So you can have multiple now, ships? Though, we're going to take our starting ship, the Frontier, and make some changes. You can customize and upgrade everything you see here. And you have two ways to do that. You can quickly upgrade individual systems like your weapons or shields, or you can deep dive and enter the shipbuilder mode. Here you can change anything from the systems to the look and layout. Adding a new habitat module can give you more room for crew. Adding cowling can change your ship's overall silhouette. An improved grav drive allows for longer distance space jumps. I'm just changing you the can even fully too. customize your paint job. Is that, was that just a fancy way of saying just want. change the The parts change you the way choose it looks. to build with don't the just visuals, affect your ship's yeah. stats. They'll also affect what you can do inside your ship. Because you're not going to be you flying in You can have modules for crafting or for storing and displaying your weapons. Starfield's in-game ship manufacturers bring their own look and feel to every piece of your ship. From living quarters to cargo holds mess halls and control rooms i mean i guess it's nice that you can have a custom interior mm -hmm. i just i'm just thinking of like the horrible like uh unfun ship that i'm gonna have because it's gonna be ship. super optimized so creativity, <laughs> your ship can look like almost anything like my house in fallout 76 that was yeah. literally just uh, one of my cube. favorite ways of customizing ships yeah it's just is, a cube uh, with an engine attached to it i make them look like animals <laughs> The HMS Platypus, as I called it. You almost have to get let the player have multiple We're ships because there's going to be. Yeah. I'm going to have like my super functional done, ship. Spiders. That's just super mechs. optimized, and then there's going to be like so the really ship that I actually try your to make it look is. good, and then it's not. And while you can build your home among the stars the way you want to, you're probably not the only person who will call your ship home. Sounds like a you problem. What do you mean? Ready to lift off when you are, Captain. Engines ready. The Frontier is fueled and ready, Captain. Some of the members of Constellation can join you on your journey. Can Houston I stock my ship with nothing crew, but the knockoff enclave people? We'll be a lead together. companion designer. Or do I have to have an eclectic mix of uh, crew Each members? Each companion comes with their own valuable skills. That's what he's saying. And outposts, Let him talk. As well as unique quest lines. Eventually, some friendships might blossom into romance. I don't know that I've ever really loved no. anyone. No. Except no. No. And if you're looking no. for a little extra help on your ship, you can always hire additional crew at spaceports. Got any room on your ship for someone like me? You'll also meet potential crew members <laughs> out in the world. Still think there might be a I'm gonna I'm gonna uh I'm gonna romance characters and then kick them off my crew as soon as they like start to come onto me. <laughs> and just like companions, most crew members can lend a hand in the field. Take Bosco for instance. He's designed around the, the core basics of a NASA machine. Please avoid getting shot. You might die. Yeah, you're you're not coming That's on the, the crew. I'm not fucking bringing so a goddamn assaultron on this ship. With the this unfunny. Feel more human -like I talk a like a robot. A shame. Exploration Isn't it ironic? I'll go Using back to what I said the other day, where we have we already have AI field. voices that can You'll sound like they're out of breath. The ship of your yeah. Dreams. 
And now, it's a joke that hasn't been funny in years. No, it's not even Claptrap. It's just that, like, um... One of my favorite followers in Fallout 4 was, um, the synth hunter that you get if you side with the Institute. Yeah. The, the Morpheus-looking guy. Because, like, he was just... Just a normal what like that. That's what that's what I would want a robot spaceship. companion to be like. Telling you that you can do pretty much anything, and that is really cool for us as developers. Can I fly in atmosphere? Should be exciting and dangerous. Can I and land on the planet from space? Like you're in complete control every step of the way. Stop it! <laughs> Stop asking questions. We've extended that sense You mean the you mean having preset combat. animations it's when I select where I want to travel to? To fire your weapons. Yeah. That you're making look like I'm actually pressing it's buttons. A complex dance. Which is fine. Like I don't even have a big problem with that. Just don't system. tell me that I can do whatever I want with it, Boosting and then the two things that I want to do, I can't faster. do. Pips. We got pips, good boys. Yeah, FTL. You can make a jump. So, I mean, that's just going to be another thing where it's like... Moving your power to your weapons and interdiction. It's detected. It's, it's going to be tedious. Because it's like, oh, I'm going into combat? Okay. Like, you're going to learn the little routine to switch it over. And then there's probably going to be a mod that auto-does it for you with, like, presets. Just because, like, <laughs> it'll be tedious having to switch engines to weapons, like, six million times a playthrough. I'm really surprised how many pips they got and stuff. So, Elite Dangerous has the same system, but it's four... Four like uh, categories, and each category has four pips, I think. Mm -hmm. So it's like you got six here, and it well, seems okay, to so go it's up like... to like ten or twelve. Well, okay, so like what I'm trying to communicate here is you got the grab drive, right? The only time you're going to want to power up the grab drive is when you're going to be traveling between systems. Yeah. So having a mechanic where you have to power manually power down the things and then go over and power it up. You're going to be doing that so often that it's going to get tedious. Also take yeah, so Elite Dangerous, like, like with the enemy vessel that that one's ship. jump drive was tied to your main thrusters and stuff. So it's like the, the consideration became like you're getting attacked and you got to jump out of there. Do you focus on giving your engines more power or do you focus on giving your shields more power? Like, that was the consideration. And, of an enemy ship, I, don't know, be I don't quick. believe for a second that... It's going to be very mechanically interesting. Any I don't think so. Either. Also, Which dynamic dungeons with uh, boarding ships. Just like when you're planet side, there are plenty of sights to see and stops to make on the way to your next adventure. Like these massive star yards. Walk the halls, talk to the crew. Guys, it has to be tedious so it's realistic. You're fucking stupid if you think that. Like, literally, the way you solve the problem is to just have presets, because people are going to have presets anyways. gigantic battleship, like the UC Vigilance. Or rub elbows with the galaxy's wealthy elite on a cruise ship fit for the stars. The vault ship? There are plenty of personal encounters to be had as well. Why does Bethesda <laughs> always put, like, balloons to trade, swap info, in that type of environment? Maybe even commit an act of piracy. Let's do this. When I'm playing, I generally go crazy. Um, I definitely go, like, the more piracy routes. Um, I want to take over ships. Do you think they drew like straws ships, like, to find out who had to, who had to shield I piracy? All the sandwiches <laughs> and put them Who's going to be the murder hobo? Specifically mm -hmm. for sandwiches. I don't want to play the hero, um, but I want to go out and just start taking things from people. I can't wait. Possible. I can't confirmed. wait. They don't rot. Some strangers <laughs> might be looking for a little human connection. Finally confirmed. <laughs> Hello, stranger. I just finished cooking up some food. If you want to come on over, just pop on by. Some of the best moments are the ones... Can I airlock myself? Own. Like, just launch myself out of my own airlock? The thing Bethesda, I please. About Starfield ...is that it is a Bethesda game through and through. It's really about going to strange new places, meeting... I don't buy for a second that she was dropping sandwiches on her ship. Then, realizing two hours later... Because, like, something will happen and then they'll just explode all around your ship. Yeah. <laughs> we thought we were the only ones to leave Earth. That DNA is Wait. so present here. It's in our random so the galaxy is going to be full of humans. Life. There's going to be a random event where you run into somebody who thinks that they, they're the only ones who left Earth. There are over a okay, that sounds fucking stupid. So the random events are going to suck, probably. Given the, if that's what they're showing off. 
breaking ground now now exploring every why would they show off that and not like a better random event we want you to feel hopeful that's because that's the cream sense of awe and wonder and sometimes a little fear we're giving you a massive playground and a ton of toys so this is saying less than the last one can you believe that they sh yeah, they showed a lot in the last one. That's kind of the problem. Hey, everybody, we were showing you so much stuff. Hey, Todd. We thought we'd just take Here's a little the controller. break and show you something a, a little bit or different. Or the watch. You know, we put so much detail into our game worlds, and we love the opportunity to bring that into the real world with our collector's editions. And yep. for this game... Uh, so the the part that Todd does, is, is going to talk about is the fucking watch. selling the watch. Um, this is the watch that you actually get in the game. That Guys, part of your HUD where it's the compass. And buy the, the watch. Information. It connects to your phone to give you notifications and other information. And we've also designed this really cool case that it comes so with. So uh, it's not it's even like a smart, smart watch. watch. We really took as much care oh, it's not a smart case watch. Well, I mean, Our doesn't a smart watch need, game, need to need to be able to have a SIM card in it? Inspired by the cases of the so. astronauts used during the Apollo era. I think it's kind of disingenuous to say it's a smartwatch and that not have like SIM card mechanism. functionality. Authentic, heavy, comes with a constellation patch, NATO strap, and the overall functionality and believability of the Listen, we're not gonna we're, we're not gonna repeat a uh, bad gate from oh, hey, 76. You'll find it very useful out there, and it even tells the time. We actually have something else. Now that we're part of Xbox. This we get is the to controller. Work with the amazing people on the Xbox hardware team, and together we have created this custom limited edition Starfield controller. It's awesome. It is now, you know, our favorite controller. We love this because it's inspired that by the Astro so controls of the spaceship. The watch that, looks good, but the yeah, controller is ugly. Yeah. Custom oh, headset man. with Xbox. Uh. And this is a perfect pairing with that controller. Oh, they they look so awkward shilling it too. <laughs> they looked enthusiastic about the watch because yeah because it's actually so, kind of cool well and the watch has been a thing for a long time so yeah. uh for people and who it's don't like know something in their game we've known about this stupid watch that they're making for like four years or something something ridiculous like that so this is part of your 30 minute showcase 30 minutes of limited time that they can give us information yeah <laughs> it's wasted on a controller and a headset Uh, thank God they showed CS2. Now, see, the the watch looked good. I'm going to stand by that, that take, that the watch actually looks very well designed. In every one of our games, we always put so much care into all those hey, little details that breathe life into our worlds. But Starfield isn't just a Bethesda Game Studios world. It's a Bethesda Game Studios galaxy. So why go this big with Starfield? Because we want to give you freedom. They did confirm photo modes level. in this, right? I think so. Freedom to experience. Yeah, I, rem I remember us getting that planets, somewhere. And the quiet ones. Scanning a planet before you land is a great way to get a sneak peek at the available resources you can use for crafting, building, and customizing. Another thing that would probably cool be tedious. The whole system that we yeah. we generate the planet itself as a procedural content. Source Mass Effect Two. Probe, content itself probe comes launched. As the player explore. <sighs> Probing Uranus. Our system builds the planet as the player <laughs> approaches it. We stitch together block of terrain. After that, we have the system that adds interested locations for the player to explore, creatures to encounter. Or so I mean, Procgen planets, and then. It like puts down blueprints of uh, areas. Environmental storytelling that the best is not. I can't wait for modders. To uh yes, that dude. That's the that's the meme. Environmental storytelling, and then it's just a skeleton. <laughs> and it's it. Where's the where's the note that's sitting next to it that has the story? Oh no, it's it's the scorch. Ah. <laughs> The Crimson Fleet. My God, the Crimson Cringe. <laughs> Literally, No Man's Sky, but Bethesda. That's kind of what they explained their system as being. Yeah. Okay, so already I'm thinking this jetpack kill animation is tedious. Where like he goes flying up. 
This oh, looks. Punchy was able to do it. Oh wait, wait. Let's see. Are we gonna? We're gonna have to. We're gonna have they to check it. later if they uh, cut it. <laughs> the shotgun reload. They don't want to see that it's they're still using you. rifle How rounds. You want to interact with each planet. Whether you want to explore and see what you can find. Surely they fixed that. People made fun of them. So much fun of them for that. That that was probably one of the first things they fixed. They got all right. Off this. The so mod predictions. Uh, so With there'll the be presets scanner, on the pips on the ship, and there will there will be a mod that removes the laser sound, on the <laughs> on that cutter. Skills, yeah. This, so those are day one mods. Oh, it's creatures and plants. Kurt. It's Kurt. You can build an outpost and produce resources from those plants and animals. It really is crazy how many, like, uh, Bethesda the are still there. For fully Scan the planet. Yeah, like, why the fuck would you leave? <laughs> Have you seen other studios? Yeah. When we were concepting these creatures, we really wanted to think of them as natural to the environment. We didn't want alien monsters. We wanted native wildlife. Something you've never seen before. When it comes to All our right. exteriors, when the sun moves, go ahead and uh, timestamp that for your video. The <laughs> yeah. Our biggest goal for lighting with Star Yeah, there's gonna have to be a note pass on this stuff. Oh to yeah. Use lighting and color Fallout Four? I'm pretty sure that's a shot in a Fallout Four trailer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sheep. No, glowing sea. Glowing sea. Ash sheep's 76. Yeah. I mean, like we've been saying, the world looks nice. Yeah. That's why I asked about photo mode. This this does look like a wall, uh, desktop wallpaper generator. Yeah. <laughs> like this nice aesthetics to the world. This is a this is definitely a game where I'm gonna be walking around a lot. <laughs> yeah. I'll slow walk. All right. Um, find find some scenic planet noticed. to land on and then just take um, notes. No vehicle on the After planet. After some exploring, well, of you course. can find a spot to set up a base camp. It's like oh wait, no horse or something. Can be built almost anywhere on any I'd be surprised if there wasn't like an ATV or a speeder or something. Maybe a DLC. Something. You can even live in them. They had to cut it. No, it, I, the horses. I think horses they barely made the cut during Skyrim. I think they wanted to disincentivize people like driving around planets. So no man's sky didn't have ground vehicles at launch. Mm -hmm. That had to come with the DLC. You mean like seventy six? Parts of the outpost and placing those larger halves. So that way you can really see. This is going to be seventy six's good contribution to the series. Is outpost building. Decorate and fine tune things much easier. But I don't think they want to have people like running around the planet. There's probably um, some kind of like memory issue. Memory issue, or they just don't want you to like really see the seams of the proc gen. Yeah, the, so they so don't like, they don't want you running around. Yeah, they only they only want you to like travel within like a half hour walking distance. There will of, be like, that guy. There will be a guy who twitch streams himself trying to like circumnavigate the planet. Uh, yeah. And research yeah, yeah. Stations in your outpost to utilize any and the game's like just gonna find, like his save have. is gonna get corrupted. Yeah. And like at the eighty percent mark. Them to your style. Different weapon sites and scopes. Larger Man, I'm surprised they didn't show more about the uh, grips sediment barrels. building. Different ammunition like explosive. And they must not have more to show. Like, yeah. This is the same state it was before. All you stealth yep. players out there will surely. Which is basically. Suppressor. Fallout oh, 76 slash Fallout we're, we're really to the point that we're marketing suppressors. Also choose to go hands -on with melee weapons. Are there going to be any gameplay considerations, or is it still going to be like the superior option? Between, like, what's realistic, what's sim, and what's Hollywood. And I think we sort of err on the side of like, what's fun for the player? No, you don't. With Starfield, err on the side of Hollywood. Got ya. Gotcha. Got it's more dynamic. Fuck. The animations are more fluid. It just feels great. We probably have more. It seems a little more, more dynamic. <laughs> yeah. I want to say any it, other it looks better before. than what we saw. A lot of variety. Which is ironic because they're showing a lot Upgraded less gear gear combat many to pick in this, in this demo. In they really listen to that feedback. Gravity is different for each planet. And boost packs are excellent at getting around. I think that that could be cool if the if the gravity is and actually different and the boost packs are like combat. if the boost packs more effective on low gravity planets. Sometimes yeah. You even feel like you're flying. Or like gravity affects ballistic weapons. So yeah. 
Well, that it, might be a. There are a, tracers. A, I have to wonder if their Raycast guns are actually like. Firing a ballistic yeah. weapon in zero G will actually push you backwards. Okay, see, somebody in chat was oh, asking about that. Yeah, there you go. Experience. We also have mag weapons. These are high-powered electromagnetic and right. ballistic arrays. Each barrel has its a own target. Big improvements, for sure. Serious damage. 30 FPS feels bad. Is it? See, these cryo mines seem you overpowered. Get up close and personal with your own two fists. <laughs> Or you like more compact weapons like pistols and submachine guns. Well, you know what? Mines have Reading mines have suffered in every bigger. Bethesda game so far. I'm down with one of their games having it stupidly OP. Yeah, just explosives heavy. <laughs> These gun designs look, look cool. Eh, it's a bit of a mixed bag. Some of them look cool. Some of them look trash. Like, that's trash. Yeah. I don't like that. Yes, some of them are just really over designed. I don't like the space double barrel. I think that's stupid. Yeah. I mean, I'm glad, I'm happy to see some variety here. It's not gonna be like Fallout 4, it seems. I'm just trying to like mentally picture how many playthroughs is gonna, I'm gonna need to do to do a well-rounded kind of review. Cause you gotta do like a melee run, stealth run. Yeah. Probably like a shotgun run. Or like, is there gonna be some kind of like respec system where like, the, cause there's no commitment. I can just switch everything up. Mm, maybe. Do it all, do it all in like, so really all the runs are going to be is just like seeing the exclusive stuff. Or maybe like the leveling system just works that you can spec into something else by the time you finish something. Oh no. No! <gasps> Dragonborn! <laughs> Thanks what? again for being with us today. We are just Talk so about dropping a bombshell. Oh yeah, by the way, we put dragon shouts in Starfield. There's probably a lot to take in. There's a lot to the game. There's more than we could show here. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, we're always sharing no. these unique special moments that only a game like this can bring. Oh my god. You guys you guys, space, you guys I can play a space mage. I was literally <laughs> mentally preparing to say, you know, this was all right. <laughs> All of them putting something special of themselves. And then they're like, it. "Nope, you're space dragonborn." So let's hear some of their favorite moments. <laughs> God. I love the way that. Well, thank you for giving us uh, some good jokes with that one. To create some of the most beautiful sunsets and sunrises we've ever had in any of our games. I love the creatures, the exploration. Every biome is different. The word that comes to mind is vast. I like to use our photo mode to take rock star photos. I just cool. love that constant feel of discovery. There's your photo mode. Wow, I can't believe that nice. there's more here. I'm most excited about our outpost building systems. My favorite part is every time you step out on a planet, it's a unique experience. You spend all this time building your ship and you see it on the landing pad. So there's These some tedious red flags to this it's game, the but there's some cool looking stuff that I'm kind of excited to see. About seeing a tower over in I'm honestly going, looking more forward to this than I was here. like Fallout. I think I can make that jump. My favorite part is yeah. biomes, spaceships, Definitely. audio design, planets, the day-night cycle. Those details matter to me. Diplomacy, exploration, freedom, the ending, Vesco. Obviously. I love the robot so much. The incredible amount of worlds we created. Sniper rifles, come on. Lever action, rocket launcher, brain sprout. What? I laugh, but some people might find creepy. I don't know. I know it's all right, Ben. The thing that I enjoy most about yeah, the, I saw the ending. is the freedom to be who you the want beach to episode. be, do what you want to do. It's what you've come to expect from a Bethesda title. But on a much My favorite scale. part is when the game is over. <laughs> the ending. On behalf my of favorite all was of us, uh we can't wait for you to They just said day night cycle. What a weird thing moments. to say that's your favorite <laughs> aspect. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> they just took they just took that out of context. He was actually talking about the day night cycle. Yeah. So, spliced it in there. Um, you know, this has been a big showcase. I'll admit, I'll admit at least that. I think that this, this did a lot for, um, 
easing some feelings about the game that I had from the yeah. previous marketing stuff. Yeah. Oh, the, the combat. There you go. Your pre-order stuff. <laughs> the combat. Um, Premium edition footage. skin pack. Uh, I kind of. I'm kind of tempted to get like the art book. It's probably worth it, honestly. How much do they have prices on these? They're gonna have to reveal the prices soon, because you know. Yeah. All right, this is their probably their roundup. I'm gonna use the restroom. Yeah, I so, gotta. Tell me if anything come back. interesting happens. Yep. Yeah, that fable thing still has me confused. It looks like they're doing something completely different with it. Ah. Uh. Oh, that was a show, all right. I still stand by that this is the best showcase. Not a single mention of Halo. True! <laughs> all right, I forgot. There were rumors that Halo Infinite would be getting something here. As a content creator covering these games, this show is good for me. If I was a, just a regular player, um, I mean, CS2 looked cool. That was such a weird, like, inclusion. No Gears. Gears has been MIA for, uh years now. Alright, chat. Uh, you've not missed anything. I figured as much. I figured it was going to be their little sizzle reel. Because this has definitely been a... The Microsoft part of this has definitely been uh, pressing for time. Yeah, fault. So, Man. what time? It, it's an hour Halo. for the PC gaming show? So... Halo hasn't been meant. Halo and Gears of War were not mentioned, but fucking Fallout 76 was. Uh, yeah, Fallout 76. Oh, figure. Where's the new Infinite update? Why isn't that? Why would? Why didn't that get 15 seconds? That <laughs> is actually kind of wild. All right, summer, uh, PC gaming show is in one hour, I believe. Um, that gives us time to kind of do some. <clears throat> it is true that the copyright little notice uh, is perfect with the horse. What is the horse's name? This horse's name is. Maybe I'll take a donation to name the horse. How about that? All right, so uh, PC gaming show in one hour. We're probably going to do a watch together of uh, what they just showcased. Copyright horse, horse with no name. Pull it. Yeah, we gotta get, we have to have something to uh, base the pull on. Roach. Horse's name is copyright. All right, copyright's one of the contenders, definitely. Emil, Mad Dog. Horse. Mr. Hands. Definitely not naming it Mr. Hands. So, PC gaming show. Get that turned on in the background. It's less ambiguous that it's the PC gaming show. And then Starfield Direct. Tell me that that is... Well, they've got the VOD up. I have to sign in to confirm my age. Do I have to sign? Wait, I just need the link. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Bill Spencer sponsored by McDonald's. We got to vote for Mad Dog. Equifax. Equifax. Why, why Equifax? 
There's a reference there, and I'm too slow to get it. Trademark the horse. <laughs> Shotgun pointed at balls. Will we watch Asmongold together? That was yesterday, wasn't it? No, I felt like um, doing a watch together with private sessions and uh, actually hitting up the Starfield Direct. Right now? Yes, while we wait for right. the um, for the PC gamer thing. Yeah, so let me get you the link. I imagine we're not going to get through the whole thing, but probably not. But we'll get enough done, and so this is going to be like more usual, like note taking. Yeah. Let's see, watch together. What's it showing? Yeah, it was kind of my overall feelings of the uh, Starfield Direct so far before we do the second watch is that they really didn't show much new stuff. And that's partially due to um, their original reveal, you know. What was that? Was that over a year ago? Was that last year? Was that original reveal for what? The Starfield gameplay. That was that was a while ago for sure yeah so it's like they showed a lot during that reveal and uh where is private sessions vtuber model we, we get compared a lot already i don't want to i don't want to start doing the vtuber thing as well I think the um the big the big uh, stuff we're gonna be able to glean out of this is gonna be in in the uh, frame by frames we have to do now. Yeah. Just putting a poll out there for what we're naming the horse. Um. Oh man, this this is hard. Alrighty, you're in the uh, watch together. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna have to give it to uh give it to my god mad dog oh man all right here's the problem um because this isn't the dedicated starfield direct uh all of my timestamps are gonna be wrong Ooh yeah really they don't have um there's gotta be something they already they gotta have tell me that tell me that someone somewhere has made the starfield direct okay three minutes yeah, ago yeah. three minutes ago yeah bethesda's got it up they were not it was not up when i was starting to set things up yeah 45 minutes yeah 45 minutes and they even have the trailer uh that they showed at the halfway point of the just, show as just well. to, just subtract the time well the issue is here's what's going to happen is if we use the the vod of the stream when i go to get the vod later on it'll have it'll be like wrong yeah so who won our poll? What happened to the poll? There it there is. There it is. 51% says that the horse's name is copyright. All Maybe right. It may officially be copyright, but it will always be Mad Dog in my heart. Mm-hmm. Tempted to go with the Equifax one though. Those What's... fuckers lost my social security number like three times yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We we're saw not, this. We're not already. falling for that one again. <laughs> Doing the frame by frame analysis. Yeah. So someone was like, uh, "You were wrong about the frame by frame analysis. <laughs> if you had watched the the uh, 
showcase beforehand, you would have known. And it's like, what's the fucking point of watching the showcase and then watching it again for the stream? If we had let them finish, we would have found everything. Well, that's the weird thing is it has to be said a bunch of times. Like, I'm not doing this for your benefit so that you are up to date on, like, what's going on with Starfield. I'm not one of those Bethesda channels that's like, everything you need to know. No, this is everything I need to know. Everything me in private sessions needs to know about the marketing. You need to make sure you hear every word that was in that Fall of 76 Poetry Slam thing. There were some insane claims in there. Wait, what? What, which, what Poetry Slam? <laughs> what? Do you mean the, the trailer they did for 76, or...? Joining us today, and welcome to Bethesda Game Studios. You know, we've been so lucky over the decades to make the kind of games nice that we love office. here. Todd Howard has a sense of style that I appreciate. Although, oddly enough, not wearing the watch. Hmm. Yeah. This is the kind of detail that we notice on a second watch through. <laughs> Todd Howard isn't wearing the Starfield <laughs> watch. Man, he seemed really excited to be promoting that thing too. Maybe maybe it wasn't out of maybe he didn't have a production like a proper production model. No, like, like they were getting yeah, they were maybe. getting like a new version of it or something like that. So like you can't wear the old watch. Maybe. Because this is see, this is the type of shit that you're gonna see in Starfield videos not made by us because we're doing their research for them. <laughs> <laughs> and that's thanks to all of you. I think he looks good. Denim shirt. I think, I said, denim, I think he uh, blue I think v -neck. He's took like a few days off and everything mm -hmm. like he got recharged and he did a lot of rehearsals and stuff and he just came in like you know just amped and ready to go god i'd love to interview todd howard oh my god <laughs> i either want to interview him or i want him to teach like a public speaking class i would totally fucking sit in on that class uh jacob geller did a video on uh the basics of game analysis or something akin to that and I'm very tempted to stream myself reacting to it. Because mm. I think I need a lesson. I want to learn from a man who just got his gold play button on how to do game analysis. Actually, I think um, Todd Howard has a very respectable career in the games industry. And I've said that... Um, I've said that many a time that I actually have a lot of respect for Todd Howard. Yeah. Yeah. I question some of his design decisions, but I think he's a very good manager. Like, the basic point in fact with what I pointed out a few minutes ago, all of those Bethesda employees that have been there since at least Skyrim, they yeah. who have had a, a consistent job for a decade that where you don't hear about crunch, when you hear about crunch, it's usually some bullshit like, oh, it's actually the Zenimax QA team, and some this has something to do with Todd Howard. Whereas it's like, no, actually, like, the people who work in this office, or work from home for this office, but, like, the people that are tied to this man and under him seem to have a pretty good job. And they don't seem miserable when they're on screen and stuff. And so, like, Bethesda's this, like, weird little enclave <laughs> of, like, this old, the old school, like, the golden age of uh, game design of, like, having a studio that actually feels like a family and isn't horrible to work for from the elder scrolls the fallout we love creating these so where's the shot in them just as much as you do and throughout <laughs> all that time we'd often talk about and dream up the space game what if we could take that feeling of being who you want to be and exploring a new world but set it in space where you weren't really limited in where you could go or what you could do and that is Starfield. What was the video you recommended earlier? It was by some prawn guy. Uh, salty Shrimp Pasta. Uh, his video... Hang on. This video. We should do a LARP with him. Alright. Yeah. This is the shot um, that I was that I was wanting to make note of, showcasing the Bethesda library. 
cuts as soon as it gets to Fallout 76. So I didn't notice first time. So like they've got, they've got a good collection here. Morrowind, the Morrowind Xbox mm. copy. Um, they got the original Xbox 360 version of Oblivion too. Yeah, the like the only thing that would be cooler would be the um the duo they did with Bioshock. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. I love I love uh, <laughs> mentioning the uh, the two pack of Bioshock and Oblivion that existed because you see the two K logo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, right. No, Todd oh. Howard. Todd Howard loves Morrowind. Todd Howard. Um, if you read between the lines, Morrowind was probably Todd Howard's favorite game that he's made. Like he doesn't want to remaster it. He thinks it's fine as is. Um. Todd Howard remembers Morrowind the same way that I kind of nostalgically remember my first job, even though it sucked. <laughs> Obviously, we've come a long way since then. And... Something's weird about their version of Skyrim. But I'm not sure what it is. In space, where you weren't really limited in where you could go. Or what yeah, because that do. Oblivion copy that was literally the... Uh... Obviously. That's like the launch version. Yeah, the, no DLC. The launch yeah. copy. I, I can tell just from the case, like Hang that. On. That's one of those Hang old on. cases that you could like beat somebody to death with. I'm, I'm gonna grab my copy of Morrowind for Xbox. It's like these are these were probably like they got the, these are probably off the first shipment, honestly. Before like when the game once went gold. Yeah. So I've got. I found this at a, a game store. Because sometimes I go to like game stores and cities and uh, try to find like good collector's pieces. I have the Platinum Hits copy of Morrowind, which is a uh, it's the Morrowind cover, but it's like blacked out. It almost looks like the Skyrim cover, uh, the way it's designed. Yeah. Uh, but it's the Game of the Year copy, so it comes mm -hmm. with the DLC. And uh, I think it comes with the DLC. Oh hey, I've got my receipt in here. From Super Smash Video Games Olympia, Olympia, Washington. That's where I picked, found this one. Uh, but it's got a thick manual. Um, I picked up like an OG copy of Assassin's Creed and Dawn of War too while I was there. But Morrowind was the one I was really happy to uh, find. It's rated T. Oh yeah, this copy of Oblivion is rated T. Yep. This is before the ESRB oh, thing. I, I'm telling you, like this is this is the OG version. Yeah, this is this is I day one it. Oblivion. So like this I said, I'm pretty sure this probably came off of like once the game went gold. They probably yeah. sent them a bunch of copies or whatever, and they like was th like this is probably worth like a shit ton of money. Uh, so this is the version of Oblivion you need to test to see if you can drop Nernra in. <laughs> <laughs> and to look for um if there was uh locked dialogue yeah or, like breton lines yeah all the breton lines are supposed to be in this copy too <laughs> although the west um, okay yeah, yeah. Lines, I, I see what you mean about the xbox 360 that's like there's, um there's like a circle the, in the background oh i don't know i'm, I'm looking up at the top the, like the that's like a it's got to be like a crease and oh no wait like that's like um because if you compare the um like the top the xbox 360 thing at the top between fallout 3 and skyrim it's like no so you can skyrim kind of see it on my on my copy too i think the disc my the, copy. The, the the disc holder is imprinting the front of the xbox 360 copy of skyrim it's yeah, not happening with the, my pc copy that i have here yeah those are the shitty uh those are the shitty cases i'm ta that I was talking about uh, so, by like, the way i <laughs> I have the three old cases were made out of like thick, thick plastic. And I have a uh, like thin one. I have three copies of Skyrim within like within reaching distance of my desk. By the way, <laughs> uh, I've got launch Xbox 360 Skyrim, launch uh, launch PC Skyrim, and then the Skyrim Legendary Edition on 360 within arm's reach of my desk. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm, I think that. So the oh, circle there... that you're seeing is like an imprint of the Hold disc. On. We're not have... we're not getting through this if we can. 
I do have a launch version of X of the Xbox 360 for one of Skyrim, and yeah, that's what it looks like. Games. We so that's probably once again. So like, here it is: the the man, the myth, the legend. By the way, what's what's in the Xbox One copy of Fallout Four with in this bottom right corner? Uh, it looks like something like Fallout. It looks like the cover for Fallout Three. Yeah, I'm kind of curious. Like, uh, someone who actually had Fallout Four on the Xbox on the X Bone, chime yeah, up and what was uh, if like a Fallout it, Three away for? Did free? it really come with Fallout Three? Dude, that's crazy! Wow. What did? But oh, oh man, so we like they really do like kind of mask. Yeah, that seventy six is in this lineup. <laughs> they cut hard right at the end. <laughs> so tell me, if Bethesda Maryland didn't work in this game, why is Fallout seventy six in their game lineup? <laughs> this is all the stuff that they've worked on. I am shocked that they even admitted to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that they, well like and mind you this copy of the game has a cardboard disc inside it that gives you a code to download the game <laughs> there's not actually a disc in here at least that's true of the pc version maybe the xbone version had the game files but i don't think it did the b team snuck in and put it there build <laughs> <laughs> They cut so fast. Oh my god! It's so fast, like you can barely get it on screen, <laughs> like the full name on screen before it's that it's just bam moved on. Because they showcase seventy six content in the direct. But yeah, that's pretty wild. Our technology and all of us here in the studio, we've done so much. What I love about this marketing is there's so many studio shots that I'll be able to use for when I talk about Bethesda. Yeah. Yeah, you got you got a lot plenty of like B roll stuff to use. Together, but well, we've never tried to make a game like this. Today, you'll get to hear from many on the team and see so much of what we think makes our game special. So let's jump in and take a look. Uh, do these weird meeting shots throw me off of these meetings that they have, where they're like, someone's giving a PowerPoint presentation on Vasco. <laughs> The Xbox version did have a disc. I was a poor bastard who got it at release. You have my condolences. <laughs> yeah, I remember there being some controversy about the at least the PC version just being a Actually, what would it have been a code for? Because Steam the Steam release for 76 didn't happen until 2020. Would have been on the Bethesda store launcher thing. Man, <laughs> talk about uh talk about missing or lost media. The fucking Bethesda <laughs> game launcher. <laughs> was that guy wearing denim dungarees yes listen i'm just focusing on the main people and what they're wearing if i criticize like all the weirdos in maryland and what they're wearing <laughs> like it is a game studio as well so you get a lot of creatives and... so we were in dc the virginia side of dc everybody was kind of dressed pretty practically but i could tell when the people were coming from maryland because their sense of style would be like really weird Maryland was an interesting state. That was. I wish I'd gotten to see more of it. I liked Cumberland. Yeah. Cumberland was awesome. Uh, like was, unironically, a preview for like Morgantown. Unironically, living in Cumberland might not be the worst thing. Yeah. Or Morgantown. Mm hmm. Starfield is our. Starfield. <laughs> In game footage. 0135 Starfield. <clears throat> like we said before, these vistas are great. I wish that. I really hope that they have like some kind of ATV you can use to drive around. Uh huh. Because I feel like it's such a missed opportunity to not be able to like go to that little mountain peak there and play photo mode. Because like the photography, the photographer in me is screaming, there are so many pictures I want to take. Yeah, uh, from like all these different angles, and so well, like if I have to slowly like walking pace get to places. Well, hopefully we at, it's like you know a typical Bethesda game where we can just hit tilt and open up the console and just TCL at least. Oh yeah. If I'm not going to get a vehicle, at least let me use the console to teleport myself around. Our first new universe in over 25 years, but it's still a Bethesda. I don't know. Listen, 
I'll play space exploration and like take pictures, right? Yeah. Um, and space That's exploration is like barren planets, so yeah, that was my favorite thing to do in uh, Elite Dangerous was just go take pictures. And I was playing when it was just barren planets. I don't mind when games like you have to bear in mind if you listen to my videos, I talk a lot about there should be empty spaces, there should be like yeah. simple quests. I like big open areas where not much is going on that you can pass through because I don't know, like that's my favorite part of traveling. Yes. Um so much tra of traveling and especially in America is like going through places where not much is going on and that's cool. Not everything has to be like this like Outer Worlds is a game where every square inch is like purposeful for something. Outer Worlds world isn't very good. As the RPG through and through where you step into a new world and you get that feeling. And see, I like these planets. I said this during the showcase, but yeah. the, the planet scale feels a lot better. It's not realistic, but it's good. The scale is good. And also like their atmospheric lighting and stuff is like on point. Yeah. You, you can see like real like NASA pictures and stuff. And it's like, that's what you usually get. The skyboxes are good. And Bethesda skyboxes have always knocked it out of the park. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I'd put them up there with like Bungie in terms of like skyboxes. Of unlimited possibilities. But this time, it's not. No Man's Sky is ass, but I would say a lot of. There's a lot of like very complicated reasons for why that is. Not just one world. It's over a thousand worlds. Because the choice of where to go, it's not ours, it's yours. And it wasn't a lot of like Whoa. no man's sky shots. We had rain with lightning and thunder. Hey, remember rain? <laughs> That's still one of the surreal realizations. <laughs> Goodbye, gaming. That's one of the surreal realizations of Skyrim was realizing that there wasn't an actual rainstorm system in that game. Yeah. Like the only time that there's a rainstorm is if you use the shout. It's all like really light kind of drizzle. No, they're not going to they're not going to lie about the number of worlds. There are probably a thousand worlds. A lot of them are going to be boring is the deal. Yeah. Well, yeah, when you have a system to procedurally generate stuff, it I doubt it's really that difficult. They probably limited it just so that you know, gameplay considerations and stuff. They probably could you know, and and 1000 sure. worlds sounds like a good marketing number. Yeah. And it sounds like a very workable thing. It this is not I don't think this is going to be a um top of the world 7000 step situation because <laughs> the, like it should have been very obvious with the scale that they're operating at that it was never going to be 7000 steps. Um but the scale of this game with what they're what they're saying they could do stuff like that. Cuz planets are like self-contained that we had the technology to create it. Do you remember when they were pimping the snow in Skyrim and saying it would accumulate naturally and all it meant is sometimes snow piles would be on the road? Yep. <laughs> the materials technology has come a long way since Skyrim that an actual Skyrim remake would be able to do snow so much better. <clears throat> Like, I was watching someone play Diablo 4, and it has, like, footsteps through the snow. In the distance, yeah. To the people and creatures that live in these worlds. I think the aliens all suck. I have yet to see an alien I've in one of these not, trailers that gave me any I've kind of confidence. not been impressed. It all looks like fucking No Man's Sky spore monsters. Yeah. No, materials like, um... These days, like, they like game companies these days don't really do. They do some for some stuff, but like natural stuff, they don't do like a mesh with a texture on it. They don't like what they do is they create a material, which is like a globe that um has all of the surfaces and it's still textured and stuff. But uh, they then dynamically apply that material to various surfaces and it creates like these under layers and stuff. And so it's like. It's a much more kind of dynamic way to texture landscapes. 
In Unity, it's called materials. I'm sure in other engines it's called other things, but it's called materials in Unity, and that's what that's where I know it from. Just a backdrop. That moon is actually there orbiting the planet. Yes. That moon is actually there. You see that moon? You can go to it. Well, there's something there's something where he says something akin to that. Um, what I'm interested in is they've been very cagey about whether or not you can actually like just take off from the planet and fly up into the sky. I'm pretty sure we've gotten a lot of clues that say you can't. Yeah, I feel like at this point they would have shown that. So the thing is, that moon isn't really there because when you say that moon is really there, that implies yeah. like in no in no man's sky, you take off from, you take off your ship from like the your ship. Say your ship's in the landscape here. By the way, I like the reflections for the planet, but yeah. um, take your ship's there. You take off. You can fly straight to that moon and go there. And so you can say it's uh, it's really there. Whereas, like, th if there's a loading screen between the planets and space, then you it, like it really being there doesn't matter because you can't physically seamlessly travel between these surfaces. Does it ever seem further away due to elliptical orbit? If that is the case, they have done a very poor job of marketing it. <clears throat> They've been talking a lot about like realistic, uh, realistic like orbital simulations. Be cool um, to have, but they haven't shown it. You know, all these planets and stuff, they have orbitals. Like their uh, their orbital durations are measured in decades, so there's no point <laughs> in simulating it. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> Every single one. I know it's a dumbass problem, but having planets be that close freaks me out. Um, well, like, if this the is the scale moon? isn't correct, the scale isn't correct. So, like, this is a gas giant. We're on one of the moons of the gas giant. This isn't yeah. too bad. Yeah, uh, it's it's not No Man's Sky. Where it's, okay, so like, in No Man's Sky, it can vary, but like. Honest to God, some of the skyboxes are like 90% the planet that it's orbiting. Or like um, Outer Worlds has this problem well, too, where like the planets that are in orbit are like 45% at least of the skybox. Whereas this is more moderate, it communicates what's going on. It creates a beautiful vista without being too excessive. Because for a while there, sci-fi stuff was just making the planets in the sky bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> and it was like, holy shit, can we please, like, I like it, like, there's a good middle ground. And I feel like this is hitting it. From what I've seen in this video so far, this might be Bethesda's worst game yet. And eh, Fallout 3 exists. This is better <laughs> than Fallout 3. This is better than fucking 76. I can say that. So already that's like uh, middle, pa middle pack quality. I have to play before I can make Well, of that course. Joke. I feel like that, that goes without saying, of course. It could be completely different when we go to play it. So when are you going on a road trip to Atlantic City? Motherfucker, it's going to be an expedition to Atlantic City. So it's going to be <laughs> nothing like. It's not going to be an open world area in Atlantic City. It's going to be like a pre prefab mission area where you can't really explore that much. It would blow my mind if they did an expedition to we Atlantic would... City that was actually an open world. Yeah, that you no could way. explore. Not, not, not with the team that they have left. Can you give a quick TLDR on why Fallout 3 is bad? I, it's not gonna be quick it may, may be quick in my like 20 hour mentality there's a lot of <laughs> reasons why you can visit it too we realistically simulate the galaxy around you our next generation lighting model uses real-time global illumination to light the world based on the type of star hey the st louis arch I feel like I made that joke already. <laughs> so this has got to be like, this is a quest location, right? Probably. I, probably. I can't imagine that's like so a like um, dynamic. What I gotta wonder is like quest locations, preset point on preset planets, or kind of a blueprint that they can apply to any planet. Like how no. I think it's gonna. It. I think it's gonna vary. I Based think on how like important main... it is. 
yeah i think main story and like main faction stuff will be set locations um but and uh, you'll probably have it, it it's probably gonna be varied i can imagine there being a quest like during the main quest where it's just like oh you got to go hunt down this guy right and you just go off and he's like on a derelict ship or something like that like that can be procedurally generated but then there's gonna be like a main story set piece thing all right we'll go to like a actual location yeah it's, it's probably gonna be a mix Not that, like, it could be a bad thing, it could be a good thing. No Man's Sky tend to err on the side of being a bad thing, but that was because of the way its quests would, um, its mission structure had a lot of issues with making you go to, like, the Hollow Terminus. Yeah. And the Hollow Terminus being exactly the same every time, even though, like, number one thing I want in this game, a fucking phone on my ship. <laughs> call me call me do not make me go to like a radio place on a planet are are you telling me you don't want to take a trip to top of the world equivalent it, <laughs> where the, the the whole story point is that she has a fucking radio that she calls you on from time to time and then other times you gotta go there and see her mm -hmm. well well listen originally you couldn't <laughs> talk to her she right. can only talk to you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Outer Worlds forgets that the that the unreliable has a phone on it too. Sometimes the only way you talk to characters is like either in person or like, oh yeah, we can only call you at this specific spot. It's it's stupid. It's like, if unless the game is a fantasy game, if it's modern or science fiction, you have the phone at your disposal. You can save so much time. and the makeup of the planet's atmosphere. What does, and the makeup of the planet's atmosphere mean? Because Todd Howard's the master of this. He says something and there's two interpretations. <laughs> there's the charitable interpretation and there's the uncharitable interpretation. The charitable interpretation is that the atmosphere is actually calculating the the ratio of nitrogen and and carbon monoxide and oxygen and and then there's the uncharitable at version which is some planets are hazy and some planets that have low atmosphere aren't hazy and all that and so it's like these are the same trees near the forest in falkreath and eh, no could be actually when i look at modded footage the go-to is trees and these don't remind me of skyrim yeah like they're just fir trees they're not skyrim trees trees are always like the number one thing that makes me go oh yeah it's skyrim this is modded skyrim <laughs> isn't he talking about the lighting well that's the thing right you could go full autismo oh yeah we we did at planetary atmospheric simulations with accounting for all the gases and stuff that are really floating yeah. around there and that informs the color of the atmosphere that's one way you could read the statement because it doesn't mean anything and then the other way is of course you know it's it the more atmosphere the thicker the atmosphere the hazier it can get bethesda fans seeing a tree for the first time what is it with bethesda fans and trees one has to wonder <laughs> at least it has trees unlike appalachia <laughs> we are oh yeah how about I'll, I'll mark that joke down Even though I probably won't use it. Also have an all new animation system. And of course, you What is an all new, new anim animation? What does that mean? There's no way it's a new system. It's probably just they made better animations. We redid all the animations in the games. Yeah. We added we added some new like points. Well, they, that, uh, did they ever stop using Ever did they ever stop using Havoc? That's a good question. Fallout for people. You can pick your walk animations. I do think I do remember that that you can Yeah. There's a, like you can if you're a woman, you don't have to use the dainty female walk animation anymore out of the box. The animations look very basic. That's why it's like a 
It's another one of those, what do you mean, Todd? You play it in yeah. third person? This is the kind it's of like, thing I'm not going to note. Like, I don't give a shit that he these... said that you can first like, and third I, I've person. I've seen animations just as good in Fallout 4 mods, so... And also, man, the compression. I don't know if it's watched together yeah. that's compressing it or if this yeah, is, like, actually... It, the... it could be that, like... Um... Yeah, it could very well be that, like, um... That it still hasn't processed on YouTube. Oh, maybe. So, like, there's a lot of, like, micro stuff that we're really going to struggle with. Might have to, like, put down some timestamps and, like, come back to it later when we have a clearer mm -hmm. version. Like, unless, like, is there a setting on Watch Together for the quality? Hang on. what What's going on here? Oh boy, watch together suggesting I watch all these different Redfall trailers and Necron trailers. Mission and they know what you're into. Yeah, hang on. Let me see. Let me open it in YouTube and see if they've got I have to sign in, of course. That's the issue. I don't know why why is it age restricted? <laughs> uh there's guns you know they've got up to 1440p hang on i'm going to refresh the page yeah, let me see on my end we're at 256 oh, it, goes, it goes up to fucking 4k on yeah that's what i'm saying is like it's got resolution. oh yeah it's it... got resolution options yeah, yeah yeah it looks so much better on looks perfectly fine on uh youtube our first new universe that usually um this is kind of putting a kink in the works private sessions exposed as redfall and eso fan on stream well, we've only got to make it through 30 more minutes. I don't think we're going to get to the, the character creation stuff that takes a ton of... Um... Yeah, like fine details and stuff. Mm -hmm. Discord stream it to each other. Oh, God, I don't I don't want to have to set up the preset. I'm already having nightmares of like all my Discord kittens getting exposed. I'm really, I really am curious what got it the age restriction. And you can play it in first person. What a weird thing that they need to... That Todd's going out of his way to be like, it's got third and first person. Do you think that that's in response to something? I don't think so. Someone said I was a degenerate for playing uh, Fallout 76 in third person. Oh yeah, I remember that. And it was like... I'm like, look at the parts of the footage where I did play the power armor heavy weapons in first person and tell me that, like, that's that's playable. Also, remember, Fallout 4, you, if you're playing melee, you literally wanted to play in third person because you swung faster. Screw that, we're second person. Yeah. A lot of people complained about Fallout 4 and 76 not really being designed for third person. 76 is totally playable third person. You just have to do a VATS build. <laughs> That was the other thing was um, when I wasn't in power armor and there was a lot of third person shots, it was because I was playing VATS. Well, the weird thing is exploration and rewarding it, but you third person's always been um, vanity mode. I don't really know why it has to be like what they're trying to do, like a strong third person. So this is the scanning mode. We've kind of talked about it before. Yeah, it looks pretty much the same. It's, it's No Man's Sky. I don't see anything different so here. 600, there's a structure 600 meters in that direction. Kind of the question is, is it linearly designed where like you land in an area and then, oh my God, the whole area is an open world dungeon. 
where like you land at one end and then they're dunge- like the interior dungeons at the other and like there's an intended way you're supposed to walk through it. Oh. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. So it's like uh, those those open air exterior dungeons that are in Skyrim. Uh-huh. Like the Malakath shrine. Bored differently in this game given its scale. That you So I wonder, hmm. I'll let Usually him talk. It involves exploring an area you've landed in. You can collect resources. So this is the laser sound that people have kind of talked about being too annoying. <laughs> Yeah, there'll be a mod to disable it, and then in like six months, there'll be a, a a mod to modify it. And then a year and a half later, there'll be a whole like audio overhaul mod. Literally No Man's Sky. That is kind of the weird vibe. I don't... I don't... There's... Why are they trying to make this work? The, the Fallout 4 idea of like there's resources and you gotta like collect yeah. them out in the world and I mean that's why but mining is there so it pads playtime on Steam well no the, it's like part of the intentional design consideration yeah, you need resources to work on your outposts and probably to build things like weapons and stuff I think it's just casual players really like that aspect in Fallout 4 people loved collecting toasters and shit like that so mm -hmm. All right, what else are you going to do in space, right? You explore, you craft. I hope I can buy crafting resources instead of mining. I really do hope that they, like, focus on that to, to make sure it's balanced. Yeah. And that it's not, like, uber expensive. Like, or in Fallout 4, it was just really a pain in the ass because half the stuff you couldn't actually buy. Mm-hmm. Or it's like you could buy in, like, oh, well, very see, limited quantities. Like you it's can easy, actually buy... You, you sit there and... You can buy screws at the train station and yeah. uh, buy Ford Atlas. Yeah, oh yeah. 70, 76 was fucking abysmal with that. 76 was worse with that than Fallout 4 was. I love random merchants that I can buy bulk from. Why weren't all the robots at the train stations having the same inventory? What's the point of putting them all at the train stations? God. Like oh it kind of God. implies that, asking... like there's a, that there's a train. That there's You're some asking... kind of system. You're asking too many questions. <laughs> Do a mission and maybe even stumble upon something unexpected. Yeah, that's the Bethesda format right there. That's that's basically a quote of Todd saying the Bethesda formula. <laughs> I wonder if you can climb those watchtowers and get uh, map markers like you couldn't follow 76. Maybe. I like that idea from 76. Even though it is the Assassin's Creed, like, <laughs> eagle eye watchtower thing, but... I don't know. I liked the occasional watchtower that we would climb. But at least the environments in this game naturally make me want to climb well, you, to a You know what it is? Point. No, no, no. You know what it is? I have a jetpack. You know what I liked about the watchtowers in 76? It was a part of the environment that encouraged you to interact with it. Yeah. Kind of like you can get a tangible reward out of it and so you're always going to climb up to it and then you're going to see the vista of the world and it looks nice but there's a mechanical component to it too and even if it's just unlocking landmarks like that's still a useful kind of deal i don't know if i'm getting my point across no i i, I get it it's kind of like uh mountain peaks in skyrim I hate inconvenience until, until you realize until you realize shouts in that game were fucking shit. But. I hate inconvenience features without a reason. Durability makes you plan, yet waiting for materials to harvest does nothing. It's just a relic of other games doing the same. Yeah, that is that is kind of the problem with the way that Bethesda does their materials collection. Like mining for stuff in Skyrim is just waiting. Yes. That's why I would get a mod that just lets me click on my on the ore and just instantly teleport well like imagine if there was an animation for picking herbs in skyrim that wouldn't fly yeah <laughs> little red dead moment there i guess but like yeah that's definitely the wrong direction 
unless there's some kind of upgrade you can get for your mining laser that eventually like you can get it to where it's near instant then it's fine yeah. then then we're they don't even have to market Minecraft. that they don't even have to market that but that's an idea they need to kind of be that needs to be in the game is literally let me get eventually upgrade my mining tool to be instant and then there's a tangible sense of progression because yeah. like then you start the new game and it's like oh yeah i forgot i upgraded my mining laser so that it's instant and i'm back to like nothing abandoned mine <laughs> what is this oblivion well you know it got to be it's got to be generic I'm th I'm thinking about like the uh, the Oblivion Dungeon mod where I had the the UASP page for all the mines in the game and it's like tw <laughs> there's like 27 mines that have different variations of the word abandoned in the name. <laughs> I've been playing Seven Days to Die and when you mine, there's a risk that you'll forget to turn around before a zombie thwacks you in the back of the head because you are making noise. Yeah, mining in Seven Days is kind of tedious, but there is like mechanical considerations to it too, so. Is it really abandoned if it's full of raiders? Good point. Repurposed mine. So like... Oh God. Minor thing, but it's kind of telling on the game. Raiders, they just open fire. Yeah, shoot on, on sight. Shoot on sight raiders. Like, not even... Not even, like, an attempt at, like, Hey, what are you doing there? Or whatever. Nope. Or it's give just a, give us your money yeah whatever give us the iron you just fucking mind <laughs> like like they shoot them and then it turns out to be like somebody that was going to propose like a new job for them to do or something yeah is seven days actually good if you have people to play with and you can kind of tolerate jank yeah yeah that game oof. that game is very janky so it it's good to know that uh, Bethesda has not abandoned their core design principle of on hostile on site raiders. And I really do think that like the best thing you can do is to just call them raiders or bandits. Don't even like mm -hmm. use the names that they come up with in in Starfield for what they are. They're bandits and they're raiders. No, they're gutters. Yeah, gunners. So, like, these guys... Like, I have noticed that there's, like, different names for different groups. So, maybe there's some kind of... Like, these guys are spacers. But, at the end of the day, they're still just shoot-on-site raiders, you know? Doesn't No Man's Sky actually have pirates that will mug you, but in the give-us-your-stuff way? Yeah, you will get intercepted in some... In, like, dangerous star systems. And you'll get, like, a radio communication from, like, pirates that will... Uh, they scan your ship and then, like, ask you for stuff. And you have to fight them if you say no. They're called spacers all through the, the vid. Look for it. Okay. Um, Interesting if they've decided to name all their raiders, like, spacers. Because, obviously, you have the spacer thing from... Uh, Outer Worlds. By space god, by the serpent, you won't leave here alive. <laughs> so what is he getting experience for? Like, he just got Discovering 20 XP. Location? So you get... Okay. So have you noticed that, like, there's multiple health bars? Yes. Well, I'm guessing it's, like, shields. Shields and health right? bars. Yeah. Or, like... It would be, like, I do love, like, sh uh, shield, armor, health as, like, an yeah. mechanical idea. But, like, so white, white clears out, red drops, now white's full again. Yeah. Like, what's going on with this health bar? Um, anything, oh, so here's what I'll do. Uh, even though there's only 15 minutes before the showcase. Anything that I need to, like, get detail on, I'll switch over to YouTube. Even though it's age restricted. Stun maybe? Maybe he had a restore shield potion. 
<laughs> That's what I'm wondering. Stun meter. I, I really am curious what the mechanic is. It could be an unfinished mechanic. Why is it at the showcase three months before launch? I don't think it's yeah. an unfinished mechanic. I think there's something going on here that we're not picking up on yet. A posture, a posture bar. Well, I can't see if they're staggering or not. It really does seem like it's a shield bar, but it's like recharging as they take damage. It could also just be like console command fuckery that's going on. Yeah, oh, like, oh yeah, like the scripting. Yeah. So like, we can't even rely on it to, to apply damage correctly, so we've scripted this person to lose health at this time and just be there shooting in their direction. What was that jump? We got a uh, pro basketball player here. Watch that jump he does after he kills him. He didn't use like he doesn't use the boost pack because there's yeah. a there's a boost pack meter above Maybe the health like bar. Maybe this is like a low gravity world. Maybe. Yeah, because he's like doing it again. Yeah. See, no, okay. So I that th I think he was. I think he was using it. That explains. No, like that explains. If it's a low gravity world, that explains the ragdoll. Yeah. Yeah. See, like there's a there's a bar that's indicated when he uses the boost pack. Oh. Okay. Okay. It's in the it's in the bottom right above health, but like behind my character. Uh. I am I am kind of thinking that like these uh are scripted deaths and like he just has to be aiming at the right to like, kind of shoot in the right direction because I feel like he didn't hit, kill him. Yeah. <laughs> What's the point of ADS when the gun is auto aiming? You know, I've wondered that about guns that uh, in games that have like auto aim as their mechanic, why you can aim them. Like, that's got to be scripted. There's no way that, like, they happened to... I mean, it, I, I don't know. I guess it is a Bethesda game, and so weird stuff happens all the time. But, like, he happened to hit him in the jetpack, and he happened to fly up and hit the one beam to create, a, like, a very cinematic explosion. Like, off by a little bit in the recording, he either shoots out the window or shoots up through this floor panel. <laughs> So I almost feel like that's got to, that had to have been scripted because I also feel like he just didn't aim him, uh, like he didn't hit him. Equinox. What could that be? We do love stuff and. I can't wait to see these boxes kind of shift a little bit and all these objects just go exploding around the environment. <laughs> as is it what be, happens in every Bethesda game. It would be cool if they actually did fix that. Yeah, I would love if this was the first game where like they finally got Havoc under control and like the, the physics monsters finally here's a, tamed. Here's a question for you. Do you think we could pick them up with a dedicated grab button? Will the grab button come back? That's that's what we had to sacrifice in order for them to be able to make it so that yeah don't seventy bounce around seventy six uh no grab button can't drag things around the uh, environment poltergeist physics and all of the item I think they call it clang allowing you to pick everything up and you can view all that in your data menu okay. So I like I like the. This is, it's cool. Local time and universal time. Neat detail. Hmm, yeah. Oh, you know what I was saying about skill tracking? Look at the top right. What do you mean skill tracking? Like, um, it would be nice to be able to have to, to track your progress. Oh, yeah. At like a, a button press. Yeah, yeah.
your quest objectives at the bottom. Level 11, of course. There's encumbrance. Good to know. What do we call this? The tween menu? What do we think of the UI? Um, looks Seems good per usual. Fine, yeah. I'm sure there's going to be limitations that make it miserable on PC. Unspent skill points, clearly a melee character. <laughs> <laughs> this is the hub for everything you're doing, from your skills to your ship, your missions, and your inventory. We love to pack a ton of detail. Oh, oh Todd, Todd. Object. Let's slow it down for a sec. This is the hub for everything you're doing, from your skills... To I wonder if gravity will impact encumbrance. You know? Ooh. That would be a pretty cool thing, like you can carry more stuff on a low-gravity planet. Yeah. Your missions and your inventory. Alright, okay. so what's, we've got categories on the left. So weapons, spacesuits, packs, helmets, apparel, throwables, ammo, aid, and the catch-all miscellaneous tab that has fucking 32 items in it. Nice. So, looks like it's going to be another game with a UI mod, boys. Yeah. Why is frag grenade its own thing? Oh, it's a throwable tab. So, like, this is it's mm. the, what you have equipped is what's on here. And then th that's the category. So, I guess. Oh, no. So, it's <laughs> it's just the spacesuit slot and the helmet slot and the pack slot. And then, so three, a, three actual functional equipment slots. And Actually. then a transmog slot, of course, yeah. from 76, and a weapon slot and the throwables. That's it. Yep. So, three equipment slots. Nice. I am not at all surprised. And what am I basing that on? Well, what the person has equipped is listed on top of the category. So, that kind of tells me that um, the spacesuit slot, like, it doesn't open up and then you get to pick, like, legs, boots, chest, gloves. Notice that Todd says nothing about that in the demo <laughs> he lets you read into it if you're paying attention but Listen, he knows bethesda we, fans aren't paying that much attention we needed that time to talk about the new controller and the headset yeah i am not at all surprised that it's that armor is now just one piece you think for spaceship combat, there'd be low recoil, low velocity weaponry, so you don't breach the hole or fly back wildly after a shot in low G. They did say that, like, energy weapons, the niche they fill in this game is going to be that they don't create recoil, and so they're better for, like, the low, low gravity combat. Yeah, I'm not going to expect much more than that, though. I doubt it's going to be like, oh, you know... These weapons will, like, kill you if you fire them in low gravity because it's going to slam you into the wall or something. Yeah. The, yeah, the shotgun, like, is just super lethal because yeah. it, like, tears the ship up. We love to pack. So he's in the weapons category. It's favorites. Go figure. Um, What do you think accuracy means? Um... It's probably just all the categories add to 32. Okay, so there's not a miscellaneous tab. There's just an all a useless once again useless all tab in the inventory in case you want to see all the bullshit that you're carrying around. Yeah. So where do your miscellaneous items go? Probably just a junk tab. We didn't see a junk tab though. That makes one wonder, doesn't it? It's like, gonna be an all. Like there's junk here, right? Yeah. In your data menu. This yeah, like, where's the, the food for going? You're doing, from your skills to your ship, your I think there was a consumable tab. Oh, yeah, the, the aid. 
So we're back to putting food in the aid category. God damn it. Oh no. Can we please keep food in its own category? Like, I don't... Uh, God. They don't want you to scroll on this menu, and this is all they could fit, so... Yeah. <laughs> so this is the categories. The categories are Which defined funny, by the arbitrary like, limitations of the UI even, panel. Even if they wanted to stick to that they could have like shrunk down some of these panels and stuff like you could easily fit like another four or five categories on that screen before you have to scroll all right looks like there's pc gaming show going on or something i'm uh, not sure oh no wait we've still got another three minutes yeah cool todd we love the pack a ton of detail in every and I'm kind of, I'm, I know there's people who like the, um, like the aesthetic. The weapons are really hit and miss for me. Yeah. Why wouldn't food be in the aid section when that's the, literally the mechanical function it serves? So what we're talking about is in 76, there's an aid category, a food category, and a drink category. Is, were food and drink different categories? No, they were in the same thing. But, like, you keep it separate because they do do, like, different things. And because, like, you want more categories. Because what's going to happen is you're going to have, like, 30 fucking things in the aid category of all the different types of food and medical and supplies. And all I'm looking for are my fucking and all health I want, potions. Yeah, I just want my health potion, my, my red juice refiller. Yeah. I wonder if this game's going to have a um, cooking system. Weapons. So very fallout in the stat breakdown. You got your elemental resistances and overall damage rating. Yeah. Also, these spacesuits are worth 20k and he's got 16k. So that kind of affirms that like armors has finally been condensed down into a very small number of categories. That'll be like really expensive because it has to make up for being every piece of armor you're wearing. Yeah. So I guess they're not going to do like a legendary effect system? Hmm, that's a good question. In a game with actual confirmed space magic now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they ended it with confirming space magic. So like, I could... I could get over the armor being all unified if there's like a lot of granularity I can get with armor customization. You know, like... Uh, upgrading it and everything if this is like a bunch of different slots that i can upgrade and change and you know alter the effects yeah the visually i won't have as much control over it but let's be honest that's doesn't look all that great to begin with so it's a first person game i usually just play these games uh i like uh, i like the starting? way no not yet uh, but I am ready to just seamlessly switch over. If the PC gaming show is boring, I'm legit going to switch back to the watch together. Yeah. And you're like, just chat, tell us if uh, anything interesting happens. So but, they brought uh, day five back. There's an AI co-host. Oh, that's not, that's not going to. Oh, no. That's really going to land with the audience. Oh, no. until the show starts and i would hate for you to miss out on the so they were did they replace mika with an ai <laughs> <laughs> they really are taking your jobs god damn the optics guys guys the optics <laughs> This show already has 105 down phones. <laughs> there she has my uh, microphone. Are we still doing work from home here? I mean, 
it's already packed with world exclusives, in-depth interviews with the biggest studios, crazy. Oh God. What more can we add? You don't have to advertise the <laughs> the show while I'm watching the show. Yeah, we're already here. Oh. Uh, PC gaming show is always rough. I can't do this show without you. Why is that? Oh God. Oh, listen. Also, I brought in some new assistants, you know, to help really bring the show to life. And it would be so great if they could just stop by your place in little old London town. You know, to just get the ball rolling. Does that sound good? I I I, I suppose if it's for the show. Excellent. English women made the British the best English women in food made the British the world's best sailors. Devolver Digital shows always seems like gambling. Like, I heard back-to-back -back someone say it was a great show and, oh my god, kill me. <laughs> this is definitely airing on, oh my god, kill me. Real channel awesome vibes here. All right, this is bullshit. Back to the watch together. <laughs> wait, 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 they're about to show a game, though. Are they? Um, You wouldn't lie to me, would you? <laughs> I thought they were about to. Dear Frankie, thank you for your unwavering service to the PC gaming show. <laughs> Your chat is hilarious. This is awful. <laughs> I'm back in 30 oh, minutes, so I can skip all this. <laughs> oh wait, wait. They're, okay, they're showing it. They're showing something now. Only 600 people watching this versus the 150k at the start of the Xbox showcase. The one that I'm seeing is 26,000. Wait, no, it's it's still starting. It's still starting, guys. <laughs> Poster L's and Chef people already posted. <laughs> Welcome to the PC Gaming Show 2023. New set. And today, I'm not just joining you on a tour of the finest upcoming PC games. I am standing with you. All right. Uh, let's uh, go ahead and look up Mika Burton. Is she even with them anymore? Like, I know what they're doing. They're doing a bit. AI sucks. Pretty familiar. Why don't you introduce yourself? The exploitative, but... Hello, I don't think she even works with them anymore. Where's the speed option? <laughs> you don't get that on a live show. I think PC Gaming's purpose in Summer Games Fest is to make you appreciate how much more efficient Microsoft was. <laughs> Remember, at this point in Microsoft's show, they had, they had shown us three games. This is. Yeah, we're going to do the watch together. Yeah, fuck this. I already closed it out. Let's actually get some work done instead. They're showing a game, though. Doesn't matter. You know how badly they fucking lost people because of that shit? I just realized, like, I'm gonna be watching two hours of really unfunny presentation to show off, like, 15 games that I might maybe care yeah. about. Yeah. Games that 
all the stuff that's going to be on there that I care about is going to be on Steam by the end of the day. I can just watch it there without the unfunny skits. Someone in chat will point out if something interesting happens so we can go watch that. Yeah. But People want Starfield. All right, so back to the UI. Back to micro-analyzing the user interface. What's airborne damage? Oh, like, um, okay, yeah. Never mind. I get what airborne damage is. And then they'll forget to show Gloomwood. Yeah, I remember that drama. Which <laughs> would, would have probably been, like, the best show, too. Or the best game at that show. Oh, what is airborne like? Um, like Vacuum. Uh, or like a corrosive atmosphere, like not corrosive atmospheres, but like toxic atmospheres. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what I'm thinking. Like spores and things like that. Remember to wear your mask. Except yeah, the I'm gonna, mask because I'm gonna that one didn't work for whatever reason. I'm gonna love having to carry different suits for different environments. What? Why? What do you mean? Keep it on the ship? No, I have to carry it on me because <laughs> switching it over to the ship inventory will probably be tedious. That's what Vasco is for. He'll run back to the ship. See, real okay, fast. we've got a confirmed food in the aid category. <clears throat> yep. God damn it. There's my med packs up at like restores five health. I'm glad to see it's also worthless. Like yeah. in, it's literally the same fucking value as it was in Skyrim as well. Can I make veggie soup? Yeah. <laughs> veggie soup that lets me boost some um, in my jetpack permanently. God, this sucks. <laughs> every fucking time Todd every fucking time you'll you'll do an interview that says I you know we made some mistakes with our previous game and the UI and it, I usually mod it to fix it and then the next well, fucking least, game they put out is still Skyrim's bullshit UI well at least you have this you have this the uh the timestamp right now <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh god Oh, this this looks and like it's the worst still, UI. Like, here's your stim pack slash potion of health. Your red juice restoration thing. Just pin it at the top. Just pin it at the top. There shouldn't be anything above it. It's the one thing that like 99% of the time I'm going to be coming to this fucking menu to get. Yeah, I'm going to be on a hunt for a UI mod. Day as one UI as... mod. Yeah. Yeah, at least to add more categories. Like, I think this, this is fucking ridiculous. At this I'm going to do like a fast burn first playthrough. Because Fallout 76 already fucking did it. They already broke it apart. I know. Like, it, it They're going fine. backwards. Well, it wasn't fine, but it was like, it was a step in the right direction. And yeah, this is literally a step backwards. Because Fallout 76 would have been unplayable if food was in the aid category. It, oh my God. <laughs> Well, it's not a it's not a survival game, so you don't need to pick up the items. That's why I asked. Oh, like, does this game have a did cooking you notice system? Med packs weigh nothing too. Ah, yeah. So there's gonna be no like just like Fallout. There's gonna be no just consideration yep. for the pacing of stim packs. Yep. Just don't even pretend them. that we're thinking about how we're spreading health potions out across the world. There will be too many. Yep. So combat will be kind of like the backbone of combat is going to be that there's going to be like no long term kind of management because you're always going to have too many med packs. <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to have a, I'm going to have a storage container in my ship that's just full of like hundreds of meds. Yeah, hundreds of med packs. I mean, why bother? They don't weigh anything. Yeah, I know. Just obsess over the. This meal here, 15 health. Yeah. <laughs> the details. This steak, 3 health. What? Oh How does that God. make sense? It has a lot of value, though, I think. And food. Trying to, like, reverse engineer value. We obsess over food. We obsess over food. We obsess food. over food, except they... Literally <laughs> won't won't even give it its own category, but yeah, we obsess over it. Yeah. The steak is raw. You don't have to cook steak. What the fuck are you talking about? People <laughs> practically eat that shit raw as is. Well, in in the states anyway, where we don't really have mad cow disease. Hmm. So true. 
Gotta put my helmet back on. It's getting a little toxic in here. <laughs> when you're done exploring, you can walk back or fast travel to your ship. We Why? Okay, so... You have th limited time to advertise the game. They they are thinking about every sentence that they say to communicate information, right? Mm -hmm. Why is one of the tidbits of information that you can fast travel back to your ship? Was this fast something travel. that people were worried about? Fast travel exists in this game, guys. Don't worry. Um, what I'm seeing here is like this would have been the perfect opportunity for them to say like, oh, you can summon an ATV or something like yeah. that to take you back. And they didn't, so I'm pretty sure it's confirmed that uh no ground vehicles. Yeah. That's such a shame. It would fit it, it would like uh -huh. already we're not even playing the game and we're already going like here's systems that could fit in really well with their with the what they're presenting. Like survival maybe. mode in Skyrim. Yeah. Yeah, maybe it'll be DLC, but pretty sure this isn't gonna be a feature at launch. Walk back or fast travel. Well that's kind of what I wonder is like, why would you walk back then? If yeah. you can fast travel. So like Outer Worlds, even on Supernova difficulty, you can always fast travel back to the ship. Can I fast travel out of dungeons in this game? Back to my good, ship? Good question. Is there any reason that I would want to walk back to the ship? Is something going to happen? Yeah, with, with the way the area seemed to be designed, I don't see what the value of walking back would be. Yeah. Maybe you can call the ship to you. No fucking shot. Nah. Don't, don't be crazy. It has preset landing spots. Yeah. This isn't No I Man's Sky. I yeah, I think the ship is like the origin of the map. And it does its proc gen around where the ship landed. Yeah. There, there's probably I like can't... 30 preset like landing configurations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can't imagine them throwing a wrench into that by letting you then summon it back to you. Not when you can fast travel back to it. Like, why bother? You've got limited time outside the ship, right? We don't even know that. We really yeah. don't know that. You can explore more if you fast travel. Well, that's kind of the question, isn't it? The entire game is Oblivion Gates. <laughs> kind of. Take with you. I left Vosco here back at my ship. I left him back at the ship, so he just stands at the door. why like they really like okay there is a fucking video that they've put out starfield vasco they have an entire fucking trailer for this thing <laughs> we really don't know what its role is yeah we don't know why vasco exists we don't know what he offers but my, he's here like my literally assumption... he is he's this game's cop honestly dwarf. his only purpose is to say your name <laughs> emil insisted on that literally his only purpose they can't think of what he's actually supposed to provide to the experience other than that he says your name emil insisted he exists so that he can make it say fuck face probably <laughs> welcome back captain howard and he can even say your name. Let's head out. Oh, you see what's going on here with this shot? The ship is an instance interior. Yeah. It's it's shelters. Yeah. Well, no. You're telling me that my ship isn't an interior that's connected to the map. It's actually like I have an entrance area and then like a nested interior. Yeah. I, 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 should, I was actually ex I was expecting this. I should have fucking guessed it. I, I'm <laughs> so fucking stupid for not for like even entertaining the idea that it wasn't going to be a nested interior. So there's always like there's no point in walking back to the ship. Wait, does fast traveling take you into the nested oh, interior no. or does no. fast traveling take you to the base of the ship and you have to go through two loading screens to leave? No, 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 no three because no. you got no. the loading screen to no. get off the planet, too. No, 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 no. You fast travel and you're inside the ship. That's it. <laughs> No, no, that's too that's too good. They want the animation of Vasco greeting you at the ship, so you're gonna fast travel to outside of the ship. 
<laughs> Guys, you're being too critical. This is the type of shit that you notice from having played these games. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I can see it. And this... there's going to be an update where they'll let you from the, from fast travel choose if you're going to fast travel outside the ship or into the ship. Well, cockpit. you know, we just couldn't think of, we didn't, we couldn't think of it in testing. Yeah. Yeah. I bet. We don't even get loading ramps. What about cargo base? So this heavily limits a lot of your starship design by necessity because you have to have a way that you can board onto the ship. So a tile of yeah. your ship is going to be the entrance. <clears throat> so like you couldn't create the Serenity from Firefly because like half of the Serenity is literally the entrance to the ship. Yeah. Six loading screens from surface to surface. No, like this, this is going to be a loading screen nightmare. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Thank God I bought another M.2 to install this game on. <laughs> Don't, it's a Bethesda game. It doesn't matter. It won't matter. Fallout 4 still takes forever to load. Mm. Oh, my God. Uh, imagine playing this on console, too. This is, gonna, like... this is the biggest sense of dread. This is going to be like console players should be terrified right now. This, you're looking at like what's probably going to be like three minutes of loading to do like anything. That is going to be such a hindrance. I can see it now. I can see the complaints people are going to have. It's, it's going like, to be perfect for streaming because you, all your chat interactions is going to be yeah. on the loading screen. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like reading super chats while uh, the game loads the interior to my <laughs> ship. <laughs> loads the interior to my ship so that I can turn and interact with an inventory item. That's why he's carrying that shit around. Yeah. Cuz it's not like you could just stash that in a box by the entrance to the ship cuz you got to go through a loading screen to access your your containers. That'll be another quality of life update during one of the DLCs. Yeah, to access your like ship inventory from outside. Yeah, directly. Yep. The worry for me is it separates board and cockpit. I got to see if it if it um if there is actually a separation between the cockpit and the interior of the ship. No fucking shot that there's another loading screen. I doubt it. I doubt it. Cockpit is probably like, it'll just instantly put well, you in well, the seat. That's where... what, yeah, that's, yeah, okay. So I'm betting cockpit just takes you straight to the cockpit so you can take off faster. Yeah. But still. But can I fast travel straight to the cockpit? Yeah. <laughs> Get used to the once again we're pointing out get yeah, used to this yeah. animation yeah I, why do they show it off in the trailer so much if we're gonna be seeing it a lot in the game like it's gonna be old by the time we get to remember remember when uh they showed off uh absorbing dragon souls in uh skyrim i don't think it's a separate cell i think it just Our teleports you to a different part of the same interior cell because you can do that with doors in, yeah. the, in the ck you you get to pick the coordinates that a door takes you to and so all they're doing is adding a second function that would teleport you to a different part of the cell's interior. <clears throat> this is surprisingly faithful to the unskippable. <laughs> ...to convey the wonder and majesty of space exploration, to evoke the romance of the golden age of early space flight. The romance of the early golden age of space flight. That's something that can only be said by somebody who wasn't alive during that time period. Yeah, it was really romantic, worrying about fucking nuclear raids. <laughs> and then, like, the only thing you had to look forward to is, like, oh, maybe there would be, you know, first man in space, first man on the moon. Real romantic time period, the space race. Did you ever notice how it stopped when the Soviets disappeared? Only, like, our... Almost, like, our only reason for doing it was because they were. The romance of cooking monkeys and dogs in capsules. <laughs> the romance of Apollo 1 exploding on the tarmac. Yeah. The romance of watching Voyager 1 in the classroom. It really is weird. Like, space exploration has never been terribly romantic. Yeah. I don't think we're there yet. I think we're still in the terrifying. We're still in the oh god, I hope the astronauts don't die. <clears throat> yeah. Era. It's still like I 
watch videos of um you know like them launching up to the iss and it's like you know there it's a there's a non-zero chance that this is the last time we're gonna see these people alive mm -hmm. and we've been referring to this approach as nasa punk okay there's the term <laughs> they say it a lot but i want to get it down yeah, it's nice to have them define it, so you have a good clip for the video. Which I don't disagree that that's what they're doing. I think that that's like a strong kind of visual direction that they've taken things. Yeah, it's it's a pretty self-explanatory uh, term. We're in the age of exploration, dying of scurvy phase. Yeah, I mean, like, there's a ton about <laughs> space exploration we don't know now. Yeah. They could have just said space punk. No, I think NASA punk is fine. Yeah, I think it adequately conveys what the game's aesthetic is. This means a design language where the tech is advanced, yet still looks grounded and relatable. For us, it's, it's that contrast. That's where the visual interest is. Obviously, the NASA, which is the rigid, hard function over style, and then punk, which is all about style. You can see that visual style coming through in your ship. Your ship is your So that cut kind of implies that like you're in the cockpit, you turn around, there's the ship yeah. interior. Yeah. Now it's not seamless. There is a cut there. They could mask a loading screen. But it look that looks like an in-game cut. As in like, because I've seen I've seen Skyrim do stuff like that. What's happening in the ship shouldn't be so terribly complicated that it can't be rendered at the same time as what's happening in space. Yeah. And what's happening in space and stuff is probably static anyways. I doubt you're going to have, like, ships flying around you and stuff. They're literally showing anime right now on the PC showcase. Oh, my God. Yeah, I think we... Uh, Dodged the bullet we, with that one. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God they put it up front that it was going to be like that. For home, for you and your crew. <laughs> and like many of the spaces in our game, it has a slightly retro and analog touch. A bit of lo-fi rather than sci-fi. I like the aesthetic. Yeah, that's fine. I think it looks better than um, the Outer Worlds kind of approach to spaceships. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I prefer this. I like that there's actual light. Everything isn't so, like, dingy and dirty. Yeah. It looks good. I hope it has a lot of customization. But we were talking about, like, this is a module. Yeah, what perked my ear was when they were talk. Later on, they talk about um having a uh, different manufacturers and they have like their own styles and stuff, which uh, reminds me of once again Elite Dangerous, where like yeah. different manufacturers have like distinct styles and stuff. They would talk about that with the cyberpunk marketing too. Uh, the different gun manufacturers kind of have different aesthetics. Mm -hmm. right. Where everything is well used, worn and lived in my only complaint and we talked about this before the amount of loose stuff so <laughs> that's kind of in the environment and they're in orbit right now too so yeah they've taken off which like all of this would have flo been flying around the cabinet killing crew members it's just you know it's just it looks like it's lived in you know it's relatable it looks like your apartment in uh san francisco mm, it looks like your pod yeah your pod <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the cooking companions pod mm. and in the back there you have uh the explorer companions pod it goes back to that too what we were talking about is like are you going to see these lo this level of detail and like everything or is this like a specific pod tied to something very specific that we're seeing yep these are nature shots of what did you say finland yeah <laughs> What is going on with the PC gaming show? How many people are even watching that? Oh my god. What are they at? 743 people now watching. I, I'm Yeah, I'm thinking that like a lot of people Woof. are like, I'll just watch the trailers by themselves after. It's not worth Woof. it. When I looked at it, it was 26,000. That's an attrition rate if I ever saw yeah. one. <laughs> it's not worth it to, like, to put up with that just to get like Man. a mildly interesting trailer. 
Man. Really makes me appreciate Microsoft. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Microsoft and even even Jeff's show, you know? No, Jeff's show was good. Yeah. I thought Jeff's show was better than the Microsoft one, other than Starfield. All righty. What's the plan, Captain? Wait. Navigation console <clears throat> that's separate from the pilot seat? Hmm. Yeah, what? Is this like planning to do stuff and then you do it in the pilot seat or I figured this functionality would have been tied to being in the pilot seat. Yeah. What the fuck? To be fair, it's being watched and restreamed by other channels, and yet Xbox didn't have that problem. Yeah, Xbox had no, a like shit ton I, of re viewers for have being restreamed. So well, like, like I said, it's, it was twenty six thousand when I first saw it, and now it's at seven hundred. That's still an that's yeah, still a that's massive. Yeah, that's still rate. huge. That didn't happen to <laughs> you know, and then you got like over a quarter million viewers on each stream for the Xbox show. Yeah. Wait, do you have to go here to view missions, quests, or is that also in your main menu? So there's a mission section that they showed in the main menu, yeah, which I think I is imagine. just your journal. I think yeah, this... I imagine. So, like, I guess this is, like, a planetary breakdown? Oh, maybe. Planets have biomes, I see ice caps. Yeah. Why would it be called navigation console? Oh, 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 you have a different thing on than me. Okay. I was looking at my my thing. Where it's just showing like the console from outside. Okay, so yeah, so this is probably like your scanning thing then. This is where you play uh, the the Mass Effect Two survey. Ooh, but does that mean you have to? No, 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 because they showed the fast traveling from the cockpit seat, like going to another system. Oh yeah, that's a you good point. Why, to, why am you I? You don't not... have to get out. There's no way you got to get out of your cockpit seat, go to this, select the system, then go back to the cockpit seat and launch from like fly like that. This is the music we should be listening to. I switched to the Mass Effect theme <laughs> or Mass Effect 2 specifically. I bet they won't even have a good analog for the ME2, ME3 probe and scan minigame. Well, no, actually, there's a quote from was it Emil or Ashley Chang who said that like they were doing mini games again? Yeah, we know like there's a scanning system. Yeah, like you can see it here, survey percent. So well, so okay, so survey percent is definitely got to be tied to like like on the ground scanning things. <clears throat> if there's multi biomes, I wonder if like you actually have to go to different um, different places on the map. Oh, right. That's a question we still have to answer. Multi-biomes. Mm -hmm. Have we seen anything like that yet? We'll have to pay a lot of more attention. There's fauna and flora, marginal. Yeah, that's No Man's Sky basic system. Magnetosphere. Do you think magnetosphere is going to mean anything? Uh, Maybe it's like the strength of your shields. Mm. Like that maybe if cool. you have like a... A, a weak magnetosphere um your shields might be weaker or something so you have to something or other fauna marginal four, zero out of four four what so there's going to be four types which is how no man's sky does it is you get like a breakdown of like here's how many which is why it's stupid right you're doing an exploratory survey but somehow you know how many different <laughs> yeah. species are on a planet yeah like what it, re it really gamifies a lot so, the water is radioactive. Does that imply water exploration? Why would the water being radioactive matter? Maybe when it rains? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm thinking like Fallout 76 crossing the streams yeah, <laughs> that are radioactive. Yeah, that too, yeah. Don't. It's like a little warning. Don't step in the water. Yep. Can't drink it. We haven't seen if there's any kind of survival mechanics. Traits. I wonder what. What are planet traits? That's a good. That's a good little curiosity, isn't it? Hmm. Is your star map? It starts with the planet you're currently on. 
Oh yeah. You can see all of its info and Maybe it'd be like weather or something like that. I think like, their planets look good. From orbit, yeah. It looks it looks pretty decent, except for the fact that it's very uniform. You know, well most planets bottom. most planets in space are pretty uniform. So I I'm thinking like the minimum I want for a good number of planets is gonna be like Mars. You have your kind of equatorial biome, your um, more temperate, like mid latitude biome, yeah. and then your like ice caps, right? That's the that's the bare minimum I expect. Use a landing spot or fast travel to known locations. Hang on, I gotta see that again. Did he it's pick a landing spot? You're currently on. Yes. You can see. But all... did he pick it or did he like put it down on the map? of its info and resources you can choose a landing see mm -hmm. so he just presses a button and it picks a part of the map to land on yeah this is, this is exactly what i was expecting it to okay. be like and then yeah you have little areas that you have been able to scout probably from orbit it takes you to the nearest flat course. patch of the land i'm actually thinking that it generates a flat patch of land. Yeah. Like, the way I'm imagining it's working is none of this exists until you pick a point, it sets the landing pad there, and then creates the cell around that landing pad. Yeah, and it's probably, like, it's obviously going to be using uh, um, attributes of what you're seeing from orbit. So it's like, you know, if it looks like kind of mountainous there, then it's going to generate a more mountainous region yeah. if it's close to the water, blah, 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 blah. Um, so it's not open world. Well, that's kind of the, that's kind of the semantic discussion that I'm looking forward to people having is, uh, yeah. is it open world because there's a loading screen between the, the world and space? Like, does it stay open world? Cause it's kind of like, um, outer world's hub idea, but it's more open than that. It's a lot more open world than outer worlds. That's for sure. Yeah. But it's not No Man's Sky where you can seamlessly fly to wherever you want. I don't think there's... Ha like, look. Handcrafted Planets probably has a different definition between the world designer and the audience. If you're expecting yeah. an entire planet to be handcrafted, <laughs> you are fucking insane. Yeah, like, you can no see way. the parts of Fallout 76 that are proc gen. You can literally see the seams in the map. Yeah. I didn't show I that off in the video, but we saw a lot of seams in the map. The handcrafted planets would be like somebody meticulously detailed like the general like what you're seeing right here from orbit the civilian outposts see... and the industrial outposts are handcrafted and then everything else is probably like proc gen from what what will probably be pretty detailed areas to land at yeah is it too much to ask just handcraft the whole planet todd yeah it's kind of too much to ask because the planetary scales seem to look right in terms of like how big the planet is yeah if if we were going to get a bethesda or any studio to handcraft an entire planet you're talking all right that planet has to be like the size of 16 well, square as I, miles as i understand it um you can't land on earth yeah. which is fine mass effect rules spot or fast travel to known locations what's going on with the pc gaming show Oh, they're showing a game. Oh, really? It's got dinosaurs in it. Oh, wait, Jurassic what's his name? Ferocious. Ferocious. Okay, cool. Backing out further, you can view all the planets in the system. Obviously, the game is big, and it's. It's a nice little quote. Okay, so yeah, the system has a level to it. Well, I think so. there's some... Well, yeah, that is a good point. Are there going to be, like, kind of three-dimensional orbits where not everything's on the same orbital plane, or... I have to imagine this is just for this map. This is, like, simplifying the orbits. I hope so. I hope for a few odd planets that aren't in the like orbital plane, but you know yeah. that's, it's 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 detail work. 
You know, it's not the end of the world if it's not like that. This system has a level. You notice that? Yeah. Here you can see planets that have key locations, missions, or life on them, versus the many planets that are barren but resource heavy. Zoom out even. So basically, is the implication that the planets that have stuff on it won't have resources. So basically, let, let's divide it now: mission, uh, mission <laughs> planets versus resource planets. All right, my weak bladder's calling. Okay. Let me use the restroom here. So, I, I closed the PC gamer thing. Let me see what they're doing right now. Baron, but resource heavy is just grinding. Yeah, you're gonna have your grind, your grind uh, planets. I wonder what the what the meta is gonna be. Are there gonna be planets that people are gonna know and like they're gonna be known online? It's like, all right, you go to this system and this exact planet to get all your scans done or something like that. Or is the proc gen going to be able to smooth that out to make those metas kind of impossible? Oh man, I can't wait to cover this game and have to talk about a new type of level scaling. It's actually a balance between Skyrim and Fallout 4 this time. Hello. Your model is, um, he's what having did, some issues. What did he do? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Get some life back into that Spartan. What are the odds Bethesda has empty planets as an unofficial platform for people to mod in their own content? Oh wait, the PC gaming show is back up to 29,000 viewers. This looks like a mobile game. Is it... Is this Dungeon Keeper? Question mark? Oh, I did not mean to unmute. Um, I think there was talk before about the, like, barren planets being places for modded content. The thing is, though, like, you really think about it, like, mods which add new content are an exceptional minority in the modding community. Yeah. Because usually it's a shit ton of work. So that was my question. Um, one, one of the questions I've been wondering is, like, how easy and or difficult is it going to be for modders to add, like, new bases to the game or something like that like more stuff to the proc gen system i'm not even talking about like like obviously the process of modeling and making that stuff would probably be prohibitive to begin with but like is it even going to be accessible for modders to i be able to have to imagine that there's got to be some kind of like blueprint system that you, that's what i'm wondering it's like is there's got to be like a blueprint system but how accessible is that going to be to modders If Bethesda's kept their old kind of mentality towards, because um, I mean, like they use the CK too, right? So yeah. they're gonna want to. Uh, they're gonna if there's a straightforward system to add blueprint areas, and they release the CK, then there's gonna be a straightforward way to do that for modders too. I don't think empty planets are a bad thing, at all. It would be nice if I had a vehicle to drive across with it. Yeah, though. I need a I need a space ATV or the Mako yeah. or something. Uh, I'm not really looking forward to walking across uh, a desolate planet on foot. Just yeah, to farm resources. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to, yeah, yeah, smoking rocks with a laser. Well, so that was one of my questions uh, when you were gone. Was like, how do you think there's gonna be a meta where there's gonna be like some what like some like you know reddit's gonna post like here's the 10 planets in this, these systems that you want to go to to yeah. harvest these yep. resources or is it gonna or is the proc gen system gonna actually be able to make it so that it's viable and or difficult or something like that so that that doesn't really happen 
walking, you have a boost pack. Well, you have to remember the jet pack in No Man's Sky making you go fast was an exploit. They didn't even intend for that to be in the game. <laughs> Where you melee and jet pack at the same time mm -hmm. and it actually makes you go faster. Yeah, that was like, that accidentally been, it ended up being a good design. But, um... <clears throat> yeah, I feel like... God, you go to the... Because one planet being rich in resources is probably going to be enough you just keep landing and taking off on that planet to different yeah. spots yeah farming iron there's like a part where they show like patches this... on the map where that are resource rich so like you land on that patch and then like it has a ton of iron so like i'm gonna go through like what four or five loading screens that we've decided on uh, -huh. uh land on the planet use an annoying laser to farm yeah. one iron <laughs> at a time there'll probably be some dungeon or random encounter there and then, like, I get back on the ship, take off, find another spot to land. And, like, so like, I feel like this is just going to be, like, an intensive two-hour process per playthrough just to get all of the iron you need to, like, yeah. for the base building. I'm imagining most players are going to, most, like, casual players are going to land on no more than, like, 30 planets. So someone's suggesting that outposts will farm for you? I guess that is true. Maybe you can build an outpost on like an iron thing and then mm. it farms iron for you. So like, yeah, maybe it won't be so much you land and farm materials, but you just have like outposts everywhere that farm materials for you, which is still like a bunch of tedious busybody work. If there's no system of like auto export the iron to my main base, please. I <laughs> no, I got to go through five loading screens to go down to yeah. my, my iron planet. Because, of course, you're also and, going to have to fast and, travel to the system that has your iron plant yes, on it. Yes, yeah, yeah. So that's the thing. So it's like you have to go through all these different systems. So that would just encourage you to, rather than making a network of bases across the entire galaxy, um, just localize it into, like, five or six, like, neighboring stars. Oh, God. travel between those stars. Yeah, so the Internet's going to figure out, like, what system has everything in it. Yeah, like that, that that's what I've been wondering. And so you're it's just like, going to have an outpost on every moon cuz all of the resources in the game are in this one system, probably by accident. That's where I'm that's where I'm questioning this like 1000 star systems or 1000 planets whatever. It's like, yeah, but like how many people are really going to even be encouraged to do that? I mean, how many people are really going to do that? And second off, is are, are these mecha are these limitations that we're talking about? going to disincentivize doing that the more that. yeah the more loading screens i have to go through the less i'm gonna want to like fuck around with trying to find like uh, surveying planets and all that yeah Woo, and lad. then you also have to you also have to throw into the equation then um missions being in fixed state, uh, fixed like star systems and settlements being in fixed star systems and stuff. So it's like, are they going to be dispersed throughout the galaxy or are they going to be centralized? How how difficult is it for me to travel from one side of the galaxy to the other side? Yeah, the warp drive is kind of an interesting thing. Yeah, because it seems to it's it, the implication seems to be that. So, it's going to be like Elite Dangerous where you have to string together jumps because you have a limited jump range. There's a good way to do it and a bad way to do it. All right. Let's 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 talk about the good way first. Um, you select a point on the star map and it tells you like... And then it auto does it for you. Each system that you have to stop to get more gas, mm -hmm. it just auto deducts the price and then like... So really, you just you don't, there's only one loading screen, but you jump across like ten systems, right? Do we even have gas? I thought they said okay. they don't even have gas anymore. Now the shit way to do that would be each system I have to load in. Yeah. The no man, which is the no man's sky way. Yes. You load in, and then you immediately like set yourself up to warp drive again. Go through another ninety second loading screen. Uh and, oh no, I need fuel. I gotta refuel, and then. Once you're refueled, another 90 second loading screen, another 90 second, like 90 seconds for each system that you jump. And so like, it'll be prohibitively expensive, not even from like an in-game resource perspective, just a, like, it's going to be an expensive game to record. Ah, uh, this is <laughs> definitely a game where I'm going to be cutting the recording while I'm traveling. Yeah, just like cut off. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> that's such a nightmare, but that's honestly what's going to happen. Like... 
That's, that's what I did with. That's what I've been doing with Skyrim because mm -hmm. I had so much footage of me like looting dungeons at the end that I now have. Uh, I bound it so that I can pause my recording in OBS. So like I'll pause when I'm doing my looting and then I'll just yeah. I'll have to set that up. Yeah, because I feel like there's <laughs> going to be a lot of uh, travel, like pointless travel time that I'm not going to use. Like I'll record the first ten times I do it, and then that's it. Oh, that's but, all the footage you need. But there's going to be the radiant events where you mm -hmm. get interdicted and stuff. Oh God, dragon fights because you're fast traveling too much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, oh, you, you jumped five systems. Now it's time for you to have to do like uh, your radiant event. With ship. Yeah. That's how it's we're gonna very keep it easy. Up. It's very easy to be cynical about this. So I hope it, there's it, some kind of like information the, hidden in there that will... the reason it's easy to be cynical about this is because I've played a lot of games like this and I know the pitfalls and I'm just yeah. like fought 76 all over again. This is Bethesda doing something they've yeah. never done before. Because it's like, what are the odds that they're going to have played all those games, learn those in all those pitfalls and stuff and course correct? What's the plot about? Properly. The plot is about being the space dragonborn, joining the space blades and unlocking the space thumb. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not even joking. So, um, God, fucking. Because I played Fallout seventy six. I know full well they don't let you fast travel to your shelter. Yeah. I've played a game where they don't. Where they have nested interior instances that they don't let you fast travel to. They're they're not gonna dodge that pitfall. There's no way. They'd have There's to make no a Starfield way. two to actually iron this stuff out. Boy, I sure am glad I'm going to be beta testing ideas <laughs> that were easily avoidable if you just considered the pitfalls that the other fucking games of this genre have. Yeah. Don't forget the 100k plus voice lines. I'm pretty sure we're up to like 240,000 voice lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, this is going to be a big game. I can't wait for the videos in like six years. You won't believe what I just found in Starfield. Yeah, it took me ten years to realize. <laughs> further to see all the systems in this part of the galaxy. Here you can plot a course to ones that okay, are Mass Effect music's away. a bit loud. This uses your ship's grab drive to fold space. There's and fuel. Jump to these systems. Okay. What? Um. That honestly I'm, fills me I'm, with even more I'm dread. telling you. I'm telling you. Oh, no. Oh. Loading screen hell. Refueling. Oh, Christ. I'm, I'm calling it right now. There's going to be a statistic. What's, you know what's bad? Daggerfall had this problem solved. <laughs> Literally, Daggerfall had this problem solved. You had settings to say, I want to rest out in the wilderness or I want to stay in, in town and that would affect how much it would cost you. You'd get it like a gold deduction or like yeah. you could fast travel and like I want to use a ship or I want to go there by carriage or I want to go there on foot and that would affect the travel time. And uh, it saved a ton of tedium to have options like that. Okay, so the fact that there it's set, oh, man, that could mean so many different things. It can mean it a lot of things. We, we can be it cynical. It says the number of jumps. It, it says the number of jumps. In it. So it's like, is it going to do those automatically? Well, okay, there's one segment it... here. I think in this footage, he's going to like and select multiple. Ship... See, and now it says four jumps. Yeah. But is it going to do that automatically? Is it going to do all those jumps automatically? Or is it going to be like Elite Dangerous where each jump, like all you're doing right now is just mapping out where you're going to go. And then in Elite Dangerous, yeah, yeah, okay, you okay, would then yeah. fly there and you have to do each jump manually. The difference is Elite Dangerous, that's the whole game because it's trucks, it's truck simulator in space. So it's actually enjoyable. That's part of the experience is doing the jumps and figuring out the fuel yeah. and all that stuff. I know that's not going to be the case in this game because they are they've already confirmed a bunch of stuff that's not in it. So this is what they mean. This is 25 years in the making. This is all just the cut boat mechanic from Daggerfall. <laughs> it makes sense. <laughs> it really is like there is so much there is like there, there like I said, charitable interpretation. They are uncharitable I'm interpretation. I'm looking into this, and it's like they are walking into a land, a minefield right now. It, it like, is so easy for Bethesda to fuck this up badly. Badly, like I said, I'm calling it right now. If they screw this up, you, there's going to be a statistic where it says like, like 60, 70 percent of players only explored like uh, ten or fifteen different star systems in Starfield. 
and it's going to be all over like Kotaku and stuff like mm-hmm. that and people just making fun of it. And it's just because it they disincentivize people to explore because of limitations and just poor design. And that would be really tragic to see that fall apart. Because there could be a wonderful game in there, but if the system is we'll just see. really unwieldy and punishing and remember, for exploration, people are not going to do it. Chat, I want you to remember, this is not the pilot screen. This is a separate navigation is, console yeah, that's navigation. inside your ship. So there's no button on here that says, all right, auto-complete this journey. So we don't know. They've literally set up to where we don't have enough information to tell. And so you could take anything from this. And this is the problem with this freaking thing is that they sh- they spend so much time talking about stuff that they already talked about in the other in the other thing and talking about stuff that they didn't n- need to talk about. But that's like we have so many questions right here in this one screen. But that's to hire us. OK, we're cheap. One, show us this stuff. We'll get you the questions that actually need to be talked about, the things that you're going to want to say, like be clear about. You need to be clear on whether or not this is going to be loading screen hell. Because this could easily, like the screen we're seeing here could easily be the worst part of the game. And it could be fixed is is the best part. It's like, if you just automate it, so much of this will be solved. I'm seeing the cliff right now and it's just like, I'm like, I don't even know where the train's going. It could be going off the cliff. It might not be. Weapon skills if you want to jump to the most distant ones. But for now, we'll plot a course to the Alpha Centauri system. So he's going through three jumps. Does he? Is he going to show us as him doing the jump? So there is a jump button on the screen. Oh, I'm fucking stupid. Okay. Shipping skills if you want to jump to the most distant ones. But for now, where does the jump button come from? So if it's an unexplored route, you can't jump on here. Okay, I'm Mm -hmm. getting. I'm having the idea here. Red stars, white stars. White stars are systems that you've been to. Red stars are systems that you don't. You have to jump first time into red star systems, but you can auto jump um, through white star systems. I don't. Th- I don't think that's the case because I'm seeing different shades of red. I'm looking at that, and it just looks like those are different types of stars, like different classes. Hmm. He couldn't jump because it was too far. Well, it didn't say it was too far. It said unexplored route. Yeah, yeah, play it over again. Space and jump to these systems, and you will need to upgrade your sh- unexplored route. Yeah. Oh. I'm telling you, I think in order to auto jump to places, you have to go through a system. That's. Oh. That could be fine. That could be fine. It could also be hmm. bad. Okay, so so it looks like, it looks like they're meeting us halfway then. Yeah. And that you instantly they, tell up like you could basically this is this is fast travel in space then still though it's still, it's, it's up in the air it could be this could be really I bad know. i don't know it prevents skipping half the game but doesn't make it annoying the thing is well i'm thinking like repeat playthroughs having to manually yeah. like 90 second loading screen into a thousand star systems yeah yeah, yeah. oh god i'm thinking of like now I'm thinking of like Oblivion Gates, the process of getting all 60 of them. <laughs> Except it's just sitting on a loading screen and loading into each individual star system like, that's to 100% the, thing. the game. That's the thing. Um, if the act of exploring and like going f- from star system to star system is fun, and it's not just sitting there watching loading screens, like mandatory loading screen, um, then it's all right. But if that's what it's going to be like, just automate it from the get go. Because the, the the whole point of like exploring and uh, I'll use Skyrim as an example. Like it, it's fine that you don't have everything unlocked to fast travel to immediately. I like that. It's great. What makes it great is that it gets it forces you to walk from location to location, and that act and that's arguably the best part of Skyrim is when you're walking from location to location. I don't see that being the case in Starfield. I think the best part of Starfield is going to be on the ground. So, I don't know. Like, I just... This loading screen problem feels like every action you have to do requires you get off and on the horse before doing anything. Yeah, I mean, Bethesda falls yeah. into these kinds of pitfalls all the time. Where, yeah, it's just like, like we go back to the mining uh, analogy in Skyrim. There's no reason 
like that adds nothing to the game it just artificially slows you down it might as well be a loading screen when you're mining yeah it's um yeah this I'm is, wondering this is easily the fuel this is easily the most concerning thing they've shown <laughs> ship and skills if you want to jump to the most distant ones but for now we'll plot a course to the alpha centauri system where we can find this I at least like I like that there's ship progression. Yeah, that's a good thing. I love it. It's not the Normandy that like can do everything from the start, except with, like a few minor things in the suicide mission. Yeah, no, that, that's that's pretty cool. It adds reasons to be upgrading your ship and collecting resources and interacting with other mechanics. Well, what's interesting is but the Bethesda is not, you know, they're not breaking new ground with their idea here. This isn't Death Stranding. This isn't like, like Death Stranding is interesting because it creates a ton of problems and then it goes and solves those problems. And so it's like, how do we make a walking simulator interesting? That's the premise of that game is how do we do that? Mm -hmm. Bethesda is taking form ideas that other people have done. Your No Man's Sky, your Elite yeah. Dangerous, your Star Sector and all these like 90s era space games that Todd Howard talked about. Um so there's no reason for this game to suffer the same pitfalls that those games suffer from. Like, you should look at those games and be like, okay, how do we fix that in our game? The science fiction game. When I wouldn't expect them to bat a thousand and fix every single issue, kind of but games. I'm looking at an issue right now that I'm really... <laughs> yeah, sorry, Star Sector is not the 90s, but... ...shipping you could explore around uh, that I loved. Another one, this is a kind of pen and paper... A role-playing game at the time where you know D and D was getting popular is this game Traveler. Traveler was a little yeah. They cited a bunch of inspirations too. So yeah, there's a this video uh, Constellation Questions talking Starfield with Todd Howard has like a bunch of um, kind of things where he talks about stuff that inspired him. So like he, he's not invent like he's not inventing solutions to problems that he found from breaking new ground. Starfield is kind of taking. Uh, it's, it's trying to be the space game that finally solves all these issues. It's been a long time. Get your Star Citizen, for example. Mm -hmm. City of New Atlantis. So is I this part like of the loading screen? Yeah. I feel like that implied that when you travel, fast travel from that map, you're instantly put in the cockpit. Which would be a nice quality of life thing. Is it that or is it edited? I'm always Who suspicious knows? of any hard cut in, <clears throat> in Bethesda marketing. Like uh, that time that Bleak Falls Barrow deposited you on the other side of the mountain. <laughs> Just to like a random part of the map. Does anyone think it's weird? New Atlantis and New Atlanta in Starfield and Fallout 76, respectively. Did they call it New Atlanta? I'm pretty sure they still call it Atlantic City. God, yeah, that's probably, imagine... That's dude, probably a loading screen. No, hang on. New At Atlantic City. They said 2024 on that, right? It's not the yeah, lead-in event for Starfield. We were talking about when we were playing them doing like mothership zeta uh the event for that again yeah what do you think will be more prevalent in terms of mods space elf waifus or space robot waifus probably robot waifus okay wow. so like they have the kind of civilized system idea of like and so there's going to be contraband right yep that's what it's they talked about lying they talked about Wait drugs in one of the, in neon i think is the city name yeah this is this is like exactly how elite dangerous works you enter a system it tells you its security level so this one's being patrolled and it'll tell you if there's like a contraband or something like that well space kind of tell you like the laws space smuggling is like a huge kind of it's, it seems yeah. like something that Todd Howard would really be into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it would be nice to actually to have this kind of game where you could do it. 
could be stolen. Wondering... Oh yeah, it could be stolen goods from piracy and shit. It's just red stolen yeah. flags. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they magically know. Some somebody in the didn't comments we, was like, just didn't recently. We already, didn't we already confirm that in one of the other videos that we saw where th there are stolen flags? Yeah. Yeah, there are stolen flags. Somebody was like, uh, it's a setting with magic. What do you mean? How do they know it's stolen? And it's like, so you're telling me that every shopkeeper ha ha knows a magic spell that is constantly active at all times that tells them whether or not something is stolen. And then they don't even consider like the context of it or not. Like at this that setting point, would actually be more appropriate where it's like every conceivably everything would have like some sort of oh, yeah. transponder in it. Yeah, everything's ID tagged and on the blockchain. Yeah. But what would be cool is if, like, there was, like, a skill then to strip that away or, like, some sort of well, yeah, tool that's the thing is, strip that out. If, if every NPC in Oblivion, I think this was in the Oblivion comment section, if every NPC in Oblivion just magically knows that it's stolen, why can't I magically change the property of the item? Yeah. If I'm skilled enough. Okay, so what are these things? Speed, boost, bow. I'm guessing that's balance. No, um, ballistic weapons, missile weapons, laser weapons. Oh, really? So you get all three? You you, you can't just. Well, I think like it's gonna be based on you designing your ship, but there's probably gonna be niches that all three are good at. So you're gonna want like mm. some of everything. Yeah, yeah. So it's not I No Man's if... Sky where you have to switch between the weapon types you have. It's all accessible. Oh yeah, yeah. I wonder if, um, if we're gonna have like customizable hard points then. Hopefully I think that have, like, I think that's what they've shown. Or gimbaled like... ones and like auto tracking ones and hard, hard hard points and stuff. For smuggling in elite, you have to avoid getting your ship scanned, which you can do by reducing your heat signature. Was really nice. Yes, as I, as I understand, yeah. like elite actually was pretty cool for because I took yeah, a few smuggling contracts. A whole yeah, yeah. There's a whole like system behind it. This and that's what I'm wondering is like, is this game gonna have the uh, mechanical depth in space to make it interesting? Because in that game, you could do things like just speed through the through Man. the scans so that they can't catch you. Now, you not, turn now me canceling Elite Dangerous Project is going to be like a big deal. <laughs> I need you to do Elite Dangerous, please. <laughs> <laughs> if I had the time. Come to UC Space. Maintain your current course while we scan your ship's cargo. Oh, interesting. They scan you once you land in the system. No, not when you land. They scanned him just now. Yeah, when he, he he just got into the system. Yeah, when you get in. What did you yeah. think it was? I, I was assuming like when you get to like a settled area or something oh, okay. like that. Like a security checkpoint or something. I hope there's well, different say, levels of it. Yeah, maybe. Like so some systems you can fly in and not get scanned and some systems are like only at the at like uh like official port or something. Yeah, ports. Yeah. Starfield system requirements went live today. Oh wait! Oh, this 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 looks like a planet that has multiple biomes. Does indeed. Hang on, I'm gonna look up the Starfield system requirements. Okay, so temperate. This might be one of the handcrafted planets. It is. is it, that's where New Atlantis is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Windows 10. Uh. Ryzen 5 2600X, uh, in i7 6800K, 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, oh, wait. Let me go to the recommended. Ryzen 5 3600X, i5 10, 10600K. I don't know if that's better or worse than mine. I have a 990. 16 gigs of RAM. Um, graphics. A RX 600, six, fuck, 6800 XT NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080. Okay, so we're blowing. I'm calm, Bullsh I'm calm bullshit on those recommended GPUs. I'm surprised. No way. It, why isn't it? You would think it'd be a 30 series. Yeah, there's no way. That's that's to get 30 FPS. <laughs> um, 30 FPS on well, like yeah, we did. We didn't get to the okay. good part. 125 gigabytes. Oh yeah, of course. That's I, honestly, honestly. It says you required. Yeah, that's interesting. Probably like they probably they they don't want to hear about the loading screen issues. 
Yeah. When people load it on their HDD, they're gonna they're gonna put in there. Well, you should have had an SSD. Broadband internet connection required. Oof. Why? <laughs> so it's always online. Man. Or it's just part of the installation. This process. is crazy. This is like weirdly specced. Yeah, that's very. Like, where's the i5 1060 li lie? Let's go to CPU comparisons. Why is it 25 years? Even the Steam page says it now. Why is it always 25 years? I have no clue what Bethesda's fetish for 25 years is. <laughs> I9. And what what's their recommended CPU? The i5 1060. Miss the stream? Will it be uploaded later? You can actually go back right now to yeah. the beginning of the stream. Yeah, just uh, seek on the timeline. Yeah. Hang on, I'm not under. This isn't Switch. I'm just trying to figure out. I guess I need a, a CPU upgrade. Oof, or I'm really? going to want one. You have an Intel one right now, right? Yeah. Ooh, so you're talking about a, probably a platform upgrade. Yeah. So you have to change the motherboard too. Big oofs. Yeah, this looks like it's going to be a CPU heavy game. Well, of course. I mean, I could always... um. Here's the thing. I'm probably going to have to get a new motherboard anyways. Just because of socket types. So I could go yeah. Ryzen if I wanted to. Yep. Let's go Ryzen. It's what, literally one of the reasons I'm on the AMD platform now for CPUs. Is because they don't update their sockets as often. Mm -hmm. Need a beefy CPU to handle 16 times the loading screen. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I have the i9-9900K. Uh, this is like from 2018. I built this um, right before Cyberpunk came out. I have a 5900X. And actually, I built this computer for um, to be a freelance video editor. I have a, I have a Ryzen 9 3900X. I'm good. I fucking better be good. <laughs> I would I would be concerned if I was sweating about that. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I have this is because video production. My CPU was definitely not as uh, not doing as poorly as my GPU was. Yeah. So I can't think the game would be doing that much that needs heavy CPU performance. At best, maybe physics. Script processing can't be that heavy. Yeah, but this is a physics-heavy game. Yeah, you have all that gravity calculations and stuff like that. Zero-G stuff going on. I don't know. We'll see. I'm not deciding on stream, you know. Alright, so multi-biome. I'm not yeah, going to... looks like... I'm not going to say it's desert so much as it's um, just being lit up. But yeah, ice cap, like kind of temperate biome. Probably like yep. all the green stuff is exactly the same no matter where you land. Probably. I do want to know what the coasts are going to look like. Are they going to have like proper coastal biomes and stuff or is it just going to be like it's just going to end the forest yeah the forest <laughs> just ends on a beach there isn't even sand what the fuck are those biomes yeah i mean you know it's like uh it's like temperate forest until you get to the arctic circle and then suddenly it's just ice cap 
Yeah. <laughs> what happens if I try to land, like, on the terminus there? Like, the border? Is it going to have, like, I a think nice I think it's going to... No, it's going to pick. It's got to pick. Right? Could could so, you... Can you walk to the... That's uh, what I want to know. Can you walk to the edge of the biome? That's what I want to know. Like, say I land, and it's like, all right, you're in... It picks, like like ice cap can i World then turn premiere. south and walk to the temperate zone okay that's happening r.i.p uncle ted yeah ted kaczynski died i thought his name was supposed to be pronounced ted kaczynski but you know how polish be who is who the unabomber yeah. Oh right. Yeah, he died yeah. in prison. And people yeah, are people yeah, are suspicious and I'm like, dude, I think he was like eighty one. Yeah, he was eighty one and he was already in care for um and living they on moved a, him like in twenty twenty one, I think. Living in a medical facility. On a, like a prison diet. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think there's anything suspicious about that. I think he did this thing called die of old age. <laughs> Chat's like who? Bro, come on. Listen, I can forgive somebody for not knowing off the top of their head what the unabomber's name is okay and what's funny is like i saw i, I see because i figured we were talking about something gaming related yeah <laughs> well he is gaming related <laughs> as soon as you land in a city like new atlantis your eyes are what was that mug she had is it in the store Number one, dad crossed out, says producer. I feel like it starts with two question marks. Yeah, what? She, she is definitely going out of her way to showcase this. It's like so um, we're, we're at 7 Eleven. What, what was the thing that was on uh, on Emil's desk? Uh, what was that? It is what it is. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I like I like the different devs bringing their energy to the. Uh... I think it says producer. I'm because I'm loading that's... up the uh, higher quality. Yeah, because like that's that's her title is producer. So no, it's still blurry. Like because it's out of focus. Damn it! Damn it! They fucked you up really, the f stop. You really think that like she has a mug that says number one producer? Yeah, it's probably a gift from one of her uh, co-workers. You see that shit all the time, especially like if uh, if she's a manager and if she's a good manager, somebody would get her that. It's like a little gag. You land in a city like New Atlantis, your eyes are guided upwards to just these... You know, it's a really bold thing to say when you're a producer. Your eyes what? are guided upwards, uh, as though like fucking <laughs> making players. We figured it out, guys. We finally figured out how to make players look up. I know <laughs> Valve couldn't do it, but we did. I'm getting yeah, getting that a uh, downtown Boston vibe. Boundless, vast buildings. It's the biggest city. What do you think about made. that? What about the architecture there in that city? Um, looks uh futuristic. <laughs> I think that's what they're trying to sell is that like very futuristic, uh, not practical kind of design elements. You know, they they, have, mm -hmm. they definitely held a, a architecture contest to uh, build a city. Can I use my jetpack in the city? That's a good question. Boost pack or ID locked disabled while you're in settlements. <laughs> I feel like it's designed in such a way though that you couldn't get anywhere by boost packing. Like maybe yeah. you could get onto this thing, but then like. You have to walk around until you find the the door to let you inside. And it's all probably loaded interiors anyway, let's be honest. Yeah. That city would violate most countries' safety laws. Would it? But listen, it's, it's a, science fiction. Is this a city where I'm going to be using console commands to get around uh, yeah, I, during I, the 11th hour of my... Uh, I am wondering, like, what is this area and what is that area up there? Yeah. Like... Is this a? Uh, is it gonna be like this? Is the waterfront and that's like the merchant district or like? Listen, we didn't 
we couldn't actually make the city that big, so we're gonna kind of fudge it by spreading everything out and like putting things on top of each other, so you just have to walk around a lot. It gives you plenty of time to listen to the generic NPC banter. <laughs> yeah. A lot of questions, for sure. Eyes are guided upwards to just these boundless, vast buildings. It's the biggest city we've ever made, not just... And you see, I wouldn't have as many questions, and I wouldn't be as cynical if, like, the past three Bethesda games I've played have just been fucking miserable on the city Just keep front. dropping the ball in cities. Yeah. Oh, it's the biggest city ever. Uh, okay. Is it? Does it actually feel like a city? Vivek but human? This is, like, giving me major, like, Vivek vibes of, oh my god, this is going to be a nightmare to navigate. <laughs> That's why I asked about my jetpack. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything in there. Like, using my jetpack probably wouldn't do anything. Yeah, it, it feels like everything is blocked out to be super big so that your jetpack couldn't yeah. get you anywhere. Yeah. It's like, you're, you're gonna you're gonna run out of, out of boost before you uh, it's like, okay. get up there. I think the claim is that space-wise, it's the biggest city. That doesn't... But, like, it could be, like, big blocky assets that aren't being used for anything that's spacing everything out. Yeah. I mean, you can make a lot of empty space, empty verticals uh, and horizontal space that the player just has to walk through. That doesn't mean it's going to be interesting. Dozens of closed off cubes with no purpose. I mean, that's kind of the point. GTA type cities that you can't enter the buildings. That's the thing is we're comparing yeah. it to previous style cities where you could enter every interior. <clears throat> we don't necessarily know if that's the case. Could be big blocks of this city, like, are inaccessible. Biggest city ever, but you have mini loading screens. Let's be honest, mini. <laughs> Just in size, but also in the amount of custom art. It kind of feels, what it reminds me of is, like, uh... I saw a video about Charlotte, South Carolina. And kind of, like, the, uh... The little like hubs of walkable spaces that they have all over the city. This the number of people kind of reminds me of that. Like it's kind of a pain in the ass. I gotta like drive there. Uh, I'd rather like stay home and play video games. And so like there's like ten people that show up, and everything's <laughs> like super expensive to compensate. Nice. It literally says food. Well, I mean like you do want to communicate. That's what it is. <laughs> Crowds. <laughs> Not even hiding it. Hiding what? This is their idea of crowds. Let's uh let's count. Oh. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two. Maybe twenty three. You know you know, in the in the post COVID era, this like we got we got to ask ourselves: Would this get shut down for being too many people mm. close together? It'd be insensitive to show large crowds. <laughs> as somebody who has social has well, okay, um, social like, anxiety, this is this definitely qualifies as a crowd. Well, okay, so like, say you have like a. Uh... So you have I that kind of anxiety. For this. No, that could be great. Like that could be a gameplay thing. Like, oh, you have a hard time in like big crowded city areas. <laughs> Minus ten vitality. This isn't scaffolding. This is this is uh, cosmetic. They're going for an aesthetic here. Okay. Yeah. The contractor went out on this class uh, scaffolding up here one time, fell right through, died. <laughs> it's not functional. M quest. Settled system news network. So, like, this is the huge building. Probably, like, ten rooms inside. Right? And then, like, oh, one room. Yeah, run One room where there's a quest giver. And it's, like... Settled system. It's probably, news like, a small network. small side quest line tied to, like, the NPCs that you'll see on, like, the in-game in television. 
the orcs blew up our <laughs> relay. <laughs> I need you to go to a museum <laughs> and get a new satellite dish. I actually like that quest in Fallout 3. There's a whole quest to find that contractor's lost cordless <laughs> drill. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's valuable. Remember how big the TNG Enterprise was compared One to the 1,400 kind. passengers? Space is big and wide, so you have to keep things overspaced. I definitely, they definitely like, they had an idea of how big the ship was, and then didn't <coughs> like actually lay out how many people would realistically live on a ship that big. And so, like, yeah, I've seen videos breaking down. Like, I think everybody on the Enterprise has like a hundred square meters to themselves. So the main focus when we're designing a city is obviously what supports the story. We try and tell... What do they eat? So here's your Arcane University lecture event. <laughs> oh, the Dragonborn is here. Please demonstrate a thume <laughs> for, for my Please, class. The Space Dragonborn has arrived. Please demonstrate a space thume. <laughs> These NPCs are just going to be called citizen. That's kind of the thing I'm wondering. So there's a few ways they could take it, right? You've got your um, list of names that it can pull from. And then you've got every generic NPC is called Citizen. Kind of go like the Witcher route. Is this the, the Mages Guild? The College of Space Winterhold? Hmm. The Space College of Space Hold? Oh, you've finally arrived. We can begin my lecture. Stand over there, please. Opposite me. Hmm. Well, Spaceborn, I'm trying to think of who in the galaxy would actually have a map of all of the radio <laughs> shacks. Um, perhaps you could ask at the the Space College of Spacehold. <laughs> Academy of Astrohold. <laughs> Stories as possible. This is a colony war memorial. It's I, I can only imagine that my DC trip would have been accentuated by robots walking around everywhere going, This is a memorial to Thomas Jefferson. <laughs> and it's like, no shit. <laughs> I am Avina. Allow me to be your tour guide. We're designing a city is obviously what supports the story we try and tell as many small stories as possible okay so if this robot wasn't here saying this is a war memorial most people wouldn't be able to figure it out right because you're gonna have to look yeah they live in dc <laughs> they live in <laughs> like what blew my mind about dc was just how much space was memorials yeah. How do you fuck that up? <laughs> well, see, it's got... There's some fire there, and it has this, like, somber sort of... I, I, I can see a designer thinking this is an appropriate memorial. It's the fire of humanity. Oh, there's, there's like, an etched... Like, something's yeah, etched there's in name. the there's, there's Yeah, there's names. Yeah. yeah, all right. Like, it's a memorial, but, like... Do we really need a ro like? By the way, he's Do stepping need... on the memorial. <laughs> the robot's actually like stepping on the memorial. It's a Bethesda game. Expect NPCs to pathfind into that fire. <laughs> <laughs> no lollygagging. Are the robots like the the security around here? Maybe. They're the guards. You can walk on memorials. I don't know. I mean, like it looks like he's stepping on somebody's name. Yes, yeah, some of them, sure. Some of them, I wouldn't. What the fuck is this nitpicking? This nitpicking is funny. There is a robot that walks up to you that says. This is a war memorial that is, like, walking on the names of the people who died. I will remind you, 25 <laughs> years ago. As in, there are people who are still alive that are mourning the loss of the people that are being memorialized by a robot that's stepping on it while it says, 
This is a war memorial. You fucking tourist. And of course, just like DC, you can see all of the <clears> tourists <throat> that are... Oh, wait. <laughs> Two NPCs in the scene, one of them is a robot. Well, the NPCs are all behind you. No, 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 no. What they did was they they um disabled all the NPCs that would be standing there just so that they could get like a better vista, you know. So mm -hmm. they, they want you to see the or a, a runnable frame, right? Colony. Yeah. <laughs> so like I'm just one. thinking about this NPC. Like what does he do? He he does he path in a circle around this thing? And like, if I you happen I, to walk up to it, he'll he says that he has this line. This is why the game has two hundred forty thousand lines. Yeah. Because yeah. like, rather than being able to walk up and like environmentally notice that like there's names on it, it's kind of designed. It's like candles and uh, it's a war memorial. You know, it, it feels know, lived in the because like they have a still storytelling. They have like, it. Bethesda they have loves a, to talk about so much. They have a little monument to an event that happened in the story. It actually feels like unlike the the great war where there's no like, like are there any memorials in skyrim to the great war <laughs> this actually feels like a, a, a lived in this is a war memorial i never even thought about that in skyrim there's no war memorials to the great war you know the war that was so catastrophic that it basically depopulated most of the empire This is fascinating. I'm just, I'm just thinking that the game is going to be full of NPCs that like say, this is a thing. Out. Yeah. I mean, that's the implication here, right? Like mm -hmm. they could show anything, right? They could have anybody talking about anything. That's and what they're talking about right now is NPCs will dynamically, you know, say mm -hmm. stuff. And this is, and, this and is, the, this stuff is the example is, they go for. Like, I'm not smart enough to make basic observations about what this is <clears throat> just by it's playing the, the game. It's you know what it's for the sake of the uh, of the trailer, right? Mm -hmm. So now I have to see if this NPC exists in game. Find this NPC. Cut me loose. I, th I, I think it's coming loose now. <laughs> He's not wearing the watch either. <laughs> Moments of gameplay that make the space He's feel like smart it's full too. of real characters that are going about their day-to-day -day lives it's... Mm, i like to see shadows that's oh yeah this barely looks almost no shadows in this environment but also i'm just looking at like the table placement so there's five tables in this cafe in the biggest city in the entire game um well, the the main cafe's upstairs oh okay okay that you can't get to I'm just like, you know, this looks like a pretty big plaza. Listen, it's the biggest game we've ever no made. No one eating? Couldn't... Yeah, half the NPCs are just sitting there, not like not even like work laptops or anything. <laughs> well, see, they have the brain chip that lets them work in their head. So it's like, why is it? And why don't why don't we have that? Why, do why we aren't have they fucking watch? Why are they here? <laughs> Like, this just looks like a hastily populated environment to say, look, they've got space Starbucks. Yeah. This is a super chat. It cost me 20 kroner to make. <laughs> What's the total population of humanity in this universe? A few thousand? What happened? Well, it's a Bethesda game, so of course the population is going to be, like, less than 10,000. And most of them are raiders. Yeah. Okay, so this is looking behind us now. Yeah, now we're looking at, at the actual, like, cafe desk. So these are the two NPCs that are going to be harassing the barkeep. I mean, the uh, barista. <laughs> and these are going to be, like, raiders. And then, like, there's going to be a confrontation. They're going to run off, and they'll start a quest. If you really stop and think about it. So here's my question. Do you think we interact with the kiosk, or do you think we interact with the, with the barista? Well, you see, they have the kiosk for the introvert the players. Like it's full of ah, right, right. About their day -to -day lives. I, always, I gotta see this kiosk. What is that? What are these kiosks? 
Yeah, it's like it's drawing attention to them. So it makes me think like Well, like so I went to a McDonald's when I was in DC that was like the new Mc, the new era of McDonald's where they had like the you could order uh at the kiosk, but they were vertical. Like why is it Yeah. Why is it angled? Um so that it catches all the glare from those fucking giant Yeah, so so it's you. impossible to read. <laughs> so that you accidentally buy like the more expensive shit. <laughs> That would be funny if it was actually like the intended detail. And then you talk to the barista and she's like, "What? I, I don't handle it. That, that's what the kiosk's for. I'm just here to... First time with the barista at the kiosk for the rest of the game. <laughs> really stop and think about it. But it's coffee. It's also where your adventure with Constellation begins. So this is like the white run of the game, basically? The Yeah. Wait, so... I'm trying to think about like the pacing of how this would work. So this is the, you know, there's kind of a reason why the main quest hub is not the biggest city in the game, like the capital city. Like you've got your white run. Yeah. You've got your Balmora. You've got your, um, I guess it like, no, the Imperial city, you're barely there during Oblivion's main quest. Why does he have a helmet on? He's got, he's, listen, he's got social anxiety. <laughs> um, so I feel like this has to be early in the game. So early in the game, probably. now they're just dr driving you to the capital. It's probably like two hours in. 30 minutes if you're, you know what you're doing and you rush it. Yeah. I hope. <laughs> Honestly. I, I hope it's that quick to get into the game. Here's the watch that they're marketing that none of the devs are wearing. <laughs> like, that would be such a basic thing if I was the PR person. Get the developers wearing the watch. Yeah. Get the developers wearing the watch. Have them wearing merch that we're selling in the store. Have them displaying the mugs that we have in the mm -hmm. store. Because they have all that stuff. Like, come on, let's push some incremental sales here my retail instincts kicking in i guess yeah welcome to constellation we're seeing this lady again we have a lot to talk why about. did i get some like bad vibes from when we like that door was opening and they were walking like there's it some feels like, like you're but no it feels like you're literally walking into a room where you are going you preemptively know that you are going to be ball busted to death yeah <laughs> i think it's two di different doors though like you didn't the like the, you that door to this room the... is not no, no, no. yeah yeah that, that, that was that the door to get into the comp like it's a completely different thing it's just editing yeah but but just like the vibe that i got when those doors open these doors it's yeah, like... instant dread as the store opens. <laughs> I know full well that I am like I, it, it would be more shocking to me if it wasn't like as that tropic. Yeah, I know full well they're going to belittle me for being the newcomer and mm -hmm. like I was the one that happened to become the chosen one and I'm going to be coming here a lot. I would love if it's positive vibes, but like you're right in the sense that I feel dread as this character walks into this room. <laughs> Like, there is mimetic energy that I'm taking <laughs> in from this room. This room is not good vibes. <laughs> and which is weird because, like, the whole thing is supposed to be, like, you know, we're a group of, like, explorers and we're going out. And it's supposed to be, like, this mythical, wonderful thing. It's like, I get what they're going with with, the, like, the library and stuff. But it's like, this room is just, it's triggering something in my brain that, I, I don't know if it's my gamer brain or if it's, like, just my brain from, you know, being on this earth and being in I think rooms it's like before. The very first thing, it, it's framed. So what you're being the exposed to in the fact is, the fuck, is, is Space Delphine. A, yeah. In a, confr <laughs> in a confrontational from... pose. <laughs> and it's this weird painting with like a sun behind it. And then like, and like as the framing the opens up. Yeah. Listen to the sound of the door opening. Yeah, it's like that slow <laughs> creak. <laughs> There's Vasco, so I guess this is where you pick up Vasco. Yeah. So otherwise, why is he here? But, like, it's just... It's her. It's Space Delphine. Yeah. <laughs> it's that pose that tells oh, you that she's so upset glad. with you. I'm so glad they are continuing their, uh... 
continuing the trend of writing. Their their problematic way of writing women is being. <laughs> I, I am amused by how many people are like, oh, no, they don't think it's misogynistic. They think it's a girl busting. It's like, no, that's still misogynistic. They just think that it's not. I want to, like, look, I'll give it a shot, but I'm telling you right now, bad vibes. <laughs> Woman splaining pose. Welcome. And, like, she's got. She's got kind of like a confrontational face because, yeah. like, you know, in in the CK, uh, when they give dialogue, each dialogue line <laughs> is assigned an emotion value, and so like she's got like the angry, one set angry, open parenthetical fifty. To constellation, we have a lot to talk about. Yeah, she looks really displeased with me. We probably got like that guy killed that gave us the watch. That gave us our pit boy. <laughs> By the time you meet Angry 50, surprise 35. Them, constellation <laughs> is sort of seen as this mythical group. Most people don't even They're this mythical group, but they have like a headquarters in the main capital city. Like what are you talking about, Will? They're very, maybe it's like they're just very um, closed off. They're like very insular. They're, yeah, you can only get in if you have a watch. They're the College of Winterhold. The, you can only get in if you have this watch that you can get with the Collector's Edition and also just gets <laughs> given to you. Like, there's no ceremony w in the cutscene that where the, it's given to you. The guy just gives you one. Yeah. You're gonna, you're gonna want this, by the way. While well, they have a headquarters in the largest city in the game. Let him finish. Even though they exist anymore. They're the last They don't even know they they exist anymore. So there's wait, wait, just wait. this space in the capital city that like nobody knows what's going on inside it. Hold on. We need we need to play that again. We have a lot to talk about. By the time you meet them, Constellation is sort of seen as this mythical group. Most people don't even know they exist anymore. They're... Yeah. Yeah. There's just this part of the city that, like, it looks like in the oh. middle of town, too. Oh, 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 no, no, no. I know what's going on here. That's why there's not many people in the city. Nobody comes to the city anymore. <laughs> it's it's a they dying all, city. They all, no, no, no. They all it's, died oh, in the Space oh. Civil War. No, no, no. It's a capital. It's a capital, so it's like nobody actually comes here anymore. Everybody goes to Neon or something. This is like the capital of the of the region. This is this is your um uh Albany, but everybody goes to New York City. The city so. is so fucking vacant you could hide an esoteric order. I, I really <laughs> am trying to like like the only the only valid explanation I can think of is like this is this guy's house. Yeah the last true explorers in the galaxy no they do set up who pays the rent there's like a guy on this team that's like financing everything see and they're trying to find the answers to some of humanity's biggest questions the artifacts are so different that would actually be kind of interesting if this is a very like morally ambiguous faction right where it's like they're doing all this exploration and stuff, but they're a very insular, secretive group and stuff. It's very hard to get in. They're very, like, hush-hush. They don't let any information get out. You mean the stuff. elusive man? Yes. Also, yes, we're getting into the plot, which they've been advertising the entire <clears> time. <throat> There's No Man's Sky artifacts everywhere, and we, the Space Dragonborn, use it to gain access to the Space Thum. <laughs> To defeat space dragons. <laughs> okay, we haven't seen space dragons yet, but so you give it time. And I'm certain one of them reached out and spoke to you. Oh yeah, speaking of Mass Effect, the fucking Promethean beacon. <laughs> this also isn't the first time that we picked up that there is a Promethean beacon, or whatever. What was the race called? Yeah, uh, Prothean. Prothean. Yeah, you're close. You're you're there. Prothean beacon plot point: space dragonborn. You are a Promethean. You are Space Dragonborn.
the artifact if you could place it on the table here there's that that tone again if you could hurry it the fuck <laughs> up some of us have to get to the uh space starbucks i can't fucking believe you the... know that there's only five tables at the space starbucks right don't the waste initiate. my time the initiate do you know how long i've been a part of constellation and you just come in here and <laughs> just become space dragonborn it's it's, it's so insulting. unfair it's so unfair <laughs> i fought in the war it really yeah, is like five years ago in. you you don't you don't look that much older you look like you're maybe 40. well of course people who are uh People who are in their 50s look like they're 25 in Bethesda games. <laughs> Delphine? Yeah. Oh well, Delphine God. never had kids, so, you know. Mm -hmm. She was, she was on that yoga Skyrim. mat. <laughs> she was on that yoga mat every day. She was doing her walks and stuff. Look at how it's coming together. That means there's a set built by an intelligence outside the settled systems man bad vibes all around <laughs> from yeah, every because, character because like so they're, got... they're like mentally linked in a hive mind where they're finishing each other's sentences <laughs> they're not responding and I'm, just seeing, and I'm just seeing the tropes at each of them so you got you got space delphine you got the um the valdez there basically yeah. like she's scientist she's probably the only one she's probably the only one i'm actually gonna like so um, then you have the elusive man. Elusive man who's paying for everything and the religious guy. Yeah, the religious like doofus kind of kid. But like um, the way that they're talking to each other, they're not talking to each other. They're finishing each other's sentences. And so it gives a very space cult vibe. I know that what they're trying to write here is that they're all coming to the same realization at the same time. But it seems like they're just all like connected. Like they're sharing brain cells. No, they're, they're just all on. They're all on the spectrum, and they just don't understand like social cues and stuff. So they just cut each other off. This the religious guy is one hundred percent space Esborn. Esborn? No, I think he's space Arngear. <laughs> I wouldn't even say that. He's giving me like. He's giving me like Jenkins vibes from Mass Effect One. I, I can't really come up with like a. I'm struggling to come up with like a um. Uh, a Bethesda, an analog. yeah, Bethesda analog here. Yeah, I mean, not everything has to be analogous. They c might yeah. be doing something new. I'm j I'm just looking at this in terms of tropes, like character tropes. Why is that a trope in everything? People don't finish each other's sentences in real life. That's called interrupting, and it's rude. Yeah, what they're trying to communicate is that it's a big realization, but they're all big brained and they're all figuring it out yeah. at the same time. And so like listen to the way that they that they talk after the artifact gets put there. Oh my god. Look at how it's coming together. That means there's a set built by an intelligence outside the settled systems. Which it's like it is an efficient way of writing. Because each line gives you some sort of like characterization to well, you know, to the character, and it's also exposition, and it's like there's a lot of stuff that's going on there, but it just it really comes across as artificial. And and it's a creation engine game, so they're <laughs> yeah. cutting out the the awkward pauses <laughs> between each line. That's the oh, that's come, gonna be the other come thing. Come on is, now, come on. Here, give I'm them credit. I'm gonna they play might... it. I'm gonna play it at the pace that it's actually gonna happen. <laughs> Oh my god. Look at how it's coming together. That means there's a set. <laughs> Built by an intelligence outside the settled systems. It <laughs> <laughs> and then it cuts to Hamill. <laughs> I gotta go to the bathroom before before we start the Hamill yeah. section. <laughs> All while standing completely still. Yeah, like I can already pix picture the uh, the blocking of the scene. ML's not wearing the watch, and he designed the game. True. I 
I'm getting mixed signals. Are you guys generally excited for the game? Uh, what we are is we're seeing, like, there's a few red flags that are kind of uh, showing themselves. I think there's going to be a lot of loading screens, and I think I'm not really going to care for the writing. Convenient that ancient alien artifact is perfectly preserved and assembles like a three-year-old children's constructor. Well, you know, artifacts are like Legos. I don't know how to describe it, but the character designs all feel very cynically created, trying to cover as many bases as possible. I think those kinds of intentions do come across in the final product. Well, no, hang on, because it kind of depends on, like, who ends up being individually responsible for writing the main storyline. I almost feel like it would have been better if they just marketed side storylines and let the main storyline kind of be a surprise. It's not aggressively tongue-in-cheek, like the Outer Worlds, at least. It definitely doesn't seem like they're, um... They have like a, a punchline quota, but they could also be like smart enough to hide that. I wonder if is the PC gamer showcase done? Did they actually show anything there, guys? There's some kind of space game being shown. Oh, it's still going? It was like two hours, yeah. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, imagine. That's why they had to, to bulk it up. Ah, uh, yes. Textual writing is why it was good. It definitely wasn't that they had a competent storyline in Daggerfall and Morrowind. No, no, it was because it was textual writing. There's definitely not other games that do fine with voice acting. I don't believe you. Name them. I need sources. So, a uh, uh, source? <laughs> it's definitely an eclectic cast. What I'm looking forward to is that I think it'll be a fun project. Starfield? Yeah. Um, it could I, be. I think I'm going to enjoy making this video. Uh, it could be for me. Uh, it depends how how big I want to make this this video. I want to spend. I'm like... honestly, I'm oh. honestly thinking we should collaborate again, similar to how we did Fallout seventy six. We'll have to talk about how that would work. Yeah, we should definitely if... share resources. Yeah, at least that, because we could probably like split up the playthrough, like the pl uh, build types. Mm hmm Build types and probably the factions, too. Of characters. You've got Sarah Moore, I know, I already, I already called Exodus. dibs on Emil's, uh, Emil's contribution, so... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see the Space Raiders. <laughs> At this point, I have to. I think it's... I'm... It's my thing now. No, like, I want to have a November video release, so that kind of limits on how long I could make it. <clears throat> I know, that, that's kind of what I wanted. I really wasn't planning on doing, like, a big deconstruction. I was going to do just a review. I'm trying to have fun with the video. I'm not trying to, like, can set a record. If I'm going to do a deconstructed video, like, my, my thing is, like, when I do those sorts of videos, those sorts of projects, I want the game to be done. And I think this game's going to have a lot of DLC. Yeah, yeah. So. That's that's kind of the problem is like we're gonna be playing the launch version of the game, so yeah. you're not getting you're not getting the the deep analysis of all the the nooks and crannies because those have to be discovered. An adventurer, now constellations leader, Matteo, the theologian who believes that there's definitely something else out there. Noel, the gifted scientist and Sarah Morgan's protege, 
and Walter, a very successful businessman in the settled systems and Constellations financier. Anything. You got it? Yep. I, I, I can explain it for you if you want. Uh, Elder um, Mac Elder Maxon, <laughs> Scribe Baldez, Paladin Romani, <laughs> Knight Shen. Wait. You got that for you? Wait, who's Knight Shen? Who's Knight Shen? Uh, I guess the theologian would be the closest thing. I don't know. I, he he gave me um. He's new. He said he's the he's the new stereotype that Starfield is going to introduce. Or um similar to um the uh one of the brothers that we could recruit they were kind of goofy yeah yeah the the derpy uh the the nerdy kid that you recruit yeah. that never shows up again well i re you recruited the nerdy kid and i recruited the meathead yeah this that character is bethesda's austin contribution to this game yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thing goes as long as you have the money there's also Vlad, the ex-pirate, Sam Co. And these are companions. The space cowboy and Barrett. You know what I hate about these pirates? Completely resistant to my otherwise irresistible charm. You're dying in the first mission. <laughs> I could do this all day. That's got to be like the bit like so they didn't really talk a whole lot about him, right? So I'm thinking not a lot is going to really exist about this character because he gives you the watch. We know that. Yeah. So I'm thinking um is he he dies in like the first mission and then he, he gives you the watch that unlocks Constellation's headquarters. Or he's like um Preston Garvey uh where you meet him and he has like a whole thing in the beginning like for the first mission or two mm -hmm. and then he kind of just sits around in your settlement doing just giving you Maybe. a quest. I'm thinking like they got to set like well okay so if they were conscious, they would go, we can't kill the black guy in the first quest. <laughs> but if they were like trying to write a dramatic story, this guy's your mentor. He dies in the beginning. He gives you the key you need to go join Constellation. Mm. The journey you take with Constellation is just the first of many you'll embark on. The Settled Systems is home to all kinds of different stories, people, and adventures for you to uncover. This is the part I don't like. These aliens. Yeah. Like I said when we were seeing this live, I, I haven't seen any one of these that made me go, I've, that looks good. I genuinely like the barren worlds more than I like these um, lively worlds. Because even the fauna just doesn't, or the flora doesn't look right. It looks so out of place. Yeah, you've got your world designer, and then you've got like your kind of flora. Yeah, the flora fauna designers and stuff yeah. like that. And, and they're, and they're then not the, in sync. And the procedural, the procedural generation system acting as the middleman. Mm -hmm. Really trying it's to like, like synthesize these systems. Find me a location systems. on Earth where the where the flora doesn't like blend into the environment right find me a location on earth that only has four species of plant and four yeah. species of animal <laughs> oh also our mass effect oh because it thinks i'm not listening anymore mm. our mass effect soundtrack was stopped on the song jacob extended Then there's this yeah, thing. I... This thing, we've seen this thing before in the marketing. It's bad. Um, there's like this clip of them fighting it in one of the Constellation videos. And uh, there's like no feedback when you shoot it. And there's like, it'll like hit you and like knock you back just a little bit and take like 10% health. Like this is the, so far this enemy has been very unimpressive. Hopefully they tune it to be better. Deathclaw. Oh yeah, this game's Deathclaw. It's just some spider monster. <laughs> that you're gonna see on every planet. No, no, no. There's a different there's a different part in constellation of them fighting it.
So are the animals and stuff going to be like procedurally generated? Are they going to lo be locked to each planet? Or is it going to be like um, Mass Effect's cope for why like Pie Jacks and uh, Thresher Maws on like every planet? It'd be like, it's an invasive species that we accidentally brought to all these planets, blah, blah, blah. I'm not sure when it was, but yeah. Yeah, I'm calling it now. I think this, the, the animals and stuff are going to be the most, like, meme thing at launch. I think the animals are very out of place. Yeah. I think there's going to be a lot of videos of those animals like 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 walking on air and just mm -hmm. looking weird and yeah because weird. there's a there's a okay there's a centralized aesthetic to what they're showing with like the settlements and the ships and the the um the spacesuits and the guns mm -hmm. and what have you yeah and then there's the animals and the animals it are like really it, it doesn't even feel like it's made by a different team. It feels like it's made by a different studio. Yeah, like, like they were so not on the same page about the design. It's like, uh, it's just dinosaurs with like extra glands. <coughs> the United Colonies is where you'll find New Atlantis, the first major human settlement. Why is do we have this angle of Emil? Is he like sitting or is he standing? I think he's sitting and then I think the camera's below, like at his uh, sternum. It like he looks fat, but I've seen other like shots of he's him in where he's shape. like fucking ripped. Yeah. Yeah, the so, guy's the guy's fit. He used to be really big, but he lost all that weight. Yeah. So like they've got him like sitting just, on something and yeah, then like the camera's like below stool. him. And it's just like a loose fitting shirt and but it, and this, flattering camera it really angle. is like he wants to do uh what he, what he what she sees versus what he sees <laughs> in space here's that fucking cafe again with the five tables <laughs> with no sense of placement either so like these two tables are way too close to each other so like they're eavesdropping on each other's conversations then you got this awkward table by the door so like well, the the crew, you know, the the crew that cleans the floors at night, they came in, they moved the tables around, mm. and the and the morning crew couldn't be bothered to put them back in place. So, look, guys, we have windows that actually like work now. God, it looks bad. <laughs> so, like, th my big pet peeve these days with games is hair. Hair, uh, dude, I'm looking at it right now. Oof. There's no see the problem is, is that there's no like lighting being applied to yeah. them. There's no lighting. There's no shadows being like drawn off of them or anything. It's they almost like look. they're uh, like flat scale. Yeah. Like no lighting is being applied to any NPCs. But it's also just like the hair models look rough, and there's no lighting to kind of mesh the hairline. Like there's the yeah. hair doesn't cast shadows. It, it literally just looks like this thing that's just like just stuck to the top of their head mm -hmm. it's bad yeah that, that's really fucking bad I, I i hate bad hairstyles in games oh it's been rough lately M most of the games that i've played have mm -hmm. really rough looking hair whereas it's like weird. five years ago five yeah. years ago hair was great like i was looking at the hair in the jedi fallen order and there's like a lot of characters in this game I really, I really feel like it was because that whole like, like look at his hair effect or whatever, that that thing that like they had in Witcher Three where it, they, you know like dynamic hair and stuff, and uh, like that shit failed, it, it flopped. So now like developers just don't. And then we have anymore. this. Yeah, that looks even worse. How's this look worse? It's lit. It's in shadow. So there's a light source being applied to it, which causes it to have different like levels of gradient based on where it is in the scene you might not like the hairstyle it's fine if you don't like the hairstyle yeah but the effect that but it's look, applying and everything actually looks like it's still not great it's still not like perfectly realistic or anything it's not you realistic look at this but you look at this character model especially in like motion it's like the hair is what stands out the most or but... like this character's like kind of demented and so like her hair super you can tell her hair is greasy 
Like she doesn't like she doesn't wash it. She's yeah. got kind of helmet hair going on because she wears a yeah. helmet. Like this is a hair game, in my opinion. A good, nice, well, you know, nice hair you're game. Comparing, you're comparing a game that probably only has like twenty or so people on screen, and it, or it reacts NPCs. to physics. You can see it like kind of blowing yeah. in the wind. And then but, you've got, yeah. and then you've got this. <laughs> But also like the the way that skin is being done. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of stuff that's going wrong here. Like these these characters are bad. Like straight to modding kind of uh, character <laughs> design. The people who live here value. Like, look, there's no shadow under the bill yeah. of her hat. Yeah. Like, and it looks like there's like if the hat is clipping into her head. Like her temples are sticking out past the hair <laughs> or past the hat line. Law, discipline. So, yeah, these guys are guards. So this is the guard robot that protects the memorial that tells you it's a war memorial. There's more characters in this scene. See, I told you they just disabled everyone earlier. Now everybody's... The see, the, the other one was like too early in the morning and now yeah. everybody's um ai packages have them i yeah. wonder if that's if that's still a thing ai packaging if they, yeah if they're gonna still have that because they didn't it, have it in 76 it makes you wonder if these are like did diamond city have nameless citizens or was every citizen in diamond city no, name, a named uh, character i'm almost positive every like yeah besides guards, guards besides yeah. guards guards are always generic um no i don't think there were any generic named so does Unless every like character in this game have, around. have like ha actually have a unique entry in the game that's, engine? That's what I want to know. Like, can I spawn this woman with console commands, or does it is there just a generic citizen type that pulls from a list of names and uh, like uh, outfits of humanity? They can mm, chat saying there were in Diamond themselves. City though. I don't remember anybody in Diamond City being generic. I kind of think that there were, yeah, I think there were people in I Diamond City named Resident. Oh, really? True children Is that where NPCs of in each no, city? No, no, no. Okay. Listen, chat, this is our second watch through of this. We're just, we're getting more time to be able to pause and kind of look at what's going on. So did those, like, generic settlers and stuff, did they, those generic residents, did they have, like, um, AI packages as well? So, like, you know, like, dedicated sleep locations and stuff? Yeah, let's see. Uh, I remember Red Dead Redemption Two. Them talking about them, ha their AIs having packages. Um, so I'm looking at these guard outfits. I actually, like this is what I'm talking about. Like this is where the design is working. And like this level design looks good. This looks good. Mm -hmm. But the best part of this is that you can you can barely see the NPC face. You can't yeah. see their hair. You can't see the bad lighting. Yeah. It's all being masked by this outfit that's pretty good. And it, of course, it turns out the reason it's pretty good is because it's one piece. You can't mix and match armor. Yep, yep. They slept in random places. There was a package system tied to being generative NPCs, so generic. You could kill them, and they would respawn days later. Hmm. You ever think of yeah, so I'm, I'm going to say, like, they, so, they've yeah. taken those first steps towards... Uh, Doing, yeah, making this more, uh, you can have more generic NPCs and stuff. CDPR promised with Cyberpunk 2077, a city where each NPC shows a behavior and it was impossible, ended up being a big lie. I'm going to have to listen to what they said. Um, I only noted there being like two or three outward lies in Cyberpunk's marketing. One of them being like property ownership, I think. Joining up with a vanguard. Help the United Colonies even get your UC citizenship. Can't wait for that plot point. So these are going to be like, uh, I'm guessing these are going to be like your, what's the space bugs people that are fascists? 
your star yeah. citizenship. <laughs> Starship troopers. This oh, is gonna be like know. this is gonna be like your vaguely fascistic space empire kind of faction. Your systems alliance from Firefly. There's a million of fac factions like these. Yeah. And citizenship's not guaranteed. The Imperium? No, it's not going to be as cool as the Imperium. It's like, uh... I mean, it's not accurate, but it's like 50... Like, 20,000 years before the Imperium. New Atlantis isn't the only... Oof. Like, look at this. Oh my god. Can I get a mod to disable these things? <laughs> That's so fucking distracting. It just does not look right at all. I get what they're going for. It's kind of like a... Well, like, there's no way in hell, like, this is gonna... Like, what is this supposed to do? Like, a bird lands on it to get the flower, and then... Oh, it turns out it's a giant insect. It's like a massively biologically over-engineered Venus flytrap. Yeah. But, like, that would be the... Like, it would be tricking really dumb animals, so why does it need these, like, mantis mandibles and... Like, this chitinous armor? To, like, to what? defend itself against the, um, the space, uh, the space death claw that we saw earlier. Remember, it's an invasive species. So, like, with the, this is what we're talking about. With other stuff that they've shown us, there's kind of like a, a they talk a bit about there being, like, form and function to the, to the, like, aesthetic designs that they've shown. Yeah. Hey, Emil. This fucking Emil shot. <laughs> the true children of of earth you ever think of joining up with a but like things look nice and functional right Vanguard. it feels like the designer at least like kind of has an answer for why things are the way they are with these designs so it's yeah. like why is this kind of like um lapel strap here it's so that he can unstrap and kind of air himself out and like cool himself off because it's like obvious it's a t it's a leather kind of uniform colonies even so, like, what's all this stuff in the suit? It looks like stuff that you could, like, interface to and do, like, medical stuff. And there's, like, cables and, you know, there's a little bit of Did thought going into system? what you're you seeing. Know, but... And then there's these the aliens. And whoever designed these aliens are, like, it should be, like, a, v a mantis crossed with a Venus flytrap. And so, like, you kind of get what they're going for, but th there's, like... It's not thinking about the underlying biology. And it, remember, this, these are going to be things that are existing on a planet that probably has at most five other animals. Yeah. And they're prob none of them are probably going to have like any sort of relationship to one another. Maybe you'll have like a hostile species that attacks everything on site. But it's like, you know, evolution, there's a process behind it. That's kind of the point is um, it's clear that they've thought a bit about the function of stuff in this game compared to other stuff. And then you just have like random aliens. It feels randomly generated. It doesn't really feel like short of. No, it could be randomly generated. They just have an alien type that like has this uh, plant head that's designed yeah. to like trap birds or something. Well, so that it goes back to what I was asking earlier. It's like. Is every planet going to have unique uh, species on it? Or is it going to be like Mass Effect where and you'll see species, like same species on different planets? The other thing is if this was just like a weird enemy type that someone came up with, it'd be one thing. But like we could do this for every alien species that they're going to show us. Be within the United Colonies. The city of Sidonia. It all seems over designed. So there's this area again. This is on Mars. It's called Sidonia. Uh, on Mars, to this day, serves as the largest mining facility for the United Colonies. I always wonder, like, why are there people mining in the future? <laughs> like, they did this thing in Star Trek where, like, we gotta make robot workers to work in the mines. Or it's, like, android Dude. workers, and it's like, so, why, do, why do they need to have, like, so, sentient feelings? So, also, yeah, so tomboy robot... mine. Yeah, so the robots 
patrol the streets and tell people about the war memorials yeah. <laughs> and the humans are in the mines with lasers well you know unions the union yeah, uh, the union keeps yeah. the unions got my back yeah <laughs> they could they couldn't unionize uh the the uh tour guides and the war memorial guards industries We can't send people to the mine anymore. Well, and see, here's a robot in the mine doing a human's job while the humans are doing the robot jobs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? Okay, so like this is and it this is kind of like an outer world style joke, but it makes a lot of sense. Also there 11 goes back to um why are there humans here if you have robot labor that could do all of this yeah the robots seem pretty sophisticated the ro it's the it robots are doing more technical labor than the humans are in this scene as you pointed out already it, it yeah it's backwards <laughs> what why do the humans want the shitty mining job and the robots get like the advanced sophisticated kind of technical jobs This is the kind of joke that Outer Worlds thinks is too subtle. <laughs> also, holy shit, 11 hours, how fucked is that mine? It's the, that's the point. That's what they're saying with this little prop here, is that this is a dangerous mine. Imagine if you get into combat here, it goes down to, like, zero again. Yeah. <laughs> that would be cool, actually. <laughs> Beyond the United Colonies reach, you might find yourself in a much more wild and independent coalition of star systems. Oh, they're fixing his mouth noises, by the way. <laughs> For the people in the chat who are keeping up, there's this one thing, like, ML makes a lot of mouth noises, and they fixed it in most of the things, but then, like, in one of them, they just didn't try at all, and it was very noticeable. They're fixing it here. Look, another robot out there doing the jobs that a person could be doing. It's disgraceful, I tell you. Is it a human like child? The... No, I wish. I like the irrigation system back there that is literally just, like, we have those on Earth right yeah. now. That's how we irrigate. So it's like, in all this time, oh, it, it, out how it to... is pretty optimal, actually. It, it is, but... Oh, crop circles. Yeah. Yeah. This is Freestar Collective Space. So is that us, or is that somebody we're following? I think that's us. Alright, so this is the Icona class. I mean, uh, Freestar Collective. <laughs> Windhelm? Also, what's that? Okay, hang on. I'm picking up details here, okay? I'm thinking. What's this weapon this guy has? It's like a single shot, like, it looks like a musket. Oh, oh, the, the NPC. Um, I don't know. It's the musket from 76. It's <laughs> made it. It's, it's a very big lever action rifle. Space muzzle loader. So what is this? The blank post. The witching post? Hitching post. The hitching post. Oh, like a cowboy. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Well, what? One, week really... one weekend they played Red Dead and said, we need to, <laughs> we need to fit a cowboy town into our games. Uh, It's a space game. It, what? Are you telling? The f fucking f Firefly did it. Firefly did do a lot too. of a lot of things better, <laughs> but why is it called I, the Hitching Post? Literally, no. Like, are they all Larpers? Like the the colony ship they rode in, all they had was cowboy movies. <laughs> like, how is this a how is this possibly an understandable cultural reference in a society with spaceships? And there's no this, fucking horses. The oh my god! Emma, this, this, no, no, no! Emma's... Hang on. This is the perfect opportunity to put horses in the game. <laughs> All right, continue. 
The fact that Emil is talking about this leads me to think this is one of his creations. This yeah. feels like an Emil thing. This is totally an Emil thing because Emil loves like, for some reason he just Ideas. loves a city that is LARPing. Yeah. That's why we have a whole bunch of factions in Fallout 76 that are just LARPers. But this and is there's no there's no like the character has a six shooter on them like there is no mercy here yeah no like <laughs> they really are aiming for like space cowboy town yeah emma watched cowboy bebop and wanted space westerns i mean yeah like what is this aesthetic no like the buildings are the buildings are horrible but like so it's a outlaw town on, a, on in the frontier that routinely has to deal with dinosaur animals outside the walls that are super dangerous. It's the iconoclasts. I kind of like the building in the background there. It has this like brutalist sort yeah. of vibe to it. But yeah, that hitching it is almost building like, is fucking terrible. It's very utilitarian. Yeah. It's almost like that's the colony ship that they landed with. Yeah, yeah. So like they're working hard, they're making the best of it, and then you got the other side that's like got these ornate cities that are beautiful but like they're a bit more um a bit more uh fascistic authoritarian in the way that their society is structured whereas this is like this is freedom you can do what you want and what i want to do is larp as a cowboy god damn it <laughs> that's why we have a general store there's straight up a building that says general store on it in case you didn't get it yeah You know what's weird? All of these cities are walkable. Well, as there I understand no in Cowboy Bebop, most of the cowboy stuff was them LARPing too. Sorry, I'm playing with my keys. Um, <laughs> what an NPC? A decent number. Of, okay, uh, all right, number of NPCs. <laughs> Let's count. No. Yeah, I'm not going to count every time. I kind of get the point that, like, you can kind of glance at it and say, oh, yeah, it's less than yeah. 30 NPCs. What's wrong with General Store? It's Cowboy LARP. Again, like, all of these have, like, as somebody in chat pointed out, they forgot what Constellation is, but one can never forget what Westerns are. <laughs> Capital of the Freestar Collective is Aquila City. Diamond City. What? Okay. Bethesda, you know Bethesda loves is putting city in the name of their cities. Rivet City, Diamond City, Aquila City. Fallout 76 is kind of the exception because there's not really cities. Yeah. But. The Imperial City. The Imperial City. Vivek City. Vivek City was necessary because you had to distinguish between the guy and the city. Yeah. Atlantic City. <laughs> 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 I'm trying to think, like, uh, I think Skyrim's an exception to that, isn't it? I, like you'll sometimes hear people refer to like white run city because there's white run hold mm -hmm. but yeah, officially its name is just white run like i know it's a minor detail but like why isn't it just called aquila why is it called aquila city uh new york city atlantic city you already answered it the stone root inn is in aquila city Fixture. Okay, see, there it is. I was about to say <laughs> they could do something where it's like uh, you come in and you call it Aquila City and they kind of make fun of you. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, oh, that's the proper name, but everybody around here calls it Aquila. But then, like, literally, there's a line of an NPC saying that it's called Aquila City. The capital of the Freestar Collective is Aquila City. The Stone Root Inn is an Aquila City fixture. Again with these ugly NPCs. <laughs> like she's just supposed to be in shadow because this is like dingy and dark, but she's like being weirdly like she it's looks a bioluminescent. 76 light. It's the Fallout 76 yeah. light. 
I haven't seen that, so we might we might actually be okay. Danger relies on judgment and intuition. Uh, you I know a okay. random event in uh, Skyrim where somebody would challenge you to a duel. Well, now you can get challenged to a real duel. You know, when we saw the 50 second video on what they were talking about with Aquila. We really saw it all. This is no, this is not at all what I thought they were going to do. You could uh, watch on my stream. I'm kind of like looking at Aquila yeah. because they showed off concept art of what was going on with the city. And this is complete. This is where's the cowboy <laughs> LARP in these pictures? <laughs> it looks like they've got a centralized, like kind of reinforced building. And then there's like shanties around it. Yeah, the, it's poor living conditions. People are making the best of it, what they can. OK, this is their concept art. And then we cut over to what they're doing, Damn. and it's fucking cowboy what? LARPing. What the fuck? I mean, talk about a real downgrade from the concept art. <laughs> Downgraded from poor town to cowboy LARP. We needed something, you know, we, we, we tested the city, um, the, the testers said that it just felt too sterile, so we we made it Western Cowboy City instead. And Emma re was, re like, really in love with this idea. I wish this... I remembered where they show more concept art in other, um, other trailers. Yeah, I'm yeah. not sure where. Where we could see, like, the actual walls and everything yeah, like that. Yeah, where we got to see more, kind of of what they were thinking about with that city and then Ugh. I think it just it takes a lot of the edge away from it I can't take it seriously because it's cowboy LARP yeah I can take Red Dead what Redemption 2 seriously because it's set Fallout 70 sticks had the cowboy LARP too yeah they had the lever action rifle and oh, that's why they made them because they were making the weapon blueprints for this game. <laughs> Why are we dueling in a space game? Because it's a space western. Now I'm like going to like, hang on, Firefly. Like I said, like I said, if Firefly could do it, we can do it too. Yeah, this game's giving me like serious tonal whiplash. Firefly was like a beautiful meshing of its genres. It had, yeah, it had, it had the cowboy like, stuff. So like, this yeah. is the same show. You've got cowboys, horses, their horse-drawn carriage. But this is because it's like a low, low-tech moon, and they're dealing with like a local bandit problem. And then in the same setting, they have like this high-class aristocracy, like well-dressed uh, duel at the morning meadow, and they're doing a duel, but they're like. They build it as part of the culture. Like this guy gets away with murder because like he get challenges people to duel, but he's actually like really good at it. Same series D didn't really like tonally clash because it wasn't all cowboys all the time. Whereas like, I don't know, this is just like. Well, also, Firefly did have like a bit of a whimsical, funny edge to it as well like yeah. what they're trying to sell what they've been trying to sell with uh starfield for a while now both these guys we, take lord this knows series. we've gotten we've gotten a ton of palette setting uh, mm -hmm. uh videos it's supposed to be this really like grounded you know like everything's utilitarian and it's supposed to have purpose and then you have a cowboy larping town both of these guys are taking this situation seriously they're both about to fight for their life one of them is going to die and they both know that and they're doing a Western duel. Like, at some point, you stop LARPing and start taking the situation seriously. And it's a long time before we're going to draw at, at noon. In, it's not noon, in but whatever. In a setting like, with jetpacks and, you know, like, lasers and, like, massive machine guns and stuff. No, I'm going to stand here in an empty field with leather... With, my, leather with my assless on. chaps... <laughs> and my six shooter like at this what? point why aren't there horses in the game got the code <laughs> just make like you've got the code I, I think horse lady's still at bethesda this is their chance to put horses in the game 
Do I have to re? I'm gonna have to rewatch Firefly before this game comes out. Now. Yep. You've gone from a recommendation to you're gonna have to because you know full well that. Yeah. They're fortunately, fortunately, it's a good, it's a good run mm -hmm. through. Howdy, partner. Tragic, come on. tragically short. Howdy, partner. Come on down to Bethesda Land and see our saloon, <laughs> the Hitchin Post, and maybe you can catch the nine o'clock ride to Pirate Cove to visit the Crimson Cringe. <laughs> There's a, there's a reason good sci-fi doesn't have instant transport because these are the problems it brings. To do what's best for the people. Like they're using six shooters. Like this is a setting with spacesuits and smart guns and they have both collectively agreed to wear leather dusters and I use revolvers. Yeah, I could believe this in a setting where it's like it takes decades to travel between stars and stuff and like, you know, you can go mad when you're being put on Be ice. And here's why. Here's why. Because you can work on a revolver at when you're low on supply. You can't work on a smart gun. And so revolvers make sense in a setting where you're out of supply a lot. Yeah. And Firefly also had a scene where they were in a cowboy town, but like the main villain had a laser pistol. And now we go from Western to uh, Cyberpunk. I can't believe I didn't really, like, catch this the first time through. It wasn't obvious. It They hit you with it so fast, is what it is. <laughs> and once again, ML bringing the goods. <laughs> and M1911 has less moving parts than most revolvers. I mean, that's what's true, and that's what kind of makes regressing to Cowboy Times such a silly concept, is... Yeah. In all honesty, if we were to regress, we'd probably regress down to like the first world war. Yeah. Neon. And see, the, you were right. It instantly cuts to here's a co here's your total whiplash. Now we're in corporate <laughs> town where everything's modern again. <clears throat> and no joke, it's like it was 20 seconds. <laughs> That's why we didn't catch it, because it was 20 seconds. <laughs> oh, you were talking about why we didn't catch that the first time we watched this. Yeah, when we I, saw I it live. You were talking about the, I thought you were talking about the other uh, the other previews and shit. No, no, no. I'm talking about like the, when we watched this a few hours ago. Yeah. On started out as a fishing platform. But is now known throughout this is literally the groundbreaker you have the you have the railing in the middle that's going to go down to like the rest of the space station and then you have like heavy <laughs> advertising corporate hubs and it's the groundbreaker <laughs> nobody will dare sue us we are the ones who sue other studios i think <clears throat> are Aquila and neon part of the same faction Let's see. I think Neon's going to be like a middle ground. Yeah. You got to be kidding. Cowboy Town is the capital, right? Yeah, I'm thinking Cowboy Town's the capital of the free states. Yeah, the Storm Collective. Probes. Well, you notice them cowboys are all white. <laughs> but the UC is diverse. This shot of the club coming up made me nearly cry. Oh boy. As a pleasure city where almost anything goes. If you've got morality issues, this definitely isn't the job for you. Uh. <laughs> oh. What in the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh no. This is Bethesda trying to be. This is their cyberpunk. Uh, so we saw yeah. their Red Dead. Whoa! We, this is even. This is even worse. We Please saw. Stop. So we've seen their No Man's Sky. <laughs> we've seen their Red Dead. And now we're seeing their cyberpunk. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they wear their inspiration on their shoulders. Oh my god. 
<laughs> Please get it off my screen. This is this is amazing. Just the bad lighting. Because you're not you're not cyberpunk. You don't have cyberpunk's there, tech to make this look good. There is so, yeah. That's that's the funny thing too. Is like, it, to pull off the cyberpunk aesthetic, you need to do some serious fucking artwork. Reugen. Oh my god. Okay, we're <laughs> we're past it. <laughs> <laughs> just this, those dance animations this is crazy oh. oh my god i think there's more there's more people in this shot though than yeah it looks like 30 people this is definitely their cyberpunk because you're seeing a lot of like the functional utility go away for like the stylized cyberpunk yeah. aesthetic A lot of animations of NPCs just walking. What are these animations? Two identical NPCs speaking to each other in the last shot. Let's look. Oh no, we're going to see it again. <laughs> <laughs> so these guys, yeah, I think they're part of a gang. <clears throat> okay, we kind of make sense if it's gang members talking to each other. And brightest... These guys also could be part of a gang. They've got a uniform. By the way, still NPCs looking awful. Yeah. It, the facial hair, man. The facial hair. Of today it... for our... For future tomorrow. The, the fucking mustache. <laughs> Did you notice the carabiner is like melted into his jacket? <laughs> so this is like a like a low LOD like low res thing where like some of the stuff that's supposed to be distinct features of his outfit are like they're meshed into it to save on polygons. So instead of the carabiner being its own thing that's attached to him, it's just part of the torso. So this is um El Presidente from Tropico 9. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he failed. Uh, he ran out of money, and now he has to get on his hands and knees and beg for his life. And the lighting's still bad. The, li the lighting's terrible here. Once again, where's the shadows? Yeah, this Everyone is, this is not a good-looking environment. Boot up and ground up by me. Look, look at this NPC. <laughs> look at this fucking NPC. It really it really looks like a knockoff cyberpunk. It looks like Fallout 4 crossed with cyberpunk minus like five years of like Fallout 4 NPCs didn't look that bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's bad porn game hair. I kind of agree. He looks like a porn game <laughs> character. <laughs> and also you can see like the low deep like so this area hat can't be finished because look at this outfit no, look at the no. zipper the zipper doesn't look like it's zipped together it looks like it's fused together like somebody yeah. somebody welded his zipper shut is this guy supposed to have eyebrows or not he's definitely not committed to it <laughs> look at mass Maybe effect one is... npcs <laughs> <laughs> Maybe this is like earlier footage, right? Yeah, they were going to use this for a trailer like two years ago. And it only <laughs> just now is reaching the surface. The thing is like his outfit's finished. So some designer's just going to have to like completely restart with this outfit if he's going to fix it. And I don't see them spending Probably. the time on that. And so like this is it. This is what they look like. They could fix the face maybe. Yeah. What's wrong with a cyberpunk theme? There's nothing wrong with a cyberpunk theme in itself if it wasn't for the fact that there's also, like, it's literally No Man's Sky Town, Red Dead Redemption Town, cyberpunk town. It's they're, not yeah, a cyberpunk they're... aesthetic. It's literally just, there's, this is the town where they LARP as cyberpunk characters. And then, like, they go home and they switch into their, uh, they switch into their, like, athletic shorts and t-shirt. And get comfortable. <laughs> Strip all that leather shit off. Leon. 
try not to get yourself killed, all right? Reset murder scene, because uh, the blood is not going to be this dynamic to where <laughs> you get this kind of thing. Like, this bed, come on. This bed was made to to hold this body. <laughs> Man, I, I'm going to... I feel bad for all the uh, people who are going to be working the creation kit, and they're going to have this bed asset that yeah, they're like, that they never going to be able to use. Because <laughs> yeah. it's made for one thing. <laughs> This bed, it was made from my corpse. <laughs> Still with the, the bad looking NPCs, just badly, sh like, the shadows are wrong. The skin is messed up. Her hair looks like a wig. His hair looks plausible. They added flaws to, like, his hairstyle. That's so, a hairstyle that I would consider using. He's, if I can equip it. He's just now got to the bar from on his way home from work. Everything that's else literally, is just That's bad. literally the first hairstyle that I've seen so far that I would want on my character. They look like discount sims. The lighting's all over the place. The lighting really is all over the place. It's yeah. insane. Like, this area looks like it'd be a nightmare to play through because it just looks bad. It's an assault on the eyes. Yeah. Outside the bounds of civilized space. It's really weird cutting to the real people and seeing what their real hair looks like. <laughs> see what i mean with like the way that the shadows kind of accentuate the, the edges of his face he's getting lit from his left side yeah at like a 45 degree angle and so there's the shadow that's being created that contours with his face and you can see the way that his facial hair kind of flows and then you can see like the way that his hair is being held and tied back into a knot and it's got individual texture and lighting to it and you can see it kind of thins where he's uh, starting to bald up at kind of the top where his hairline's starting to recede <clears throat> you can see like his um it's just like he looks real because he's a real person and then you see the npcs everyone has been chewed up and ground up by you. look at oh. this guy oh my god contrast that with will shin <laughs> Try not to get yourself killed, all right? Note that we can instantly pick up where the light sources are when we look at the real footage, and we can't figure out where the light sources are when we look at this. What's creating yeah. these white reflections? Where's the red light coming from? It, it makes it look like everybody's skin's, like, super blotchy, too. Yeah. Because it's just... She... I'm not convinced she is not a robot. <laughs> She's she a looks... sense. She is a synth. <laughs> you need to timestamp that Mass Effect 1 no eyebrows, dude. Okay. <laughs> maybe she is a synth. Maybe maybe that's going to be a plot point in this game. This is Immol's town. This feels like, like, here's the thing. We're saying that this is Immol's town to, like, every <laughs> town in the game. <laughs> like something has to be not inspired by him <laughs> that front guy's hair looks almost all right that's what we were saying like this is the only hairstyle that we've liked so far that looked halfway decent and i'm sure i won't be able Outside to equip it the bounds of civilized space there are still plenty of unclaimed systems to explore but these areas are also home to the most hostile faction again look look at how real he is <laughs> look at how He's a real boy. Just look at and look at the environment. You see the individual light sources reflected in the whiteboards. It's in the galaxy. The great serpent hungers. All, all humans shall be made dust in time. A new face. This is the face of a brave runner here to challenge the Red Mile. They think the galaxy is theirs. So, like, these are these have got to be like the side factions that they're advertising. Yeah, the Snake People, the Red Mile, the Crimson Cringe, Tunnel Snakes rule. They are wrong. Look at him. What is that mustache? <laughs> Bro, shave that shit. <laughs> you 
You know they're raiders because they got a red bandana. This is kind of like a uh, kind of watchdogs. Why is she sitting on the bar when there's like empty stools everywhere? Well, you know she's spunky. What is her foot on? I think her like heel is supposed to be on the table. Or like she's pulling it up like she's no. in motion. No, she's not pulling it up. She's not in motion. To the crimson but I do feel like Ubisoft aesthetics from this area. Yeah. The way they the way they like graffiti everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Space tunnel snakes. <laughs> This man's hardcore. He's doing push-ups on his fists. It's not on his fists, on like a hard fucking floor. With, with his armor on. This reminds me of the meme of the Brotherhood guy doing push-ups, and then like one of the power armor knights like stands on his back. <laughs> <laughs> Always has. So, what is this animation? You think part of a quest or kill animation? Uh, probably both. Honestly, knowing how Bethesda works, leave no good asset under underutilized. Any thoughts on Avowed? I'll have to check out Avowed in more detail later. It, it hit us kind of fast. There was some stuff that kind yeah. of uh, was alarming to us. Yeah. In Starfield, we're pushing our cities and settlements further than we ever have. Hang on. Did I see that right? It belongs to the Crimson Fleet. It always has. Belters from the Expanse. I think the Expanse is a show I'm gonna have to watch. In Starfield, we're All right. Push oh, now, yeah, do you see it? Go. Do you see it? See what? Hold on, are we on the same screen? Because all I see is the Kiva City. Okay. Yeah. When you see it. I see no shot. No shot. <laughs> There's no shot. This is Space White Run. People have made the comparison for, since day one. I'm pretty sure yeah. we've looked at it. The building that's in the the tall building, it's in the middle of town. It is a bit deceptive looking. It looks like it's White Run, but I'm pretty sure it's in the middle. Pushing our cities and settlements further than. Here's this shot of this city again. This is where you see the from the landing pad. So I have to wonder, you get to the landing pad, you go through like your five loading screens to finally get out of the ship. Do you have more <laughs> loading screens you have to go through to then navigate the city? I imagine the city itself is one thing, but you know, going inside buildings and stuff, probably their own loading screens for mm -hmm. the most part. Like us per usual. Yeah. Than we ever have before. It's all there. God, the beach episode. Vice City. Your skin. Oh, your skin assets suck. How about a beach <laughs> area? <laughs> Waiting for you. A slice of humanity's future. These ship takeoffs kind of bother bug me. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about these being run in like Kerbal, and I'm kind of like <laughs> getting annoyed. <laughs> It's like, you better have your shit stowed away really well, because that's so, some hard G's you're pulling yeah. to do that. The pilot is passed out. The robot <laughs> the robot has to pilot this. But it's like, you know it's this way because the landing pad kind of blueprint mm -hmm. is yep. designed like this so that they're trying to avoid that the inevitable day one video of one of these ships taking off through a planet yeah. like this, or through a mountain. But, like, yeah, no, this is impossible. I mean, that's why we have bottom thrusters. Well, okay, that that is kind of a good point. Thru then... Thrust up, like, say, 5,000 feet, and then yeah. start your, like, flying up into the air. So they have to take off within a, within a square. That's what I'm saying. Like, they're trying to stay within the bounds of a cell, with the animation. Yeah. Do you think Bethesda is unable or unwilling to use more advanced graphical systems, such as the lighting you were talking about on the NPC earlier? I'm not sure what's going on 
with their... Um, I mean, obviously, you know, you've got your creation kit problems. It's probably really hard for them to implement kind of like the modern lighting techniques that people are using. Like, there's no fucking way this game has ray tracing. No. Or, like, even DLSS. Yeah, it's probably it's probably just, you know, this, this is the creation engine. They're not going to abandon it, so mm -hmm. they're just doing the best they can to... Uh... So it's this Keep old it. it's this old engine that their programmers don't know how to update and so they can't mm -hmm. add like new stuff to it. Why won't they use the Unreal Engine game? Well, it's not like people weren't talking about in, an engine switch back in 2018 when they started this project. I think it has to do with their workflow. Um remember like we're dealing with a studio where they've retained a lot of veterans and stuff yeah the last thing you want to really do is tell them that oh now you have to learn how to redo everything on top of us making a brand new ip licensing in... costs well the other thing is they don't have to use unreal there was uh what was arcane's engine called the void engine yeah that, yeah. that was talked about for a few years that they were going to switch over to void engine it's, it's, or like something made by id They've got multiple companies under the Zenimax umbrella that made engines that were really good. I I really think it just has to come down to their pipeline. And the other thing and... is, the, it's not true that you can't use an engine that's <clears throat> old. Because there are plenty of companies out there that are using 20 plus year old engines. Yeah. No, Dishonored 2 used uh, the Void engine. Hang on, what's going on here? No shot. Cities and but settlements further than we ever have before. I hate these fast cuts. There, waiting for you. Because something will catch my eye and it'll be gone by the yeah. time that. Okay, they're being eclipsed. There's like two planets. But then what's this planet behind here? What's going on here? So, ready to get out there? No yeah, space dumping. That's a lot of celestial bodies way too close to each other. Throughout the galaxy, there are so many things to see and so That was Earth's solar system that they were showing off. So, ready to get out there? Throughout the galaxy. Hmm, yes. This is Sol. Why are there three ringed planets? Well, Jupiter has rings and... Jupiter uh, has, like, almost in, imperceptible rings. Yeah, well, they're going to put them in. Well, see, Don't something happened. Actually, actually, there's four. Um, Because you see Ura Ura yeah, Uranus, Uranus and, and Neptune, Neptune also what, have uh, rings on them. Well, what's weird is Starfield so far has been pretty good about not overusing rings. It's not Outer Worlds where, like, yeah. well, every other planet in the system in Halcyon has rings. These are very, like, noticeable and perceptible rings, though, and that's kind of what's throwing me off. Yeah. Unless there's going to be some sort of gameplay reason, like, thing that we can Or, like, use a story reason, for. like a moon got shredded. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're talking about a moon getting shredded for every one of those yeah. giants. It's I just, think it's just... It's just that Bethesda isn't upgrading their engine to modern standards. If the internet wasn't lying to me, Red Dead 2 is running on the engine originally made for Tetris in the 90s. It runs on Rage Engine, which is Rockstar's kind of internal yeah. thing. But that, yeah, they've been upgrading that engine for a long time too. It's all about if you've got the programming staff. So this person's got a space bounty. Did they lockpick a uh, a safe mm. on a settlement that somebody owned? Yeah, player owned settlement. Oh, so or, so the solar system is why level aren't, one. Oh, system. somebody somebody in chat asks correctly. Why aren't Uranus's rings vertical? That is true. Uh, Uranus's uh, magnetic poles are skewed. Well, see, they've unskewed <laughs> in the thousand years or however long. Isn't it like twenty five hundred or something? Um, I think so. Somewhere around there. It sounds about right. Galaxy, there are so many things to see and More people at the couch. 
Where do you think this couch is? That's a good question. Look at how it watched me walk through this field with my gun out. That's kind of what I'm not getting with their little with their formula here is you it seems like there's just going to be these long sections of wa running through fields because there's no like like Skyrim had horses, but this game doesn't. <laughs> where's our space horse? Where's our uh where's our uh, ATV and our Mako? And we're not going to be the only ones asking that question. Um that was one of the first things people asked about No Man's Sky. It's like, oh, why is there, like, no land-based vehicle for us to, tra like, travel around? Yeah. It took a while for them to add that. Yeah, No Man's Sky, I think, was, like, its second or third update that added ground yeah. vehicles. And it is still a bit of a uh, weird place. Yeah. If this yeah, game has land vehicles, they would have shown it. I'm telling you, uh, it doesn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... Like I was saying when he was talking about fast traveling to your uh, to your ship or whatever, that would have been the perfect opportunity to be like, or get on your bike. Yeah, get on your space Jeep. Yeah. Imagine it, like, sponsored by Jeep. <laughs> uh, Tears of the Kingdom has cars, Starfield doesn't. True. But the most important story Where is the Zelda-inspired part of the game? <laughs> I'm the type of person who spends hours in character creation. Oh, here we go. And I think people are going to be really excited when they see all of the improvements we've made. Not with those hairstyles, I won't be. I like that he's showing, they're showing concept art. Like they're trying to delay showing character creation as long as possible. <laughs> One of the biggest overhauls was done through. Hey, Brazil. He's got the vault tech hoodie. Do you have, do you think they have like a uniform where like there's a day where you have to wear Bethesda merch? Nah, because we would have seen it in this whole video. So this guy really he's, is he's, like, I think he's the first person who's actually, we've seen wearing, wearing uh, merch. Everybody else is yeah. wearing like business casual. Business casual or like just t-shirts. Like graphic t-shirts of other things it's a generation system we scanned a wide range range of faces from different age groups and ethnicities this fucking guy in the <laughs> bottom left corner <laughs> he's the dude who, who's like he's the dude who's smiling at in his mug shot yeah <laughs> <laughs> this guy is going through life happy <laughs> And by mixing and matching all that data, we were able to create highly detailed and diverse characters. We use that exact system to create all of the characters and NPCs you're going to see in the game. So any character you see almost always is a character you could make yourself. What about the hairstyles? Sky what about the so hairstyles? Skyrim had the same thing, and but then they had hairstyles that I couldn't equip. Hey, come on. Come on. Okay. They're going oh, for like a jib. Awake. They're going for like a jib wake up sequence, but like, there's something about it that has no heart. How hey, about take that? Take it easy. You were out cold. Uh, no physical you were out cold damage. A couple of days. Really the jury's still out. The awkward pausing in the line where his face resets because the emotion <laughs> has uh, reset to default. <laughs> so it's like jovial emotion, like joy emotion, and then the line resets, and he's just. Back to stone face staring at you. He's, he's he's given me some um majestic vibes. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go, fire team majestic. <laughs> oh, hello, lady. Um, it's no Commander man. Palmer, Who actually. Ring any bells? Any of this look familiar? No, he's literally giving me majestic yeah. vibes right now. The only one I remember is Thorn, so... I don't remember their CO was. I name. almost feel like if I was making this, I would have just cut straight to character creation from them talking about it. Like, uh, the Brazilian guy looking at character creation to just show us this. Yeah, yeah. I guess they wanted to show that it doesn't just immediately start. You were out cold for 25 years. <laughs> oh my god 
<laughs> You're like a pre-war character that like <laughs> gets waken up from cryo. <laughs> also, okay. it's been pointed out many times these fucking sliders that they're choosing to use. Oh yeah, yeah. What did people say it was? It was like DNA. A DNA. Yeah, it's like a DNA test. Oh my god. Oh yes, I can We're play gonna... as an old woman. We're gonna say oh my god to every character they show. <laughs> Like honestly, we'd be better I'm off like, like oh, 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 I'm playing as a fucking overseer on one of my characters. Yeah, you, <laughs> you have to. Like the refer the references just build. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> the fucking facial hair. This is the preset that the, this these are the presets, by the way. These are the presets that they're choosing to show us, too. Yeah, this so is what they're proud like of. The cream of the crop. Oh my god, what is going on? You start. The... <laughs> your character create? Any Hold good? On. Any good characters here? <laughs> so we got Cletus here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Sten <laughs> from uh, Bio uh, Dragon Age. Yeah. And then you got. You got um, retired retired police officer. He's yeah. now he's now security guard. He's training like rape, he's training like rape prevention classes <laughs> on VHS. <laughs> this is the game where they're telling us that they did photogrammetry with real people because. Uh... <laughs> Well, well what see, did they, they took they took the photogrammetry and then they mixed it all together. Did so they literally like pull them off the like street? Mutants. Yeah, I'm like you mix them together, so like. Pick from a lineup of forty presets, and that'll be your starting point. Yeah, it's gonna be my starting point because there's gonna be a lot of fucking work <laughs> needed to do to unfuck these character <laughs> models. <laughs> I, I like this dude, like, his cheeks and everything are super wrinkly, and then his forehead is, like, perfect. Mm-hmm. Well, of course. There better be a fat slider. You're looking at it. <clears throat> Your journey from there can be as detailed you got hips, or though. as quick as you want it to be. This new <laughs> system has more to offer. Than... It can be quick? It can be quick if I'm only gonna play in fucking first person. <laughs> We said it last time, and it's just become, like, I think it's worse now. They get, they made it worse. Yeah. I swear to, I swear, hang on. Starfield, it's gonna be, like, difficult to find right now. This is a new one. But I need the old gameplay reveal. No, this is the new one. Official gameplay reveal. Sign in to confirm your age. Oh, for fuck's sake. Whatever. Than ever before. Uh, maybe his forehead has some wrinkles, they're, they're like but... They're, like, regressing. Yeah. I feel like the next thing that they're going to put out is Oblivion. <laughs> like that, that's the next step in the process. <laughs> Like, the only games I'm thinking of that they've made that had worse, kind of aiming for realistic, but had worse faces, was, like, Fallout 3 and New Vegas era. Like, it, well, the, everybody has the underbite kind of facial presets. The problem presets. is, like, we're getting into the Uncanny Valley. And, um... No, the, uh, Fallout 3 was them going through the Uncanny Valley, and then they had they had Skyrim and Fallout 4, and then, like... At some point, they started to regress. Like, how does the facial hair look like that? Hang on, what's a game that has, like, good facial hair? Uh, uh... I know it's not this game. This, kid, this kid's a dweeb. But look at that hair. Look at that hair. It's like... I like this character model because, like, they're intentionally giving him flaws that make him look human. Like, he's not a model by any stretch, but he's not, like, he's not a mutant. This is this is a mutant. Rip. 
Red Dead Redemption 2. Yeah. Hang on. I don't want to close my salty shrimp <laughs> pasta video. Red Dead Redemption 2 beards. Yeah, look at this. Look at this facial hair. Like this is this is their idea of scratchy. And he's got a horrible complexion. Ignore that. That's Arthur Morgan. He's dying of tuberculosis. But look at these beards. Look at these fucking beards. <laughs> oh man. Arthur's in the last stages there of uh Yeah. He's like he's actively dying of tuberculosis <laughs> at this stage in the game. I don't know why they this is this is the Arthur that they decided to show off. <laughs> But like, look at this facial hair system, and look at the hair. And then, <laughs> <laughs> if you if you like, again, if you went if you showed up to your male friend's house with this as your mustache, <laughs> they would hold you down and shave it. <laughs> Why didn't they take inspiration from Red Dead in this respect? <laughs> it's too hard. It's too hard. Did they glow pubes to his face? It looks like fucking glued <laughs> facial hair. It looks like we're pretending. <laughs> I like these, oh, uh... Oh, man. The hairstyles, man. 39. Alright, so it looks like there's like about 40-something hairstyles. Yeah. This is your lead character artist. This is the kind of beard he has. He's got a nice full beard, kind of a weak mustache, but that's hair color, not consistency. This guy should know what a beard looks like. <laughs> this guy should know what hair looks like. He's got that Ross Scott type of hair. This guy does we not we skip chest day. And then like, that's the lead character artist. This is what he created. <laughs> <laughs> let the player get as close as possible to make whatever they want with the i think they they invested a ton of money into photogrammetry and it didn't work is what happened mm. and they don't want to like admit that they wasted their money on that and so like this is what they're gonna ship Dude, day one. Day fucking one. Character customization mods. Those those are so hard, though. Those those take some time to make. I know. Like, there's there's a lot of bad Skyrim ones. Yeah, like, even Skyrim now, there's no mods that add, like, hair. That's the Gigabrain play. Third person plays worse, so try to force players in the first person with nasty character models. <laughs> Yeah, but then your eye level with like the NPCs that look like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they already said what you see in game is what you can make in uh, in the character creator. This is wild. Various facial looks you can blend <laughs> together. The dermesthetic and makeup. The Starfield, they did not scum. want to want to show off. Ours, piercings, teeth settings. It's a lot, but I think it's the most fun to use. <laughs> <laughs> that fucking smile that slow growing <laughs> smile oh my god look at watch watch it that's a that's a gift right there i want to see that on tin or tonight settings it's a lot but it's the most fun to use once again dude smiling at his mug shot <laughs> Like he is grimacing hard. You can see <laughs> see the tendon in his neck. Yeah. Like he is smiling hard. <laughs> yeah, I killed those nine people. What are you gonna do about it? Now you're just hating. This is not what a smile looks like. This is what a psychopath would make a, their smile look like. <laughs> And once again, it's the, it's the facial hair that really just yeah. really craps the bed there. Oh, man. More than just how you look, this is also where you start to decide. I'm trying to get through this part be. because, That's frankly, like we're laughing at it. The NPCs are ugly. We figured that out. Okay, new stuff, maybe. All right. 
So this is the background tab. I don't think anything new is here. It's just the usual. You pick a background and it's got three skills. I wonder if there's a, if there is going to be a make your own or if it really is going to be limited to this. They're literally doing the life paths that are in Traveler. <clears throat> I think was, what's weird is why wouldn't you let players pick their own starting skills? There's got to be one that's that. Just an adventurer. There's there's got to be, right? I don't know. I'm not seeing like a button. Like usually well, there's it's... there's a scroll thing at the bottom. So it could be like at the final one. Oh, maybe, yeah. Backgrounds give you a bit of back backstory and start you out with three, three basic skills. From chef to dusty. You know, the crew still has a betting pool about which restaurant critic you must have crossed to wind up here. Please tell me there's a Dark Brotherhood contract to kill this woman. <laughs> <laughs> Ro um, Ronin, but no gunslinger. Ooh, true. So it's what's what I'm thinking here is maybe there won't be an adventure, like a generic adventurer, because there's they dialogue. Need to have this yeah. NPC. Oh, you know, this NPC needs to ball bust you about whatever you pick. Yeah. This is literally like this is the NPC that's going to ball bust you for all your decisions. We have a betting pool for which restaurant critic you pissed off. No, you don't. You're just saying that because I picked Chef. What's so she's probably the only one that mentions your background. They do say, like, allude that there will be other points where your background gets mentioned. Yeah. I have to imagine it's pretty rare, though. My God. A cooking-based crime? Finally, a chance for me, the chef. <laughs> like, I think I'm legitimately going to forget what I picked. And be surprised later on, like, oh yeah, I did pick Ronin. Great about backgrounds is you never know when yours is gonna come in handy. Oh yeah, I did pick Maybe Overseer. See restaurant, talking to some guy, and suddenly you learn he needs a beast hunter to help track down a monster. Fine, I. <clears throat> this what? sounds like they're sounds talking stupid. up something that isn't really gonna play out the way it sounds. Well, it's it like it sounds like. You'd be you'd be walking up to every NPC having these conversations. Hey, are you, you in need might... of anything? Yeah, exactly. And it's like, first oh. off, we're probably not. If they're doing the generic uh, NPCs and stuff, then it's like, okay, we, well, don't talk to anybody that's, that has a generic name. Uh, so then you've got to hunt down the people who are actual NPCs, and then it's probably gonna be like Skyrim where you talk to them, and it's pretty much obvious right from the get go that they're gonna have a quest for you. And you know the feeling I get. Remember when Will Loves Video Games said that, like, 90% of NPCs you shouldn't be able to interact with? Yeah. This is this is going to be the game that that concept made manifest. Mm-hmm. I'm just thinking, like, are you carrying a diploma around that says, I am a beast hunter, and this guy just takes you at face value? It's going to be one of those, why couldn't I lie about this, creators? And then Bethesda's gonna get scared, and they're gonna hate players' response to it, and they're gonna, like, regress. Yeah. This is them being brave, and it's not gonna work out, because they're gonna do it badly. I don't know you, and I don't care to know you. <laughs> I probably should stick to professionals anyway, given what happened the last time. We're also giving you the option to customize your build even further by letting you pick up to three traits. Traits are completely... Backgrounds just seem to be a blanket for skill checks. I think it, it's like another place that skill checks could interface. Time will tell like how often they get used. Completely optional, and they come with their own advantages and disadvantages. What I like about traits is your background is cemented, but your traits are not. Hey, I just got I got over that introvert thing. Yeah. I, I genetically modified myself to get rid of my alien DNA. <laughs> I forgot what it was like to grow up on the streets of Neon. <laughs> like, some of the... Like, it's been pointed out before. Some of these aren't traits. They're backgrounds. Yeah, the backgrounds, yeah. 
You could choose to meet your biggest fan. Uh, you can write it down. <laughs> Adoring fan meme. Even he looks bad. <laughs> he looked better in Oblivion. Oh my god. I can't believe they unironically Wait. brought him back. Oh, come on, what it's the meme that? factor. What is that thing on the right there? So you haven't noticed that the companions have like these traits. Oh, so they have their, they have their okay. own traits. Uh, so he's right. good at scavenging, concealment, and weightlifting. Because he'll carry your... Oh, wait, no, he doesn't carry things in Oblivion. <laughs> Remember? <laughs> the Adoran fan has been hitting the weights, apparently. He got, he got sick of getting his ass yeah. beat off that mountain. <laughs> really, he's you. He'll join your crew, and he'll give you gifts, if you're willing to put up with this constant commentary. I can't believe I get to stand near you, breathing the same air. I've got to have every molecule. My favorite trait is kid stuff. You have to pay some credits to support your parents, but they're very sweet and it's really fun to go visit them. Honey, we got These are my parents? I didn't oh, no. catch this the first time. These are my oh, fucking no. parents? Oh no. Hey, remember how we made Liam Beeston look like you in uh, Fallout 3? I should have thought about Wait. that. Like, how does that work? <laughs> Dad, what's going on here? <laughs> Got ourselves a visitor. Oh my god. I came across some <laughs> Yes, that that that's your mother's response to you visiting them. No, oh, no. The last time I saw you, you stole credits out of my wallet. You stole my painkillers. <laughs> hostile zealots in space but because i had chosen a trait that made me the same religion as them i was able to get by without any issues yes that's the... oh well actually i happen to be a card carrying member of the church of scientology yes yes so it serpent. really it really is just like the the religious traits are just for random events that's not a trait that's what i'm saying what? The <laughs> they don't know what traits and backgrounds are. There's another great one that gives you a damage buff when your health is low, but mercenaries will randomly show up and try to kill you. How does that make sense? This sounds like an XP and money farm thing, but also like... Oh, it's the Dark Brotherhood event, but it's like, why does it... Why does it give confer a health bonus when your health is low? Or a damage bonus when your health is low? Like, what's the internal logic? No matter what you choose, there will be plenty of ways for you to tell your story. And if you want to remove a trait, there are ways to do that too. What? Glad I cleared up that alien DNA problem. I'm really curious how the introvert uh, trait gets cleared. I I just got over it. <laughs> is there like a is there like a quest where we have to like um interact with a therapist or something like that? We have to go to like some sort of group therapy session, or it's like we have to put on a play. Mm. We we join like a fucking yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we join a theater group. Have sex. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> of you. It's a Once again, for the eyes. Oh. simple thing. Where's the ledge that you're standing on that you knock him off of? There's a place in Oblivion that people do this. They we wanted to go the full not. way, but they just... They like, this just is the fast it. way of doing it. And he's yeah. got the double barrel. With a holographic sight. Always the dumbest thing. You can mod your double barrel to have a holographic sight in Fallout 4. Fucking why? It's a double barrel shotgun. Venture. Can I remove my parents, try something else out, then get my parents back? 
<laughs> yeah, you like disown your parents and then like you have to apologize the next Thanksgiving. <laughs> we'll let you discover that on your own. I don't know. You kind of spoiled the joke with the adoring fan one. Yeah. Like, what's left to discover with the adoring fan thing? It turns out he's a slamming companion. He's actually. got an amazing side quest line that really explores where his uh, where his mentality came from. And you can and you can romance him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sex scene with the adoring companion. <laughs> now that... That would be something. This is not the uh, sizzle reel you think it is. Fucking cross-eyed NPC. <laughs> Once you've built the perfect character, that's when your journey can really begin. We took what we loved about skills and perks from our previous games. Hey, Tim. And put them together to create an all new skill system. The dragons of, uh... Each time you look... What? So it's, a, it's literally a, a squid, but it's on ground. That's a lot of XP. Yeah, what, just got also, <laughs> what's weird is like every instance we've seen of them getting XP is like 5 to 20. Yeah. So That's like, definitely like a scripted thing for the, for the it, trailer. He fell just a little short, you know, and he wasn't <laughs> in the mood to, <laughs> to get the. <laughs> you couldn't fake it, it was too hard. What level was the creature? Like 45. He's level 10. Then he's level 10. Hmm. Hmm. I doubt it takes 4,356 XP to get from level 9 to 10 either. So it's like, I feel like he was probably at level 1 or 2. And then they did that and gave him. There's there's all sorts of weird, weird there's, things going on. There's with something this. off with this. <laughs> level up, you get a skill point. Which can be used to unlock or rank up skill. Okay. We've made it here. The thing that we were waiting for the, mo the, mo the most. Okay, so I'm looking at this. I'm looking at uh, at the skills up at the top there. Um, mm -hmm. There's no magic related one. No, so. it's just it's the thumb. It's it's yeah. So it's literally the thumb. It's independent of the skill system. There is no progression to it. I'm trying to Together, see the engineering so skill because they system. they're gonna flash some some of these skills really fast. Yep. But you can see we can get to watch this again. He gets 75 experience and then go. boom. Yeah, yeah. So four so thousand. And then they they enter the console command to. Yeah. So like it's probably like the usual instant console command thing that opens that you can kind of mask. Yeah. In editing. Yeah, you can cut that pretty easily. So. Carrying over 1,200 shotgun shells is hilarious. No notes. <laughs> He's using a rifle of some kind. But... Level up, you get a skill point. Which can be used to unlock... Best there is. Oh, that's the quest, right? Okay. Robotics. In an age where robots and autonomous turrets are employed... Da -da, Oh, it doesn't say anything. Spend six more points in tech to unlock expert tech skills. So, okay. So you can't just jump into any tier that you want. If you want, like, a purple skill, you have to invest eight points mm -hmm. in gray. Or probably four points in gray, four points in teal. Oh, my God. This is going to be so arbitrary, too. Yeah. It just just like the Fallout uh, Fallout Four leveling system, and it says nothing about like what the benefit is. So like you're gonna spend nope. all these perk points to get here and have no clue. Nice. How this valuable is what it I, is. This is what this I love. This is what to I see. live for. Oh boy, 
Remember when they were saying how they want to make games that aren't designed for, that, are, that are designed so that people don't have to use like wikis and stuff mm -hmm. like that and spreadsheets. And then this is how they make their leveling systems. Yeah, because it just and works. Like, you know? Yeah, yeah. You, you can. You'll just feel it. All right, I'm gonna use the restroom before I, I gotta relieve <laughs> myself before I de deep dive on skills. So. <laughs> Oh man, the interface of this game is, um, it's looking really rough. We're gonna, we're definitely gonna need a, a Starfield UI. I wonder how quickly it's gonna take, how, how quickly it's gonna, it's gonna get out there. There's probably people who are already um, looking at these trailers and going, okay, here's what we can fix with our with our UI mod. Why is this model, like, moving back and forth? <laughs> Star UI. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, maybe Pat's pissing into a bottle right now. And that's what we're seeing. Hey, chat. Yeah, your your model was like, uh, kind of moving around while you were away. Maybe he picks up something. I don't know what, it, what though. <laughs> Do you have like a curtain or something fl like flapping in the back? <laughs> No, that's the weird part. <laughs> so I was wondering how long it's going to take for... Uh, somebody suggested the name Star UI. You know, mm -hmm. your your Sky UI overhaul. Mm -hmm. I'm, to... I'm thinking there are people who are watching this trailer right now already taking notes about what they're going to have to fix. Yeah. The UI people are putting together a doc. Yeah. If I was going to use a bottle, I wouldn't get up. I wouldn't stop the stream. I just, <laughs> I would just play the video and do it. All right. Here we go. Rank of skills. Payloads. Any pilot can haul cargo, but it takes special determination and training to maximize cargo space. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm good. Oh, uh, see, I'm good at Tetris, so I'm more efficient. Really? Um, yeah, you know, it's, oh, that's the, um, that's the inventory manager. Hmm. Oh, 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 I actually really vibe with this. This is the excuse that I would tell people at my last job to make it, to justify my job, to make mm -hmm. it sound like I actually did something. Well, not, any, not anybody can efficiently use space on a shelf. It is kind of true, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> There's an art to this. That's why I'm spending six hours working on this. No, it's not because I don't want to deal with anything else right now. It might Listen. be the actual skill descriptions are locked until you're able to actually unlock it, which is probably worse than it is now. That's still a bad idea because to know if I want to invest, invest in the earlier yeah. skills, I kind of need to know what I'm like working towards. Yeah. So you can't even like sit down. They they heard my threat. You can't even like sit down and read all of the skill descriptions to kind of get an idea of where you want to build your per your class. It really is going to be like kind of shooting in the dark, and then like people are going to be like, "Oh, you fucking idiot! Why'd you invest in that?" And it's like because of fucking like there there was literally no knowledge of what yeah. was good and what was bad. Like yeah, my cyberpunk character sucked. I had no clue. Am I going to have to, like, is my first 24 hours, like, the character that plays the first 24 hours just going to be a throwaway thing? It's going to be if... learning the console command and then, like, <laughs> unlocking perks to see if they're good or not. Yeah. And it's like, okay, this one's good. I'll I'll reset it and, uh... I wonder if these perks would inv completely invalidate any ship design stuff. Well, it's definitely going to be, like... I feel like, what's the scenario where you're not picking this? The inventory manager thing? Yeah. 
Um, if you don't pick up a lot of stuff, I guess. If inqu if equipment burden isn't really that big a deal. You're not really doing any kind of like transport, I guess. With the standardized digital locking mechanism. No, see, it's the same thing. Well, no. No, okay, so the ones you can unlock give you more verbose descriptions on the right. Not much more verbose, but... It looks like they've got the same basic mentality Fallout has where... Uh, so I can't believe someone gave me shit about this. They said I was stupid for wasting points on hacking because the hacking minigame is easy. As though what you're investing in is not just getting a license to, to hack. To, yeah. Like, you cannot interact with advanced terminals in Fallout 76 unless you invest in hacking. You, same with uh, same with lock picking because it's a Fallout game. Yeah. For whatever reason, Elder Scrolls games you can unlock whatever you want, but uh, Fallout. I mean, the problem with Elder Scrolls has is that there's no point in investing in lock picking. Yeah. I don't think anybody ever does it unless they have a mod that like reforms the skill. All right. It's all, like, okay, three of these are just, you get access to, like, a higher level lock, and then the fourth one is just, you make the game easier. Which, I mean, like, I guess that's what you get out of a lockpicking skill, but... Is this lockpicking or hacking? Is it both? I, th I think it's both. Because this is lock picking but it's in the tech tree so if there's hacking it would be in the tech tree as well mm -hmm. i'm thinking that it's like it's a uh, centralized I think, yeah i think it's both into one skill they, they heard our complaints about fallout 76 don't worry we'll fix it <laughs> completely cuts it <laughs> we'll fix no, it no, no, as, no. They, as they whip out the scalpel <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm sure it's in there somewhere guys you got to give them credit <laughs> have you guys talked about the minimum requirements and saying to me that i could play red dead 2 and cyberpunk well but not this for how the game looks yes it's the and it's the usual like you need a beefy computer to just overpower the game <laughs> that's all you're doing is overpowering it fallout 4 all over again So you spend a skill point, unlock it, and now there's a challenge progress to pick pick five locks. Wow, how challenging. Ranks are unlocked by completing challenges. Yes, but will I get XP for lock set reset? That's that's the pressing question. Ranks are unlocked by completing challenges. Guy's overcomplicated. You just listened, he'd explain it. Yes, but then like we might miss something and we'd have to go back and watch it all again. So I remember like we've had debates about this because it's confusing. Yeah. So So what I, what I think it is is you need to do the challenges in order to unlock the ability to invest into the next rank. Yeah, because there's a button that says rank up. Rank up, yeah. So, okay, so it's like a mix of, like, it forces you to use the system as you get better at it, but also mm -hmm. spend the skill points, too. Yeah, so it's it's a hybrid between Fallout and Elder Scrolls. I think they changed the firearm challenges from reload X amount of empty magazines to kill challenges. No, you're mixing things up. So there's a reload, there was a reload skill, and there were firearm skills. And the firearm skills even back then showed that they had kill challenges. Yeah, yeah. If there's still a reload skill, then I'm going to imagine it's tied to reloading. Oh boy, can't wait to sit there and fire one bullet and reload. <laughs> Associate. No, 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 that's going to be one of those things where it's like, but it only counts when you're in combat, but it's not yeah. going to tell you that. 
At least it'd be easy to test. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, I made no progress. Okay, cool. <laughs> Let me go to the level one planet. And, like, stand on a rock that an alien can't reach. <laughs> Let's go. That's their mini game. Mm -hmm. It's just line the pins up with the opening. Put the put the put the the round peg in the square hole. Mm. Uh, I mean the the round peg in the round hole. Mm. Okay, so he's got no skill ups. He's just completed the rank. But it looks like he's challenge. Yeah, so you don't spend mm. skill ups on subsequent ranks. Mm. Wait. But earlier when it's okay, okay, my brain's hurting here. So earlier the like the purple skill said you had to invest six more points in tech. Does that mean you to get all of the things on the purple level you have to oh. buy all of the things above it? No way. No fucking way. So I have to buy nah. a bunch of skill I have to buy into a bunch of skills I don't want. To unlock nah. lower level skills that I do want. Nah. So you cannot possibly learn how to play Freight Tetris without learning how to l pick locks. Nah. I, I refuse to believe that. <laughs> that would be way too, way too limiting. But it said that you need six more. Does it, do you think it counts ranks? I think so. Challenges become increasingly difficult. Yeah, difficult. Okay, so he ranked it up, and then he goes down. No, no, no I think you still you do you still have to buy it. Well, uh, let it finish. Ranks. I think it's editing. I think he's. I think he's. I, I really think he's buying those ranks, though. Depends like on if he's he spending skill points. spending That's spending good. points. Wait, can we go back to that? Oh, oh, we are. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, so let's pay attention to, like, the skill points down there. It goes so fast, you can't even see if, like... They're de they are doing editing fuckery here, though, which makes it even more fucking confusing. Like, why? Can, can you just please give us a clean shot of somebody ranking, like, two, two things in a row? Okay, you don't have to buy everything. He needs two more skills in tech. And he's, there's two left to buy. Okay, but you do have to okay. buy most everything. What? I'm telling you. Spend, well, it says spend two more points in tech. So when do I spend skill points? Well, you spend skill okay, points so to spend unlock rank one. Unlock, yeah, unlock rank one. That gives him the challenge. Are unlocked by yeah. Completing challenges associated with that skill. And you might think it's straightforward, like he's saying, you get ranks by completing challenges, but then why is there a rank up button? He had a skill point. Okay. He had a skill point and it went to zero. It's <laughs> Please, just cut it, like, 50 frames earlier. That's all. Like, why did you have to make it... Why? Why did it have to be so fucking convoluted? So, okay, this this puts me a little bit more at ease, because it's like, alright, you just need to spend the points. Mm -hmm. So you don't need all, like... All you don't need to buy everything. Fucking... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ugh. But you do, have, you do still have to invest, like, a minimum number of things into tech yeah. to get stuff that's probably going to be arbitrary. Yeah. Challenges become it's fall it's Fallout 4 all over again. Difficult as you work your way to higher Yeah, it's edited cuz you can see like one frame it'll be empty and then the next frame it'll be full and he'll be Yeah. Like why? I don't think you can skip ranks by like spending skill points. Um I wouldn't I, imagine so. No, I think what it is is you unlock a rank, you get the challenge, you complete the challenge, you can spend another skill point. Yeah. And that's how they'll prevent people from, like, banking a bunch of skill points and just, like, blasting yeah, cause, like, a whole... So say you get to level 5, you can't just bought by intimidation that would affect, like, every enemy in the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ranks. 
reinventing the wheel every game. Kind of, yeah. With our... Slightly increased chance to recover from infections naturally. Is that wonderful? No percentages. Yeah. 5%? No numbers. 0.5%? Over what time period? Is it like 0.5% every tick? Wait, every minute? Every hour? What are, what are infections anyways? D does this game have Disease? survival mechanics? Yeah, maybe it ha yeah, maybe it has like a disease system like Skyrim, but well, there's willing to bet that's a why can't we go back to having skill. a skill points based system with skills going from one to one hundred? It was too complicated. It was too spreadsheety. Mm -hmm. People love perks. Yeah, people love perks. They don't love numbers. Are five different. So save that for D and D. Mm -hmm. Companions gain affinity fifteen percent. Faster, uh, so that's the that's the thing of like like from Fallout Four where you do something for them and they like you more. But you get it by sprinting a thousand meters with an active follower. <laughs> so you just have a follower <laughs> and you're sprinting in circles around the ship. <laughs> I'm just thinking oh, of like man. all like I'm a Bethesda game player. I know full well how, yeah. how you're gonna grind it. <laughs> yeah. See, this is the problem with the, with the challenge system challenge is that is like you said, it's going to be very fucking arbitrary. As you work your way to Skill ranks. systems can be arbitrary, but these perks are definitely going to be arbitrary. Yeah, because it's some designer's idea of something that might be challenging. Yeah, see, like there's a frame where you can see. <laughs> fucking god. <laughs> Four hours ago. Where are we at? 1658. I need something where I can actually go frame by frame. For the people in chat that are inevitably going to go, uh, if you use the brackets, you can go frame by frame. <laughs> it's martial arts and it doesn't say what it does. If you go frame by frame. And then it goes over instigation uh, and lands on yeah. leadership. So yeah, this seems crazy. like it's going to be a nightmare to navigate. Because why does it go from the middle skill to the middle skill? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the, uh, the bracket keys, they don't work on watch together. Different skill trees and four ranks. Okay, it doesn't show you what you need to do to the reload challenges anymore because it's a locked skill. For skill. But see how it goes middle to middle and then like it doesn't go anywhere because there's four skills in Lavender for some reason under combat? Mm-hmm. Well, it's only going to be an issue for people using controller, you know? We still have the mouse. There's a lot to choose. You can in create you can create improved Kims and research additional Kims at the research lab. Oh boy, rank gated research. So, I need to level up. It's been a bunch of points in science to unlock a skill that unlocks a challenge to unlock other skills that unlock research progress. Yes. And then remember, you're going to need the resources to make those things as well. Yeah, because so. you have to make Kims to complete the challenge. Yeah, you know, we didn't want to be upstaged by No Man's Sky with the uh, busy work. Isn't so. a challenge system a weird abstracted version of a regular experience? That's kind of the thing is like, this is a weird kind of hybrid of Elder Scrolls and Fallout where you have like yeah. Fallout uh, static XP progression to buy per cards that then give you challenges for test style use this level the skill as you use it when i feel like just committing to one or the other would have been perfectly fine d1 
Do you think it's going to be like Skyrim or Fallout 4 where you go to everything towards the end of progression? So the highest level I've seen right now is 45. Um, there seems to be more than 45 things to buy. There's probably going to be some skills that you can get away with not buying. Like you probably don't have to max out lockpicking. You just have to get it high enough to get access to everything, for example. I wonder if you can like dump skills. Like you can just reset not at launch. Yeah, it's, it's Legendary Edition. <laughs> yeah. Remember, this is Bethesda. They have to forget all the lessons they learned from their previous games. So. Yeah. I don't know. So far, I'm very unimpressed with this skill system and with the skills that we've seen. Going off of, like, my personal experience with Skyrim and Fallout and stuff, Looking at what these skills are, it's it really just looks like more of the same. It's from. I like. There you go. That's your that's skill it. system. And that's it. Hope you're happy with that morsel of information that we gave you. Literally 30 seconds of this 45 minute video. Yeah, yeah. RPG, remember, this, this this is a game being sold as an RPG. Wild. The Xeno sociology uh. skill because it lets you mind control aliens. So that's a dump skill right there. Yeah. Is he level 80? Uh, looks like it's a 60 on my screen. Hang on. 1709? Yeah, yeah, we gotta, gotta bust out the... It's 80. The big guns. Oh, it's 80. Okay. So, let's... Let's all count together. <laughs> Alright. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 13, 16... 21, 26, 29, 32, 37, 42, 46, 49, 54, 59, 62, 65, 70, 74, 79, 82, times 4. Three hundred and twenty-eight potential skill ups. How many skill points do we get per level up? One. So look, the look. There could be some exclusivity. It depends on if you can keep leveling or not. Mm-hmm. It's probably up to level eighty. Probably eighty-two the same. skills across times four ranks per skill. It's probably like, you know, other Bethesda games where it's a soft level cap. Mm-hmm. You're still alive? Oh, yeah. We're going to be, uh, we're still going. <laughs> we got a lot. We got a lot of this, uh, this trailer to go through still. Fortunately, we can cut out all the stuff in the middle with, uh, the watch and everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I said, I'm thinking this is a dump skill. Also, hang on. This is that mantis creature, but it's got a different underbelly and it's got a different head and it's got like um it's the antlers. gnarls antlers. from uh, Shivering Isles. Yeah. So they're doing alien body presets it looks like. Yeah, so maybe the f maybe like the fauna and flora is like all randomly generated. Yeah, it's all like spliced together spore mm -hmm. parts. I wouldn't be surprised, but which is probably why then it all looks fucking bizarre. So like, what's the thing that this thing's hunting? Why what it... does it eat? What does it eat? <laughs> it's got eyes and it, it, it's like an insect, but it's huge. Does this ecosystem support an insect that size? Why does it have, um, I forget what antlers are made out of, but it's like a different material than chitin. 
this is one of the more like practical creatures where I could see this existing, but yeah, there's a lot of rough ones. Why is it a big bug again? Well, when you think alien, you think Who's giant that? bug. And of course, all giant bugs are like mammals. You can tame them all. <laughs> you can trick them all into not fighting you. It's definitely not a giant murder robot. Out of the gate, I'm boost back and everywhere. It eats bugs, most plentiful creature in Bethesda games. Oh no. Bug enemies, bug Bethesda, bug Thesda. <laughs> Alright, see, somebody was saying they were all called spacers. These are called pirates. Yeah. The feedback's a little better. Boost pack training. Boost jump 10 times while in combat. <laughs> <laughs> you could knock that out in like one combat sequence. So they're, they're like erring on the side of caution to not make it too grindy. But the end result is that like you're just going to be raising your eyebrow. It's going to be on the other side this where is, it's not tedious. It's just is, questionable. This is going to be a mod very quickly. Yeah, just rebalancing all of these challenges. You're going to have a challenge rebalance to make it more difficult, and then you're going to have a challenge removal mod. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> while in combat, there it is, folks. Yeah, I guess the challenges can do while in combat. We, we prevented people from grinding their skills by uh, putting a combat stipulation. Lock, pick five I, locked. I hope to God there's combat. an option to turn off the XP notification. There's got to be. Because yeah, that does annoy that does annoy me in games when there are like mid mid mission yeah. challenge pop ups. Yeah, I hate having too much shit on my screen, especially in this game. It looks like they they went to like real like painful lengths to try and simplify and like just make make the make the UI clean. Mm -hmm. Out my physical. This is your lead weapon artist, guys. Three, so I can get neuro strikes and just punch my way through combat. <laughs> the weapon hold on the lead weapon designer it just doesn't, it doesn't use weapons <laughs> <laughs> hang on that that's got to go in the uh in the in the book 1720 lead weapon designer doesn't use weapons but there's another thing i noticed about what he's presenting here i want to see if you catch it this time maxing out my physical tree so i can get neuro strikes and just punch my way through combat wait now did you, you notice max out your whole physical tree yeah in order did to... you notice where it's at no i didn't let's uh it's at the bottom right yeah it's kind of hard to see because they, they flash it on screen really fast but let's uh let's slow it down investigative vision time maxing out my physical tree so i can get neuro it's in the bottom in the middle mm -hmm. which requires the most investment mm -hmm. to unlock the ability to actually use hand-to-hand -hand. people yes of course so it's not that hand-to-hand -hand is a play style that no. you can that is viable it's, throughout the game it's a gift it is a, it's gift. a gift you have to you're welcome here you go the fuckers wanted a melee skill or a hand hand skill mm -hmm. there you fucking go buried at Why the bottom you of your physical skill yeah he literally he literally says it like i have to i max out my physical so i can punch things so you have a you have a developer in-house saying that this is their preferred play style and he has to max out notice how everything else on the other trees are maxed out as well yeah, so I'm I'm on the on the stream. I am on the screen where this shows the full physical tree. And there's other skills that have fists in them, which is what's interesting. Oh yeah. So I I wonder if like there are other things that you can get on your way hmm. down. Maybe. So four skills in the physical tree are dedicated to hand to hand. I mean, I guess that makes sense. That's more support than usual, but... Uh, yeah, that's um, a step in the right direction. So the patch... Well, oh, yeah, that is a good point. I'm thinking the patch that they're using 
here on the watch together is different than the skill it but is. it's it's that bottom middle one with yeah, the yeah. uh with the lightning bolt into the skull but yeah there are other fist icons so maybe there's other fist skills i do think it's still funny that like this is your lead weapon designer and he's saying actually their skill set their skill tree is different yeah i'm look i'm looking we at got, it now we got a frame yeah go go back yeah we got we got a frame by frame this i th i think it got simplified i think this is like a different build i like maxing out my physical tree so i can get I'm really like paranoid. I gotta like slow it down um, more. Um, I'm not no, no. seeing. It's like a completely different icon set. Yeah. I guess we'll find out. So hand to hands in physical, but not combat. That makes a little bit of sense. It's like your physical abilities. It looks like it looks similar. Like it doesn't look like they've changed anything, but other than the icons, obviously. But it is interesting. It does make one think, doesn't it? That yeah. said, why is the lead weapon designer talking about using hand to hand, and why is he referencing specifically the skill that's like <laughs> in the flat in the middle? Sorry, I uh... completely optional. Oops. Ranks are unlocked. Boost pack out of the gate. I'm boost packing everywhere. He's boosting. He's boosting. <laughs> Let me reference. Yeah, all the icons are different. Mm -hmm. Now, how does that happen? So this goes back to what I was saying when we were talking about when we were looking at that ugly ass um, stuff on neon. I think we're looking at footage from all sorts of different builds now. Yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> the game's gonna listen. The game's gonna get pulled together in the final week. At Bethesda Magic. Mm -hmm. They change when you rank up. Could be. Maybe, so uh, yeah. yeah, because it's maxed out ranks. Oh yeah, maybe the icons change. Like with each rank tree so I, can get neuro strike. I mean it's possible but you see like the icon backgrounds are different yeah well 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 hang on no they're different per they're different per skill type okay it's interesting it makes one think hmm. boost packing everywhere because there's no vehicles <laughs> <laughs> the boost well, pack doesn't seem boost... that powerful though is the good issue. thing the boost challenges only count during combat mm -hmm. it's for combat it's not for traveling <laughs> and just punch my way through combat it's a play style now guys Deal 250 damage with unarmed attacks. Wait. How does that challenge work? So is it 250 cumulative, 250 in one strike, or like 250 <laughs> times? <laughs> is hand-to-hand -hand like going to be like really weak? Yeah, that's why it you looks, need to get all the skill points in it. It looks suboptimal. Also, why did his backpack fly off? <laughs> well, you know, have you ever seen those, like, <laughs> videos on, of, like, people fighting in the streets and stuff? Whenever somebody gets, like, knocked off their asses, they're, uh, they're knocked off their feet, their shoes usually fly off or something. Mm -hmm. Very comical. That one's a lot of fun. You say so. <laughs> So you see how, like, sometimes the health bar is missing health? What do you think that yeah. mechanic is? Is that the infection mechanic? It's rads. Mm. Rads. It, it probably is rads, let's be honest. Because <laughs> we do have radioactive environments. Invest in the skills that suit your play style. I'm very much a stealth player. 
So, I'm out there pickpocketing everyone. My favorite part about... God damn it. You wouldn't pause. Invest in the skills that suit your play style. I'm very much a stealth player. So, I'm out there pickpocketing... So you got the hidden meter. It's more informative, I guess. Pocketing every everyone. And then you've got pickpocket chance. My favorite part about being stealthy is slowly creeping through vents like you're in a movie. The only problem is, are the dungeon designers going to remember to make stuff yeah. to cater for me? Do I trust Bethesda to remember to put vents into the levels for me to use? It's like picking speech, trying to do a speech uh, build. Is that actually going to be viable or is it going to be like two quests will actually acknowledge this? Well, there's a persuasion system, so I'm very I'm more confident in speech being generally supported. Um, I'm not confident in any kind of mechanic that relies on level designers to remember to put <laughs> shit in yeah. the game. Especially when we're talking about dungeons that are ra uh, radiantly generated. Mm -hmm. And then jumping out and springing on people? He had no items in his inventory. Whenever possible, I like <laughs> to talk my way through situations. Is there... Is off limits? Fine, I'll issue you an access card. So ugly. <laughs> I'm more of a run and gun player. Also, I just realized we didn't get any sort of explanation on the on the uh, persuasion mini game again. Yeah, of course. In this video, skipping the kill Explain. animation, it was probably broken. Uh, so oh, here's a spacer. See this? See the segmented health bar? It's hard to see, but yes. I'm going to go to it's weird the... is like, I can see it better on your stream than I can on my screen. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? So I'm, I'm on it on the... Uh, on, the on the good on one. On the yeah. YouTube. So there's a segment, three segment health bar. I'm thinking that like, there's a shield bar per health bar. Mm-hmm. Which could be interesting. It could encourage like a uh, aggressive kind of play, or like not aggressive so much as burst bursting damage. So it's like, say you get halfway through his health bar, his shields could recharge, and then you gotta like cut through it again. Yeah. But if you get a third of his health down, then like he can't recover that without like some kind of restorative item. That's how yeah. I'm imagining the system works. Obviously, we don't know because they haven't drawn attention to it. You would think if they had come up with a better health system. That they would like be showing it off. It's kind of, I don't know. That's kind of weird, though, that you would knock out their shields, take out a bar of their health, and then their shields would instantly recharge. I guess. Yeah, it is kind of weird. Unless it's not shields, it's like armor and you're like stripping away the ar I don't know that's... I just realized enemies in this game are going to look identical because one armor slot I think there's going to be like armor types associated with different kind of factions and there seems to be like sub yeah. factions well I mean like uh, he's obviously like if you can do enough damage you can blow through all of it yeah so it's not like I do a thousand damage and it only takes one health segment out like, obviously, you can one-shot enemies. You're more powerful than. I'm just thinking, like... Um... I like doing the death from above thing where I boost pack over guys and I throw landmines at them. I'm still trying to figure out if this game has sliding. <laughs> <laughs> it, it looked like he slid there. And yeah, then... kind of. And then boosted. I like doing the death from above thing where I boost pack over guys and I throw landmines at them. Yeah, it is weird. <laughs> the 100% recycled landmine animation. We've been making fun of it. The fact that they like draw attention to it. It's 
literally and the, the same fucking the complete, animation since Fallout 3. The complete lack of momentum as well. Like, at this point, you would think <laughs> that, like, you toss it like a frisbee. Frisbee, yeah. So it gets out in front of you and not, like... Because there is this there is this weird thing you have to do in Fallout where, like, you have to account for the, like, immediate drop-down arc and, like, yeah. <laughs> try to, like, get it some horizontal momentum. Yeah, that's why I never fucking used them because they just never went anywhere. It's It's one of those things where it's, like, you have to put them down... And then bait enemies into walking into them, but that almost never works. And by then it's like, well, why don't I just shoot them or throw grenades at them instead? And that was always why I just deprioritized uh, mines. Mm -hmm. Well, mines are like in gameplay, they're like a defensive option and they just never use them like that because you're always the aggressor in every combat yeah. encounter. Yeah, but it's like. If they could design more combat encounters around needing to be defensive and like blocking off an area, then it would make sense. But you doesn't... know, in a game where you have uh, jetpacks and stuff, where you can mm -hmm. get into like a position that you want to defend, but um, we'll see. Like, I like that he could have shot them. He's like yeah. intentionally going out of his way to not shoot them. Oh, I like the um, and it didn't kill them. The the fallout the fallout grenade sound that that made too mm -hmm. when he threw it down. Fallout grenade sound and it doesn't kill them. Literally, yeah. Cool. So here's another game with mines that I'm going to ignore. Not even like particularly powerful. You're expected to mob them, you know. Yeah, it's like why didn't you just use this from the get go? I was stuff up. Ah, that's why he likes blowing stuff up. Okay. That's your combat. They know full well they need to punctuate their shit with like, but look at the landscapes. <laughs> this this world artist got to carry this game. Mm -hmm. Imagine being the world artist in Bethesda right now and realizing you're literally carrying not just your not just a game, not just a studio. You're carrying an entire gaming division of Microsoft. Yeah. <laughs> Your spine is so broken. Holy crap. Exploration is a key aspect of all our games. Look, he's walking everywhere. They have some kind of vehicle. Don't you think they'd be showing it? <laughs> In Starfield, there are full star systems with new life, resources. Uh, you know, we just, we really liked how it looked when you're slow walking everywhere. If we added a vehicle, it just, it felt like it, it would ruin the experience in the ambiance. It's very cinematic. Also, more fucking aliens that yeah. kind of don't make sense. They are blurry, but. Land, land drog. Yeah. Our team worked hard to strike a balance between fun and realism. We studied data from NASA and a multitude of other sources data from nasa what could that mean are there i didn't know nasa knew about alien worlds that had <laughs> life on them <laughs> to help us make the world feel believable did todd and emil take a trip to outer space mm. they are friends game? with elon musk so true planetary atmospheres to the way we placed biomes based on the planet's distance from the sun. Once we had created a grounded world, we could start looking at all the things. <laughs> like, look at this thing. It's an over. It's an over-designed dinosaur. The thing is so fucking top-heavy too. Look at like look at how much weight that yeah. neck is supporting. The thing's no wonder its over. legs are so stubby. <laughs> things that make that world fun. When you leave a planet and head into space, you'll be navigating asteroid fields. Having chance. That's not realistic. The No Man's Sky approach of like, oh yeah, space is like 90% asteroids in the middle of <laughs> between planets. It's like, what? <laughs> We're going to be so dis. Humanity is going to be so disappointed when we go to the asteroid fields and they're like really far apart from each other. Yeah, yeah. It's like rocks that are separated by like dozens to hundreds of miles. Yeah. And just like a lot of 
dust. Like that's that's the real that's the real scary part about like asteroid fields and rings is the dust like the the tiny dust that's flying at like you know percentages the speed of light that will just shred anything that goes near it. Science meetings with interesting strangers, dog fighting in space, and exploring derelict ships. It's all out there. Ultimately, it's about rewarding your curiosity because whether it's on the surface of a planet, the alleys of a city. I think it's just funny to say they studied NASA data while they're showing alien xenobiology. <laughs> I guess alien xenobiology is redundant, but. Um, base Thesda implying that NASA never... knows about alien life. True, already. true. Base <laughs> Thesda. Never know what you'll find. Per usual, bringing us the takes. <laughs> they're, show they're showing them footage of them playing in the background, but now they've made sure to make us out of focus. <laughs> they realized afterwards, they're like, oh, no, no, we can't show that. Look, the animation will be the same no matter what ship you're flying. Space exploration <laughs> is possible thanks to your ship. Your ship is almost like having another character or home you can make all your own. I think you'll be. Is blown your favorite away. ship the uh, the jetpack? <laughs> the little jet, the big jetpack. By the amount of stuff you can do. You can <clears throat> buy a ship. I'm sure you can find something you like. Customize and upgrade that ship. Look, he's attaching the uh, the entrance, the little entrance oh, cell. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The mandatory entrance cell. Mm -hmm. You need to have at least one of these. You can. You see, there's two warnings on it, so there's gonna be all kinds of like rules you have to follow. Mm, yeah. You need to have at least two thrusters. And hire a crew to keep it up and running. I think this is probably the the system that has the most potential in this game. Like the ship and crew system? Yeah. Yeah, it's almost like anything to do with their writing and story kind of sucks. <laughs> and it, it's all about like the dynamic uh, base building. And... and they're kind of cutting the legs out beneath the uh, exploration aspect because it's mostly proc gen. And I know what that means. So this isn't really going to be the most exciting game to explore and i don't even have a vehicle to explore with and uh there's probably gonna be a lot of loading screens just to do give that. me a fucking atv yeah bethesda spaceports <laughs> every spaceport has a ship technician where you can purchase sell and modify ships we couldn't give you an atv because it would outrun the renderer on consoles anything i can help you with Maybe you start off with a speedy fighter that's perfect for bounty hunting. Then you might round out your ship roster with a hulking space freighter. So I'm thinking you have to be able, allowed to have multiple ships. Yeah. 1,000 yes. credits to repair your ship. It sure. is true. How convenient. Mm -hmm. That's, like, that's like the minimum. So like you take 1% damage. And just oh, starts yeah. At, it starts at 1,000 credits. I wonder if I'd be able to repair it out in the field. Are there perks related to repairing my ships? No. Why would you want that? Don't be, <laughs> don't be stupid. <laughs> ...to run cargo missions, or even do a little smuggling. For now, though, we're going to take our starting ship, the Frontier, and make some changes. You can customize... Oh, oh wait, wait, wait. You well, if you go back, you can see it says ship, and it's like a number out of a number. So it's like one out of one. So I think it, it is like you smuggling. have a like a For garage now, though, that you can store ships in. Starting ship, the frontier. Yeah. Yeah. Home ship. Home. At least it was before I fucked everything up. And make some changes. You can customize and up everything you see okay so we got the wing shield generator docker fuel tanks 
grav drive, engines, cab, weapons, cockpit, reactor, cargo holds, landing gears, and bay. Yeah, so like you've got the habitat that's going to be your centralized block, and then mm -hmm. you got to attach everything to it. Do I have to always put the cockpit at the fore of the ship? Oh, well, of course. The no, the cockpit goes in the front. <laughs> what do you mean you want a bridge? No, you get a cockpit. Oh, yeah. I d the fucking, yeah, the, <laughs> the naming right there says it all that these are like. You're not really gonna have a uh, big ships or anything like that. It's they're all like fighter types. Mm -hmm. Be here. And no, it's really gonna be like um, No Man's Skies, where like the big ships, the big freighters and stuff are gonna be DLC. Mm -hmm. To do that, you can quickly. Can I put my cockpit behind mm. the habitat and in front of the engine? So it said it was registered. Does that mean they're? What does that mean? And can I have my ship unregistered? Or could you uh, pi do some space piracy, take a ship, and then sell it? Yeah. Please upgrade individual systems like your weapon. No, can funny. I can I steal ships hey, as uh, there's a starship, catalytic converters? There's a starship design skill. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh no. You know what that is? At attach That's... five parts to your ship to unlock rank uh, two of starship design. Uh, if only. No, this is <laughs> going to be the fucking mandatory skills like in uh, mm -hmm. like in Fallout 4. If you want to yeah. do anything settlement building related, you have to invest in a charisma, which is the worst fucking skill overall in that game. Oh, uh, boy. They still haven't learned uh, from mandatory skills. Yeah. And so, oh god! And so yet, that means the, the the bases are probably gonna have something similar too. So yeah. if you want to do like a crafting thing in this game, you gotta invest into starship design, base building, weapon research, um, chemistry research. What else we got? It's probably gonna be like an armor thing too, an armor mm -hmm. smith. Oh man, it's gonna be mandatory skills galore. These are the skills that I'm gonna be fucking console commanding. Uh, what's this fucking icon? Hang on. I'm at 1640. We're at 2119. Let me... Oh, God. What? It's a rank three? So different things have different ranks if you, like, watch it go over them. So you have to have, like, set ranks... So, like, to get the Dragon 231 IR laser, you have to have Starship Design Rank 1. Okay. Which is that icon. Okay, then if we go to 1640. So that's, that's like a Tier 3 skill, according to... I can't tell which one it is, but it looks like it's tier three. Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah, it's the one right right next to robotics. That's, what? that's a tier three. <laughs> okay, so your mandatory tier three skill to be able to get like higher level ship customization is like get you, the fuck you out ha of here. You have to spend points in tech. Get the fuck out of here. I hope there's like lower ranks or something i don't know this is what this i whole... said about this system being arbitrary but listen yeah. you could just get the 221 mw laser instead this is just if you want to unlock high level ship parts okay yeah. it's not going to be mandatory like you're, i you're, said you're optimizing this shit you're optimizing the fun out of your own game <laughs> you're not even going to be able to pay for the credit value if you don't want to, if you see, no, 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 here's what it is. If you don't want to install it or in your ship, just buy a ship with those upgrades already. Yeah, the No Man's Sky approach.
<laughs> just upgrade by buying new ships. So I'm going to just always have something that I don't want on my ship. Yeah, let me buy this one ship just because I want this uh, one gun on it. Oh, fuck. I absolutely accidentally deleted my uh, 231 IR laser. Now I got to invest in Starship <laughs> design. <laughs> like I said, it's going to be arbitrary. Why, why do I need a license to purchase this weapon? A license that like, and not even a license. It's just permission from the skill system. I don't know how to ask for it unless I uh, have a skill. Not use it, just ask for it. Like, imagine if, like, you can't get the full damage out of it unless you have the rank. Yeah, so I'm wondering what this screen even is. Is this, like, he's buying the things to install on the ship? Is he installing these? Like, he has these in his inventory or something, and he's just paying to have it installed on the ship? It's a very or is this question. stuff that he's crafting? Because if I have to have this, this ship design uh, skill just to install things that I'm or just to buy them mm -hmm. well, there goes... it's it's to buy it because there's a cost and it's credit cost yeah that's what I'm that's what I'm looking at so it's like you need the starship designer just and design he... skill just to buy the weapons yes. you don't know how to ask for it unless you uh know the skill <laughs> you didn't read enough of the magazines to know this thing exists. they make it feel like if you want new parts on your car you have to know how to do it instead of calling a mechanic yeah you can't put a turbocharger on your car unless you understand <laughs> combustion <laughs> engines. That's so fucking shield. arbitrary. I really hope this is not Oops. how it is in the final Before game. You can deep dive and enter the shipbuilder mode. Here you oh, a real deep dive here, I'm sure. It's just, it's cells. It's just cells of an interior. Mm-hmm. This is just, this is the three by one. This is the one by one, the two by one. And it's going to be one per, for each companion that you want out of it. Because you get two out of the two by one. So if you get a one by one, you get one crew. And if you get a three by one, you get three crew. So the question is, why wouldn't you get a three by one? I feel like there's two options on this screen. And they're both the three by ones. Because they're not even that much more expensive than the two by ones. You have listen. You have the introvert perk. <laughs> <laughs> I can't handle having more than one person on my ship. I can only have Vasco on my ship. But if you don't know what turbochargers are, do you want it? How do you how do you want something you know nothing about? Oh well, I forgot that I need a whole bunch of skills and fucking like automotive and. Uh, mechanical skills just to f finally learn what a turbocharger is i mean if you go to a, a a car dealership and they're selling vehicles with turbochargers already installed in it they're going to explain to you what a turbocharger is if you don't no, know they're going to give you a class on <laughs> how combustion engines work and you're going to get a degree in engineering you're going to get a whole bunch of skill points in your mechanical engineering <laughs> skills before you they teach you what a turbocharger is. You need to go to BOCES. You can change anything. I don't understand what... So there's, there's the reset type, and then there's like this bar that you switch... That you're switching between. From the systems... <laughs> Is it different ranks of the same thing? Because he's on the same two by one, but now it's max crew two plus two. I think he's just tabbing two other ones. Well, it's the same like two by one Nova Galactic, but to the look and layout. What? What? Just like your weapons or shields, or you can deep dive and enter the shipbuilder mode. Here you can change anything i think it's just it has the same exterior look systems because it's just like uh but the price isn't the price isn't changing but like he did nothing and it didn't really seem like it changed anything but now it holds four max crew like that's all that changed so like yeah, you didn't you didn't see him selecting them in the uh in the ui there's like little like little like tabs almost mm -hmm. uh the little bars below the name. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he's switching between all those, but like, 
It's the same thing. Each one costs exactly the same. Ah. <laughs> and, like, change minor things. But, like, now he's got four crew instead of two. And you would think I that guess... there would be balance. Like, you can get more space out of it, but the armor's thinner. So your whole level goes down. Oh, that wasn't even changing? No, I mean, like, I think the whole went up. Because it was 365. Systems, like your weapons okay, okay or yeah, yeah, let's see. Or you can deep dive and enter the shipbuilder mode. Okay. Here you can change anything. From the system. See, like, nothing's changing other than, like, it's just getting better, but it all costs the same. Wait, is it... Is it getting better? Or is it just changing the configuration of like the ports that you can connect to or something? No, like the max crew it went from two to two plus two. Oh. And the hole's going from three sixty five to three seventy. Oh yeah. Well, listen, the system's not finished it's yet. It's not finished. Still need to work out the balancing. We on made it. everything cost exactly the same by accident. Yeah. To the look we had light. console commands active. Hmm. Adding a new wait when, unless uh, unless it yeah, was okay, like what weight, I was saying the weight did go up oh Mo okay mobility's down jump range is down weights up okay so basic balance passes you know imagine losing a light year so you can have more people in your crew habitat module can give you more room for crew listen the uh, introvert might have something mm-hmm change your ship's overall silhouette. Funny way of saying largely cosmetic, yeah. As in, just remove them because they're increasing your mass and thereby making yeah. your ship worse. <laughs> yeah. Like, why would I put cowlings on the ship if it makes if it does nothing but is cosmetic yet makes it worse? Oh boy. Trust me, there's gonna be an optimal ship design. Yeah, it's going to be a long, fucking tube. <laughs> It's just a long <laughs> tube. <laughs> With it's gonna be a giant penis. Is basically <laughs> it. Blind brick. <laughs> this doesn't really inspire that much confidence in me because it's like it's not mechanically encouraging certain sh like ship designs that you've seen in science fiction by being more pragmatic in any way. Yeah, it's just hey, you have and a when, space fantasy, don't you? Why don't you create the we... Millennium Falcon? Yeah, when we get to the part where they're talking about like the designs they like to make, they they're all just saying like, "Oh, how how they like to make things that look aesthetically different." And it's mm -hmm. like cool. I I'm more of a functional person, and if you're telling me that my ship has a lower jump range because I have fucking like curves on it, I'm going to make a flying penis. <laughs> So, uh, I haven't taken notes in a while. I'm just going to put down optimal ship design. Flying penis. <laughs> An improved grav drive allows for longer distance space jumps. You can. So, my question is do I just, like, the best grav drives are going to be behind a perk? Yes. Okay. So it's a mandatory perk that everybody has to take because you're going to want a good jump drive to get to other high level areas. No. It with through it, less it, loading screens. Or will it not matter? Will you be I, able I'm to get everywhere I'm on like the 15 light year if, jump drive? I'm sorry if you are so offended by loading screens. <laughs> <laughs> Now, do you spec for best drives or just stack more drives? I doubt they're going to let you just have more drives. I think there's going to be one jump drive and you're going to upgrade it. And there's going to be like mild progression. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Emphasis on mild. You can even fully customize your paint job to get the exact look you want. Did we The have... exact look I want, which is black, red, white, and in the shape of a swastika. <laughs> Do I have to take three perks in the painting tree so I can properly properly get an even coat? 
No, we give you that one for free. No, no, no. You don't even know what the color red is until you unlock it. Oh, right. But this is like one of those systems where it's like you make it you like you set it to red in the in the like color picker and then yeah. on the vehicle it's like green so <laughs> the 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 skill will make it so that you can it's more, more the, accurate the lighting match. engine is more accurate the higher level your skill is <laughs> see what i want to know is how is this going to work with the uh vehicle skins that they're going to sell on the um cc it's probably going to be like presets like it's a preset skin that you apply and then you can't customize it at all mm -hmm. so you can't like it's going to be a millennium falcon design but you can't recolor it and you can't modify it it's just the millennium falcon it's either on or off flames fucking i doubt you, there'll be decals that's got to be DLC. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. That's what I'm talking about. It's like, it's going to be CC. Like, you, you get a skin that's like flames. The parts Zebra you skin. To build with don't just affect your ship's stats. Camouflage. They'll also affect what you can do inside your ship. You mean my ship's stats. Hey, listen, your chosen parts aren't just mechanical. They're also mechanical. <laughs> You can have modules for crafting. So I can or I will because why wouldn't I want a module on my ship for crafting? Um, because if you like loading screens, you can go to <laughs> so that, that's what uh, I mean. Areas. That's immediately what I was thinking was like, <laughs> so I have a part of my ship to skip loading screens for from going to my outpost. <laughs> What I want to, what I wonder is, so like we've seen how like the research system works, right? With, mm -hmm. um, it's like a time, like over time. Um, if I start a research project on my ship and then I switch to a different ship, what happens to that research project? I think it's, it's going to be universal. So then why am I going to have like a research multiple... station on your ship? So you skip loading screens, but your ship is a little heavier. But why am I going to have like, multiple research stations that like different no 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 it's it's all asked no 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 it's all tied into the same thing mm. it just works mm. i love a game that's like being built as you can go and build settlements everywhere and do all this stuff and but then the mechanics are literally just but why would you do that you just have the one have the one because it looks good and have the one because it's content don't you want to do the content? Mm -hmm. Or for storing and displaying your weapons. So I'm going to lose jump range so that I can put <laughs> weapons on the wall because I can't, my character can't figure out how to do that in the main hall. <laughs> Listen, jump range. I'm gonna lose. Gonna, uh, jump range isn't even gonna matter because the planets are all gonna look the same anyways. And they're so gonna. They're all systems. You're gonna. You've seen them all. I really am gonna wonder, like, how how much will jump range matter? There's everything just like 15 light years apart, like the minimum distance. Starfield's in-game ship manufacturers bring their own look and feel to every piece of your ship. I like the padded wall aesthetic. You know what's going to be great too? The well, this looks like a bridge. The ugliest ship design <laughs> is going to be the, the optimal one. <laughs> yeah, okay. This looks like a bridge. You have to take two perks and organizational skill. No, you joke, but that's actually one of the perks. You have to take two yep. perks and organizational skills and place your weapon down 25 times before you unlock the pegboard for your ship. <laughs> From living quarters to cargo holds. But do we need living quarters? Or can I opt out of that one because it seems non-essential? Where do we sleep, Captain? What? 
on the floor in the cargo hold yeah <laughs> wherever you find room baby <laughs> i'm not bill i'm not lowering my jump range by one light year just so that you have a place to sleep <laughs> listen this is an explorer vessel we sacrifice in order to go when nobody's gone before there's no bathrooms just fyi <laughs> Mess halls and control room. Mess halls? That's that's optional right there. Why do you need to eat? Is there a stat benefit to you being fed? No? Then you're not eating. Your companions will get unhappy if there's no mess hall. You have a desk, and you have a sleeping bag under that desk, and a mini fridge full of top ramen. <laughs> we're doing the we're going the startup route with this yeah. uh, with this ship. And you're not paid. You're you're an intern. You're getting experience, and then as soon as you start to complain, I shove you out the airlock and recruit another <laughs> companion. Where, where are the living quarter? Get on the research bench! <laughs> Seeing a lot of penises here. <laughs> Our modified frontier is a practical ship. But yeah, practical. It's a flying penis. <laughs> almost like that's going to be the optimal design how's it practical you have cowlings on there we established that they serve no purpose <laughs> get that shit off your ship but with a little creativity your ship can look like almost anything you want really can i make the fucking starship enterprise well no within li within reasonable limits you understand take whatever you want within reason uh, but one of my favorite ways of customizing ships is um She's not wearing the watch either. Mm -hmm. I almost want to do a compilation of like Bethesda developers not wearing the watch. <laughs> wearing other smart watches. Yeah. <laughs> Make them look like animals? Like animals from this game or animals in general? <laughs> so, chat, let's play what animal is this? It's a hippo. A platypus. Mm. Strong contender for sure. I'm going to make the Thanos copter. It's a penis. Oh, yeah, it is. It is a penis. Optimal design. <laughs> Crocodile, beaver, dog. That dog's got a fat ass. I'll say that. The HMS platypus. It's a platypus ah, right. chat. Some is, I think some of the chat cheated. As I called it. Where it had a, like a giant tail to it. And we've done spiders. We've done mechs. This is optimal. Did you guys get... <laughs> did you guys get licensing to sh make this and show this? This Who is fair use. The, who even has the rights for fucking Transformers? This was eight hours ago. Yep. We can only talk about this when it was happening. There's definitely not going to be analysis videos uploaded for the next week of people looking at this. So it's really whatever your imagination is. I am amused that like the animations able to like play with these <laughs> yeah. uh, weird build ship your designs. Home among the stars the way you want to. You're probably not it's struggling for yeah. sure. <laughs> person who will call your ship home. Why is that's it called why, HMS? That's why you need a crazy fucking CPU. Yeah. So are we going to have to sit through that every time we load into the ship? So, okay, we board the ship. It like fades in from black for about a second. You're frozen in place, of course. And then once the fade in's finished, this door slowly opens. And What's you the COC able... code for my cockpit? <laughs> well, see, you can just go straight to the cockpit, but only if you don't fast travel to the ship. If you fast travel to the ship, you have to go through this animation. It's, it's you know, it's payment. Like, that's mm -hmm. what you have to do. It, it's a nice door. Our animators and modelers and stuff spent a long time working on that thing. So You're going to fucking look at it. So why did you talk over the video if you were going to spend eight hours dissecting it later? Uh, because, like, you can't pause a live stream? Like, what? <laughs> yes, we're going to notice a bunch of stuff on a first pass when it's just playing.
ready to lift off when you are, Captain. Oh no, she comes onto my she's, ship. She's I don't like, fucking think no, so. No, space delphines <laughs> on my crew. I don't think so. I mean, well, listen, you're being judgmental. Maybe she's actually yeah. a really good character. Yeah, maybe she like she she comes off as really standoffish at first, but then she learns to trust you and she is absolutely not Delphine who will ask you to do something really stupid and pointless at the end listen, of it. No, for listen. For the sake of drama. You have to give them the chance to disappoint you. <clears throat> right. I'm going to. I'm going to pre-order the game. So, can I decide can I run a ship that has no companions on it or am I going to be forced to take fucking constellation people with me on missions? I'm willing to bet you ha at least have to have like uh the fucking robot companion or something. Hmm. Minimum robot, but I don't know. Like, how does this work? I'm really curious how this works. Mm -hmm. Is she a follower? It, it would be nice if they explained it. Engines ready. The frontier is fueled and ready, Captain. So does it have to? Okay, so like. I know it's a trailer, right? Mm -hmm. And they're going to show us a lot of B-roll footage, but would it kill them to have somebody explaining more as we're going through the B-roll footage? No, this is how it has to be. It's incredible how they're showing so much and saying so little at the same time. It, so it's like I'm watching this and it feels like this game is getting more ambiguous in certain regards. I have an I have an equivalent level of knowledge. I'm just more confused about some stuff. <laughs> yeah. It's like the Normandy, I guess, all the companions stay on the ship. So is there like a Mass Effect roster of a uh, preset companions that you have to pick up? Um technically yes. Uh yeah, like Mass Effect 2. Um, you had to recruit everybody, actually. You guys are sleeping in the hallways. I hate to break it to you. <laughs> you don't have to recruit everybody. You can go. You can do the suicide mission as soon as you uh, want to. Space Delphine is going to ask us to kill advanced alien Parthenax. Some of the members of Constellation can join you on your journey. Can or will? <laughs> so this door is to the cockpit so does this is it closed while uh you're on you're flying the ship so that it doesn't have to render the ship oh maybe these companions can serve on your crew alan nanez i can remember I think you worked on Oblivion. It sounds familiar. I think you worked on Shivering Isles. At least. You did the br a brush with death. And it looks like he started with Oblivion. He did a brush with death and uh, was like in Maine by Shiver Niles. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to blame him for. I will 100% do nothing but be a space cowboy pirate the entire time in the main quest I couldn't care less about. I'm in full for that alone. But will the main quest allow you to not be in it? <laughs> Once you get your uh, your space dragonborn magic, yeah, then you can then you can cut loose. Always be there when you travel. We'll be traveling together until we either find an artifact or this lead runs dry. Yeah. 
That's her telling you. That's not uh, that's not her asking to join the crew. You you're will going into my airlock. FYI. I'm going to use console commands to make you stand in my airlock at all <laughs> times. The game might not let me eject you, but goddamn, am I gonna? <laughs> I hate that I'm already. I want to like... get that quote right. <laughs> I want to hear what exactly These what she says. To serve on your crew, and they'll always be there when you travel. We'll be traveling together. She says we will. Mm -hmm. And she's the boss of Constellation. Yes. So she's telling you that she's joining your crew. Yes. She's Delphine. I... Good. You'll have an opportunity to show me then. Until we either find an artifact or this it's, it strong. really is the Delphine energy that is No, it's like strong like overpowering, <laughs> overwhelming Delphine energy. <laughs> and people and people said that people doubted me. People doubt me. <laughs> <laughs> We're forced into constellation. Well of course, how else are you gonna get the watch that uh, is your interface. Yeah. You can only get the UI if you get the watch, and you can only get the watch if you join Constellation. And you have to join <laughs> Constellation because you're forced to get a job, and you'll be forced to, like, join the faction during the opening of the sequence. So you can get space magic. And you'll be stuck with her as, like, the first crewmate until you get a space artifact, which will unlock your space dragonborn space thumb. <laughs> You say you have access to space magic. Well, this will be an opportunity for you to prove yourself to me then. I know the location of a space artifact we could go visit. And they made her loaded with skills too, just to make sure that like, you me even mechanically it wouldn't make sense not to take her for some point. She only has two two points in leadership, though. Well, yeah, she's not very good at it, obviously. <laughs> Each companion comes with their own valuable skills for your ships and valuables. But is it? So, like, everybody oh, has a four, a three, wait. a two, and a one. Do you oh, think that maybe... they can, they contribute to like your um? design skills and stuff like i can make them like i can get a dude who specializes in ship design so i don't have to pick that up so uh i feel like not going going without a cruise not really going to be an option i mean it makes yeah. sense but oh i got i gotta install this uh i gotta install this thing hold on i gotta go back to my set up my fun my companion stable yeah <laughs> <laughs> the commie block where you're just like going around <laughs> picking optimal companions there's gonna be or, a companion you pick even up better even better you can like store them on ships right and then you you um garage the ship so like anytime you want something you just pull the ship out of the garage and just like teleport it to you or something so yeah. you basically just put your companions oh, into Oh no, a you're going to have a home dimension. ship. <laughs> you're going to have a home ship and a, a combat <laughs> ship. Like, like a game. <laughs> your home ship's going to have like all the research companions. It's going to be a piece of shit. Yeah, it's just like this big block. <laughs> but it's going to have all your slaves living on it. And then like it goes into your pocket and you get out your real ship. <laughs> it goes back into its plane of, plane of oblivion. <laughs> this game is fascinating. <laughs> Space Home Depot parking lot where I say I need three and only one, only one who knows how to shingle. <laughs> Hello. I mean, you're going. Listen, you could watch all the marketing for Starfield and probably go in pretty blind. You really have to know like yeah. what's up with Bethesda to uh, figure out what exactly they're saying. Is this the shit on a game that hasn't even come out yet stream? Yes, this is the party stream. Go go watch Mr. Maddie plays. I'm sure he's blowing the game right now. Outposts, as well as unique quest lines. 
unique quest lines. It's not Outer Worlds where it's a single quest. It's a quest line. I'm trying to remember how Fallout 4 did it. Because I think Fallout 4 did have, like, progression to some of the quests. What? How do you know I'm shitting on your plate? It's not even out yet. Look, Bethesda's squatting over the plate, ass spread, anus puckering. <laughs> There's a reason they've kept this under wraps for so long. We are three months away from launch. I mean, it's also, like I said, it's amazing that... It's the same fucking thing every so time. Much, they're saying so much here, but also saying so little. It's the same fucking thing every time. We say <clears> up front, <throat> it's probably going to be bad based on the marketing, and they go, it's not even out yet. And then it comes out, there's a honeymoon phase, and then the honeymoon phase ends, and we start to admit, oh yeah, it was bad in all the ways that you ac actually predicted beforehand. How long is the honeymoon phase going to last for this game? Probably three months. <laughs> What comes out after after this? You got the Cyberpunk expansion. Um I don't even I don't even know what comes out this year. Cyberpunk expansion uh, is, uh that's all I remember. I know City Skylines but I really, that's not like I'm trying I, to think of like RPG like big games that people are I really play. don't remember the the release dates of anything <clears throat> that was announced today cuz I'm just used to uh delays mm -hmm. it's like why am i gonna bother yeah it's not when it's out i'll believe it when i have it installed yeah don't forget that they don't say you're wrong they just didn't like the way you said it yeah sorry let me be diplomatic i in my subjective opinion do not believe, and this is just my opinion, that the game will be very good. Got it. Okay. Nah, that still sounded condescending. Yeah, it's condescending. You have to, you have to, you have to like soften your voice a lot. You have to remove. All right. You have too right. much emotion. I'm there. gonna, I'm gonna say the same thing, but I'm going to make it softer. I think the game is gonna be amazing, guys. <laughs> That's me saying the same thing, but it's now acceptable. That's what they want. They just want you to say that the game is going to be good. They want you to affirm that the hype they have because they fell for this shit. Eventually, some friendships might blossom into romance. They're showing oh, Space Delphine on the romance <laughs> line. <laughs> it's Paladin Romani all over again. Oh, God. <laughs> Yes, I want to fuck Space Delphine. <laughs> That's what Skyrim needed was you needed to be able to marry Delphine. I know that's what one of my playthroughs needed. And it's amazing. Spacesuit stays on at all times. <laughs> I mean, that does seem to be our romance. character. I don't know that I've ever really loved anyone. It's Beckett all over again, and I'm pretty sure this is exactly Beckett's romance <laughs> line in Fallout 76. Oh. He has the same thing of like, I don't really know if I've ever loved anybody. Love the facial animations while he's saying that. Yeah, too. no, like, Except you. this is a this is a romantic moment, and my eyebrows are going all over the place. <clears throat> and if you're looking for a little extra, the hitching oh, man, post. I I can't wait for the cringe compilations of all the... This is Madam Savage's place. For help on your ship, you can always hire additional crew at spaceports. Got any... But look how Hopefully bad they are. I... Look how bad she is. Yeah. <laughs> so th this is the random, like, this is the, uh, the Lydia the... and the Earthgirds of the world. Yeah, th the, this the, is the person that I put on, like, just some bitch duty of, like... You're on my sea ship. Work, working on the, mi on the like, mining system. Des destined to, like, the be a slave. Computer. Destined to be a slave on my outpost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she goes to the gulag ship for menial tasks. She's bad at everything, <laughs> so, like, why would you bring her? 
So you're sh- you, yeah, you're going to have an A team and then like a B team of randoms. Yeah, just like Fallout 4. Nice. It's good to see that the system's uh, improved. I like the notion of I'm a captain and I just sit there staring at her and then I go, I'm sorry, but your skill set's not good enough for me. <laughs> You have a shotgun certification, and I just don't I don't need that on my crew. I'm looking for somebody that can play Freight Tetris. <laughs> so I the hilarious notion too is these bars. What if it's like um I forget the name of the game, but each time you go in, it re- reloads the NPCs. So you keep having to go through loading screens to reset yeah. these NPCs to like yeah, yeah, yeah. keep rolling that companion uh, perk lottery. <laughs> But can I romance them? Can I romance you, Merica? <laughs> She's not even using a shotgun. Like, I think that's awesome. a different one. I couldn't tell. The potential crew members out in the world. Oh, she's wearing Still the same outfit. Might be a spot for me on your ship? No, sir. I don't think there's a spot for you on my ship. But I do need slaves for my <laughs> outpost, which you're skilled at. <laughs> you have no skills that would be useful in a spaceship. You're destined for the outpost, for the gulag, the plantation. Somebody was joking about space plantations when we were doing the cowboy stuff earlier. I'm pretty sure, like, space plantations are going to be a thing. For players, at least, yeah. I gotta get off this rock. Okay, what is this? This is, this is the crew menu. Um, Okay. Well, at least we have a menu now for it. You don't have to walk up to each yeah. individual and like. <laughs> they know full well that part of the appeal of this game is uh, being the human resources manager on the ship. <laughs> so there's you a ship and a current outpost and outpost. Where's like the backup ships on the other rosters? So I think you're not even going to have like the slave ship. It's just if you're too shitty for the like... ship, you got to go to the outpost. Or maybe it's like um, it only it you can only assign people to active ships, and then they get like if you warehouse the ship, it uh kicks all the crew off of it. Mm-hmm. So we can't pocket dimension them, like I was saying. Or maybe you can only park. You have to park your ships at outposts. So like you have to build parking lots. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to have a settlement that is literally just a garage. Yeah, <laughs> this is these are all my slave ships. <laughs> it, you really are the space dragonborn. You're so charismatic that you can just get people to work for you for free, and like you have a legion of followers. It would be cool ups. if the, if you actually had to pay people like a wage and stuff. It, they'll never do it. I've, I've, no. I've said this about Outer Worlds. It'd be, it'd be pretty cool if like you had to bring money in to keep like characters like ellie on the crew but yeah they're like, yeah, they're can, scared have, shitless of you running out of money and losing crew members you can have like uh your vasco and like maybe like somebody who just really likes you and maybe that's one of the benefits of romancing somebody is that now they're free labor <laughs> but yeah i'm imagining something like you know mountain bleed where you gotta pay people a wage and stuff to keep them around Yeah, because, like, why are these people, like, joining you? Oh, it's probably, like, it's probably, like, the the hirelings in Skyrim where you just mm-hmm. pay them, like, a flat fee of, like, 500 credits. And you are now my slave forever. Yeah. <laughs> this, oh, this is what you the Farming Creation Club command. was testing. And, like, <clears throat> the Farming Creation Club. Of course, it's the settlement system, like, expanded. Yeah. Assign crew to your ship or outposts, and they're unique. Oh my god, he sent him to the slave post. <laughs> He's like, "You're not going on my ship. You're going to, you're going to my outpost." The skills will affect how they run. And just like companions, most crew members can lend a hand in the field. Take Bosco, for instance. He's designed around the, the core basics of a NASA machine. Please avoid getting shot. I was cringing at this last time. They're assault trons, right? The oh no, protectrons. Yeah, he, yeah, he's got the protectron uh vibe. 
Can I upgrade him to be a sentry bot? This That's is, what I really want. This is want. literally the only companion I've talked about at any length. I'm pretty sure none of the companions like existed until like a year ago. <laughs> You might die. I still want to give it almost a humanoid personality. I d the problem is that like he can serve all kinds of roles, and then they proceed to like not explain the roles. <clears throat> so I remember this from watching it the first time earlier that they really don't explain what the companions do for you out in the field. Like, are yeah. you my encumbrance, bitch? Can I load you up with stuff and send you back to the ship, or are you well, just like a combat bot? They've also said that, like, companions can help you pass speech checks sometimes because they might, you know, know somebody that you're talking to. I'm sure the robot so. will be really useful for that. <laughs> Sam <laughs> Sam was actually good. Anytime you thought that there was going to be robotic uh, enemies, Sam could, like, get a ton of speech checks to, like, disable them. Or, like, convince them that you belong there. There's going to be a random event. Where um, we get we might get attacked by a robot, but uh, if we have Vasco here with us, he'll. Uh... Sorry, Captain, I cannot enter the radiation zone. This is your destiny. <laughs> so I elongated the limbs. This tends to make him feel more human-like and give him a little personality. It is a shame exploration requires so much bloodshed. Yes, it is a shame, well, isn't it? Claptrap, but even worse. Claptrap, but not funny. Wait, Claptrap's I mean, clap not trap. funny, but <laughs> Claptrap, but not trying to be funny. Yeah. Well, it's it. No, it's still trying. It's just trying less hard. They would have made a progression from a one-man crew to a full complement. That then everyone would see the fun factor would take a nosedive. So they make you take a crew at the start. I'm thinking that's kind of the thing. Outer Worlds kind of struggled with this. Um, no crew is an option, but it's severely limited compared to crew. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Action features in Starfield. I feel like Vasco's literally only Vasco's purpose is to be your valet. Oh, wait, you don't have an ATV. So he just stands at the ramp of the ship and goes, Hello, Captain Howard. <laughs> You'll be able to build and captain the ship of your dreams. I doubt it. And now, let's take to the sky. Damn, look at that angle that ship took. Mm -hmm. You're going to have day one videos of people like their ships flying through the buildings in yeah. that city. <laughs> like falling through the ground when they're trying to land yeah it's gonna it, do the ac4 thing where the ship would like <laughs> go to the bottom of the map and then rise up yeah. <laughs> we're putting you in the cockpit of your very own spaceship and telling you that you can do pretty much anything and that is really cool for us as developers and i fly in an atmosphere <laughs> space flight should be oh, what will happen if you try to fly it in atmosphere should feel like you're in complete control every things step like the, the thrusters shut down going to emergency shut down yeah we've extended that sense of control to ship combat it's not about just hitting your triggers to fire your weapons you also have to aim it's a complex dance between your piloting skills and our power allocation system boosting power to okay you have one selected and then d-pad like up and down, more or less power, left, right, different categories. I still feel like this is a system that's not going to be um, good. Yeah, I, I I can't imagine there's going to be enough like granularity with like the or just the mechanics in general. It's just not going to get deep enough. Yeah, it's like really uh, existence. very basic FTL. Mm hmm. Oh, but we gave Your you more pips. Will make your ship faster. Powering up the ground drives. So how it, it all hinges on how badly the AI can like auto aim you. I feel like <laughs> just maxing your speed and flying around things would be the most yeah. effective. But they're gonna have like hit like hit scan laser weapons that um and like heat seeking rockets. Yeah, instantly hits you. So 
What does gravity do? That's the grav drive. It's you, literally, you just power it so that you can travel between systems just to slow down even further. Because the loading <laughs> screen wasn't enough. <laughs> the loading screen animation just wasn't enough. We needed to take it a step further. And So, all right, so here's what I do. I... I max out my ship speed, fly away, then I met, then I quickly max out my uh, jump drive, and then mm. jump the fuck out of there. That's that's how, and, and that's going to be what I do in every system that I get into. When, the big, when with, running when away, it, oh yeah, no man's when sky. I'm trying when, to get shit done. When no no man's sky has that system of oh I don't want to fight, so you just leave. Yeah. <laughs> like the in, like you can fly away from the fight in a straight line, and the enemy won't like even yeah. be able to kill you. Yeah. So do you have to go and switch out your main tanker ship when you get into combat and then get into your battleship and jump back into the fight? Who knows when sh sw uh, ship switching is a thing? Is Bethesda in the mood that like, oh yeah, just let the player do whatever they want, whatever they want, and you could just like instant instant transition? I doubt it. We still don't even know 100% if it's going to let you switch ships. No, so we're just, we're just assuming that based off of one thing that I saw in the UI. Yeah. The graph thing has a ton of pips just to make sure that you don't just skip out of fights. Because people would. Shorten the amount of time it takes before you can make a jump. Okay, so like more points, less time. So really you just put one point into it and then just wait it out because that was still faster than like manually upping the grav thing because you got to down other stuff to do it yeah so it's like what's faster downing everything to max out your grav to lower this by seven seconds or just waiting the seven seconds they need a button that's going to automatically down everything yeah they need presets you yeah need, you need a grav drive preset yeah because otherwise it's just going to be like out of combat, I want to grab jump to another system. Um, so you just like it. Sound it all sounds so tedious, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm just amazed that they're doing six, or in this case, five. Five systems. Yeah. yeah normally six, because you've got three weapon types, and then energy, uh, engine speed, shields, and grab drive. Yeah, that's the weird thing. It's like you have. It really should just be weapons. It should just be weapons, shields, gravity, engine. Well, no, there wouldn't be enough if there was weapons. I like. I, I'm all right with the idea of like stance dancing your weapon stats. I feel like you would only max out whatever you're actively using, and then like switching from lasers to ballistics, so you. St Knock that I just, out. I just I just go back to Elite Dangerous, which is a much more in-depth game, and they only have a weapons thing. Yeah. So it's like. Also, you're jump driving straight into a planet. So <laughs> I guess we know that you can't like destroy planets that way. Yeah. Light speed. So Starfield marketing material confirms that light speed ramming is stupid. Oh wait, you don't you haven't seen Star Wars. No. You haven't seen The Last Jedi. Alright, so um in the eighth movie of Star Wars, there's this maneuver they pull where um this lady, who who is an unlikable character throughout the flick, um points points the ship in a last stand against the enemy fleet and jumps to light speed, and somehow this rams into all of their ships. <laughs> uh, this has never happened in the series before, and then, like, in the subsequent movie, they said, actually, it's a one in a one million shot. Which is, which is even more impressive, because it means that, like, she didn't even know it was going to happen. She just thought, hoped that it was going to happen. And if it didn't, <laughs> then, like, I guess she was going to end up in a different place and be fine. She's, like, the only survivor, because she turned around and light speed jumped the other direction. But uh, needlessly, in a series where there are giant planet-destroying space stations, this uh, drew into question some of the earlier strategies. <laughs> and moving your power to your weapons and shields means you're ready for a fight.
My question isn't, uh, why didn't they blow up the Death Star that way? My question is, why did they bother with the Death Star when they could have just used spaceships to blow up planets? By light speed ramming them into the planet. That's a hell of an easier target to hit, for one. You should always be on your toes because you're not alone out there. Random event spawned. Yeah. This seems like random event hell to me. Yeah. <laughs> is it random or is it radiant? <laughs> Did I steal somebody's um space laser and that's why they're chasing after me? Yeah, I mean... <laughs> You stole somebody's, like, McDonald's chicken McNuggets, <laughs> and, like, they hired uh, Crimson Cringe ships to come hunt you down. If I drop weapons in the middle of it, of uh, New Atlantis, are the uh, robot guards going to tell me to stop doing that? Mm. This is, this is a war are... memorial. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, there's a reason why you don't write your faster than light things to be able to be weaponized because you've instantly obliterated the stakes. Like that's going to be a nightmare in the future is if we can go FTL, say goodbye to Earth. Nice little No Man's Sky combat sequence here. Unlocking the targeting control system skill will allow you to zero in on specific subsystems of the ship you target. Oh, so it's like VATS, where you had to invest into perks in order to target <laughs> certain lists. <laughs> it's fucking VATS. <laughs> There's the note for you. <laughs> and you and you can see what they're allocating their pips into. Hmm. I'm sure that's going to be very useful information. <laughs> that's that's the first perk that you get um, mm. when you invest in a bats. Yeah, I like that you just do like blanket damage. And you can't you like components just don't get damaged unless you uh, have the perk. Like how, what, like what else would it be? Hmm, I think the big part that has thrusters coming out of it, those are the engines. Well, you see, the thing is, is that you need an oper a skilled operator. Uh, so this guy's just letting this happen, too. Like, is this how combat's going to be? There's just, like, one ship that attacks you for a little bit and then, like, just flies in a straight line so you can uh, gun it down. In before most ships explode before the indiv individual component will. Good question. I mean, like, they there was a dialogue line that said they got the grav drive, but the ship's blowing up now, so... Man. So as an Elite Dangerous player... <laughs> <laughs> What are your impressions of that little uh, dogfight there? That looked fucking terrible. That dogfight where they didn't fight back. They didn't fight back, yeah. Have you seen Elite Dangerous dogfights? If there's a game that ever was going to sell me on VR, it was Elite Dangerous, specifically for those fights. Yeah, I need to install it and play some VR on that. Yeah. Like those, are, those are very visceral fights too. There was like no speed to this. It's I felt very um. No Man's Sky is a better comparison. No Man's Sky is definitely a good comparison. Um. For one thing, maneuverings actually seems to be important in this fight. Yeah. And like yeah, lining your up your shots. Positioning and everything is critical. So you're always fighting with somebody else for uh for the better positioning. 
And the AI is fucking smart, too. After destroying an enemy ship, you there will be a box, and it'll have loot in it <laughs> that you can just suck into your ship. It really is elite, day, or it really is No Man's Sky. To loot the remains from your cockpit. Why? It's it skipped for me. You go back a bit. You're not missing much. Uh, there's a, a bunch of crates spawned behind the ship when it blew up, and then <laughs> uh, he, he just picked it up from the cockpit. After destroying an enemy ship, you can loot the remains from your cockpit. How does that work? You just suck it into your ship. So imagine like you get through a fight and you're like recovering, and then like part of it is that like you do an EVA sequence where like you salvage stuff from the ship. Yeah. Or you decide, like, it's not worth the time, and then, like, that's where, like, you see unsalvaged ships just floating around. Because, like, if it's just a universal truth in this universe that you can just suck the valuable stuff from your spaceship, there wouldn't be salvagers. <laughs> it's a gameplay consideration, all right? It would be but cooler like... if it was na more like naval combat and fights were longer and more strategic. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. it ended for that guy in, like, 10 seconds. Yeah. And he yeah, attacked yeah. us. This is, like, super arcadey. It would be, um... I feel I feel like there's a... There, there would be a opportunity here to make something that's more slower and more nuanced and stuff. And then you can justify doing the EV, like, the, um, the salvage operation at the end. Some people will get bored. Well, there you go. You hit the nail on the head. Yeah. It's going to be kind of just, it's a boring system because some people would get bored. How ironic is that? <laughs> you can always Like, I don't even want to do that encounter because it was. No, that looks really, f I know I'm going to be skipping combat. That's, those are my dragon fights right there. Yeah. Just fucking yeah. console command delete ships. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, that looked. It's it's No Man's Sky, so. Mm -hmm. But I skipped combat a lot in No Man's Sky as well, so you know. I mean, there's a lot of ways you can go with these kinds of space games on how you prioritize combat, when it happens, how it happens. Like for instance, in Firefly, there's not there's no instances of them engaging in combat between ships. They don't have a gun on the Serenity. Yeah. The closest is in the movie when they steal a cannon. Or like when they fought that one station that was going to scrap them and that they like had to be really creative to uh, actually use a gun in that situation. But you can also take a more personal approach by docking with the enemy vessel and boarding their ship. I can't wait for the jank that's going to be involved in this. <laughs> So, like, what, do I get them down to 10% health and then I have to, like, fly up to them and do hit dock? Yeah. Like, why would I do this? Man, what a combat encounter. <laughs> Nothing happened on the ship, and then I went into the cockpit and killed three generic NPCs. Two loading screens, remember. <laughs> But why just blow them up? Maybe you get more from doing this? Like, I can conceivably see you getting better value out of doing this, but... This is why I, I look through this stuff, because, like, first pass, not... you don't really know... You don't have time to, like, kind of digest yeah. a lot of details. But then you give it the second pass, and you can really pay attention to what they're showcasing. They do this on purpose. They hit you really fast with information so that you can't really pay attention to things. And so, like, it looks flashy. It's got boarding. Cool. The boarding is going to be as good as I can imagine it because I didn't really pay attention to what happened in the sequence. But <laughs> I'm trying to avoid my black pills here and say that boarding is going to be completely fucking useless because the, uh, like, salvaging other ships is probably going to be useless after a point because, you yeah. know, Bethesda they can't balance economies and everything. So it's probably more profitable and more time efficient for me to just land on a planet and just mine a bunch of crap. Yeah, I can easily see that being the case. Like, space combat at some point is going to get really tedious. Yeah. Like, like in, said, in a way that... I'm, I'm 
calling it now. That's going to be the dragon fights of this game. Yeah, like, in a way that, like, combat in Skyrim starts to get tedious after a while. Like, combat on the road, so you get attacked by, like, a pack yeah. of wolves, right? Yeah. Uh, this seems way worse because, at least with a pack of wolves, you can stand there, let them come at you, and then kill them. This is, like, mildly involving me, but it's not challenging me. And you know what it is? No Man's Sky often, like, breaks the flow of what you're doing with a random combat encounter that's not yeah. challenging. That's what it is. It's like, but yeah. it's almost like, I feel like you could just quick constantly quick save, and then as soon as this one starts, quick load, run through <laughs> it again, and it doesn't trigger that time. Yeah. That could be the problem, too. Or just load to a previous, before you made your jump, and then jump mm -hmm. to the system again. and Yeah. Like, we know Creation Engine, we know that you can, like, reset this kind yeah. of thing. Reset cells. So, reset reset it, and then, like, eventually, like, the combat encounter doesn't happen. But, I mean, it's probably pointless to even bother with that, because it, you probably can just speed away instead. Yeah, I'm re I really am curious, like, what the avoidance mechanics are for people who just Once don't, can't be bothered. It's not that they can't do it, it's that you don't care. It's yeah. Yours. Okay, so you can take enemy ships. Add it to your fleet and retrieve. So okay, he's right, got so more ships here. Fleet. We do have a fleet. So the slave ships will. So like, <clears throat> here's what's gonna happen for the first ten hours. I'm gonna fly around, get attacked, dock every single ship that attacks me, add it to my fleet, and then sell it. Ah, <laughs> uh, don't don't even bother. No, it's it. You know, it reminds me of your Oblivion video where you talked about strip looting dungeons for money. <laughs> That's what it reminds me of. <laughs> and you know, too, there's a there's like a developer at Bethesda who's terrified of people who are going to be doing that because they're going to realize very quickly how pointless and tedious it really will become. Be like they're going to ruin it for themselves. Probably, skill issue, right? Yeah. It at any spaceport but space is way more than fighting for your life just like when you're planet side there are plenty of sights to see and stops to make on the way to your next adventure like these massive star yards can we go inside walk the halls talk to oh, the yes crew. maybe get talked into buying a whole new ship a civilian in my star yard Let's see about getting you a proper are these going to, to be pre-generated, or are they going to be progressively generated as well? Like, <laughs> is, is there going to be one station that we're going to see everywhere? Yeah, it's going to be like No Man's Sky, where like there's a bunch of preset is there, station types. Am I really going to just, am I actually going to want to go to these stations, or is it going to be one of those things where it's like, I see it one or tw once or twice, and then I realize that they're kind of just watered down system like uh hey and hey we all need gas stations yeah <laughs> well at least at gas stations i can still get s some fucking roadhead yeah space condoms yeah yeah i'm getting like serious no man's sky vibes from this which is not a good thing so this aspect of no man's sky was fucking terrible and nothing ever fixed it it's listen, it's it's not for you. It's content, all right? Don't you want to do the content? The dev like it, the dev spiel couldn't be more devoid of passion. It really does feel like he's kind of defeated in the sense that he knows that it's like no man's sky. <laughs> You know what I would like? Like, less combat encounters, but more impactful combat encounters. Yes. I want a combat encounter that takes... I'll be sitting there, and it's like, it's not because... No, I, I want the combat encounters to be, like, about 10 to 15 minutes, I feel like. From start to finish, that's, like, mm -hmm. meeting them to stripping their ship. When you finish stripping their ship, or when you start? Uh, finish. Like, okay. I, I feel like... 15 minutes or so 15 to 20 minutes is a good i think that that's a, that's a good time but yeah this feels like it's just gonna be wolves on the road 
Spaceships edition. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. A gigantic battleship like the UC Vigilance. Or rub elbows with the galaxy's wealthy elite on a cruise ship fit for the stars. Why would they let you on the cruise ship? Can you just drive your boat up to a cruise ship and dock? Well, you know, you're 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 space royalty. You're part of uh, constellation, and you're the space dragonborn. I want to know: is this is this randomly generated, or is this like a? No, this is a pre-built interior. Is there only going to be one cruise ship? Or is this a random encounter? I think that... What is this? <sighs> what is this and how impactful is this really going to be? You're asking too many questions. <laughs> you remember... Remember that vault? That the Vault 94? Where the Battle Royales and Fallout 76 took place? Yeah. It's going to be like that. <laughs> oh, a liminal space that serves no purpose? Yes. Plenty of personal encounters to be had as well. You can hail any ship you come across to trade, swap info, or maybe even commit an act of piracy. Let's do this. Oh, I missed when this. Oh yeah, you didn't see this first time? No. Yeah, you get to role play as a raider. Which is nice, but I mean like I feel like you could rely on being attacked often enough that you don't even have to bother with mm -hmm. space piracy. You have to yeah. like <sighs> My dreams of being like pushed to commit piracy because of desperation never gonna come true no nah. <laughs> there will be ran enough random events of you getting attacked to like get to build a fleet of dozens of ships that's what those mods are gonna be for okay is yeah i mean there's gonna be total rebalance mods to make like just to push you to the desperation to actually consider like raiding people's ships Space survival mods. Like, I will probably more actively engage with the piracy just because I don't like their tone of voice or something. Yeah. Than... <laughs> I generally go crazy. Um, I definitely go, like, the more piracy routes. Um, I want to take over ships. I'm going to board ships. I'm like, this is now mine. I steal all the sandwiches and put them, yeah. you know, in my cargo hold. It's remember Sandwich Lady. <laughs> This is a clang explosion waiting to happen. <laughs> Being a raider makes no sense when you're railroaded into Constellation too. Thank Todd. Well, you know, Constellation is a morally gray faction. They'll tolerate piracy if it means collecting the artifacts. Yeah, that's kind of like what I'm hoping for, is that Constellation is a morally gray thing. So you got like the dude, the dude who's bankrolling it, and they're like, really, he's only bankrolling it because he wants to make money off of this thing, mm -hmm. right? And you got Space Delphine, who she's just in it for the power trip. The scientist is only there to study artifacts, and the religious guy is only there to worship them. Yeah. So like, there's no inherent goodness to the faction, but you know that they're like good coded. sandwiches i don't want to play the hero um but i want to go out and just start taking things from people as i don't want to play possible. the hero i want to play the the sandwich vendor <laughs> i want to open a bodega where's my bethesda game where i just open a subway can i pick up those sandwiches can with I, a dedicated grab button <laughs> can i legally call them sa subway it's like sandwiches <laughs> Can I turn off the gravity inside my ship? Do you see that transition? Yeah. <laughs> Sandwich to... Sandwich the gas giant. <laughs> Might be looking for a little human connection in the darkness of space. Why'd you say it like that? Hello, stranger. I just finished cooking up some food. If you want to come on over, just pop on by. Some of the best moments are the ones you discover on your own. So is that actually my grandma or is that an NPC named grandma? Uh, you're only getting your mom and dad in this game. I feel like, you know? how, what's with the casual, like, yeah, just dock to my ship. Aren't you going somewhere? 
Aren't you doing something? <laughs> no. Like, this like is imagine a, if we were driving this is a cars down the road. I'm like this trying to get to work, and then someone hails me and it's like, "Hey, stranger, you wanna you wanna hop in my RV here and get you a sandwich?" <laughs> Fucking no! I gotta get to work. <laughs> Clock's ticking. This, is, this feels like this a, is her retirement. That, that's her retirement. She just goes around the systems, just hailing people, asking if they want sandwiches. Please tell me you guys are ending the stream soon. Has it been 12 hours yet? No, then we're not. <laughs> Look, either we finish the video or we get to 12 hours. <laughs> it's just the way it is sometimes. It is it is deceptive, though, because we are going to hit the, you know, you have the sizzle reel at the end that we'll skip mm -hmm. through. You have the, you have you have the, the constellation watches. Yeah, it was supposed watch. to be 30 minutes, so in a, real, yeah. in, a, in a realistic world, we should be done. Yeah. The thing I love most about Starfield is that it is a Bethesda game. The thing I love most about Starfield, it's a Bethesda game. Just buy the fucking game, guys. You Please, know you guys buy the have. game. I mean, like, you guys know that the term Bethesda tier is not a marker of quality when used <laughs> to describe things in other RPGs. <laughs> like, there are so many Outer Worlds fans that describe certain very bad quests in that game as being Bethesda tier. Through and through. It's really about going to strange new places, meeting interesting people, and getting sidetracked on zany adventures. You really just zany adventures. Yeah, that's what I really loved really about knock, Morrowind. Really knocking it out of the park there. That's what I loved about Morrowind and Oblivion and I love the zaniness. This is Fallout speaking. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Like they've made us they've made a Fallout game. They're a Fallout studio. Elder Scrolls 6 is going to have the Fallout sense of humor. Oh god. Uh Like our era is over. We're old men. It's time to die. <laughs> then realizing 2 hours later that you're involved in a completely new story. You human we thought we were the only ones to leave Earth. Like, how is this possible? <laughs> <laughs> they listen. They haven't been listening to their radio this whole time. Like, this is a Fallout quest. Something that just <laughs> doesn't make sense <laughs> in in universe. We were locked in this fridge. Yeah. <laughs> For, for 500, 500 years, years. <laughs> we were lucky yeah like they're bringing the vault premise to space you're but you happen to be the first person to find us in this galaxy full of human systems and explorers well me okay so maybe it's like the core systems right like there's all all the settled systems are like in the center of the galaxy and then like the further out you go on the map the less settled it gets so like these people are like all the way out on the edges you know that there's an idea about bethesda of the submission box and like you write down a basic quest idea put it in the submission box it gets pulled out and turned into a quest this is what that feels like <laughs> uh colony ship that hasn't seen humans in 500 years brilliant brilliant make ship it stamp it ship it And like they're proud, they're showing this off. Yeah, look at this environment and everything. I'm sure this, we're not going to see this environment in like 30 other ships. This is the zany details that they love that defines their their games. Is yeah, bullshit quests that don't adhere to the world building of the games at all and don't make any fucking sense and have no <laughs> intentional design to them because it's just some random idea that somebody wrote down on a whiteboard that somehow managed to get turned into a quest that's now being marketed to us. You know what though, it's these sorts of quests that are out of the way really hidden and stuff it's great for content creators in six years yeah <laughs> the truth behind the the uss vault 94 or whatever yeah. <laughs> that dna is so present here it's in our, our random encounters that dna is so present here it's in our random it's encounters in our quests. it's in our handcrafted quests and it feels so cool to play it and just make your own path in this universe. I wish they would just show people going doing intersystem travel. 
so that we would know. <laughs> it's not done yet. We can't show you. Really nailing why people don't like these games. It's gonna be the. It's gonna be a Fallout Four again. There are over a thousand planets out there, just waiting for you to visit. We I'm seeing a lot of mono biomes now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think uh, like the one that we saw was a fluke. It was it, well, it's the handcrafted capital of the good guys, mm -hmm. so. Of course, it's going to be like that's that's going to be the most detailed planet in the game. Breaking ground on new planets, exploring every inch of a mostly untouched galaxy. We want you to feel hopeful. We want you to feel the sense of awe and wonder, and sometimes a little fear. Oh, I'm feeling a lot of fear right now. Yeah. Don't, you, don't you worry. A lot of apprehension for sure. <laughs> you a massive playground and a ton of toys. And just setting you free. Can I fly to the planet? Well, you know what I based it on? They made Fallout 3 and it has a sense of humor. And they made Fallout 4 and it's sense of humor. But they made a game between those two called Skyrim. And Skyrim doesn't have the tonal issues that the Bethesda Fallout games has. Yeah. So... You know, I figured that was just a stylistic thing that they associated with the Fallout games. And it was like an emo thing. And that no, they're going to make no. Starfield and Starfield's going to be kind of like a more serious, um, like grounded, thoughtful thing. Like, yeah, some and of Fallout 4 are stupid, West. but that's on purpose. You saw the Wild West settlement and then, that went out the fucking And window. then I saw Cowboy Town. <laughs> and what's bad is the concept art didn't allude to any of this at all. Yeah, this feels like a change that they've made recently. Oh, yeah, like post pandemic? Maybe. You know, like the game's good and all, but hey, what we really need is some wisecracking. Oh, nice. Uh, I'm going to get some water real fast. All right. 3025. This is them pitching the watch. And we love the and we love the opportunity. Um, this and other in the game, authentic. Oh, and hey, we get to work with the amazing people inspired by the controller. So much care into all those little details that breathe life into our worlds. But Starfield isn't just a Bethesda Game Studios world; it's a Bethesda Game Studios galaxy. So why go this big with Starfield? Because we want to give you freedom on a galactic level. The freedom to experience both the exciting planets and the quiet ones. Scanning a planet before you land is a great way to get a sneak peek at the available resources you can use for... Okay, this was the UI I was talking about with them scanning the planet. And you see, All like... Right. This is the UI I was talking about with them scanning planets and seeing, like, uh, color-coded biomes of resources. Mm -hmm. So, like, it's not enough to have a base on a planet that has those resources. You have to specifically have the base on the planet at those In spots. The, yeah. You can see them cut footage right as they reload the double barrel because they still haven't fixed it. Yeah, uh, we noticed it earlier that they didn't show the double barrel reload. Crafting, building, and custom. But at 3450, like okay. Cool about this whole system that we we generate the planet itself as a person. Well, you know what's crazy is how many leads there are. <laughs> Big studio. Yeah, I mean, like they have so many departments now. Procedural content, but the handcrafted content itself comes as the player explore so a cave that's 700 meters away in a game where i have to run everywhere but we have the boost pack oh yeah. a nice name cave cave <laughs> howling cave really found a location waterlogged here. cave abandoned cave no just cave 
our system builds the planet as the player approaches it. We stitch together block of terrain. After that, we have the system that adds interesting locations for the player to explore, creatures to encounter. Look at this fucking thing. <laughs> this is not a creature that's ever existed. Never could, nor could exist. And I mean in the entire universe. It allows us to add that touch of environmental storytelling. I, I love this quote. <laughs> environmental storytelling and it's just a skeleton because that's what it is. There's a skeleton. There's a note next to the skeleton. I am so grateful for his companionship. Without it, I would have gone mad over these past few months. is known for. Aggressive creatures have been disrupting our experiments. Their habitat isn't far from here. If you could take care of It's a radiant quest! <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh, we're getting the good stuff now. <laughs> like blatantly just advertising. It's near here. It's a radiant quest. There's no they don't even try. We've gotten so good at hiding them, you can't even notice. It's so seamless. Okay, here's the proposal really for a can't. system idea. He says that it's to the north, and then you always put the habitat to the north. Yeah. Better than for us, we would be in your debt. So even if you Well, I can't feed my crew with your debt. If your friend were to visit the same planet that you have, you would have a different story to tell. Ooh, okay, I just say it then. But I mean like so that quest at the science outpost where I go kill some wild animals. I experience that quest in hour three, and then you get that quest in like hour six. So I mean, you know, it is what it is. Don't even pretend that loading screen was that short. <laughs> So, one of them was level 17 and one of them was level 2. Once again, you have the dude charging at you with, uh, with, with a melee with weapon. An, with like an axe. <laughs> After you just melted his companion in like one second. Mm-hmm. Honestly, no balls. Show us what a, the actual loading screen is on the recommended specs. <laughs> that would build a lot of credibility with Bethesda with me. So, hang on. The level 10 died in like a second. The level 2 is taking two mags. I'm looking at the ammo counter right now. The, the thousands of rounds. What the fuck? It's the same. So this wasn't like... They probably just gave him more health in the console or something. Yeah, see how fast they cut? Yeah. This is the classic. We got to slow down the combat sequence just to really soak in the details. Oh, he hit a headshot. That's why he died so fast. Hmm. You know what do I mean with like the segmented health bar? Yeah. All right, slow it down. Enhance. Here we go. Zoom can, in we, can we get a frame? Come on, come on, come on. Yeah. There's Dang. nothing in there. There's nothing in there. Hang on. <laughs> I gotta get this on the on the detailed one. Thirty four <laughs> thirty four fifty one. <laughs> There's actually like nothing that comes out. Yeah. And they cut that. Look, chat, look. Here we go. This is the frame they wanted to cover up. 
the frame that Bethesda did not want you to see. It still has the square bit cylinder. Yeah. But the bullets don't come out of it now. That was their solution. Just remove them entirely. <laughs> what if just, that's the solution? Don't even try. Just to, <laughs> just give up. Bravo, Bethesda. Bravo. <laughs> well, the model looks better, I guess. Like a, a bit. So is there any logic to the levels and like names of them? Like, if we go back to the beginning. Abandoned station. Yeah. <laughs> pirate freebooter is level 10. Generic pirates level 2. Freebooter level 10. Okay, that's consistent. Level 2 pirate. For some reason, like, like why does he have a chevron? Yeah. Is he a level 2 pirate or is he a level 2 ultra pirate? He's, uh, he's a mini boss. Mm, mm. But why is the level two the mini boss? Level six brig. Okay. It's kind of like Skyrim rules. The brackets yeah. are like two, six, ten. Here it is. <clears throat> Your boss chest. Mm-hmm. Broken oh, shotgun. Oh, maybe that's why you take food. You can break it down into, like, paste. Oh, true. Turn it into, like, nutrients or something. For crafting. Legendary items. Yes, baby. Just random enchanted. Oh, yeah. Yay, here we, here yeah, we go. It's a three-star three star legendary. Let's go. Three-star legendary. 15, minus 15% 15 damage from robot enemies. What is this? This is a legendary space helmet. Two attempts can be banked while hacking. 10% chance to ignite nearby enemies. Tell me vampiric weapons are still in the game. <laughs> I hope so. Fascinating. Nice. And they're even called legendary items. So. All right, Spaceform, get to Planet Meridia. <laughs> no, like, they have no pretense. So, like... Oh, God. Epic and legendary items made sense in fantasy games, but somehow they got ported to games with, like, guns? <laughs> because the, the the dopamine hit that you can get from from getting one is uh, it's just too tantalizing for a designer not to use. You gotta weaponize those weapons. It's completely up to you how you want to interact with each planet. Whether you want to explore and see what you can find. What's funny so too is I... like, I feel like anybody who hasn't played Fallout 76 truly won't know, like really appreciate the implications of mm. uh, that legendary system. My god. Oh, the depths. I'm gonna be rolling go. G rolls in yeah. fucking Starfield. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> but it won't matter until you hit level cap. <laughs> it, I mean, it, no, I should just stop there. It won't matter. But like, <laughs> dopamine drip. <laughs> Lee Harvey Oswald's Carcano rifle, three star legendary weapon. Is that why it was two shot? Harvest resources and be on your way. Or simply take in the views. So, like, is my ship in this valley? Oh, yeah, there's my ship down there. So I just spent, like, 30 minutes coming up here so I could get a Vista because you won't give me a fucking ATV. <laughs> With the help of your scanner... You can't, you, the you can't continue this way. Turn around. <laughs> Remember when Fallout was Skyrim with guns? Starfield is literally Skyrim with guns. Done to the same crappy engine, ugly visuals, stupid glitches, desire to dump work on modders, and bottom of the barrel area design. <sighs> At least Skyrim was fully handcrafted, for one. <laughs> the Uncharted and discover exotic wildlife. Is it really exotic, though? Is it really Uncharted? Am I really the first person to be here? 
<laughs> the fucking system. How can I? How can I be the first person to be here when there's a bunch of raiders everywhere? Well, and fucking, yeah, good point. But also, like, it's within 15 light years of the fucking capital of humanity, and you're telling me that <laughs> nobody's seen the fucking herding crab herbivore on Tarada <laughs> on Tarada Chath one. Traits unknown gravitational anomaly. Okay, so yeah. Legendary Please. effect uh, animals. If you have the skills, you can even figure out that certain creatures and plants, you can build an outpost and produce resources from those. I need pigment. So I'm going <laughs> to build an outpost on, on uh, Titicha 1 and tell my slaves <laughs> to... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to farm hunting sail gators for pigment. <laughs> Good luck. We're gonna we're gonna build like a giant basement where we just like string these guys up and just bleed yeah, them dry. Just bleed them of pigment. <laughs> Your slaves are gonna hunt sail gators into extinction. That's what I'm thinking of. Is if animals give me experience and I can go around one shotting them, I'm gonna go around one shotting them. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's got to learn how to design starships. This, hmm, game, this game's that, incredible. Look at where it's, it biomes, mountains, and coniferous forests. So is that different parts of the planet that you can find this thing? Yeah, I'm gonna love like landing on a planet six times to survey everything. Also, does he not have everything unlocked? How is he not 100% on his survey? Or is it Plants is it animal. ticking up? No, it's like he had everything, but he was only 96% survey. And... I'm he gonna had, love. He had a couple. He had a couple rocks. He still had to scan. Just like No Man's Sky, I'm gonna love <laughs> running around <laughs> scanning plants. Well, what else? Listen, what else are you gonna do on a planet? With, like this is what exploration's about, you know. Nobody said science was glamorous or entertaining. Mm -mm. Rewards for fully surveying. What are the rewards for fully surveying? Please tell us. Planets and fully surveying a whole system. Random legendary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, did we just talk over it? Like, did he say it and we just missed it? And rewards for creatures and plants. You can build an outpost and produce resources from those plants and animals. You can get experience and rewards for fully surveying planets and fully surveying a whole system. It's so just, just like, like No Man's XP. Sky. Just like No Man's Sky, I'll do it once, find out that it's so fucking tedious, and never do it again. <laughs> Where's the quest that's going to demand that I fully explore a planet? Fully survey five planets to unlock rank four of Surveyor, which will <laughs> scan animals 5% faster. Yeah. The value trap. <laughs> <laughs> the best, best way to avoid losing is just don't play it. Yeah. Creatures. We really wanted to think of them as natural to the environment. So why don't these animals run away from you? These guys have seen, like, deer, right? Like, if deer even get a whiff that you're near them, they run away. In D.C.? I don't think they got deer in D.C. Do they have, like... So nobody on the team was like, hey, maybe the animals should be, like, skittish. <laughs> but if they run away, then you can't capture pictures of them. That would be really annoying. No, the animals have two two modes, passive and aggressive. Just like they did in Skyrim. Yeah, they have oh, not... you know, in Skyrim they had the, the deers would run away. They, yeah, they don't have oh, a, God. they don't have an adaptive system. I love this animal by the way. They don't have any kind of like unique uh there's no like food chain or anything like that. Like no predators or preys. Like, maybe there's deep predators, but Yeah. Skyrim had predators. The wolves would chase deer. Dragons would chase deer. I don't know why. Don't Everybody th wanted to kill deer for some reason in Skyrim. I don't think we're even going to see that in this game, if I'm being perfectly honest. You don't think so? You don't think there'll be prey and predator species? I think that's going to require 
generate because it's remember you have to work within like the frame of like five animals right mm -hmm. well yeah there's gonna be one predator species and then like four prey species and the predator species just go randomly like no man's sky has this so that's why i'm mm. kind of basing this on so predator okay. species just goes around blindly killing and it, killing things it doesn't have like a food requirement it just hates them <laughs> it's just in a state of war maybe i don't know but then why haven't we seen anything that runs away maybe they disabled that for the sake of this for mm -hmm. the uh for the trailers of course wildlife. they wanted to be cinematic Something you've never seen before well i've definitely never seen that i also don't think it would exist <laughs> like this might exist I like that their, 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 their idea of, of aliens is just like 27 variations of a praying mantis. <laughs> is the Mothman in this game? Oh my god. <laughs> so is there a functional purpose to these tubes or... Like, does it just look cool? Does it breathe out of those tubes? When it comes to our exteriors, when the sun moves... All that light is calculated in real time through the And this is why it requires a <laughs> Our biggest goal for lighting with Starfield was to make the game feel more filmic. To use Oh. Because the entire time I've been watching this video, I've been thinking, man, this sure is a filmic looking game. Every frame of painting. <laughs> <laughs> the goal with the lighting is to make the game look more filmic. More filmic. This game. <laughs> Pretty wild. Lighting and color to really make it feel more cinematic. <laughs> lighting and color to make it feel more cinematic. That's going in the video. <laughs> the goal of the lighting directors was to make it feel like a movie. Meanwhile, it looks nothing like a movie because there's it's just soft shadows. The, the barren planets look better than the they do. The populated planets. It, it is actually kind of crazy that, like, I guess it's because they're simpler. Yeah. But, like, yeah, maybe, maybe, like, the game is doing something on certain planets to just, like, tweak down the graphic settings so that they can have more stuff in it. But, like, the probably. barren planets, they're able to just, like, crank, like, the shaders Must be the and case. things like that. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, like, this looks like 76. Yeah. <laughs> the way that there's no shadows on plants. The low-resolution rocks. Black Reach. It's Skyrim, guys. It's Skyrim. <laughs> we found it. So I can't wait for glowing mushrooms. Glowing mushroom caves to be on every fucking planet. Well, it's an And see, like, this is what's crazy. So. This looks like a good shot. Yeah. Because it's got atmospheric simulation and, like, uh, some of the planet is, like, just, it blends into the cloud. And then, like, it's got a defined shape. It's very nice and round, like planets are. But <laughs> this looks nice. I like this shot. This is a wallpaper. Every frame a painting. All right, now what's the next thing they're going to show us that's going to be fucking garishly ugly? <laughs> Not this. Eh. There we go. This looks like Starforge. <laughs> I wouldn't say that's garishly ugly. Like, it kind of misses. Like, these landscapes... Yeah. Some of these landscape shots are great, but then, like, that's it. Yeah. I'm I'm am telling you, it's like the the more barren the planets are, the better it looks. Mm -hmm. They start adding more details, and it just starts falling apart. It's such a grab bag of assets. Do you think they like outsourced all the trees and stuff, 
So like in how they in house made this stuff first, and it was simple, and then they started feeling the the pressures of time, and like had to increasingly outsource. Mm, maybe so like, yeah. That's why it's a visual clash. Bethesda Austin was actually in charge of uh, designing the um, Wild West city. <laughs> that would explain a lot. No footprints in sand dunes. True, true. I love these atmospheres. Yeah. The way they're doing atmospheres is great. Skyboxes are primo. I love it. Um... After some exploring, you can find a spot to set up a base camp. Ah, uh, the slave plantation. Outposts can be built almost anywhere on any. I like that the available resources led, so it really is just going to be like mono resource outposts that you have a ton of. Planet. And well, maybe the, maybe there'll be like some overlaps. Jewels come in all shapes and sizes, filling all different. Per uh, so I don't need that much lead, so I'm just gonna have one crew member man this outpost. So uh, for the rest for the rest of your life, <laughs> you, you are going to you are going to, to live you are going to live in isolation and mine lead. <laughs> you can even in a setting them. with <laughs> robots. In a setting with robots, I could have Vasco do it, but I need him on my ship because he knows my name. Because he knows my name and he has the stats that I need on my ship. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's that toy uh, ship model. So I guess that's just a generic asset that we're going to see everywhere. Of course. Once again, Bethesda, leave no good asset underutilized. Adorian Van goes to the lead mines. I feel like that's a more fitting fate. Like, killing him is such an outdated thing because you couldn't really do anything else with him. Whereas, like, now we have a system where we can enslave NPCs and force them to live in permanent isolation, cut off from the rest of society. And live in, like, really Spartan environments. Too. What do you like, mean? What, what do you mean I forgot to build a radio? <laughs> no, that was intentional. I'm sorry, I can't hear you <laughs> over the sounds of the engines. Make sure you keep outporting that lead, or I'm going to come back with my gun. Look, adoring fan, look at this beautiful vista. Don't you love it? Mm-hmm. Oh, my, I do. Door slams, you're already taken off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you ship him, like, one sandwich a month. <laughs> I'm curious what, like, the, the upkeep is for these settlements and stuff. It's like, Fallout, you needed to have, like, some sort of food and water. There's going to be, like, some basic my, like blueprint that you learn to make in, like, yeah. 10 seconds. It's like, here's, 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 the hob here's the habitat that where all the food and water gets produced. Mm -hmm. Here's the water supply. It's pumped straight into the lead deposit. <laughs> here's the food supply. It grows out of the lead deposit. <laughs> enjoy, enjoy your short, miserable life. <laughs> Assign crew and companions to work at your outposts for added bonuses and set up extractors to harvest resources while you're away. Satisfactory. Okay, so why do I need the fucking companions? <laughs> they, well, they have to, they, so they don't even do anything here, they just have to watch the machine work. <laughs> well, you know, if, if something gets... You, you teach them how to, like, unclog the machine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking dust storms coming. Guess I got a gun. I'm gonna be out there for like three hours. Something hmm, interesting. They way. haven't mentioned weather actually. That is true. They have shown a little bit, but. Yeah, but it's like. Is that dynamic weather? And no, it's tied to a quest. Yeah. yeah. Tied to one of the main quests where you find an artifact, so there's a lightning storm and like low <laughs> visibility. I feel like that would have been one of the things that they would have touted, though, is like, yeah, and we have dynamic weather systems on each planet. Why do I need organic slaves when robots exist? You know, we've been asking that same question for a while, <laughs> but the mining union is really strong. They insist that, like, in order Listen. for us to have robot, in order for us to have Vasco, we have to employ 10 people on slave colony worlds. No, 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 it, it's this, it's this. The robots cost like 3,000 3, space bucks, but the uh, the hirelings only cost 500. 
Mm. That's a flat, but just flat, like straight up. The rest like, of their life. Up yeah. front. Yeah. You know how much it's oil just... costs? <laughs> um, is we have a new fly cam where you can toggle between. But is it new? Thank you, Fallout 76. I'm pretty sure you guys did that in Fallout 76. foot building or you can now use a top-down isometric camera which helps plan out larger parts of the outpost and placing those larger halves so that way you can really plan your sh i just give me a blueprint system because it's going to be the same outpost on every planet it's going to generate enough food and water for one person i'm sure there will be a blueprint system as in fallout 76 so And you do have your build Trace limit. Mm -hmm, of course. Mm -hmm. And like, we're already at like 10% with just this mm -hmm. little thing. So yeah, with, with just the, just the basic geometry, keep your, uh, keep your detail work down. So there's, there's going to be a mod first week. And then when mm -hmm. you're on your feet, you can really decorate and fine tune things much easier. This is a max build limit building. Enjoy yeah. Enjoying the flat lighting really, uh, yeah. Open those walls. But why would I decorate it? Oh, hey, it's my space solar panel that's going to provide enough power in all situations for my slave <laughs> colony to function. Why is it rotating so quickly? It's looking for the sun. What do you mean? <laughs> There's your food. You get to eat pink flower. No, sorry, pink leaf. <laughs> I hope you enjoy the flavor of pink leaf. I love kale. It's a superfood, actually. Oh, man, this is an even better planet. Just no atmosphere. <laughs> Endless white void. <laughs> Add crafting and research stations in your out... All right is the research part by the way they said 30 minutes oh there is a food and drink thing so why isn't that a dedicated tab in the inventory oh my fucking god <laughs> so there's a whole research category for food and drink yeah that will provide it's it's oh wait we have pharmacology too so you have alchemy cooking base building armor crafting and weapon crafting mm -hmm. and they all have their own related perks but of course. maybe we'll be able to hire people who have those so that we don't have to get those i like that there's more food and drink options than there are equipment options <laughs> well you know it's that those are just discovered right hmm Outpost to utilize any resources you find or already have. Is this going to be like Fallout 76 where I have to break everything Mind down to discover their schematics? Because that fucking sucked. Different... Well, they got they still have the receiver system. So, of course, I think we said this last time they showed this. There's going to be an optimal mod for every weapon. So, like, it's the pretension of like weapon modification like dynamic weapon yeah. modification that could be cool and then there's just going to be a best in slot for everything yeah because it's it's basically just going to be stat bonuses and the stat that you want to increase the most is your just damage raw damage so like you know putting putting modifications on the weapon isn't really going to affect the the shooting models all that much so just bigger dps is better in this case mm-hmm how do I know Weapon this? It's because they've made two games already with a gun modification system, and it's been identical. And I'm looking at this, and it's exactly the fucking same third time now. If you said that this was a UI mod for Fallout 76, I would believe you. Yes. Scopes. Larger magazines. A selection of grips and barrels. There's explosive rounds, though. And... <laughs> Oh, so that's not going to be a, so a legendary that's, that's effect? That's not a legendary effect. That's just every weapon now. 
every weapon as explosives. But see, it's like, you know, it, it'll be expensive. It'll take ad ad adhesive. Ad adhesive. Adhesive, yeah. And, oh, and, it's back. And, it's and, back, guys. Good. I loved breaking down duct tape. I can't wait to look for space <laughs> duct tape so I can build explosive <laughs> rounds on my double barrel shotgun. So I can just recreate Fallout 76. Like, it just continues. I liked how in Fallout 76, they gave you a lot more material, specifically adhesive and stuff, but then they made a system where you have to craft weapons to break down for yeah. more schematics. So it's like you were actually more resource poor in 76 than you were in Fallout 4. Of course. And it was then... brilliant. What a fucking brilliant system that whole thing was. Different ammunition like explosive rounds. That oh, wow. Terrible. It looks oh horrible. God, it's I just like explosive home. weapons in Fallout 76. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks like it's doing like no damage too. And once again, it's not something that's affecting combat or anything. It's just a different type of DPS. It's not like throwing things around. It's not. No, it's it's yeah. it. Does this game have like limb damage? Make your I game. I feel like they would have. Make your game. would have. Make your game more they, annoying so that uh, you can get like marginal DPS increases. Yeah, I feel like they would have called attention to if they had like limb damage, the way they called attention to it with the ships. So the ships have limb damage and vats, but on-ground combat does not. Interesting. All you stealth players out there will surely need a suppressor. I said this it was fucking stupid when it happened live, but... Can I get a crossbow? Then I won't need a suppressor. Alright, suppressors are... Unless you have some kind of counterbalance system to them, like... I don't think lowering range is enough of a counterbalance. I think you legitimately yeah. need to, like, their maneuverability, they need to be, like, super heavy or something. There needs to be some kind of huge downside to having the suppressor, because otherwise it's just a superior option. Yeah, so, like, in real life, the reason you want to forego suppress is because it adds a lot of mass to the, the weight to the forward of the weapon and stuff makes it more unwieldy and just more difficult to use in close quarters and it's just a meme it doesn't make you silent yeah <laughs> so like if you were in this room and you heard this guy get range... shot how much is range even going to affect combat in this game so you much know, of the combat we've seen has been in small tight corridors there's stats on the weapons for like range and accuracy yeah so like what's that about guys Even at this range, I can't miss, like. Well, oh, did you a... look at that? Look at that top right sneak attack. Yeah, of course. I saw that. <laughs> I saw that when it happened live. Stealth, stealth archers confirmed. Well, of course. Hopefully it's balanced enough. Outer Hopefully Worlds had a look... stupid idea of balance <laughs> where they just hid suppressors behind, like, level 20. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's going to be like, um, we're going to see the pendulum swinging the opposite direction. Now stealth archers are going to be the least viable characters again. Mm, maybe. Because, you know, space magic. Yeah. It's the predefined range until the bullet magically disappears, obviously. I do, I do wonder. <laughs> yeah, so guy number two didn't hear guy number one get shot. Really? Or hit the floor. No, it, it, it's perfectly silent. Nice. So we have another game, another Bethesda game where stealth mechanics are just you crouch and you're invisible now. AI off. Yeah. <laughs> Brain smooth. <laughs> you can also choose to go hands on with melee weapons. But do we have fears? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Fallout 76 has spears. Yeah, right? It's not impossible. I think it's always a delicate balance between, like, what's realistic, what's sim, and what's Hollywood. Nice little line to grab. <laughs> I like how his aesthetic is uh, visors and doors. Every video we've seen with him, it's, he's been yeah. rocking that look. 
been rocking that look since now. the mid 2000s at yeah. least <laughs> I wonder if he does that for the sake of the videos or if he literally just walks around the office all day, every day wearing those. Hey, devs, why don't you show the whole fight, not just the killing blow? It makes me think of... Um... What are you afraid of, Bethesda? Why are you not showing us anything complete? When Cyberpunk did its demo... It was just gameplay like they didn't they didn't do this yeah. cutting between all these different elements yeah, yeah, and yeah. stuff it's just it's literally 48 minutes of almost like <clears throat> uncut gameplay like there's some cuts but it's just for the sake of like moving to the next yeah example piece and i will say that like its intro was actually surprisingly accurate for what was in act one like yeah. this this part of the game that they showed off this is, like, not a bad way. Like, they were pretty truthful for what Cyberpunk as a game was going to be. Did it show off that it was going to be a buggy mess? No. <laughs> but, like, this is how the game is. Like, even the combat stuff. They show the full sequence so you can see, like, the viability of stuff. Like, here's how smart weapons work from beginning to end. Here's how melee weapons work from beginning to end. And then you have this thing, where they're scared to show more than, like, 10 seconds of gameplay at a time. Listen, I love my hard cuts as much as the next video editor, but sometimes you just gotta let a, a clip play. If you want to instill confidence in players that melee is going to be a viable playstyle, start to finish combat in with melee. Yeah. But that's boring. And I think we, we don't have time for that. The side of like, what's fun for the player? Do you see him just whiff the grenade? <laughs> yeah. In that, in that shot. Straight up, like <laughs> skill issue. <laughs> that's the only. That was the only shot they had of that too, so they had to use it. I wonder what their plan was. Was he, were they going to hit him with the grenade and then shoot him, or like? Was the, were they always going to shoot him on the way down? Remember Fallout 76 uh, accidentally targeting people's grenades when they were throwing them at you and you'd blow yourself up? It's been proven the 2077 showcase demos were built specifically for the game shows and were not part of a working game build. Starfield's shots are 100% from the final product. All the more reason then. So Cyberpunk showed that with like what they had and you're telling me that the game is in a finished state. And they can't show me an unedited sequence from beginning to end of a person using a melee weapon. <clears throat> they can't. They can't even show you a double barrel reloading because it's not done. Because they still haven't fixed it. With Starfield. See, they didn't whiff that one. So do you think he messed up the sequencing? He was supposed to grenade the second one? Oh, maybe, yeah. We've completely That's all right, he had like combat. 12 of them, so. It's more dynamic, the animations are more fluid. The issue is that there's no context to this. So that like in the Cyberpunk demo, there's two builds that they run. They run like the They run like this early game build. And then they run like later on they switch to like a high level build just to kind of contrast it. Yeah. This could be like anywhere from their level two to their level thirty. Yeah, so, like, we have to sit here and play this game of, like, looking at context clues to figure out what's even going on. You know, like, you would think the purpose of a 45-minute long demo is to inform the players of what's going on. But, no, it's just 45 minutes It's to be minutes so snappy, hype. snappy, flashy, flashy. Yeah. You can't even register, like, what's actually happening in the sequence before it's over. Then that's the goal. You're not supposed to look critically at this stuff. They don't want you to look critically yeah. at this stuff. They're like, well, people want us to show stuff, so we're going to show 45 minutes of um, nothing. It just feels great. It feels great. That's why we can't show you a continuous sequence of it. Yeah. <laughs> we probably have more mods and more weapons in this game than I want to say any other game we've done before. I would hope so. 
caught i would because i think any other game yeah that that's that see that's concerning that it's not even like a definitive yes this is because i got news for you even fallout 76 with a ton of post-launch uh support and everything there's not a whole lot to the customization systems like the weapons and everything mm -hmm. like that really not that many mods because like i said this fallout, best in slot fallout 4 everything. was fallout 4 was fucking barren pretty much like melee weapons there was nothing to fucking customize when it came to melee weapons so yeah that 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 line sure isn't instilling any confidence in me a lot of variety upgraded gear is just one of the many factors Glamour shots. This guy looks like he's got a shotgun pointed at his cock. <laughs> pay attention to when engaging in combat. You may need to switch things up based on. So here's your archer from like outside the base, sniping yeah. everything. Here's how I was playing my last character. So, will there be an enemy type that has like a marksman weapon that is like designed to kind of counter you if you try to snipe? like some games do i don't know see because it's like all the combat that we've seen has been like these like two minute engagements outside of like the entrance of a place so it's like if there's not even going to be that much combat outside why bother with like having you know different enemies that can detect you with long-ranged weapons and stuff because you're going to be indoors in tight quarters for most of it we have like different so there's different uh markers on the radar there yeah i'm wondering is that like what is that denoting i think it's locations is it but why are they like different oh different locations like on the map you mean yeah mm. so he's not I like registering like... any any enemies or anything okay on your environment man 2.1 times damage on this so pistols and sniper rifles have the same damage so why would you ever use a pistol for stealth weighs less note the 18 grenades that's a fallout thing right there yeah well I mean what I don't get about this is why do they have such excessive ammo counts? <laughs> so there's two possibilities. Either this is footage from like their uh, playtesting, or in which case the ammo economy is non-existent, or this yeah. is footage from their uh, like they specifically went out of their way to try to record this footage. In which case, why did like this guy's gonna take like three shots? Why does he need twelve hundred rounds? Gravity is different for each planet, and boost packs are excellent for getting around. So he's saying two sentences that seem related, but aren't, like, aren't implicitly related. Yeah. By context, you would assume that he's saying that, like, boost packs are different on different gravity planets, but that's not what he said. He said gravity is different on different planets, and boost packs are useful for getting around. I mean, I would imagine Man, different gravity affects combat. them, because why have gravity then? Sometimes you'll even feel like you're flying. Yeah. Okay. Okay. He 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 did say like there. Zero gravity environments pose a different challenge. Firing a ballistic weapon in zero g will actually push you backwards. I think it's neat, but I do have to wonder how often this is going to be a thing that you have to engage with. Energy weapons, on the other hand, offer a more stable shooting experience. Because they've... Sh the 
every zero G environment they show is actually this room, by the way. I don't know if you've noticed that. Anytime they've shown zero G combat, it's always in this particular room. Yeah. Well, this looks like it's like an early part in the game. Like this looks like the starting armor and everything. So I feel like if they had a feature set that said that like zero G combat was frequent, they would have shown it off more through the gameplay demo. The fact that they're like given it its own announcement 40 minutes in and it's the same environment it's always been in leads me to believe like, is this going to be a frequent thing? I have to ask. If I'm boarding a space like another ship, can they disable gravity? It w is there a seamless gravity loss system where, like, you just start floating? I'm trying to think. Would could this could the engine really support something like that? It should be able to. Basic gravity manipulations, like, that's really basic. Yeah. Like baby's first first-person game. <laughs> comes with gravity manipulation. We also have mag weapons. These are high-powered electromagnetic induction ballistic arrays. Each barrel has its own targeting laser and can dish out some serious damage. So what's the balance? Whether you want to get up close and personal with your own two fists... Okay, it's not about what I want to do though. It's ultimately about like what's the best strategy to make the combat end as fast as possible. Well, if you're going in with that mentality, why are you even playing the game? Hmm. True. It's about experience. It's about the experience and the journey. Or you like more compact weapons like pistols and submachine guns. The combat's going to be so good that you're not going to want it to... You're going to want it to never end. The combat's going to be so good you're going to need a change of, under, of underwear. <laughs> Are you petting a cat? Actually, I have my hand on my knee. I will... I will posture check. Bigger. So this thing's level 75. It's not the highest level thing we've seen. Starfield's got you covered. Look, gameplay. The Fallout oh, and it's grenade over. sounds really it's just <laughs> keeps taking me out. There's always that old game asset that really just catches you <laughs> off guard. It's not too bad for me, but... I just... Bad, uh... Bad connotation, I guess. Yeah. Wait, so I can gun bash a Tyrannosaur and that's going to be a thing? Sure. See what I mean with this stuff? They don't let his shot hold it's long enough for you to get real context of like yeah. how the build works. Guys, we totally intended for that to happen. When bodies go shooting off, there's actually a reason now. Their jetpack <laughs> blew up. Oh, it's happening. <laughs> it's happening. Guys, it's happening. Do you think that's going to be the only ability you have? Like, like, it's all going to be ragdolling <laughs> stuff. Yeah, because that was the best. That was the best one in uh, Skyrim, right? So it's just going to be manipulating gravity and ragdolling things. It really is like a beautiful set of editing that they showed that bullshit off at the final hour. This could be the last thing that we might be getting to see about Starfield, by the way. 
Yeah. I, I don't think they're going to be showing anything else, really. And the, the final thing they show, and then bam, it's Todd Howard. Space Doom. God damn it. <laughs> People always said that, like, they're going to cram some, find some way to cram the Doom into Elder Scrolls Six, And I always thought, like, no, 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 it could be a one-off <laughs> thing that they did with Skyrim, you know. They don't have to do... No. If they're going to shove it into Starfield, <laughs> there's no way they're not going to find some way, some equivalent system. And the reason... I take offense to it is because if you have two magic systems existing in Tez 6, you know the main magic system is going to suffer as a result. Yeah. Accessible magic. Yeah. For everybody. And what's weird too is like the, the, um, the Thume was central to Skyrim. When they marketed Skyrim, that was part of their marketing. Yeah. They didn't keep it under wraps until the last second. This is like the big reveal. So that makes me kind of like perk my eyebrow. Like, what's going on there? Is it going to be a one, like one quest? Is it going to be like the final sequence of the game? Or is it really just that like they've kept the space through under the wrap until today? Yeah. In which case, not only is that wild, but that's also shit. <laughs> Thanks again for being with us today. We Where's the power so armor in this game? You've taken the time. True, true. I know there was probably a lot People to take loved in. There's a lot it. to the game, even more than we could show here. You know, as we play it, we're always sharing these unique and special moments. It it, it is funny. Different... It would be funny if they cut all the stuff that I like about new Bethesda games and just keep all the stuff I don't like. So it's like <laughs> I actually like power armor. I think that's a fun way to play. That's why I use power armor well, so much in the video. Your sh uh, your ship is now the power armor. No, no, that that's not. No, like power armor was like it's part of like the gunplay. It's like a heavy yeah. suit of armor and like it no, we, we made it. It's we made it its own like mode now. It's the ships. No, like no, the regular gunplay. Like when I'm fighting the spacers, I want to have power armor. But we gave you the jetpack. That was the best part. That's what everybody loved about the power armor. Well, I mean, not necessarily. I, I like the high damage value and like the slow, the slower and fall, the, the fall damage and like, you know. It, no, it's no, like, don't worry. There's no fall damage in this game. You have the jetpack now. Okay, but like, what about the other stuff? <laughs> <laughs> it really is the case that like, <laughs> you know that part of Fallout 4 you liked? We didn't bring it over. <laughs> you know those parts we, you didn't like? that that's what we are focusing on well i th i like that one of my f one of the parts i kind of liked in fallout 4 was the settlement building and it's literally the same exact system here uh, yeah i guess like, if you're all the, you know like all those mods people made about for settlements and like um sims settlements i think it was called where it's mm -hmm. like it really like deeply integrated with the rest of it no fuck that it's literally the same system that was in yeah fallout it was perfect it was it was perfect. No, we, if we, we add, change if we, we change added... it, the mods is, won't be compatible. You'll be able to like port the mod over to Starfield. <laughs> we added the ability to um, to build in third person in the free cam mode, and yeah, you're welcome. That's all that was need. That was all that needed. <laughs> Beautiful. Like this can, can you break. make can you make when your character your model special. like put a finger gun to its temple <laughs> <laughs> it really is the people here this game is a reflection of the incredible and passionate team that made it all of them putting something special of themselves into it so let's hear some of their favorite moments i love the way that our final combination of all the new tech has come together to create some of the most beautiful sunsets and sunrises we've ever had in any of our games. I love the creatures, the exploration, every biome is different. Oh no. The word that comes to mind is vast. I like to use our photo mode to take rock star photos. I just love that constant feel of discovery and wow, I can't believe that there's more here. I'm most excited about our outpost building systems. My favorite part is every time you step out on a planet, it's a unique experience. You spend all this time building your ship and you see it on the landing pad. 
These things are gigantic. It's the kind of thing that you just can't get anywhere else. There's something about seeing a tower over dangerous. in the distance and going, I know the gravity's low here. I think I can make that jump. My favorite part is biomes, spaceships, audio design, planets, the day-night cycle. Those details matter to me. Diplomacy. The day-night cycle, my favorite part. <laughs> the exploration, freedom, the ending. Vasco, obviously. William Shin loves the ending. <laughs> That's who said it. <laughs> I would hope so, my guy. <laughs> um, confirmed the game has an ending? Does this mean that once we finish the main quest? <laughs> uh, Man, you're going to piss. Ever, you're... Will we ever get a Bethesda game that ends, like hard ends again? No. That was too, the, there was too much backlash. Yeah. I love the robot so much. The incredible amount of worlds we created. Sniper rifles, come on. Lever action, rocket launcher. That's your lead weapon designer, by the way. <laughs> uh, lever action, rocket launcher. Well, at least he's saying a gun this time, and not yeah. just saying his. Fist. My favorite weapon is my fists. <laughs> Rain sprout. I laugh, but some people might find creepy. I don't know. I know it's hard, man. The thing that I enjoy most about the game is the freedom to be who you want to be. Yes, I want to be a twink on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting fucking cross legged. <laughs> what you want to do. It's what you've come to expect from a Bethesda title, but on a much bigger scale. Bugs. Bugs on a galactic scale. Bugs on every planet. Every planet <laughs> of Praying Mantis. We can't wait for you to play Starfield <laughs> and make your own special moments. Bold for them to even include that line again after the fucking after the failure to... last time, yeah. Because <laughs> they were so confident. We're gonna hit this Sorry. release date. Sorry, we had to scrub it. Abort! Abort! <laughs> you oh, got so a pre-order, of course. Pack. Yeah. Yeah, you didn't notice. So there's early access for. Okay, we got. Story expansion, but five day early access for premium edition. Hmm. I guess we have to buy premium edition then. Yeah, because they, they ain't sending us fucking early access. Come on now. <laughs> we just tore this shit apart for fucking like uh for seven hours. eleven hours. <laughs> well, you know, minus a minus a bit at the minus, Microsoft game show. Yeah. So September first. Uh, if we spend, if we pay Piggy 20 extra bucks or something. Fuck. I gotta grind that Skyrim video then. Just, uh, do a, do a subathon. We gotta donate to get, don't donate to me though, because I'm not gonna give Private Sessions any money, but donate to Private Sessions stream so that he can buy fucking <laughs> the Starfield Collector's Edition. <laughs> No, you don't want the collector's edition. But you want you the premium edition. Wait, you you don't want the watch? I mean, I wouldn't mind having the watch. Is it pay up then? Mm, I don't know. You get the art book with the premium edition, <clears throat> which I think is. Uh... <clears throat> yeah, there might premium be premium uh... edition. A hundred fucking dollars. Is it really? Mm hmm. Mm. That's kind of what I was expecting, honestly. So thirty extra dollars. You do. Get... Apparently get the DLC though. I mean, for our, well, no, they don't list it on the website that you get the DLC out of it. Mm. Oh man, oh, that was a lot. It's a lot to take in. Hang on. I'm what trying... was what was your favorite part? Um. Oh, the wallpaper shots. Okay, so they're listing digital premium edition. Let me take the horse off screen. 
Digital Premium Edition comes with Starfield Shatter Space first story expansion. But then when I go to the Xbox store, I don't see the DLC being listed. There it is. There it is right there. In little fine print, you get the Starfield story expansion. It's not in this part. So they already know what their first story expansion is going to be t titled, at least. Yeah, game developers act like they don't want people to like think that stuff's being cut out of the game to be made into DLC, but then they'll have like a detailed plan of what all they want to do with the DLC. Yeah. No word on their creation club. True. Um, I feel like... There's a there's a decent chance people are reading into that, like the the SRB rating I think was like in game purchases, which could be like literally, which could literally mean DLC. Yeah, maybe. Um, I don't know, but you have a skin pack. You have the constellation skin packs. So. I mean, this is just a pre order bonus. Like Fallout had that shit. New Vegas has pre order bonuses. Yeah, but did they have skin packs? <laughs> well of course it's just going to be an apparel slot so that you slot it over whatever functional piece of equipment you have uh maybe just yeah. like 76 and like 76 fallout... we'll have the atom shop <laughs> <laughs> well fallout 4 did have did have the creation club so was that a was that a, a launch thing creation club later it came later Fallout 4? Fallout 4 came out, and then, like, a couple years later, they did the Skyrim paid mods on Steam. Uh, okay. And then Creation Club, like, came a couple years after that. Yeah, it'll, maybe they'll wait. They'll wait on... Uh, it'll be fun in three years with, a... with Starfield on official patch and your favorite mods. Will it be, though? I listen. I have a a dubious time saying Skyrim's fun with mods. <laughs> Sky, I I will say that Skyrim is all right with mods. Yeah, Oblivion's fun with mods. Skyrim, hmm, maybe for like ten hours or so. Is like Fallout problem... Four fun with mods? I've never done a modded no. Fallout Four playthrough. No. It it really isn't. It's the same fucking game. Um, I'll I I just would get mods to make settlement building better. Um, yeah. The problem is is like mods can only go so far. Mods cannot fix fundamental like foundational issues, and they also can't fix like just bad level design and stuff because the the amount of work needed to do that sort of fixing is just no modder is going to commit to it. So the question is is like is this game going to be a good foundation for modders to work off of and how much work is it going to take for them to actually fix it like is the game even going to have like the mechanical support to like the mechanical depth to be able to make something like i, I like to use ordinator as a good example of like what a deep um mechanical uh mod would be for like a bethesda game and even that it, there's some some of the trees and stuff like your heavy armor and light armor trees there's still like really nothing there and it's just because the game doesn't have the mechanical depth to be able to make those things interesting these mods are not gonna like, add poise or anything like that yeah exactly so so if there's anything positive out of this um go check out salty shrimp pasta's video <laughs> on uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Okay. Do that. And uh, watch the Avowed trailer yet. We saw it live. I haven't really like seen it in a uh, more digestible format. I'm kind of wiped out <laughs> <laughs> from today's stream. I'm glad that we got it done today. Yeah, yeah. We just had to, we had to just power through this thing. It's, it's part done. Of it, part of it too was that they surprised us with uh, what eighteen extra minutes or something. Yeah, they, they over minutes. delivered. They they sure over delivered. They had yeah. to make up for the for the Xbox uh, controller advertisement in the middle.
They still only said 20 minutes worth of things in 45 minutes, but... Yeah. They over-delivered. Where they would have said 10 minutes before. You know what? It was it was originally going to be 30 minutes, but then Redfall happened, so like, alright, we'll bump it up to 45. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I appreciate everybody coming out and seeing the show. Yeah, this is fun. I'm, uh... We had a I'm huge viewer drop off when people realized I was going to be slideshowing it. That's funny. <laughs> Blame Microsoft. You can't trust them. Yeah. I'm only going to like, like, I'm not getting clipped for some trailer for some game I don't give a shit about. I was only here for Starfield. I was pleasantly surprised by Avowed. I'm surprised there was no Outer Worlds 2. Yeah, I'm surprised. Um... Avowed got a first billing over uh, Outer Worlds 2. Good for them. City Skylines, pleasant surprise. Yeah, yeah that Fallout was a, 76, I, Atlantic City. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I forgot about that. There we go. That's the follow up. Uh, uh, it might take too long to come out though. For uh... so, Starfield is just Cowboy Beep Bop. I think that's being very generous. I already don't want to play this game. <laughs> Sadly, no Dragon's Dogma 2. We know that Dra Dragon's Dogma 2 is going to be at the Capcom show tomorrow, which I'm not going to stream. I'm not going to watch the Capcom show for one game. Yeah. Like, Starfield was different because, like, they've been billing this thing for months as this is the event where we're going to get all of our questions answered. But uh, it is what it is. I'm surprised that wasn't a proposed horse name. It is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. All right. Well, let's get out of here. Uh, what's next for you? Uh, I'm gonna have to do a City Skyline stream. I think I'm gonna have to do an analysis of that. All right. That uh, trailer. I didn't think they uh, showed too much, so you probably want to plan like a, a, working on a city too. Yeah, no, no, it's going to be like, I'm going to watch the trailer for a little bit and then knock out, a, like, continue working on one of my big cities. Yeah, and then you got the City Skylines video coming. Um, yeah. Still working on Outer Worlds over here. I'm working another script so that I can do another recording session uh, of inserts for Outer Worlds. So, the content keeps flowing. Time keeps going. Uh, we're free to do stuff until I guess until September first. <laughs> I hope that's not Damn. too much pressure. They robbed me of a week. Mm -hmm. Maybe they'll delay it. No, I didn't see anything in this trailer in this reveal to like warrant uh, them delaying again. We are go I mean, for launch. Were, they were very coy with a lot of stuff, but you know. As long as the game can move units at launch, that's all that really matters at this point. I think it's a fun project. This is going to be a fun <clears> end of <throat> year. I mean, I'm going to get my November video after all, which is something I've been yeah. worried about. Is uh, will I get my November video this year? But we yeah, will. I think yeah, if we we grind from the from September, we could get out, get these out in November, and harvest that sweet sweet RPM. But yeah, we're probably gonna have to share resources on the video just to yeah make getting it out easier. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, thanks, chat, for coming out. And see fun, you guys, guys later. <laughs>